Hello and welcome to a brand new Alpha 21 7 Days to Die series. This one doesn't have a name, and the reason it doesn't have a name is because I couldn't think of one, but the general idea is this. We are going to be using an intellect build in 7 Days to Die to see how good they made the tons and see how powerful the perks are for progression, because I had a bit of a theory that in the right conditions, intellect could be used to absolutely speedrun to end game gear. Now the settings are on the screen, you'll see we're not doing Insane Nightmare this time, I am not good enough with batons at this present moment, I think anyway, to do Insane Nightmare with batons. Now most of you don't play Insane Nightmare and you don't care, but I did just lose like at least 10 people who only watch Insane Nightmare. But you know what, there's a whole other series for that. The premise of this one is basically I'm going to put almost all of my points into intellect until I'm done with intellect. I want to try and get to 10 intellect or at least 9 with nerdy glasses before I even start adding any points into other attributes. I think in the spirit of fairness I can take like the first rank of other perks from other trees but until I have 10 intellect or 9 with nerdy glasses, I can't invest in any other actual attributes to get any of the higher ranks of other perks, and I'm definitely going to be focusing my first few levels on the intellect tree entirely. But it's unrealistic to assume an entire 7 days to die playthrough is going to be in one skill tree, because you'll max out that skill tree by the end of like the second week if you focus on just that, so need to do something, right? Now the thing about an intellect build, or specifically a batons build, is that you can't make your main weapon out of just stones and wood and plant fibre. You need pipes and leather, and your best bet for that is going to be a house, probably. Uh, break the toilet, break some seats, there you go, you have yourself a pipe baton. So that's probably what I'm going to have to do first. It's still insane difficulty, and the zombies are still on running, so it's not a complete cakewalk. I have to be careful and get my good weapon as soon as possible. Where are these damn stones? Okay, the trader is a reasonable 500 meters away, and it looks like it's in a town. That is a refreshing change of pace from the Insane Nightmare series. Let me loot this truck, you never know what you might find. Some lead. Lead is of value to me, because I need it for robotic turrets, which we're going to be using at various points in the series. I do wonder if I should check this place, but it doesn't seem like the place you would actually find a toilet. Oh, there's a vulture, hi. Oh, you're kidding. The first hit? The first hit, really. The first hit and I'm infected. Uh, at least vultures only do 20 damage compared to zombies that do like 25. I'll actually save that for another hit. Fuck's sake, the first hit and I'm infected. Welcome to 7 Days to Die. Right, well, let's make my way over to the trader then, because I don't know what to expect from that place. I mean, I stepped foot in it and I immediately got infected. That's a bad omen if I've ever seen one. Two glue. That is actually very, very helpful because if I can turn that into duct tape, I can. Oh, she spotted me. Time to run away. See, if this was nightmare, I'd just be dead, and I'm not about that today. I want this series to be about the progression, not the combat. But yeah, um, two glue is really good because I can make two pieces of padded armor with that and take ten percent less damage, which is significant when you play insane difficulty. That's you know an extra hit of survivability. Unfortunately, it's trader wrecked, but you know what? It's fine some wood. This will have a forge ahead for me, presumably. Yep. So we can make our do collector, and that's fine. Forge. The forge ahead and some nails and some brass. Workbench with some more brass. Ah, vehicle adventures. Perfect. That's something that we're going to be able to level very quickly with an intellect build, so that'll be really nice. Ooh, some water. Let's see what he has inside here. Ooh, some more glue. Nice. Another water. Pipe. We're on our way to our pipe baton, at least. Is that really all you have in here, Wrecked? I feel like there's some kind of secret I'm missing. I've been up there already. Mostly food. That is his shtick. Oh, he does have some honey. If I can get a few hundred dukes here. Could uh, cure my infection. I just sold my pipe. That was a bad reflex. It's okay, though. I'll live. It was only one pipe. I mean, you could also buy four pipes in the leather from him directly if I get some money. He has a level six stone shovel. He has a wrench. That's a big early game limiter. Right, what I think I want to do for him is just get on a fetch job. Oh, nice. Couldn't have asked for a better roll on that. He just has a bunch of very easy fetch jobs. I just have to avoid combat at all costs because I don't actually have a real weapon. Now, this is Bo's Market. Okay. Okay. This one might be worth a quick double loot of the first room for a few books, but otherwise I'm probably just going to do this conventionally. Double look in here. Oh yeah, there's some books. Very sneaky. Very, very sneaky. 
And we got 100 mod schematic. That is worth money at least. Oh, a grill. Nice. Start that. More books again. More coffee. Let's grab these bookcases really quickly. I'm only here to fetch, but I will grab free bookcases when they show up. Uh, wiring and demolitions. Cool. Now, where is... Okay, so this is probably just going to be an easy frame job here. Hop up onto this roof here. Um, is there not meant to be a hole in this roof? Or am I misremembering this POI? It might be. I assumed I would hop up onto here and then I would just find it. Let's have a look in a window, maybe. All the windows are boarded up. Oh, hang on. Truck. Uh, stone axe level 2. It's better than nothing, I suppose. Uh, right, well, you know what? I think I'm going to go with my original plan. I'm just going to break through the ceiling. I've wasted enough time already. There we go. Also some meds here. Oh, that'll do. Let's go back to Rekt and take another job from him because I still want to get Tier 1 done as quickly as I can so that I can get the bicycle and never have to worry about anything ever again. Hey there. Give me some stuff. Staring, asshole. Duct tape is extremely useful, but mechanical parts are really hard to get early on, so it's the smart thing to just always take those if you can get them. Your first one anyway, you don't have to keep taking them, but once you've got a few mechanical parts, one scrapping book, a few forged iron, you have a wrench, you have unlocked half of the game. You're good. Um, can I sell blood bags? No, I cannot. <sighs> he doesn't know what he's missing. Right, let me get some honey to cure this stupid disease I have. And then let me see about getting four pipes. One, two, three, four, and three leather. It hurts to buy such random objects. Also, cobblestone is extremely cheap. If you can if you can get it, buy it. Uh, we'll wait for the cooking pot. I'm not in dire need of it immediately anyway. Oh, I would like that structural brace mode as All well. Right. Get a pipe baton going. I can actually fight things now. Like I have a genuine weapon that my build is built for. Let's take another oh fetch. I'll need to make a storage chest outside. Classic seven days to die gameplay. Where do I want to live for the night? Because I'm not going to build a base on the first night. I don't need one. I do see that elevated platform there. That might be the place to go. Uh, let me eat the honey. Let's, let's test this weapon on a, on a Marlene here. Now, I only have a couple of points, so I still have to be efficient with my stamina usage, but how many hits is it going to take? Four so far. Five. Six. That's not that bad. For insane difficulty, that's pretty normal, like, at the start of the game. So, that's a good sign. Uh, so, yeah, I'm probably going to spend my night up on this weird silo. Just kind of on the edge here. I'll just sit here for 15 minutes. Uh, I can make a writable storage box. That's fancy for my first storage container. I'll put this up here so I can just really easily access some stuff. You know what? I'll make another one for the trader as well. This will be my actual storage temporarily. This is, like... So strange to me. Oh, let's put it there. I like that. <laughs> Keep that glue in case I find some more cloth, actually, because I do want to make armor. Armor is like turning down the difficulty in this game early on. But let's head out around here, and I'll put my trader box there. So I'm at the stage where I can 1v1 a singular zombie. We are doing good so far. Tech Junkie, that is the stun baton one. Gives you more charges with your stun baton. You're more likely to charge it when you use attacks. Good, but I don't have a stun baton right now, so what am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> Let's start this quest and see where it wants me to fetch. Just in the first room? I will accept that, and I will probably take the fight that comes with it. Ooh, pipes. Of course. I would have never found pipes unless I had bought some pipes. We all know this. Ah, yes, come and fight me. Come on, dipshit. Okay, that's pretty tolerable. Oh, I activated another zombie. Come on, Arlene. Okay, where's the satchel? Nice. Now, I could do with a little bit of cloth, and I noticed that this bed is made of it. Check these bags for glue. I see a couch as well, which is also made of cloth. Uh, let's make two pieces of padded armor. That's 10% less damage already. That's great. When you get a full suit, you've basically turned the difficulty down to survivalists. Small victory, but incredibly helpful. Because survivalist is easier than insane. Let's head back to him here then. Let's take your business. Uh, I will take some 762 and I'll make a pipe machine gun later. Let me take another fetch. Uh, can I buy anything? At least I'm not going to be short on food. Uh, could 
probably wise to get a cooking pot soon, but I still don't actually have enough. All right, let's go do this job. Ooh, head pop. Right, I'm going to go straight into, think, what would be the best choice here? I think I want to go straight to five intellect and get, like, electrocutioner three. So I can just be good with my weapon. Like, I don't have to worry as much. After that, we'll backfill some more regression perks. You know, the ones that give you the crazy effects that catapult you to day 40 gear far too quickly? Yeah, those ones. Oh, it's this PY. Sorry, I, I think I've got, like, three zombies coming after me just from around. Hello, rabbit. There we go, I can make a bone knife now. So repair that. <laughs> right, let's see, can I get a sneak attack on the one guy here? Or is he on the other side? No, oh, no, he heard me. Oh, that reminds me, I need a name for this series. I couldn't come up with anything because I'm just uncreative, apparently. Um, it's an intellect build series, so give me some intellecty names in the comments. Oh, more glue. We can make another duct tape with that. I already have a duct tape. Okay, so a little bit more cloth and I can make my third and fourth pieces of armor. See a zombie. Oh, flip bag. Some more 762 and some food. Uh oh. Dawn broke. One sec. Well, it's... Oh, I thought I saw a hand move there. I assumed she didn't activate when you were in that room. I was wrong. I'm out of stamina. I need some bones. She's dead. Now I can get some cloth out of these couches. Right, let's make a... What piece of armor do I need? Legs. Added leg armor. And see if, what other cloth I can get here. There we go, and... Padded arm armor? Yeah, that'll be next. And then if I can get one more glue and some more cloth, I can make myself a padded hood, and I'll have the full 25% damage resistance that you get from level 1 padded armor, which is like one of the best things you can get early on in 7 Days to Die. There's a bookcase up here sometimes, not today. Uh, another medical journal. Ah, another glue, nice. We can make a duct tape. I just need more cloth then. This made a cloth? It was. That's helpful. Now I know there's a few zombies in here, so let's try and do a sneak attack. I don't need to fight these, so if I get routed and have to run away, then, you know, it happens. Right, one's down. Let the other ones hit a hole in this door. There we go. Hi there, Mo. Extremely weird behavior, Mo, I'm gonna be honest with you. There goes the door. Run away, but not like sprinting because it's not nightmare, so I don't need to get caught on the random things. There you go. She's dead. Mo. Another medical journal. Oh, some red goth boots. I don't really care about the goth boots, but it is leather. And red, I obviously love, so we'll grab that. Oh, big lag spike. Let's see, some arm armor that I'll sell. Lucky looter, find more dukes and loot. Sure. Iron arrows, which I will bring. I'll drop this paper. And a first aid bandage. Let's open up this. A knife guy. Eh, sure. Let's head back to Wrecked. What I really want to find is electronics trucks. Those have a very good chance of giving me, like, a stun baton. And just the books that are, like, related to that kind of thing. I do see an um, electronic store right here, actually. <laughs> there might be a truck in the... Yeah. Careful, though, because this is, like, town. We might get scary things here. Uh, Tech Planet. I will accept that. And a bunch of useful pieces for later. Not that helpful for me now, but, you know, Tech Planet is something. Let's get out here. Might be able to get one more fetch done before the night ends, which will be a great position to be in for day two. If I can get the bicycle by the end of day two, that'll mean I'll have tier two jobs unlocked for day three, and I'll have a bicycle to do them with, which is pretty good. Although nothing about that is specialized to intellect yet. Right now, I'm just dealing with the difficulties of insane difficulty, which is you need to invest in damage, or you can play in a way that is extremely unentertaining for YouTube videos involving being the biggest little bitch in the world. I know, I already play like a little bitch, but it's even worse, trust me. You basically don't fight anything and it doesn't make for good content. So we're going for the slightly altered playstyle here. Hello, Wrecked. 
I'll sell you goods. I will take crafting magazine bundles. And I'll take the deracinated domicile. I think that's how you say that. Uh, I don't need electrical parts or scrap polymers. I have the things to make a wrench once I find out how to make a wrench. So there's no real issue there. Are you selling any cloth? No. Uh, let's get a cooking pot just to make sure we have that. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. Home cooking, handguns, and fists have been scammed. Right, let me go dump some stuff. The next thing I need is some glue again to make a pipe machine gun, which is your optimum emergency gun. The thing about an intellect build is it doesn't have a gun. It doesn't have a specialized gun. You have robotic turrets, which are your gun. Um which means I just have to use the best gun I can find that my character isn't going to be specced for, which is going to be the pipe machine gun, because it is the best of the pipe guns. Okay, let's see, is there any cotton nearby? There we go, make a single piece of cloth, and then make added hood, and we're fully armoured up. Basically playing on survivalist difficulty already. That's how you win. Let's go do this job. Oh yeah, this reset with that quest. Pistol peep, sure. Might use pistols later. Spear Hunter, that is not going to be helpful to me though. I'll sell it. Painkiller, yes. Now I have no interest in clearing this POI, it is a big POI for the tier 1. So I'm just going to get the bag as quickly as possible. Let's reset that and get all this stuff again. Oil and cloth again. And nothing particularly helpful. Right, let's have a look here. Let's see. I don't want to pillar up the outside, but I do want to minimize the amount of fighting I have to do here. Oh, a football helmet. Good, but you do get a mobility penalty that I'm not really a fan of. I don't like mobility penalties until I'm getting the best armor I can. Football helmets just aren't worth that to me. Oh, I woke up another one. That was an interesting exchange. There's usually a bunch of books in this POI, at least. So if I'm clearing it properly, even though I don't have to, at least I'm getting books out of it. Ugh. Hit boxes, please. Oh. I'm broke. One sec. Vehicle adventures, nice. Oh, nurse. Ow, I don't even know what just happened. He like teleported at me. Eat some food to heal it. I need food, I need healing, might as well use the food. It's just taking up a bunch of random slots in my inventory anyway. Here we go. Okay, we're on the level of my stuff then. Here it is. Anybody in this room? No. Um, it's more important to me to get the quest out of the way and then take another one so I can get tier 1 done as quickly as possible than it is to get the random thing from the chest there. So let's go back to Wrecked and see if we can turn in this reward. Now, one thing to note is Nighttime is still Nightmare, Ferals are still Nightmare, and Horde Knights are still Nightmare because that's just how I always play. So I am going to be spending the night up on a high surface cowardly like I usually do because I don't think I'm fully ready to take on a Feral yet. Not at nightmare speed. They do 50 damage per hit. I mean, even with my armor, it's still going to be like 40 damage per hit. Not a boxing match. I would win. Hey, Trader Wrecked. Congratulations. Here's your reward. I will take a bunch of extra cobblestone because I'm not playing a strength build, so I'll take that. Let me go ahead and sell him this, this, and this. And buy that structural brace mod, which is actually quite helpful for this weapon. Because it'll make me use less durability, and I'll get extra damage. Right, let me see, I got a skill point there, that's just going to go into intellect as well. To unlock the next rank of batons. Right, well, I don't think I'm going to be equipped to fight a nightmare PY right now, so I'm going to go hide in my silo and wait until morning. I'll let you guys know if anything actually happens. Alright, so I hid up here during the night. It was pretty uneventful. I put my campfire on sideways, I cooked some water. Let's go do this job. Right, let's restart this. Grab the mailbox. Tech planet, nice. We can make another pipe baton. 
probably hold off on that until I have a bit more pipes. We're making very good progress on the tier 1s though, especially compared to Insane Nightmare where my trader was so far away from everything. That took ages. Anybody in here? Oh, a lockpick and a piece of steel. Bookshelves. Oh wow, shotguns, knives, fists, traps. Almost entirely useless. And an armor plating mod schematic which I'll sell to wrecked. Oh, another glue. I need two to make my pipe machine gun. Of course I might get lucky with the end loot in here anyway, but... It's usually worthwhile to try and get things in a more guaranteed way, and when good things just happen to happen, you just run with it. Oh, now these garment bags are your best source of nerdy glasses, so I'm really hoping I get lucky here. Nope. And nope. Well, I wasn't expecting it on the first bag anyway. Would have been nice, though. Two more lockpicks. Two more zombies? Can I sneak attack any of them? Maybe sneak attack her. Some brass and some 762. It's a military fiber I can sell. Oh, an electronics crate. Nice. Those are the best ones for me. Let's see, a level 3 pipe baton. Fantastic. I'll just scrap that one. This one does like two more damage and it can take a mod slot. Uh, urban combat. Sneaking over trash doesn't do the thing. Good. I don't have to ever think about it in this series then. Ooh, a robotic sledge. That is just really lucky. I need to test this on some zombies. Because I know how it works on, like, Adventurer difficulty, because I played a multiplayer server on that difficulty, and I was playing around with it, and it was very effective as just, like, a zombie knockdown thing. I don't know if um, that's related to the amount of damage it does, and therefore is related to the difficulty. So we'll have to see by, you know, doing that to some people. But it is a stamina-free melee weapon. Also, you can, like, deploy it as a turret. Which is lame. I mean, it's a really bad turret on anywhere except Horde Knight mostly, but it's a thing. Still, starting day two with five jobs done. Absolutely great start. I couldn't ask for a better start, literally. You can only do five jobs in one day anyway, on single player, unless you use the exploit. Which I tend not to. Hello, Wrecked. Not bring any diseases into my store. That's what I specialize in. Right, it takes 762, and he has a fetch 900, or a fetch 1.2 kilometers. Let's just take the closer clears. Camp car wall. That one's a bit of a bitch. I'm going to try and avoid that one. Moe's Grocery, that's a good one. Worth doing a quick double loot of as well, because it has a forge ahead book guaranteed. So I might want to just double loot that one. I got all the time in the world to do it. Once I'm done with tier 1 jobs, I want to move on to tier 2 as quickly as possible anyway. I forgot to sell my armor plate. Hang on. How much are all your pipes? I'm going to take those, because pipe batons really do eat a whole lot of pipes to repair. You know, I have some lockpicks. Could always check out one of the police cars. Not that I expect much from it, but I could get some 762 or some ammo I might want to use. Since we're going pretty far anyway, and I plan on spending more time doing these last two tier 1s, we might as well take a route through the town and look for some electronics trucks. I do see this power station here. It's a tier 4, so I won't be going inside it. But if they tempt me with a mo power truck, then, you know, I'm going to do it. More pipes, nice. Oh, here's a zombie. Let's test this out on him. Oh, that's powerful. Then switch. Knock him down again. Switch. Oh no. <laughs> that is extremely powerful. <laughs> There's a military truck, but I'm not tempted by that. Let's test on this guy. The switch between two different weapons there is really slow. Probably by design, but it's enough time. Uh, more pipes, nice. There is a tool truck here, it's not the best, but I'll take it. Ah, there's an electronics truck. Oh, he sped up. Uh oh. Yeah, if you miss that, you're screwed though. Switch. Bloody juggling them. Um, let's take some charred meat for a little bit of healing. 
saving all my bandages for later. What happens if you do this to him, by the way? Oh, that is maximum comedy. Pick planet. I could get really lucky and just get a stun baton, by the way. That's why I'm searching all of those. Because a stun baton is just a straight up upgrade. It doesn't even matter. Like, it can be level 1 and this can be level 6. And the stun baton is still going to be better. Because it has the stun effect. Nice guy. Scrapping. There, I can make a wrench once I get some forged iron now. I think Wrecked might be selling some, so that's good. Ow. Hey, I didn't knock him down. Really? That seems like the time to use a bandage. I should really have these on my hotbar in the early game. I don't do it late game and people always complain about it. But early game, you probably should do it. Because <laughs> that health actually matters. But I'm still used to playing endgame stuff. Right, so I know there's a Forge Ahead book in here and I want it. So I'm going to try and skip to it. And then actually do the quest. Here it is. Here we go. Forge ahead. One more and we can actually make a forge. I see a passing gas in there. I wonder if we should try and get the end loot. Place that. No oh, shit, zombies behind me woke up. Okay. Alright, you keep bullying Mo while I do this. Mo has escaped the turret's wrath. Oh. The turret actually killed Mo. Uh, Magnum Enforcer, sure. Spare bandage. Some kind of firearm, I'll take it. And let's open up the pass and gas container here. Tools digest, cool. And steroids. Some ammo. Right, that's about all I really want to go out of my way to get from here. Let's actually do the quest now. Let me heal up real quick. Bleed absolutely wrecked me. That's cheating. And jump over the table. Ah, bloody random pieces of wood. You're gonna get me killed. Whoa. random stuff there. Whoa. Good job, turret. You really saved me there. Oh, some more red dye. Nice. That works very effectively. Then we get back to this room again, with my other Forge Ahead book that I want. Oh, there's Thee in there? Never seen that before. Ah, there's none in the actual loot room though. Okay. Forge Ahead, we can make a forge. So now if I want to make a wrench without buying this stuff, I can. I can craft AP turret ammo. Bunch of meds, that's nice at least. Couple of steel and some building blocks, some more steroids, and some ammo and baton parts. Pop up onto the roof, there's another container, usually just a shamway one, but it might be worth grabbing. Ammo pile, robotic parts, cool. With some sham in it. Right, I'm gonna drink a couple of water here, and then I'm gonna take a steroid so I can run at 10% faster with full inventory. And I can get back to Trader Wrecked faster. Oh, truck, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ow. Well, so in kits aren't bad. I can at least start making those uh, pocket mods now. Egg Planet, nice. Needle and Thread, Pistol Peak, cool. Spear Hunter, I'll sell that. And Paper. Hello, Wrecked. Great. Welcome to Trader Joe's. I don't guarantee a thing. That's a lot of water. I'll like take it. that. Let's see, he also has a clear 700 meters away, Camp Carwell. I don't like that one. He's Heidi Hole. You'll do what you're... I've got work. 
Yeah. Yeah, let's just do that. Slightly further Next away, time. but it's fine. I've got 2,000 monies. What do I need to buy his... Well, there's no point in buying his wrench now. I can probably just get forged iron and make my own. If I get that, and then one more forged iron, yeah. I can make a wrench. Oh, I'll need another dog tape as well. That's fine, though. I could maybe get myself some... Oh. I could get myself some Mega Crush. That will speed this process up. Uh, but before I do that, I can maybe use all the water I just got to make some glue. Let me see how many bones I have. Let's see here. Uh... Glue, two glue. I only need a couple, so that works. And then cook up the rest of the water as well. Give it a few more bits of that. So I need one glue for the pipe gun, and then I need one duct tape for the wrench, and then I need another forged iron. Let's see, pipe machine gun. That can definitely replace my pipe pistol. I don't need that. Here we go. This thing has a magazine size of like 15. So it can be my emergency gun, and I can put that in there. This is why I was taking those 762 earlier. If I turn that into a duct tape, then just one forged iron, I can make a wrench, and that's when the game becomes really quite easier to play when you have that. So the next thing I want to do is drink a Mega Crush for 50% faster run speed. I also, that will stack with my steroids, so I will run like hell right now. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's head out that one kilometer do this final tier one job that I need to do so that I can get my bicycle and then I don't have to run like this anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna get it first try. I am. Uh, a wooden club and some 7.62. That full auto mod will actually give me more damage on my machine gun and it does increase your fire rate by I think like 12%. So even if your gun is already fully automatic it does makes sense to put a full auto mod on it because it'll be even fuller auto. <laughs> it gets a 12% fire rate boost, so works for me. Oh, this is weird. I don't think I've done this POI before. Uh, my satchel's on the ground floor, so let's just run around the back and see if I can just get it. Ooh! Okay, this place has a cement mixer. Noted. That means basically a free forge ahead every time you do it. Um, is this going to be as easy as it seems? I mean, they really thought barbed wire would stop me. Let's take the other Mega Crush and run. <laughs> Shit, I thought you were a zombie. I am a zombie. I will take the glue. And I will take the bicycle. Great. Where's the next trader? Trader Bob to the west? I do not want to know anything about you anymore. He's the vehicle guy. That makes him valuable. I will actually go and see him, though. Because I have 2,000 dukes and he may have... A singular iron. But first, because there's no rush on this now. Wow, this feels extreme. I'm going to use my legs until the Mega Crush runs out. Fuck this bike. Um, I'm going to have a look for some easy electronics trucks. And the best way to do that is usually just run out into the middle of a town and look around. It's me. I'm the nightmare. I'm on nightmare speed. It's my turn, zombies. Urban combat. Craft cigars. I never fucking find that when I'm actually doing a strength build, can I? It will be helpful, though. It's not as helpful. It'll be helpful way later. By then, I'll probably just get one. Pipe baton quality 4. Spear hunter I'll sell. Paper. And sniper. Ow. Thought I had more time. Oh, hello. I smell profit. And the only thing I have points in is batons. I'm going in. Oh, it's a tier 3? Uh, I ain't no bitch, let's go in here. I didn't bring arrows. I am a genius. Those digest. Vehicle adventures. Now this will never respawn automatically. So there's no point in me like marking it and coming back in seven days. Because I have that all disabled. Urban combat, landmines won't detonate when steps on. Andy land tech planet. Um but when I get to tier 3 with a trader, this will be very helpful to have. Pipe baton quality 5. Probably actually worth making if I had any leather on me. <laughs> I'll have a look for some leather in here. We can make a robotic sledge quality 1. Those digest, we can get into a fight with this guy real quick. Oh, I was trying to do, but okay. Uh, electrical traps, okay, I do need that, but it's not a big priority. 
Right, there's another skill point. The logical choice here for me, I think, is Dating Adventurer. That will give me 10 more levels worth of trader stage with the trader. So I basically just increase the quality of things that can spawn at the trader by like 150%. Because I'm only level 5. I'm getting level 15 gear at the trader now. Sharp sticks. And a scope. This isn't the best of the books. Of the bookstores. Oh. Um... But it's a bookstore nonetheless. It's still very good. But the other one, little tier two, another urban combat one. Jesus. Uh, what was I saying? But yeah, the other bookstore is better than this. Robotic Sledge Quality 2. I'll probably just wait. I am not good. Ooh, two first aid kits. Damn. Did they buff those? I swear they were not that good in Alpha 20. Goo glue, nice. Island cabinet. Tech planet again. Uh, big hitters, who cares? Yeah, this is all crap, that's fine. I'm just gonna read that Spear Hunter book to get it out of the way. Right, not bad. Let's open up these containers. I'm just going to sell these two things. Uh, Bar Boeing Tech Planet. Armored up. Handy Land and Batter up. Uh, Hunter's Journal. Shotgun Weekly and I'll sell the off-road headlights. Let me try and unlock this container. I'm not going to bash through it though. I just, I am not tolerating that. See, am I going to tolerate that? No, fuck that. <laughs> um, nah, it doesn't even matter. Whatever, we got the books anyway. That's all I wanted out here. Maybe I should make a forge. I have a bunch of glue. I could make duct tape and make a forge and then get the one forged iron I need. Kind of annoying, but I could do it. Forge. I would need some cobblestone, which I have. I'd need a log. I need 10 leather, which I've got somewhere. There's six leather. One more duct tape. Have oh, I not got any cloth on me? Right, let me head back to my base. Let's see. 10 leather, exactly. Nice. One cloth for the duct tape, and cobblestone. In the meantime, the forge is just going to have to sit on, like, two blocks there. I'll reinforce them, at least. This is what I have to work with right now. <laughs> Where I chose to do my thing. Build a forge. I got some iron and clay. Raw iron, there's some clay. I've got some coal and wood if I need to fuel anything. Okay. Oh yeah, and I've got repair kits for my, uh, right there. Now I can make all the pipes I need. And forged iron and all that kind of thing. Go ahead and start smelting that in there. This is a really good start. This is much better than both of the other series. I'm glad I finally got a decent one. Let's get that one forged iron. There we go. And now I can make myself a rent. Oh, I put my duct tape away. Hang on. Oh no, I used it to make the forge silly me. Uh, two cloth as well. And there we go. And then wrench. I'll take two minutes. Okay. Well, that can wait until the morning. I think I'm going to leave this episode here. We are in a very good position. I have a good baton. I have a robotic turret. I have a gun. I have a bicycle. I have a forge. This is a solid start, but this is only a quick look at how an intellect build can really do some interesting things. As we get more skill points and I can start really hammering home the dating adventurer, as well as like lock picking to boost my crucible progression and grease monkey to boost my vehicle progression and advanced engineering for all the things it does. We'll also need physician to get the 20% chance to an additional 20% chance to dismember with batons and a 10% chance to just insta kill enemies with a stun baton. Extremely powerful, but you do need 10 intellect, which is a lot of skill points. That is way down. Hello and welcome back to seven days to die. Today, we, well, tomorrow technically, we are going to be continuing on with this playthrough where I am testing the intellect build to see how quickly I can get some of the most end game gear by using some of the most OP skills in seven days to die, using the alpha 21 learn by reading system and the trader stage system as intellect manipulates both of those things. Now I have three days worth of playtime here for this episode. So what the plan is, is I'm going to just grind as many skill points and as much money as I can in those three days. And at the end of day five, I will just see what gear I am now able to craft because my plan for today is going to revolve around getting a lot of books and possibly some decent gear from the traders but I'm not expecting that strategy to pay off until a little bit later down the line. 
and I cannot take any jobs right now and I don't want to take any fights either because they'll be nightmare speed. So I'm going to take my bicycle and I'm going to drive around or cycle around I suppose and hunt down a bunch of lampposts because lampposts give you steel. Now do I need steel at this exact second? No. But I want to rush vehicles and the motorcycle for example requires... 37 forged steel plus another 7, so you need a decent little bit of steel if you want to do anything with vehicles. So, doing this now will be an effective use of my time. I'm going to wrench up as many lampposts as I can find, and I'll get back to you in the morning when the trader is open. Okay, so it's just about to turn morning. I only got like 17 forged steel there from lampposts, but, you know, it's a solid amount of steel just to have for later. I'm not building any 4x4s anytime soon, that's for sure, but 17 forged steel will have its uses later. Now, I saw this house, and I want to loot it before the trader opens, so let's try and do that. Well, wheel, nice. Ooh, a level 6 uh, fight baton. Nice. Three mod slots. Fancy. Good job, turret. You really stopped them. Ow. There's our first skill point. I'm going to put that straight into uh, Grease Monkey, because most of my Forge Ahead books are going to be guaranteed just from looting cement mixers and forges, so I'm going to increase my chances with some Grease Monkey on the vehicle ones. Oh, a bookshelf, nice. There we go, vehicle adventures, medical journal, and handguns. Alright, and we're clear. So, triple armor pocket mod, nice. Not bad for tier 2 loot, to be honest. Very lucky. Oh, drum magazine as well. Tech planet and some baton parts. I will take the drum mag over the <laughs> the full auto mod. 30 rounds, so yeah, that's a good panic weapon right there. And let's pop this open as well. Machine gunner. Craft drum magazines. <laughs> Game really wants me to have drum magazines, which is good, because drum magazines are really good for robotic turrets later on, so... I will be prepped for that. Now the priority with jobs is going to be any PY I know has something good in it, and I'll double loot it. It doesn't even matter if it's tier 1 or 2. I'm going to sell them these electrical parts, because I'm not going to be able to use them for a... quite a while. Right, let's take some jobs. They're all fetches. P&B Machining Co. I don't know if that has anything good in it, but it could be vehicle and construction related, so I feel good about it. So let's start it. Acid. Scrapping for fun, I will never say no to that, although there are things I would prefer. Forge ahead, nice, fantastic. Oh, some books here. Traps and hammers, meh. Hello there. Here's my thing. Uh, do I want to finish this POI? Honestly... Is there like one more room or what? Ah, there's like another couple of rooms. I'm not bothering with this. XP is not going to be that worthwhile. Let's go get the quest done. I will take the crafting skill magazine. Historic office suites. Office suites, eh? Hmm. Huh. cabinets. Tools. Handy land. And guns. Eh. Still don't think it's going to be one that's worth double looting. So let's just start it and go. But we may learn from the experience that it is worth double looting. There's a skill point though. Uh, let's just take more Grease Monkey. Just increase the chances. Bro, that is a fucking feral. Holy shit. Ow. He just didn't give a fuck. I'm gonna take a painkiller and some coffee. Wow. In a tier two. Why are you so mean sometimes, game? Oh, I see a bunch of bookcases in here. Paper. One more, who didn't seem to wake up. Vehicles and tech planet, that's more like it. Home cooking weekly and some water. Where's this guy? 
uh, better armor, some Night Stalker, and an Insulated Lining mod. Wear that. Another medical journal. One vehicles, two electrical traps, and Tech Junkie Volume 1. Robotic weapons do 10% more damage. Nice. Sitting on a rafter up here. That was weird. Let's head back to Rekt. I'll take more crafting skill magazines. Let's take the residence here. Two vehicle adventures. Nice. Tech Planet and Bow Hunters. Much better Rekt. Let's see, is this one of the ones that's worth double looting? I don't think it is. I think it's more when we get to like tier 3 houses that you start to get more bookshelves. Robotic shotgun shells. Okay. There's another level. It's more steel, nice. Food as well. Uh, let's see. Hold on to that skill point, we'll make it 6 intellect and get another rank of Grease Monkey just to maximize the vehicle magazines I'm getting. Uh, scrapping for fun and two tech planets. Robotic Sledge Quality 5 would be worth crafting one now if I want one. I'm kind of disappointed with the performance. 200 forged iron and 50 duct tape. Fucking keep it, I don't care. Another bookshelf. Vehicles and big hitters. We're up to 11 on the vehicles, that's good. Be at 20 in no time, we can make a mini bike and some gas. But the loot is in the next room, so I might as well finish this one off. we go. Well, weighted head, nice. That's going to be really helpful on the club, uh, on the baton, actually. Extra knockdown. And of course, my favourite, the electronics crate. Vehicles and another tech junkie. Stun repulsor mod. Not too helpful right now, but as soon as I get a stun baton, that is going to be big. So I'm up to 12 on vehicles. That's pretty good for day three. Congratulations. What do you want? I'll take more crafting skill magazine bundles. Pipe bombs aren't that of a big of a deal because as soon as you get a workbench and one demolitions book, you're good. You can make your own. Nothing this good out of that, but let's take the Jensen residence. This one's worth a brief double loot because I know this little room here has a free loot box for you. Tools digest. Uh, let me reset that then. And then we can just pop another one open. <laughs> Handy land. That eh, kind of sucks. Claw hammer level two though, so I can make claw hammers, which is huge for base buildings. I'm sure most of you are aware. Here's my satchel if I want to take it and run. A brawler, some arm armor I don't need, and some attachments. Uh, let's see. Wiring Tech Planet. I can make a Sun Baton Quality 1. I'll probably wait. Tech Junkie 4. Oh, nice. A beaker. That is actually really good. Those poppin' pills crates are definitely the best chance for them. Weapons bag. Uh, pipe baton that's a lot worse than mine. And some baton parts. Can't complain. Let's go back to Trader Rect again and see if he has any good tier 1 jobs. Ones that might maybe guarantee me a cement mixer or something like that. Vehicles and wiring. There's another skill point that can get me up to 6 intellect, and that'll unlock a few good things for me, actually. Let's head back to Rekt. I can probably take one more job. Making fantastic progress on completing tier 2, though. You need... I'll take more crafting magazine bundles. Right, what else do you have here, Rekt? Oh, a whole bunch of fetches. Probably the closest one. Camp car wall. Ugh. I really hate that POI, but we'll take it. Two vehicles, two rifles, and two armoured up. So we're up to 15 vehicles, good. Not bad for day three. Right, I'm going to take some stuff back to my base really quickly. And I'll make my way over to Trader Bob some point early in the morning. It does look like this is kind of just a wilderness trader, which is fine. I think what I'll do then is follow these main roads, because these main roads always lead somewhere. Uh, usually a town. So if I just go to another one, I should find a town anyway, which should actually lead me not only to a town, but another trader, because while not all traders spawn in towns, almost all towns have a trader. So if we just follow these roads, we should find another one. The more traders I know, the more chances for good stuff I have, and the more Forge Ahead books I can get for free, because there's two in each of them at least. That is the wasteland. I will be turning around. Okay, this road also just leads to the wasteland. That is fine. There is another road that comes out the north of Trader Bob's compound there, so we'll go and check there next. Alright, well this definitely isn't leading to the town I already live in, at least. That's good. Let's see what this town has to offer. Vehicles, nice. Tech Planet, Wood Splitting Mod. I'm going to mark this house because I know it's got a lot of books in it. 
Another tech planet, nice. Up to 25 of those, fantastic. Oh, a construction site, hello. Is there a cement mixer? There is. A crawler can die, I don't care. Forge ahead. This is the Roland residence, okay? Keep that in mind. The Roland residence has a guaranteed cement mixer. Which is a forge ahead. Spear hunter. Just sell that. Machine gunner. Cool. Tech junkie. Nice. Let's see. Two wiring, a vehicle, and a tech planet. We can make sun batons of quality too. I'll probably wait for at least quality three before I bother. Because you progress quite quickly through the batons crafting tree. And another tech planet. I can make stone tools quality five. I didn't even realize I was that far. Oh, I'm finished tech junkie. Nice. What do I get for doing that again? Oh, I can bulk craft all the turret ammo. That's nice. Another vehicle adventures up to 18. Medical journal. Another vehicle adventures. Uh, I noticed a construction site here. Is there an easy cement mixer in it? There is, but I would have to be smart. Uh, another vehicle adventures. We can make a mini bike now. That is a great progression. I really want those mailboxes, but there's like seven zombies guarding that one. Man mixer. There, we can make workbenches. Oh, an electronics store. Nice. Like a proper one as well. There's another electronics store down the road. Is that a cracker book? Oh, it's on now. <laughs> Fuck the traders. They can wait. We got. An electronics store, an electronics store, and a cracker book. It's like this place was made for me. Uh, let's see, that is there. Before I go into it, I want to find the trader in this town, because it could be wrecked, and that would mean I would get tier 2 jobs, and that tier 2 job could be that um, cracker book. And if it is that cracker book, I would like to double loot it, because it's the cracker book. Let's check this. Vehicle adventures. All those points in the loot table thingies are now paying off. Yeah, this town is really good. Right, maybe the trader's down the south side of the town, because I'm not finding him here. If I don't find a trader in the south half of this town, I will just go to Trader Bob. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There is this place. Ah, level 3 stun baton. Cool. Oh, it's slower than I remember, but that's fine. Okay. Not getting any charge yet, but... Oh. It does pretty good damage. Seems at the last second there that it remembered it was supposed to be charging. That seems to be a common bug with the stun baton. First, like, ten hits, it doesn't charge at all. Hail of books. And you land in Tech Planet, and I can make the same level of stun baton I have. Right, let's... Continue heading south, like I said, and see if we can find a trader. If not, we'll head over to Trader Bob. If this town has a trader, I have not found them. It could be considering Trader Bob as part of their town, but he's kind of far away for that, but that's fine. Let's go see Trader Bob, see what he has. All right, let's find his workbench and stuff. Five glue. There's a cement mixer. Forge ahead to 11 of those. Another forge ahead here. Twelve. No forge ahead that time, that's fine. We still got two. Let's see what he has. Great job, Trap. So, oh, he ha was that a fucking crucible? You have absolutely no chill, Bob. You know that? Okay, so possible crucible. I don't think it would be a good idea to buy it though. Because I'm not gonna be able to use it for a long time. Vehicle adventure is nice. Okay, so we're gonna be saving up Ooh, I will buy wood though. We are probably gonna wanna save up for Trader Bob here's uh Crucible. More than anything. He has a bicycle chassis, but who cares? Why do you have a crucible? So I'll go back to the cracker book, get a bunch more books. We'll go to Trader Wrecked and do some quests, try and get some money. See if we can get a day like seven crucible or something. It'll have to be day six. If I let it go to day seven, it'll leave his inventory, probably. Okay, and it's the good cracker book. It's the easier one with uh, more books. Pet planet, nice. Demolitions. Vehicle adventure. So I came in here with 23. Keep that in mind. We've got one already. Explosives, tech. Tech planet wiring. Or traps, sorry. Insulated lightning mod. I'll just sell that. Tech planet again. Another tech planet. Makes some batons quality 4. Medical journal. More demolitions. Why is demolitions so common? 
A nice forge ahead. Not really expecting many of those. They seem to be another kind of hard to get one. Forge ahead again. Okay, I'm just making me look stupid as usual. I should say things like that more often so the game immediately contradicts me. A second vehicle adventures. Two tech planets. Wiring. Tech planet fists. And let's try and open this. Nah, wait, we got a fight on our hands. Hang on. Robotic turret quality one. Those take a lot to make, don't they? But they are also very good, so. Robotic turret, I would need a minimum of 40 forged steel. Love that for me. Good thing I'm going to buy a crucible soon. Skill point. I'm going to put that straight into Dating Adventurer. No, let's go Grease Monkey. We're getting books right now. Let's do that, yeah. Dating Adventurer can wait a little bit longer. Okay. Third vehicle adventures. Those digest. Uh, demolitions again. See, I have no points in that, but it seems to be really common in these. Fourth vehicle adventures. Fifth vehicle adventures. See, when you get rid of minor 69 or out the loot table, things become amazing. And the, the way we got it out the loot table, by the way, I should clarify, is I just don't have any minor 69er. So it doesn't turn up anywhere nearly as much. In the other series I was doing, I always had minor 69er maxed out. So I always had this artificial chokehold on my loot table that made it so that everything was tools digest until I got rid of it. Here's another one of those. I think I'm up to six. And got a magazine. Let's try and deal with this dog. Technology. Uh, books. Another vehicle adventures, up to 30 of them. Nice. Oh, I dropped that one, but we got another vehicle adventures. A uh, new one, thread. Burning shaft, sell that. Sniper 3, and a pocket mod. Oh, nine vehicle magazines? Yeah. Not bad for one PY. This is the way. Give me a drink, please. God damn it. There is also nearby vehicle-related POIs and nearby um, electronics POIs. Electronics POIs are also a good source of vehicle magazines because, I don't know, they're just in the loot table. I don't know why, but they are. So let's clear this out. Wiring. Wiring. You know, I would have expected more tech planets out of these. Wiring. Wiring. Why never put points into advanced engineering if you want wiring, just find one of these POIs. Wiring again. Traps. Wiring again. Traps again. Wiring again. So yeah, you can get a bunch of those if you want them. Uh, tech planet. Vehicle adventures, a lower level stun baton, electrical traps. Another medical journal. I'm gonna have that done by day 10. That bloody magazine is far too common. <laughs> Another vehicle adventures, two traps, and that. 11 more vehicle adventures to go. I believe in me. Ooh, more power truck. I don't know if I've searched that. Oh, this this dehydration is killing me. Another vehicles ones. We need ten more and we can get a motorcycle. I don't even have the workbench to make it yet, but I will do it anyway. Uh, tech planets. Nothing else. Oh, a mega crush. Nice. No electronics trucks in the drive area? Guess not. Ooh, there's a vending machine. Oh, it doesn't work. Right, this place is usually guarded by a cult. Yep, that seems reasonable. <laughs> Robotic turret level 2, nice. Oh no, it's the same forge steel. I wonder if that's a bug. Now let's see the rest of this POI then. <laughs>
Oh, another pocket mod, nice. Hey there. Skill point, and that's going straight in dating adventure. Another 10 levels of trader stage, yes please. Wiring vehicles, we need 8 more of those. Another vehicles and wiring. Oh, didn't read that one. Uh, two tech planets and electrical traps. Another vehicle adventures, handy land, and another wheel. Need six more. Another vehicle magazine. Oh. Hmm, I wonder if before we go and see, uh, what's his name? Bob. We should loot this place for his books. This needs a repair real quick. Two bookcases, come on. Vehicle Adventures, another insulated lining mod. Schematic. And wiring. I was one of the people who said the stun baton was good in Alpha 20. I liked the stun baton. But they have made it incredibly strong. And it was already decent if you knew what you were doing. But now it's honestly brainless. Hi, Baker. Uh, let's see. Tools, handy land. That sucks. Come on, crack a book container. Give me another one. Vehicles, art mining, and tools. Okay. How many more vehicle books do I need? Three more. This is overpowered. And the skill book manipulation being far too effective, intellect is the way to go. Doesn't even matter. The only problem is if you tried to do this on Insane Nightmare, you would have to endure the first couple of days with the pipe baton. And that is rough. Oh shit, stamina. This place has books, and I know it does. At least in the first couple of rooms here. Vehicle Adventures. You know what, while I'm in here, this place also has a couple of garment bags, which are useful. Might get nerdy glasses from them. And there's a bookshelf in here anyway. Me do I already have. Okay, and... Um, no nerdy glasses, but we got another vehicle mag, I think, right? Right, the house across the street has a couple of books in it as well. If we can find two more vehicle magazines, that would be huge. Ah, bookcases. Vehicles, a couple of other things. And shotguns, come on, one more, hey! Uh, oh. I was hoping for nerdy glasses. Oh, this place is filled with bookcases, I left the other one way too early. There we go, we can make a motorcycle. Right, next thing I need to do is, honestly, going to be getting Forge Ahead more commonly so I can get a chemistry station to actually make gas for my stuff. Urban Combat, the good one. Oh yeah, this is good. This is going to be a long cycle home, isn't it? That is insanity. I, I had a theory about how powerful an intellect build could be if you knew where to go for the right books and you knew how to manipulate the skill points and the loot tables like that, but I wasn't expecting like day five motorcycle. I was not expecting it to be that effective. All right, here we are. Let me grab all the stuff out of that. So I need a workbench first and foremost, uh, which needs 25 forged steel. Can I just make that? I can, cool. I also have seven there. I've got 23 forged steel already. I need five duct tape. There's five cloth. I need a hundred nails. If I cancel some of that and go for 44 nails and then the rest forged iron, that'll be enough. Cool. Right, so the workbench is good. I need to make a little platform to sit it on. I mean, this is perfectly sane. I don't know what you're talking about. There we go. Uh, so the workbench is handled. What about the actual motorcycle? So I'll need 
Oh, I'll need an engine and a battery, so those are going to require a bit of scrapping on my part. Six electrical parts. Probably sold all my electrical parts. Nope, I'm good. Uh, headlights, steel. Oh, of course, I can use less steel because I have Grease Monkey rank 3, so I only need, what, 30 steel? Oh, that's much easier. I can do that very quickly. I'll also need 10 duct tape. I'll need 20 duct tape. Ooh. That's a lot of duct tape. Let me see. Got the water. I don't think I have the bones. When the hell are bones ever the limitation? There's 10 more. I need three more duct tape, which would require, uh, what, like, 20 more bones or something like that? There's a bunch of dead bodies around here. I can get that. Ignoring that, though, we'd also need... I have the perfect amount of mechanical parts, just... Oh, 10 leather? I got 10 leather. Right. Well, this forge does its thing. Also, do I have more? Yeah, I have more scrap iron. Put that in there. Well, the forge does its thing. I'm going to go look for enough bones to make three more glue. Just one deer would give me what I need. There's a dead rabbit made of a few bones. Is that enough? It is enough. I have enough bones now. Here's my forged iron. Let's craft up the workbench. Oh, six minutes. That's annoying. Uh, right. So, for the rest of the motorcycle, what do we need here? Oh yeah, the duct tape. Let's craft that up. Make 17 duct tape. Ah, that'll have to wait until after the other thing, of course. That's fine. Um, seven forged steel, an engine, and a lead car battery. I have wheels in here, though. That's fine. It's a good thing I have to go and get a lead car battery and an engine anyway, because I'm going to have to wrench to get my hands on some actual um, gas. Let's cook up this water. Uh, can I make coffee yet? Is that a thing I can do? I can. Right, let me also add in coffee to this cure. Need some more time. Let's take some beer for stamina regen and yeah, let's head out and scrap cars for the next five minutes because I need gas, I need an engine, I need a battery and I need time for the workbench to craft. There's a battery, level 5, it doesn't matter what quality it is. Oh, my wrench broke. Uh, I've got 40 seconds before the workbench is crafted. I can't really repair the wrench until that happens, can I? I'll just sit here and wait. Let's go home, we can place the workbench, we can queue up one of the components, and we can go out and get the engine and the steel I need. Right, let's place the workbench on this weird cursed little thing. And then queue up the motorcycle handlebars. And then the chassis would need more forged steel. Repair kits, where are you? There they are. Repair that. Uh, do I have anything drinkable? Let's drink that coffee. And let's go out and hunt down the last seven forged steel I need. And the engine. There we go, engine. Right, seven forged steel. Need two more forged steel. One more. There we go. We can make the motorcycle chassis. Here we go. Queue up the chassis. Come back in a bit when that is done. How long is it going to take? Two and a half minutes. Let's go sell some things to trade erect in the meantime. There's some awesome sauce. There's some sugar butts. Here's some hackers. Those will be very helpful. So that should secure a discount on the crucible from Trader Bob. I need to go grab some food. Actually, I think I don't have any left, so I think I need to go and buy some food. See, do I have any meat? I have a little bit. Can I make bacon and eggs yet? I can. Let me queue up some of that then. Let's get some bacon and eggs and a couple of grilled meat. There we go, and we can queue up the motorcycle. So while we wait for that to craft, I should go out and do another job for Trader Wrecked, because I still want to get a bunch of dukes to buy the crucible from Trader Bob, which is going to require like 12,000 probably after all the discounts. Isn't that where I live? That is the POI in which I live. I will not be taking that job. Uh, let's take the fetch 450 like meters away. So my major concern now, aside from the short term build a base and survive the horde, is getting a chemistry station. Without a chemistry station, I can't sustain the motorcycle very easily. So I need to find myself 36 uh, Forge Ahead books, which is going to be hard to do off of just trader compounds. So I'm going to have to really power level that uh, following the horde, I think. Let's start this and try and get it over with quickly. You are going to watch my back there because I know something bad comes from there. <laughs> Oh, 
Good job, turret. Uh, burning shaft. Can you even put that on this? No, you can't. I didn't think so. I'll put it on my axe, though. Switch out the headgear. Grab this. Whining and spears. Right, let's head back to wrecked in my motorcycle. I really am tempted to put my next point into salvage operations, but I think the one thing convincing me not to is just how it'll affect the loot tables. It'll make getting forge ahead harder. So it would be a short-term gain, but a long-term downside. Here's my motorcycle on day five. Not bad for Alpha 21, where it's kind of a lot harder to do it. And some food and drinks. Thank goodness for that. More crafting magazines, sure. Uh, let's take that clear 500 meters away. The quests have changed because I have left the game since the last time we were here. Two more vehicle adventures. We've got a skill point. Uh, you know what, let's go for more lockpicking to increase the chances of Forge Ahead books again. And let's go do that job. Let's try and get tier 2 done and then I can spend the rest of the day, I guess, trying to gather up gas for the motorcycle here. It has some. It has 13%. I'm going to definitely need to bring the bicycle with me because that is going to run out of fuel. Let's head out. I'm going to not use the shift. It's still faster than a bicycle, even without shifting. I am honestly going to double loot their truck because I need. I just need gas more than anything. If I can gain gas on every job, then eventually I will end up with a full tank. Okay, you get like 100 gas from each truck, I think. So let me... Restart that. Loot the truck again. And get another 100 gas out of it. Okay, we got 225 gas there. Refuel this. We're up to 19%. We came with, you know, 13%, so that's good. Another vehicle adventures. And look at the inventory space on this, by the way. Isn't that just amazing going from the bicycle to that? Right, let's head inside. Ow. Ooh, college jacket. I can run faster. Nice. Another vehicle adventures. Hey, a forge ahead. Nice. Just put five more to go. It's just a tiny amount. Nothing all that interesting out there, but let's check the electronics crate. Check planet and two of the wiring things. Medical journal. Oh, a meat stew. Nice. I'll save that for when I'm more thirsty and damaged and hungry. You break it, you buy it. I will take those pipe bombs. The rest of those I am not touching. Let's do the clear that zombies a little bit away. Oh, it's the one up the hill. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's just not worth it. Okay, so it doesn't seem like I'm getting the money in time for today anyway, but I can still spend the rest of the day doing some valuable stuff. Namely, hunting down the more Forge Ahead books. I would bet, to be honest, that the best way to do that is just drive around the nearby area, looking in houses and checking the bookcases. It might also be worth checking out this working stiff tools here. Come on, let's fight. Forge ahead, nice. Oh, an upgraded stone axe. I know I can make level 5s, so I'm just not bothering right now. Another forge ahead, nice. So these working stiff tool crates are worth going after if I want to get forge ahead books. I think the next thing I should do is save up for 7 intellect and get another rank of lockpicking and daring adventurer. So I will hold off on that. Let me see, where does this fire thing get turned off? Is it this one? Onto the roof. There is a vulture outside. Let's pop open these crates. Handy land. There is a couple more containers in here, I think. Ah, forge ahead from these. I didn't know you could get that. Good to know. 19 out of 50 for the chemistry station. 
Tech planet and a shotgun I don't care about. Forge ahead again. Okay, we definitely want to try and find more of these working stiff tool crates then. Put some more gas in here. 21%, that's a good sign. Let's have a drive around and look for more working stiff tools crates and those kinds of POIs, you know, construction POIs of various kinds. Oh, you know, the machining place probably has a few working stiff tools crates and I've already half cleared it. Let's do that. Tech planet, nice. Uh, custom fit, hi there. Customize fittings, I can't wear right now, but once I get heavier armor, I can do that. Scrapping and some repair kits. Vehicles, off-road headlights, some gas and a wheel. 24%, nice. Let's check this place. Forge ahead, nice. They come in construction crates as well, that's good to know. Oh, now it's not the time to get hungry. Oh, I left my meat stew in the other area. Ow. Run away. Oh, I'll need a painkiller, hang on. Good as new. Let me repair that piece of armor, whatever it is. Great heist. Hmm. Here's my meat stew. There we go. Problem solved. <laughs> Tier 3, eh? I can maybe take that on. Is it going to be worth it though? Are you actually going to give me tool crates this time? We shall see. You know, I haven't even made a stun repulsor yet. That should be on the top of my list. Five forged steel, I can get that. Forge ahead, nice. At least we've got something. There's another two skill points. Let's dump that into intellect seven. Hey, medical cabinet. Bunch of stuff. Oh, barrel, hi there. Well, just 1v1 to feral on insane difficulty on day 5 with a melee weapon. Something's perfectly right about this stun baton, let me tell you. Oh, an ergonomic grip. Vehicles again. I know there are like 17 of those I'll be able to make a 4x4. Four four. Uh, and that'll happen in like two days, but I'm not going to have the materials to make a 4x4 four four by then. Still cool to have it unlocked though, so I think that's all I'm really going to get done today. I do want to get five more forged steel really quickly though. There we go, five forged steel. Let's drive home. Damn it, I still need more glue we got more water lying around let's see i'm not even gonna have enough water to do this right well i think the better baton and the stun repulsor mod will just have to be saved for the next episode because i just don't have any materials right now but we got a motorcycle we got a stun baton and i'm very close to being able to get a crucible and even if i can't buy the crucible i am only like 50 books away and I'm finding several of them every day, so we'll be there eventually. The big one's the chemistry station, though, so that I can actually make gas and use my motorcycle a lot more freely. But wrenching is working so far. In the next episode, we'll build a base and we'll do the horde, and then I can really just get down to power leveling and testing out this intellect build. So far, it has worked quite well, though. I got the motorcycle on the day 20 of the last series, I think, and... 
here I am day five. So the intellect build does work if you do it like I have done. And I'm interested to see what daring adventurer is going to unlock for me at various points. Hello and welcome back to the series I don't have a name for yet because I still haven't seen the comments for the first one. Today we are going to be building a base that works with my stun baton and my turret. I think the base design I'm going to go for is going to be basically what I used in the last series for my starting horde base, but I'm going to improve upon it in a few key ways that I think are going to help it perform even better. But if you want to build a base, you need materials, and I don't have many. I have 950 cobblestone, a few hundred stone, a few clay, barely any wood. I mean, a really good bet for getting these is, of course, going to be the traders. Doing tier 1 jobs for them has a decent chance of giving you wooden cobblestone. I don't want the XP from upgrading. If you want those, you should do it. I would actually much rather just place the blocks and be done with it for this, because it's quicker and I can spend more time doing other things getting XP. It's perfectly valid if you like to upgrade. I like to upgrade on bigger bases with like concrete and steel. I think I'm just going to start off with cobblestone on this one and use that XP later. Now I'll need more cobblestone than that of course, more than just a few blocks. So I'm going to go out and gather up materials. Obviously I have no minor 69er. I don't think I have any rockbusters, do I? I have three. That's something. Now I can make slightly better tools because I have a load of books, so let me do that real quick. Let's take these mods off of there, and I've got a shovel as well. I am going to dig up... How much do I think I'll... I think I'll need an additional 2,000 cobblestone at most. I'm going to mine up 2,000 stone and 2,000 clay during the night, hopefully. Assuming I can do it that quickly without any minor 69er, we shall see. Oh, I better take those rockbusters. And then I'll turn that all into cobblestone. Alright, it is morning. I managed to mine up the 2000 stone easy and I've been converting that over to cobblestone as I gather clay. Obviously, gathering clay is a lot harder. What happened to the skybox? The fogs went a bit weird. That's odd. So yeah, a wandering horde came through in last night and I didn't want to fight them because they're nightmare speed. But now it's daytime, they're just run, so I'm just going to fight them. Ow. Right, so now that I have access to this field again, and as such can get clay much faster, I'm going to dig up the other 900 odd clay that I need, and then we can queue that up in the workbench and in my pockets to be blocks. I mean, go and do something else while we wait for those blocks to craft so we can build our base. There we go, that's all of my stone matched to some clay. I've already crafted a thousand more cobblestone in my pockets because I did it gradually while I was gathering the rest of it. And this is done crafting a bunch more blocks. Let's put these in here. Uh, let's see, what was that I wanted to make as well? A baton. Pen duct tape. 15. Okay, I need 15 duct tape then. Cool. So while we wait for those blocks to craft so I can build the base, let's check out the trader. See if he has anything that could be of use to me. Some money, that would help. <laughs> oh, he has a compound bow. That would be kind of big, but my sun baton honestly handles most of the issues itself. Ooh, that's a lot of duct tape, but it's also a lot of money, but it's worth it. Save me a lot of time. Right, well, before I get started on this base speed, I do want to tackle that baton and the stun repulsor, so let's see what I need here. The stun baton's going to need baton parts, electrical parts, and I think I have most of the other parts up in my silo here. Baton parts, leather. I need 11 forged iron. I can do that. Here we go. And then for the stun repulsor, I have everything I need except the mechanical parts. I'll craft that up here, and I'll queue up even more cobblestone blocks in this. I can actually do those in my inventory, might as well. In fact, yeah, I'll take that out right now and add more of those. Now I just need forged iron. Oh, you can smelt cobblestone? I just did that as a little... Ah, good to know. It gives you five stone, so it's not really worth it. But you can do it. Right, there's 250 plus another 50 blocks cobblestone. So I should be good on cobblestone. Well, blocks. I may actually need a little bit more to do any repairs if I want to, but that's fine. 25 forged iron, let's make a stun baton. So, in the meantime, I need a base. Where do I want to build it? Honestly, just out here should be fine. Doesn't have to be far away. It's just going to be a temporary early game horde base. 
And so the idea of this base is going to take concepts from the last base I did, the big one, the prototype version of that that I used in the early stages of Insane Nightmare, and my classic design of base that I use in a lot of series, but I used it in the Alpha 21 Survival Guide. This is like the ultimate combination of those three ideas, and I'm going to try and do it as cheaply as possible. So I'm going to actually need some wooden frames just for a little bit of extra help here because this is definitely a design that requires some scaffolding. We want to dig out a block first. As always I like to put mine into, into the terrain to make it slightly more secure. We're going to start with one block. Grab some of these frames and we're going to place a ladder. I don't have parkour this time so I'm right there with you guys making this in the weird way. So one, two, three. Place the first ladder. Four. We're going to make this 12 blocks above the ground. If you're new to my videos and you don't know why, basically a zombie won't go into destroy area mode if they are more than 11 blocks away from the player. I use that mechanic by making my horde bases very weak but tall so that the zombies fall outside of that radius and then they just continue running to the rest of your base. It does have a flaw that I will point out later, but it's a very minor flaw for what is a very, very cheap and effective base design. You just have to be careful careful, which isn't too much to ask I would hope. So we're at 4 here, one, two, three, four. we want another 8 blocks on top of that to get up to uh, 12, and I'm going to put a ladder on each of these as I go. Making sure you keep your ladder, you know, at least 2 blocks away from the ground there. 12, and ladder, and we're going to build 3 blocks over up here. This is going to be the interior of the room you stand in. This is a different design from what we used last time. So there's one, two, three, yep that's fine, and we want to go down. Now if you're worried about zombies maybe trying to climb your ladder, you can take one away and build yourself just a little bit of a weak block type situation here, and then make yourself jump onto the ladder. The zombies do not jump onto ladders, they can walk into them, they can pile up on top of each other and get to them, but there should be no reason the zombies pile up here unless something breaks at the front. If something breaks at the front, Piling up the ladder is honestly an advantage to you, because if they're climbing the ladder, they're not breaking the pillar. So, you know, it's actually a bit of a helpful backup plan in that case. Right, so we want to come over three blocks down here as well. Dig out a block, and there we go. Then come up 12 here as well. Well, 13 if you include the one in the ground. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Or is it 14 with including the one on the ground. Did I make this one block too high? It honestly doesn't matter, as long as it's more than 11, you're good. Uh, I think I might have made this 14 blocks tall, which, yeah, sounds like me. But that that's perfectly fine, it doesn't hurt the base at all, it doesn't do much different. Oh, that tree's gonna take forever to get down, isn't it? What we actually want to do here, since we are operating in a non-parkour world, I suppose you could say, is we want to come over 13 blocks here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Dig a block. And then 1. This is going to be the same height as those other ones, whatever height you make that. 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm inside of a tree. Right, I'm just going to take out all these temporary blocks. They are just that temporary. They only cost you two wood, so it's really not a loss if you lose some. Though we have our weird thing here. I'm going to take this tree down. It's in the way. It's annoying me. It looks like I might have made that one too tall this time. Oh, it's fine. I can break it with my stone axe. As long as it's more than 11 blocks. Ideally, you want 12. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with temporary blocks again. Start building a little bit of a bridge and just make your way over there. Now, keep an eye on your stability. You won't be able to do this forever. If I was to place one more here, this would all collapse and I would probably die from the fall. What we want to do now is just use that to place these blocks a little bit easier. Now the reason you would use temporary blocks for that, even though it doesn't seem like you need to, is if you want to use something thinner than these one by one blocks, like a pole, or a railing, or one of those like 0 0.25 pillars, you don't actually need to do it for these thicker blocks, but I did it out of sort of a weird reflex from using poles in the last series. But this one is just going to use a wider thing, 
Now you'll notice that we're starting to get yellow and that is because you can actually only go 13 blocks from one of these pillars to the other one. That's why they're 13 apart. So you should be able to connect it just fine. I'm going to take this one wrong block out. There we go. So you have your bridge now. One thing you'll want to do is figure out where the very front pillar is and just place yourself a block to keep note of it because that's where your fighting position is going to be. That's just a marker, if you will. So I'm going to nerd pole up and take out those temporary blocks. They don't hurt the base at all. It just annoys me to look at it. And I use them as a bit of a reflex for something I don't actually do this time. So now we need our ramp or staircase or however you want the zombies to get up. Now this is a bit of a freedom for the audience here. If you want to make this as intricate as you want and even have it so that it goes back and forth and layers the zombies running so that they take ages to reach this point, then you can do that. The reason you want them to take ages to reach that point there is because around about here, uh, if you're standing in that position over there, the zombies will be put back into the destroy area radius and some of them will just decide to start breaking blocks. It's only like 1 in 10 of them and it's only the ones that have fallen and are going back up the ladder. So it is genuinely pretty rare, but it does do damage and it is a concern. Not enough for me to worry about, but if you want to alleviate it, just making this bridge back and forth like a snake and then having your staircase. As long as the snake ends there, and by the time they reach that, it's been about 20 seconds since they hit the ground, you should be able to completely alleviate the issues of the zombies breaking blocks. But I don't care. It's not that big of a deal. Like, they rarely do that much damage anyway. So for this first horde, I'm just going to make a ramp. And that'll work. Um, now, how do I want to do the ramp? That's the real question. I think I want to do like six blocks out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do myself a pillar there. Pillar here then. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. And then if I actually put the ramp piece on it, you know, the ramp piece would be there. So you would want six. Yeah, you want six. Okay, let me break this. Six above the ground, that is. And then to emulate it, I will just fill it in like this. There we go, we get the idea right. Let me actually use this a little bit, try and catch myself. Go. Cool. And then just do this out until the final point, which is there. So that's where the ramps are going to be. They're not going to be made out of those materials, but it does mean that we do want one, two, three, four, five, six cubes above the ground with a six gap here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Followed by one, two, three, four, five, six here again. Uh, take out that one and dig out this. So five blocks of a gap between these pillars, quote unquote pillars. So let me just take these out. So six, five. Then we want to dig out like a three by three around this and fill in with blocks where you can. I'm just doing this gradually here because I keep running out of stamina without minor 69er. There we go. Fill that one in and take out these three. One, two, three. So this goes there. What we can do is start building the ramp, and if I did place that wrong, then we'll see. So you can split your ramps. I showed this in the last series, but I'll do it again. Split your stacks here, and then have one of them be in the this rotation here. And then you can switch straight back to the other one, and you can really quickly do this. Yep, I did that in the wrong place, it looks like. Or did I? Hang on. You want that one? So then this one should be a ramp, not a block. It's not significant. You can have it be a block if you misplace it as well. I have just been making mistakes all day today, haven't I? And I'm paying for it by breaking it with all of this, but it's still a lot faster than upgrading. Then do the same here. Oh, there we go. Do a little bit here. Uh, since you're doing it this size, you don't actually need this part here, so you can cut that out if you'd like doesn't hurt the base, it's just, you know, you'll save a few blocks and materials. Uh, and then you should probably replace it in here, but I genuinely can't be bothered. Uh, it's not that important. So these are going to be important for helping the zombies get up here. Um, if you want to move that 3x3 three three back and put it under this, and then put the L here, you could do that. Should I do that? Okay, this isn't necessary, but for the benefits of my aesthetics, I'm going to do it. And then put two cubes there. There, that... That's aesthetically nice to my brain, and there is a gap of three blocks between these. That's what you want to do. Um, but the other ramp design would have worked. This is just cleaner, and it won't bother me as much. Don't worry about that. Uh, they were temporary anyway. So, 
we'll do the same system here where I have the split stacks and I copy one of the orientations. And we just want to continue the ramp up to the top of the bridge there. Place these. Oh yeah, I don't have parkour. I shouldn't have been doing that. Not to worry. We shall use building blocks. And I will just harm myself a little bit while I do this. I have a cast, I think, back at my base, so it's not a big deal. But I'm almost done here, so I'm just going to finish this up. Don't try that one at home. I guess we can take these building blocks off and meet them in the middle, and hopefully it's the right measurements or I'm absolutely fucked. Here we go. We will have to go on the underside, though. Ow. And fill in that one block. Right. Let me clean up my mess. Now, can you jump into the space the way I've designed it with a broken leg? You can. That's pretty good to me. So, the next thing we want to do, copy this cube and just fill out the floor. You need some amount of walls here. Careful on this, especially with your broken leg already. Um, now, you have to be careful here because you do only have two pillars holding you up. So, be deliberate with your block placement. We want a doorway here with two blocks above the doorway. Reason being, zombies can jump over if it is one block, so you want it to be more than one. I'm going to place these plates here. This is going to discourage the zombies from actually attacking the, those parts of the wall. You want them to attack the part you're going to put in here. Um, because I have a robotic turret, you know what I'm going to do? To help alleviate the issues I'm having with the zombies trying to hit stuff here, I'm just going to place... A robotic turret at the top. Try and place it in a useful position. Oh, you know what? I need to have the robotic turret on me for combat. Basically, have it here and it should punch a few off the stairs. That'll help. So, the next thing we want is, of course, scaffolding ladders. You can use a variety of fighting position designs here. There's plenty of good ones. We're just using scaffolding ladders. We're doing a double one just to be sure. And then what we want to do is do two high walls. You could even incorporate a little bit of a mini killing corridor here with trapdoors, because you do have a few blocks of space. I have those blocks of space there more for the sake of not being completely claustrophobically held in there. But you can use that as a killing corridor thing if you would like, and then we need a door. The door is to protect you from anything that might be over there trying to spit at you or jump at you. The door on the outside, I think. Yep, cool. There we go. This base works. If there's a vulture, just punch it in the mouth. Probably want to shoot it, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not sure if vultures can hit you where they are here. Hmm, we'll have to see, but all in all, just look up and shoot at them, right? If this is too close, just add in more blocks above it. Like, make this three tall and add in another layer of ladder. Uh, so this base is done. That's it. It took, what, half the blocks I had? So like 120 blocks? That's pretty good. I did break my leg doing it, but these are the hazards that come with the job. Uh, and it took, you know, third of an in-game day, and that'll work perfectly fine. Not very pretty, though, is it? Eh. Let me run back to my base and see if I've got a cast. I know I can roid myself to the gills and just not have to worry about it, and maybe buy a health bar. So this isn't an issue. I mean, I even have a motorcycle from day five. If you want to know how I did that, you'll have to watch the last episode. Um, plaster cast. That'll take me down to what... 25 minutes, let me stack up the steroids. That'll cost me 100 water, so I'll need to drink 5 of my waters, basically. These are the costs of having broken legs. Right, with that out of the way, base done. With 100 blocks left over for other chaotic things I want to do. Look, good as new, I can jump in everything, I can not take damage. Now, if I sprint, I will still slow the timer down, but not significantly. This'll do perfectly. A fetch. 300 meters away. Hop on my motorcycle and do that then. Oh, it's an electronics POI, is it? You know, I'm very tempted to double loot it. Ah, you know what? I'd rather get the tier 2. I will loot this truck again, no? Um, wiring, tech, and deck junkie. Where's this zombie? Skill point, let me go ahead and put that into lock picking 3 to get more forger heads. Seriously? Ow. Here's a satchel. Is this not where the loot is? I guess not. 
Oh, here's the loot. Any zombies in here? Oh, yeah, a few. Uh, urban combat again. Why, why am I getting so many urban combats this time around? And a triple armor pocket mod, of course, which is also good. I am steroided to, to fuck right now, so it doesn't matter right now, but I won't be forever. A replacement cast, at least. But let's head back to Trader Wrecked and get my tier 2 complete reward, and hopefully. I don't want any of this, I don't think. <laughs> I'll take the helmet light mod. 50 forged iron mini bike parts bundle. Hmm. Hmm. No. Uh, let me go ahead and take 50 forged iron then, I guess. That's a really terrible reward. What else do you have, though? Trader Hugh to the north? Oh, see, he was there. Oh my god. You suck. Do you unlock anything new there? Alright, well, we know where Hugh is at least now. I'm gonna buy that acid for 420. Might need it to build something later. Right, so the traders are gonna reset tomorrow. No chance I'm getting Trader Bob's Crucible. Right, so there's no time like the present when it comes to doing any kind of job to progress your traders. So I'm just gonna take a tier 2. And hand that back into Trader Wreck tomorrow. Let's see. Clear. I've got just trucking versus... I don't like you. Yeah, I'll take the house. There's more likely to be books there. We'll go do that. And I'll try and wrench a bunch of cars while I'm at it. Because that is what I need for my motorcycle. Okay, let's start this POI. I'll focus on killing everything in it first. Because obviously, nightmare speed would be harder to deal with. Here's the satchel. That was incredibly easy. Let's get the loot. Let's see, lucky looter, some custom fittings, a shotgun, some food. Okay. Metal chain mod. Not, not helpful. Right, let me go back and actually like loot this house because I was just trying to rush it to get it done before night came. Although I don't think them being nightmare speed would have helped them all that much. Honestly, I think I didn't really miss anything. There's not that much in this house. I'm gonna wrench their car, though. There we go. Does this place have a mailbox, I wonder? Because that's just a free book, if so. Ah, hey there. Forge hit. Nice. So, while the night pass... It's so weird without the fog, isn't it? While the night passes, I'm going to go out. I'm going to loot any mailboxes I find and scrap any cars I find, including these. To get gas, I have some hackers to get 20% more salvage harvest. And in the morning, I should have a few more books and a lot more gas. So, I'm going to get to that. Relogging has not solved the sky issue. That is very odd. Oh well, I'm going to wait outside Trader Hugh for him to open. I guess this is just how the sky looks now. Oh hey, there's a gas station over here. This might have some good things in the uh, loot room. Vehicle adventures, cool. Not all that helpful to me, because I really don't need a 4x4 right now. I can barely keep my motorcycle running. What skill point? Uh, let's go for Dating Adventurer, because that's going to get me 10 more trader levels, which is the equivalent of me having 30 plus levels total, so I would have the trader gear of a level 47 character. Not bad. Nothing much in there. Extra healing is always nice though. We got a crack a book container though. I'm betting we're gonna get one forge ahead, surely. Three points in lock picking. Oh. Yep, vehicle adventures has overtaken the loot table. I could forget an elixir out of it, but I'm just gonna bear with it. Because I know I will want the other vehicles eventually, and I will regret having used that. Let's go talk to Hugh. At least he will have at least two forge ahead books. Two glue. Forge has a forge ahead for me though. We've unlocked anvils. Workbench has nothing. Cement mixer has a forge ahead. Nice. Um, I'll take some cobblestone rocks because it is extremely cheap. Well, do you have any good PYs? I got better things to do. To do Most grocery. We're gonna double loot that. I want two more forge ahead books guaranteed. Gimme. And if I'm lucky, he'll give me a crafting magazine bundle as a reward, and I'll get a couple of forge heads out of that as well. Right. Let's get into that last room where the actual useful thing is. Here we go. Let's reset the POI. Forge ahead, up to 28 on those. Right, let's head back to Trader Hugh. See if he has any other really just good POIs for books. 
Well, that all sucks. More power shack? Yeah, that's probably a good idea for my build. <laughs> you know, if I'm looking for Forge Ahead books, that tier 2 working Sift Hills would probably be a good place after this. Have a look in here then. Right, so. After clearing this room, got myself a couple more of those and a couple more of those. Let's see, vehicles, traps, and a tech junkie, I already know. Tech planet, wiring, and a battery, I really don't need. There's also one in here. Tech planet, and a baton that I can scrap for parts. Okay, let's fight these guys. Level 6 pipe baton, think I'm good. Another stun baton and three wiring 101s. I don't even have points in that. What? Yeah, that's boosted with advanced engineering. I don't have any points in that. How weird. Anyway, let's head over to that working SIF tools over there and see if I can hunt down a few easy working SIF tools crates. Bound to get at least a couple of forger heads from in here. Oh, that's right, there's some bookshelves in the back as well here. Let's take some fights. Ow. Infected, really? Give me a second. I have herbal antibiotics back at my base, so I can let that just get worse for a while. Ah, robotic parts. Here's one working stiff tools, great. Forge ahead. Nice, we're up to 29. Vehicles, oh, didn't read it there, there we go. That. Okay, let's get onto the roof. Bring on the vulture first, I know he's up here. Right, that should be everybody, let's get to the loot. Forge ahead, perfect, we can make cement mixers. Don't really have the mining ability to make use of that, but it's good to have another forge ahead. Yeah, with three ranks in lockpicking, most of these have forge heads in them. There's another one. Not this one, though. Although we got an actual lockpick. <laughs> and another one here. Ah, just wooden tools. And Great Heist, Volume 7. Useless in single player. And a magazine extender. I already have a drum mag on my pipe machine gun, so I'll just hold on to that. Any... No, that's it. Let's go see Trader Hugh hand in that job, see if he has anything else worth doing. If not, we'll head back to Wrecked and get myself a cure for this infection. Where is that way? I'll take the duct tape. Blue Birdie. That's just a restaurant, I think. I got a job for Hybrid you. energy substation, but it's ages away. In the deracinated dumb cell. You know, it does have a lot of books in it. Let's take it. Let's see, I've got a skill point there. Um, That's probably going to go into Electrocutioner. So I can, you know, do more damage, as if I need that. Let's go see this job and then we'll see what we can do. Here we go, an antibiotic. Right, so let's talk to Wrecked while I'm here. I have a new stuff to sell as well. Awesome. I will Good. take an upgraded wrench. Desperately needed a better wrench, honestly. Another bottle of acid, yep. Since I'm trying extra hard to get myself chemistry station relatively soon. I am going to want to make sure I have the acid for it. He has nothing else I really want though. Here's the fetch. I'll take that. 99% sure I've already looted this so I'm just going to restart it now. Get on in there. I know there's a bunch of good book possibilities for it though so I will do it completely. Now between the spear buff and the stun baton buff, it really makes me think we need a slight fist buff now. Because they just don't do enough damage compared to them. Actual power creep, because the fun pimps do not do slight buffs. They buff things a hundred years into the future. Two more bookshelves. Handy land explosives. And Great Heist, the one that would have saved my leg earlier if I had had it. Come on, nerdy glasses. Damn it. Yeah, working stiff tools great though. Forge ahead, nice. 
I'm at the point where it's almost guaranteed to get one out of those. The real trouble is, you know, guaranteeing that I get one of those in a particular building. So I'm not going all the way back to Hue immediately. Let's go to the tier 3 fetch that Rex sent me on. Did I loot this truck again? No, this probably has a forge ahead for me as well. Hey, I was right. 34, let's go. I'll have a crucible in no time. It doesn't even matter that I missed that one opportunity. One thing's for certain, my hypothesis about the ridiculous progression power of an intellect build in Alpha 21, if you just handle your time right, was correct. I will give myself a big pat on the back for figuring that one out. Went from a day 20 motorcycle to a day 5 motorcycle, and I'm almost halfway through the workstations thing. Oh, this place is worth a double loot, I think, because it may have a bunch of bookshelves in it. I'm not sure, though. Ah, uh, what's the harm? He doesn't have any other good jobs today anyway, and I have time to kill. Holy shit! I thought the baseball bat had weird physics. Forge ahead, nice. 35 out of 75. 15 more for the chemistry station, though. All safe. Didn't bring my lockpicks, not minor 69 up. Another forge ahead. Ow. Hey, bookshelves. Scrapping wiring tech planet. Oh, bookshelves. Tech. Armor mod I already knew. Attracting stock mod will be useful later. Hello. Oh, I see a lot of bookshelves over there. Nothing good. Nothing good. Unlucky. Well, that sounds like a lot of zombies. It was. Very astute observation. Well, that was easy. Tech Planet Shotgun Weekly. This is a tier 3, I forgot. Ooh, level 5 pipe machine gun, yes please. That thing can take a few mods as well. And I'm not sitting here bashing open the tier 3 loot, I don't care. I should really check the sinks for acid though before I leave. I haven't been doing that. And I need two more acid, so it would probably pay off. Vehicles, tools, wheel. Savage Country Box. Right, let me reset this POI then. Surely there's a door out here somewhere. Oh, meds. Where is the door? Ah, there it is. Right, and let's reset it. Hopefully we can get it done before the uh, the horde. Ah, that's probably another forge ahead then. Nice. 37. Looks. Forge ahead and vehicles. Wiring. Two more bookshelves. Forge ahead, tactical warfare, and vehicle adventures. Forge ahead, vehicle adventures, and tech planet. That is some good luck right there. Forge ahead and tactical warfare. We need nine more and we can make a chemistry station. I just need one acid in nine of those books. Level 19. Uh, I don't even know what I want now. I'll just save my points. Forge ahead, sharp sticks. Tactical warfare. Falcon weekly. And rifles, interesting. Passing gas container. Vehicles, of course. I'm going to stop collecting wheels already. It has reached that point of the playthrough. I have enough wheels for the rest of the playthrough. Demolitions, treasure. Let's try my one lockpick here. I have three ranks of lockpicking, you would hope. You would hope. But here we are anyway. Yep. Books, vehicles, and home cooking. Right, let's get home. Well, back to Trader Wrecked first, actually. Mailbox. Oh. Take those crafting skill magazine bundles. Nothing amazing this time, but it was worth a shot. Tomorrow I'm definitely going to want to go and check out Trader Bob, see if he has any acid for any other good magazines as well. One thing I need to check for is Nerd Tats. I mean, I have the stun baton and the Nerd Tats just make it ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> three of them. 
oh, they're not going to know what hit them. What that basically does is it makes the shock have an even bigger area of effect. Right now, it seems that only the ragdoll has an area of effect. This makes the shock have an area of effect, and holy shit, it's good. Here's hoping the base works. I don't see why it wouldn't. It's just a modification of two other designs. Now, I don't have any points in robotics, so I don't actually think <laughs> that my sledge turret can do anything here. But let's... Let's have a look, because the range that it stays active at is dependent on your robotic skill, and I haven't put any points in mine yet. So, have I got a skill point, maybe? We can start doing that. I wouldn't mind finding more robotic parts and stuff, and more books to just get that out of the way. Okay, it's inactive. We can make a quick modification with the parts I have. So I'll just put this here as a... It means of fucking with the zombies, I guess, because it's not going to be all that effective. I mean, as long as it's in range, though, it'll be fine. And it'll now attack faster and do more damage as well, but damage isn't really the key here. What we want from it is just knockback. Oh, I didn't bring repair kits. If my baton breaks, I'm screwed. Here we go. Hope the base works right. I hear running. There they are. Why is the stun repulsor not working? Does it not work with nerd tats? That kind of sucks if so. Oh, yeah, I should take the beer. Ow, take a step back. Yeah, it looks like stun repulsor doesn't seem to work with nerd tats anymore. That sucks. Let me make sure to keep these blocks repaired. Look at that real quick. Curious fists. Oh, that was a very small wave. Here we go. Here come the rest of them. This is working like a charm so far, though. The, the robotic turret isn't doing a whole lot, but it's, you know, it's taking a few out of my face. I should mention, by the way, that this is 64 max spawns. But that setting is an override, not a guarantee. What that basically means is, if the game says, hey, there's 30 zombies allowed to be alive, and then the menu setting says, no, 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 only 8 are allowed to be alive, that will override it. The amount of zombies that are allowed to be alive in your horde are actually based off of your game stage up to a maximum of whatever you set the max spawns. So that doesn't mean there will always be 64 spawns. Just in case someone's like, hey, yeah, what happens if you do it on 64 spawns? The exact same thing. You need a higher game stage and we'll be testing that throughout the series. Also, the turret is like knocking out 20% of them or something. It might be more than 20% now that I'm seeing that. It might be like half of them aren't making it to me, which I actually like. Right, there's a skill point. I'll hold on to it until I get another one. And see shit. Now here's a really annoying thing. Because this is a full block they're standing on, and the scaffolding ladder is where it is precisely, I can't actually hit them. So I have to shoot them. They've got themselves into a perfectly annoying position, but the other zombies should actually bash them out of the way. There we go. Need to crouch to use this for a melee base, I think. I don't know how I feel about scaffolding ladders. Also, the nerd tats were definitely stopping the repulsor mod from working, so that's something to consider if you're going to be using a stun baton then, I guess. Might be actively better to just not use the nerd tats. This might be the easiest day 7 horde of my life. This is nightmare speed for the horde night, by the way. So this is insane nightmare, 64 max bonds. The baton just doesn't give a fuck. I just need to position myself correctly. Because I'm used to having a barrier that, like, is, like, childproof. It stops me from getting hit by the zombies because I can't move too close forward. But this doesn't have that. I think it's way more effective without the nerd tats, to be honest. Unless what you want is to stun a load of zombies, but what I want is to knock back a load of zombies, which it seems to be better at doing without it, so... Yeah, 
Yep, this is probably the easiest Horde Knight I've had in Alpha 21 so far. Honestly, if you had two, it might actually just become an AFK base. Accidentally. Again, I made another accidental half AFK base. You know, I'd probably be done with Horde Knight by now if it wasn't for the fact that half the zombies can't even get to me. Are we done? Or oh no, there's a couple more. I'm going down there. I'm bored of this. Right, what's the damage? That's what I'm interested in. What got hit? One hit here. Legitimately one singular hit, I think. Nobody hit anything. Did I somehow accidentally fi fix the one problem this base had? Absolutely amazingly, I fixed the one problem this base had without knowing how. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, the problem it had was zombies would run up here, and they would get into range with you, and then they would go, hey, and then they would start hitting the blocks below them, because they'd be like, oh yeah, destroy area mode. Doesn't seem to have happened at all. Did they hit any of these? No. Did they hit any of the blocks I was standing on? No. Well, shit, I made a perfect base. Hello and welcome back to the series I don't have a name for because this is still being recorded in advance. The series where I take an intellect build and make 7 days to die look very silly. We got a motorcycle on day 5 and I am very close to getting a chemistry station to make myself a load of gas. I just need one acid and 8 more workstation books. I'll also need 7 more to make a 4x4 four four, but I'll wait on that. If I can get the crucible then maybe we will get that. Basically if you're just joining the series the premise is I have manipulated the loot tables using intellect skills. This is my build and it is getting me a lot of the books I actually want. But I live in a silo and I would like to change it so I'm going to clear this POI before I do anything else in this playthrough. Here's the second skill point I need. Let's put that into intellect. Get myself up to eight. Vehicle adventures, nice. And nothing really good there. Right, let me go ahead, place a land claim block uh, nearby so I can pick up my workstations that I've put down at the other place there. I'm gonna take out all these doors and put my own in, and I'll live in this house. Is that too close to Trader Rex compound, or can I get something to work here? Oh. Hopefully that's good enough. See, can I pick you up now? No, is that? What What did I do? Oh, I see what I did. <laughs> yeah, that would do it. Let me see if I can make another land claim block. Hang on. Can I place land claim block literally like one block over? No, my workbench is permanently stuck there. That is a very bad stroke of luck. But workbenches aren't particularly hard to replace, so it's fine. I can now... Get back to my day. Let's go see what jobs Trader Wrecked has. Uh, how about I empty wood? Okay, let's do the fetches. You better not I'll try and do them quickly, because tier 3 complete could just give me a chemistry station, which would be really nice. Worst case scenario, I end up with two chemistry stations, and I'm fine with that. There we go. Ooh, level 6 arm armor. Decent. Uh, I'm not going to bother double looting it. I don't remember what it has in here, so I will just go in normally. Ah, two bookshelves in the first room. Good to know my judgement is impeccable. Vehicles and... Forge ahead and rifles. Books again. Forge ahead and medical journal. More books. Yeah, I should have double looted this place. Pet planet, nice. Vehicles and... Armor. Oh, another bookshelf back here. There's the satchel, but I'm here for books now. Ooh, working sift tools great. Come on, forge ahead. 
Oh, yeah, scrapping is also good. Yep, even more books. Terrible POI to have not double looted. Electrical traps. Cooling mesh mod schematic, okay. Medical journal. A lot of zombies. He fell through the world. Yep, he's now pushing me. Ah, the final loot. Forge your head, vehicles, triple armor, pocket mod, lighting, tech junkie. Tech Planet, two home cookings, two of the same great heist, and vehicle adventures. Ah, I can make a 4x4. Four four. About that. Um. Yeah, no. Not yet, anyway. Right, let's head back to whoever sent me here. And we learned a valuable lesson. Always double loot the Helene's residence. Because that thing is made of books. My store. I'll take the crafting skill magazines. Let's take another one. I don't like what the last party there? house. Don't two forger heads, two sharp sticks, two tech planets. Nice. Three more. We can make the chemistry station. I just need that damn acid. Now I'm pretty sure this is one I want to double loot. I remember the last party house is having a decent amount of books in it. Seriously, game. That just sucks. Ugh. Okay, well, hey, is that a construction site? I see. Art of mining, great heist. I have to go search this place for a cement mixer. It's the law. Yep, yeah, there it is. See, I was right to do so. Forge ahead. Hey, let's loot it once without the quest. Bookshelves. Another wood splitter mod. Vehicles. Forge ahead. There we go. One more. Forge ahead. There we go, chemistry stations unlocked. Peter Bob could always be selling some acid, I suppose. But I'll finish up here first. Vehicle adventures. There's a book on the ground there. Search book. It was a flashlight mod schematic. Skill point. Is there anything available to me right now? Anything new, anyway? I could get more Grease Monkey, but that seems counterintuitive to what I actually want. Let's get... Ah, let's just save it. Another drum mag, nice. Is this the final look? Let's have a look in here then. There might be an acid in this container. Two forge heads, nice. I still want a crucible, so it's always welcome. And a better bow isn't terrible. Though I've not been encouraged to use stealth ever since I found the stun baton and started one-shotting almost everything. I'm sure that is a mechanic that will return to the playthrough as we start going into higher level POIs. Tech planet. Robotic turret quality 5. Well, if I find the parts for that, I'll be sure to make one. Jam chowder. I'm hungry. It's a waste of healing, but who cares. Another medical journal. Level 40 in that. Let's go down and restart this POI then. And here we go again. Forge ahead, ergonomic grip. And another forge ahead. Books. Forge ahead and scrapping. Nice. That was an interesting outcome. Vehicle adventures. V 
vehicles, shotgun choke, nine sewing kits. I guess you ain't all that damn bad after all. Hmm. I'll take some forged steel. There's another fetch that I'll take, but I'll go and talk to Trader Bob first. I need to go grab a wrench in case I run out of fuel halfway through this trip, though. Let's go and see what Trader Bob has. Hopefully I'll make it there in time. Hey, Bob. Oh, it's a nail gun. Four vehicle adventures. Um, I'm going to take an SMG5. Obviously. I mean, why the fuck wouldn't you? I'll take his vehicle adventures, put that on the SMG, which can have three mods even at just tier one. Uh, tier two, sorry. Have the nine mil on me, but it's not a problem. All right, well, um, I don't have an acid, but I have an SMG. Silver lining. <laughs> Let me head home and get some ammo and, uh, probably gonna have to gather up some gas on the way there, actually. There we go, full auto mod, that's 12% faster fire rate some actual ammo for it, which I've had a few spare shots. Look at that reload time with no points in guns. Oh, worth it though. So I was looking through my inventories here during the night and I realized I have a lot of the components you need to make robotic turrets. I was able to just barely cobble together the 50 duct tape you need. I had about 30 duct tape already made. Plus like 10 glue and enough bones and water to do the rest. But I still need another 12 forged steel. So I am going to go out. There is a deer in my weird shed. I'm going to go out and I'm going to collect 12 more forged steel from lampposts and I'll probably break down a few cars while I'm at it. And we can set that to craft. The issue is, is you need lead to make robotic turret ammo now and I don't have any lead because I just haven't found that much and I haven't been able to mine it. So we might not really be able to use it but it's going to be cool to have one. Other one seriously. Would you go away? Other oh, two skill points. I'll hold off for a third one and get up to nine intellect. A lot of good skills are held behind ten and I'll find some nerdy glasses. There we go, 40 forged steel. Let's head back to my base and queue up this robotic turret. It will take ten minutes to craft, uh, but that's fine. I have nowhere to be. Should scrap the rest of these cars while I'm here. Oh yeah, I already have a tier 3 job from Wrecked. We can go do that once I've queued up the turret. And I've got some food. Two main issues. Let's queue up the robotic turret. I will also put the mods I saved for it on here. Uh, it needs another one, but that's fine. I can maybe take the hunter mod off of my robotic sledge and chuck it on there just for some extra damage. Right, let's head out to this job I already have. Really? Ugh, well, you know what? I'm gonna spend one of my skill points. Fucking sprain from that. Full fucking shit. But I took one rank in position there, so now... Uh, I've got so many casts, you know what? Just, just throw it on there. Here's your sprain now game. I'll store a spare cast in there as well. Right, let's start this job and hopefully one of the... Um, thinks will have an acid for me. Okay, planet, nice, 69. Oh hey, some garment bags, maybe I'll get lucky with nerdy classes. Which one of you is dead? Oh. Ugh, no. Forge ahead, nice. I do still want that crucible as soon as possible, so... Always nice to get more of those. Oh, barrel big mama. Okay. Tech planet, medical journal, and forge ahead. Tech planet. And medical, shotguns, wiring, and that cooling thingy. Think. No acid. That was a lucky head pop. Grab the turret. Let's get the loot here then. 
Tech planet, bipod, and that thingy. Forge ahead. See what other jobs he has for me today. Congratulations. Stop staring, asshole. I will take a slightly better wrench, I suppose. Let's take another job. Let's fetch 300 meters away. Fetch 100 meters away. Savage country, sure. Switch wrenches. Let's see, do you have any lead wrecked? You have a tiny bit of lead. Let's have a bunch of duct tape that I would like to buy as soon as I can. Because I used all mine. Now, of course, you would have a level 3 SMG. I'm just going to run to this one. It's 150 meters away and I'm low on gas. So, no point double looting it. I don't need red dye that desperately. I wonder if any of these containers actually have a good chance of giving you nerdy glasses. I've not seen any glasses in any of them so far. Oh, hello. Ah, these can drop glasses though, so maybe we should loot those at least. But I think I already have, for the most part. So uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's see, I haven't looted this one. Nothing in there. And then there. Okay, let's go into the final area here. Vehicles. Oh, another level 6 pair of boots. And I've got no log picks. I will pass on that then. Anything good on the roof? I don't remember. Bag. With some armor. Right, well, back to trade erect. As one might expect, no acid from that one. How about I, empty your I will take that ratchet. I could do with a better wrench. Another skill point to add to my two. I'll just save up for another one though. And the rest of it is duct tape. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. You got another one? Uh, let's see. I don't like you. Taylor Manor. Sure. Another one I'll just run to because it's 100 meters away. Start in this. Two sinks, come on. Ugh. No acid, damn it. Oh, you're a feral. I'm honestly this close to going into the mortician's house I saw down the road and just looting it for acid. Ah, uh, fuck it, let's just go in the final loot room and see what's there. Oh well. Killed something that with a weapon that isn't my stun baton, I feel weird. Hello. Two forger heads, nice. Vehicles, traps, tech, wiring. Yeah, the mortician's house is there, and I know the basement is filled with a bunch of chemistry sets, which is a decent chance at acid. I'll take the crafting skill magazines. Am I still not tier 3 complete? Stick another one. Try med group. Ah, well, there could be sciencey things there. Heck, knives, that. I'm out of here. I don't think I've done this one, so this could be fun. Wiring. Forge ahead. Cool, I need 12 more and I can make a crucible. I don't even think I have the resources to make one if I wanted to. Ah, chemistry state. Uh, chemistry set. Testosterone. If I get a bunch of um, plant fibers, I can make myself a cigar because I have that Urban Combat book. Books. Vehicles. Bunch of sinks, but they're all unluckily busted. Oh. Good stuff, but not what I'm looking for. Vehicles. Tech planet and vehicles. I'm not even trying to level vehicles at this point, it's just working. Tech planet, same with that actually. I went in a big circle, where do I go? I am baffled, I'm lost. Did I miss some ladder? Some staircase? What's happening? Ah, here I did miss a staircase. Oh really? The automatic doors are back? 
all these book containers I've looted and I've not found the Wasteland Treasures book that would save me. Ghost Digest. Whoa. Ah, some chemistry sets, good. Why can I not loot this? Here we go. Forge ahead, nice. Eleven more for the Crucible. Nitrate, you insult me. Forge ahead and vehicles. Vehicles and tech planet. <laughs> Shame I'm here for acid. And guns. No acid in there. Tech planet. Okay, she's buying a glass. I'm good. Another one of these. No acid, but some lead at least. It's a bunch of stuff. Another sink. God damn it. Oh, take the lead though. Chemistry set. More lead. No bloody acid. This POI is filled with containers where the acid is in the loot table, and absolutely none of them are dropping it. And yet I have four acids somehow. Where did I even get that? Well, I bought like three of it actually now that I think about it. E glue. This sink's broken. Another sink. Two more glue. Another sink. Oh. Forge ahead. This place is insane for books. Forge ahead vehicles. This is like a cracker book. There's more books. A fucking vulture trying to break in the. No, stop that. No vultures in sight. Forge ahead. 69. I went in a circle again. I always get really tripped out by that. Tech planet. <laughs> the fuck is going on in there? Oh, yeah, I thought it was really suspicious there was nobody in that one room. my lockpicks then. Handy land, tech planet, water purifier mod, finally. There goes drinking anything ever again. Tech planet and iron breaker, I'll put the iron breaker on my ratchet actually, it's really good. Another forge ahead, I need five more and I'm done with it. Doesn't seem like a good way to get out of here. That was weird. Let's go back to wrecked. This will be tier 3 complete and another level for me. I wasn't keeping count of how many books I got in there, but I'll tell you one thing. It was a lot. Sure. I'll take the machete. Oh, and a chemistry station, thank you. That boils my blood and eases my pain in a unique way, it has to be said. But at least I can get another chemistry station very, very easily if I get one more acid. And I'm going to put one point here into intellect. Now, I am not saving up another three skill points. I am getting nerdy glasses. Also, there's a Trader Jewel to the south, which is nice. You're getting on my nerves, friend. Uh-huh. Well then, what do I do now? I have my acid. Well, I have my chemistry station. I suppose I could work on finishing the workstations thingy. Yeah, get my crucible crafting available, even if I can't actually make one for a while. One more fetch. Hey, Popping pills. That ah, seems like a place I could get an acid. I could have two chemistry stations. Two chemistry stations is like one chemistry station, but there's another one. A day nine chemistry station isn't even too bad. Yes, this shall be the meth lab. Right, I need some oil shale. Where are my containers? I don't even have that much of it, but you know, we can get some. Fill this up a little bit. Make some gas cans. It's something, I mean. It'll be a lot better once I actually have some oil shale, which will be from the desert once I find the fucking place. Yeah, the intellect build progression is insane. 
like Alpha 20, but slightly slower. Grab all that. Modify this. Oh, it can only take three mods anyway? Okay. Look at that reload time. I can take all the ammo I have. Oh no. Right. I have one thing I want to do really quickly. The only way to drink. There we go. <laughs> right, I need to, to go and do that popping pills. And I also need a bunch of plant fiber. We get like 12 from these, that'll do. There we go, and make a cigar. That'll give me a 10% discount at the trader when I wear it, and it'll give me plus one strength, which is probably what I'm going to be specking into immediately after I'm done with intellect. Because I need some mining. <laughs> this is painful, having to scrounge together lead in the way that I am. I don't need both the turrets on me. You can sit in there. Uh, right, let's go do this popping bills. Oh, there's my cigar crafted. There we go, 10% better discount at the trader. That's a huge start this. Anybody here? Come and meet my friend. Great. Ah, here we go. The acid! <laughs> I can make my second chemistry station if I want one. Uh, not very helpful though, because I don't even have the oil shell to use it, but it is good to have for the future. Very funny game. Very funny. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. No, it's fine. No, I'm fine. Hmm? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, it's fine. It's a fantastic game. One perfectly good, 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 good fun time game. Mutated zombies. Mop them up. Tools digest, machine gunner, that thing, that shit, blah blah blah. I can make iron tools quality four. Not a single point in minor sixty er Right, how am I doing on those Forge Ahead books? I was very distracted by the acid. I need four more. I will probably do that. You know, I really shouldn't do this. This is tier four. It's dangerous. Ow. See? Danger. However, first aid kit overheal. Robotic turret. Oh, bicycle chassis. Hello there. I know you're there. There's a dog as well. Oh, I killed him. And I'm out of arrows, because I'm not really playing that kind of a build. Guess we do this then. Well, that's a very easy loot to get to. Ammo pile. Crap, to be honest. Two tech planets. Scrapping for fun. Forge ahead. Need three more to try and unlock this. Second try, nice. Forge ahead, tempered blade mod, another acid. Uh water purifier mod. And some syllables. Not bad. Not enough forge aheads though. I still need a couple more. Forge ahead. Forge ahead. There we go. Two more. Where can I get two working stiff tools containers or two uh forge aheads, sorry. Our brawler. Jam chowder. See a container up there. Workbench, hang on. Not no forge of heads.
another level. I guess I'll just hold on to it until I do find nerdy glasses and then get all the things I want. Yeah, I can't find any more containers in here. Let's keep searching random houses until I find it. Or the last two books I need, I think. Ah. Huh. Just in a rotting sports pack. Just there. Next game. I will take Dating Adventurer rank 4 to get the double quest rewards and another 10 levels trader stage. Well, that was very weird to place to find them, but I will graciously accept that and not question it too much. But I still want Forge Aheads, so let's keep searching. I bet this place has a couple of book containers. Oh, we completed Great Heist, nice. Lock picking should now be even easier if I ever remember to make lock picks. Forge Ahead 1. Need one more. Rifles. Tech planet and scrapping. Vehicles. Need 11 more of those. Tech planet handguns. Still, there's bound to be one more book. Out container. Fucking sprained arm. Oh, hello, Feral. Oh, there's a button. But where's the trap? Is there no trap? There it is. concussion of course one moment I think one of these is a feral he's still running really fast well that's just mean <laughs> oh it doesn't suture the lacerdation I forgot Some honey in my motorcycle, I think. Ah, uh, there we go. Is there just no trap? There's always a bloody trap. You're still here? Fuck off. None of these are gonna have the book I want. Tag planet. Okay, well, I need to keep searching then, don't I? Let's break in here. Ailing cabinet. No forge ahead. Vehicles. Oh wait, there's a cement mixer in the basement of this place. And with cement mixers comes... Forge ahead. And we're done. We can now officially make a crucible. Now, I don't have the materials to do it immediately. I will hand in that job to try to wreck before I end, though. I mean, I'll just take more crafting skill magazines. Oh yeah, I can take two now, because I have Dating Adventurer. I'll take a wooden bow. And he has tier 4 is available. Beauty Witch, Eco Trash Recycling Center, Mortician's House. I'll take that for tomorrow. Let me open that up. Two more vehicles, two more explosives, two more electrical traps. Wow. So, I'm going to take all my stuff back to my base, and I'm going to see if I can make a crucible. I will likely have to mine some stone, because I think it takes 1200 to do that. But having to mine a little bit of resources really isn't that big of a deal. Okay, so I have 450 clay, that's the start. 72 forged iron. I have the mechanical parts. Do I have the oil? I have 10 oil. Oh, I have plenty of oil. A side effect of scrapping so many damn cars is that I have a lot of scrap now. Uh, here's a bunch of iron. I would rather buy some forged iron, though. Holy shit, I really do have a lot of mechanical parts. I'd rather buy some forged iron, though, and save my clay for something else. Maybe I should start smelting the iron into the forge so that I can use it to actually make steel as soon as I need it. Yeah, I'll just... Get a little bit in there. I'll give it like 15 minutes of fuel. And I'll go and see if I can buy some materials from Trader Rec. Now surely I have some stone I'm missing. There's no way I have none. There we go. Have I got any rock busters? There's one. I could scrap concrete and get a bunch of stone back, but it's not really worth it. I'm going to quickly check and see if Rec has any forged iron. 
He's got 11 forged iron. It'll help me along a little bit. Cement. I could scrap that into stone. How cheap is it? You know what? I'll do that. Oh, this feels immoral, but these are the things I have to do. Right, I'm going to scrap that concrete. This is something humanity has never seen done before. But I don't have any Miner 69er, and I do not like mining without it. So if I can just not have to mine anything right now, I will take it. Because when I actually need concrete, which is not going to be for the Day 14 Horde, I will be able to get a lot more of it because I'll be somewhat invested in strength. So let me take that. That'll get me up to, what, like 500... 800. Yeah, that'll be enough stone. Let me go and dig the rest of the clay that I need. Uh, the forge is producing some forged iron, but I think what I'll do is I'll just track down one of the many cement mixers that I have looted in the world, and I will scrap it. Where is the nearest one? I wonder, is there not a table saw in here? I recall that. Here we are. I don't know if that's going to give me all the iron I need, but start. Okay, I've got all the stone now from the scrapping. Oh, here we go. The uh, Jericho Ranch has a cement mixer in the basement. I don't know if this is the one I was at just a little while ago. It was not, so this will be a new one. But hey, it's some guaranteed forged iron, so let's get in there. Hitters. Right, let's grab this free cement. Plus a forge ahead I can't really use. Perfect, we can make the crucible. I am gonna have to get some gas soon. I think there's still a couple hundred in the chemistry station at least. Workbench, make me a crucible. I'm gonna go grab a drink. And I'm also, once that's done, I'm gonna just spend the rest of that four minutes crafting time on digging up clay, because I have plenty of iron from all my scrapping, right? You get loads of iron when you scrap things without having to mine for it, but you don't get clay that way, so. Uh, let's see, chemistry station, did you make me more gas? That's a little bit, at least. Like 10% of a motorcycle's tank. There we go. Let me just drink myself up a river here. Then I'll spend the next few minutes digging up this field. Three, two... One, there's the crucible on day 10. And it gave me enough XP to get a level. Let me grab... Oh, I... It has to be the last rank of Electrocutioner, right? If I'm at 10 of an attribute already, I might as well max it out. So my batons do 50% more damage, stun for twice as long, and killing blows will give me 30 stamina. And you know, stun baton isn't a crazy stamina heavy weapon, so... That's pretty good. I got about 900 clay in that few minutes, by the way. It was torture, because I had to three-shot every bloody thing I hit, but... Uh, the progression is perfectly fine in this game. As you can see, it's day 10. I have a crucible, but I don't have bellows or an anvil. Um, I don't have a cement mixer, but I do have a chemistry station and a crucible. Everything is working exactly as designed, I think. I think the next thing I need to do is get myself up to vehicles 100 just to get out of the loot table then i can respec and completely just get rid of the three ranks of grease monkey and the three ranks of lock picking because they're completely worthless to me once i have the skills that'll free up six skill points which are going straight into physician why well You've been watching the series so far, presumably. About half of the viewership of these videos tends to be people who have watched another one. So statistically, you probably get what's going on here so far. You've seen how easily I have been shredding the zombies with the stun baton. And then we come to physician rank 4, which gives me an additional 20% chance to dismember enemies with batons. If you dismember an enemy's head, they die instantly. And then rank 5 gives you a 10% chance to just instantly kill any zombie. Doesn't matter what level they are, it could be a demolition, it could be a radiated biker. Every hit you put on them has a 10% chance to simply kill them. Here's 33 Forge Steel. Ain't that neat. Hello and welcome back to the Intellect series. The sky has returned to normal. For people who haven't watched the other episodes of this, they're very confused. Anyway, so in the last episode we got our chemistry station, the Crucible. We are pretty well equipped. The next things on my priority list to do are going to be getting vehicles finished. Not because I need a gyrocopter, but because I would really like to get that out of the way so that I can respec my skills and become even more OP than I already am. Uh, the best way to get books I have found in my multi 
multiple series of Alpha 21 is genuinely just going to random houses and looting all their bookcases. It's kind of brainless, it's not very enjoyable, and this series is about making things work really, really well to show how good intellect is at doing that. What we're going to do is we're going to head out to that job I took the mortician's house, which I know has a bunch of books. I'm going to double loot it because I know it has a few book containers and tier 4 loot. And I'm not on any rush to get the tier 4 complete or the tier 5 complete because my gear, even just padded armor and sun baton, because of the way the intellect build is, it doesn't matter, it's good enough. So we don't have to rush the end game guns and weapons because the sun baton does everything. So double looting this for the books so I can get the grease monkey out of the way and then with the grease monkey out of the way I can respect my skills to be even more powerful so that seems like a good idea i'm gonna clear this out really quickly and before i start going in here and it becomes harder for me to edit um i'm gonna try and find the desert today as well because i need to mine up some damn oil shields so that that motorcycle stops being such a drain on my time so let's head in here do our first run through Tech planet, nice. I'm very close to finishing those off as well. But those are just going to take themselves out the loot table anyway, so I don't have to worry too much. And some brass. Two vehicle adventures. Oh yeah, with Forge Ahead out the loot table. I mean, there's basically only two things I'm boosting at this stage, right? My tech planet and my grease monkey? Yeah, that means most containers I loot have the have books, have the books I want because of the way the loot tables seem to work for it, which, you know, is the point of the series to show that home cooking. Nope. Oh. Bloody office chair. I'm oh, just two in there today. Okay. So since a bunch of people were complaining that I never got the hidden stash out of this house, we'll do it now. I know it's here, I just, I really don't bother with hidden stashes very often. But it is hidden behind this wall here. There's a vehicle adventures. Oh, tech planet. Vehicles, scrapping, medical journal. Cool. Let's head into the basement here. Oh, head pop. Another acid, another testosterone, and another oil. I can definitely make another chemistry station now if I want one. I don't think I need another one yet. I only really need that for when I start making gunpowder. And this isn't that. This PLI is great for bones. Um, let's see. Hello, ferals. Take a quick first aid bandage. I've been making loads of them out of this PY because there's loads of medical containers with aloe in it, so. Could afford to use some medical stuff here. Really should consider getting some better armor soon, though. Pick that up. I think it's out of ammo now. But, you know, we can get some more. It's just lead. I just don't have any mining ability because this uh, pure intellect build right now. It will diverge into other things eventually. 100 and. There we go, 150 bones, and I wasn't even really paying that much attention to gathering them. Graphing. Let's try my lockpicks on this. I do have three points in lockpicking, so you would hope the lockpicks could do this. There we go. Another vehicle adventures, and some useful things of various origin. Alright, let's head out to the motorcycle and reset the POI. How many books did I get out of this place then? This time, it was at five. So if I can get three more the next time, which... Statistically, I should. I should be done with the vehicles by the end of the day. Right, let's go ahead and reset the POI then. Something died here. Did I kill it? I don't think I killed anything here. Oh good, I can put my iron breaker on this. Take off my damn machete. Alright, let's reset it. And get into some fights. Oh hey. Tech planet. And a useful mod for my bow. Oh, I already have it. I'll just scrap it for some polymers then. I've got some arrows as well. I've not been carrying any, but if I need to do some stealth attacks, I can now.
Tech Planet Wiring Knife Guy. Medical Handy Land Tech Planet. Up to 95 on Tech Planet. I've already got everything I need out of Tech Planet though, because I am not building a drone, it'll just bug out and kill me, so I will be fine without it. That was weird, there was only one zombie in that room. I rarely see that. Oh, a Mega Crush and a random food pile. Another really rare thing. There's the satchel. Of course, I better grab this again. Uh, pick that up, I guess. Can I just... No, you can't just do that. Why does there have to be a block that has 500 health? What's the point of making it like a one-hit wall if you still have to do this? How annoying. Tech planet and a bunch of money, which I'll scrap into paper. Then I can use it for shotgun shells later. Oh, a cigar and a desk. Well, that's the second time that's happened to me in Alpha 21 now, and I'm kind of sad to see how common they are. I have one already, but I'll take it and sell it, I guess? Come on, zombies. You're nightmare speed, but I don't really care. This kind of answers how the stun baton would do on Insane Nightmare as well. It would absolutely shred. It doesn't care. Still have to be careful. Insane Nightmare is a very easy difficulty mode to end up dead on. But, you know, don't have to try that hard. Another acid. Sure, now I get one from a sink. It only took like the hundredth sink I had looted for it to actually spawn in one. Now you may be a problem on Nightmare Speed, let's see. No, I don't think he's going to be a problem. Level 28. What I put this into doesn't matter too much because I'm very close to respecking anyway, but let's go for... I mean, let's head in here. Turn my helmet light off, actually. Oh, that's a feral. Okay. Come and fight me. Somehow still sneaking. <laughs> Stealth 100. Right. Um... Oh, hello. Ow. Oh, of course. Right, it's just whoever's back there in the cop now, so I'll try my... Oh, it's a feral cop as well. Run away! You dead? Hello. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I have a bunch of attention from outside now, but I'll deal with them in a moment. we go. Let's get the loot out of here then. Right, so I made a more conscious effort for bones there and I got 224, which is pretty good. That's a lot of glues worth. Scrapping, handy land, some gas, and a bunch of that stuff. Let's try and unlock the hardened chest. Scrapping, uh, get hammered, a pocket mod I can't actually use because all my slots are filled with another type of pocket mod, and some lockpicks. Hi there. That's fine. That is the nature of the RNG mechanic here. It's the nature of this very RNG heavy mechanic. Right, I'm gonna take my stuff back to my base and sort out all the inventory here because I did loot a lot of stuff there. I was a lot more thorough than I usually am. Let's see, Forge, how are you doing? I'm getting ahead and using my crucible early on. So that when I need steel, I should have a good chunk of it. If you're gonna go through the effort of getting a crucible on day 10, you should really use it. So, that's what's going on there. Have some more clay for the forge as well, and some more iron. Let's see, how much steel do you need to make a gyrocopter? You need 187 plus... that's it. Maybe I should look into seeing if I could make a gyrocopter soon. So let's see. Mechanical parts, a couple of steel, some glue, which can be turned into duct tape. Uh, one leather. There's probably more, though. Let's, oh, yeah, I have loads of leather. I'm good. Uh, springs? How many do you need? Oh, wait, do you need springs at all for this? You need six springs. Uh, what else? 
Got more glue, hang on. Saw it there. Uh, we can duct tape that. Uh, 30 electrical parts. There's that. So just duct tape and steel for the chassis. Uh, let's see, so I've got enough glue to make 20 duct tape. Trader Rec could well be selling way more than that already though. Can't remember if I bought all of his duct tape. There's two duct tape and there's some murky water. I've probably got some cooked water here, don't I? Yeah. So between that I could make, what's that, 9, 16 more glue out of crafting, which would be enough to make the chassis, but do you need some for the accessories as well? Probably, right? No, you don't. Okay. You need headlights. And you need pipes, of course. Got plenty of those. And you need... That's it for the accessories. If I had the books, I could just go and make that right now. Okay, so what I need is glue. Or, well, duct tape, actually, but same thing. Let me see, where did I put all those bones? Ah, there they were. Need to sort my inventory, but it's fine right now. So I've got 400 bones, which is enough to pretty comfortably make... A lot of glue, I just need the water to cook up. I still don't have a dew collector, it's just not been on my mind. Uh, but it wouldn't really help me immediately anyway. But, uh, let's see, 8 there, 8. So there's 16 more. Yeah, I will have enough glue, it's just a matter of waiting for that to cook. But I need to find the, um, the last three magazines anyway, so there's no real issues waiting there. Put all the extra components in there, and I've got a spare level 1 car battery back at the base so I can sell that stuff. Let me go ahead and just drive around look for a couple of POIs I've not looted that might have some bookshelves in it. And see if I can get the last three ranks of vehicle adventures. Uh, let's see, another level 5 pipe machine gun, a tech planet, and a couple of useful things. Not bad. Filing cabinet. Vehicles, shotguns. Cool. Oh, hi there. Vehicle adventures, scrapping, and tech planet. Need one more vehicle adventures. Ah, tech planet. One more tech planet as well. Then I will not be boosting any skills at that point, which is really cool. That's when you know it's time to respec a little bit. Oh, hello, Feral. Oh, hello, another feral I'm locked in a room with. Love that for me. Medical journal. Electrical traps. And tech planet. That's tech planet done. We should see considerably less of those. Head out here. There's usually a dog. It is. Tools digest. I do need a few more of those because I want to make some iron tools so I can actually mine. But, um, they're at level 4 right now, and that would annoy the hell out of me, so I'm just gonna hold off. Okay. Vehicles, there we go, we can make a gyrocopter, just need the steel then. I'll finish this POI while I'm here. Medical journal. Yeah, that's going to be the overwhelming thing in the loot table because it is actually being boosted now. I'm going to find so many of those. Did it drop stuff behind me? Thought so. Ow. Alright, I think I'm done here. We completed two skill trees in here. And we made a damn good start on finishing up medical as well. Right, let me head back to Trader Wrecked and hand in this job to him, and then I'll see what we can do in terms of steel and glue and stuff. Might want to do a bit of a dual scrapping and forging at the same time situation, where I drive around, scrap cars to get gas, and scrap those streetlights for steel, while my crucible produces like the other half of the steel. 190 steel isn't a lot of steel though, to make off of one crucible, that's pretty, pretty workable. Buy your sugar butts real quick. Oh, I had one. Silly me. Get some skull crushers, some rock busters, and some hackers. Not enough inventory space. The bones for now. Hello, wrecked. Shake your hand. A level 6 tactical yeah, assault rifle. Uh, let me drop a mechanical part in 10 clay and take the assault rifle and the crafting skill magazine bundle. Let's see. Two handy land, two medical journal, two electrical traps. I can make a nail gun. 
Are you selling anything interesting here, Wrecked? I don't remember. You got any glue? He doesn't have any glue, that kind of sucks. And of course now he's selling a level 5 SMG, love that. Alright, I'll pass on the rest of that, let's take a job anyway. Hybrid energy? Sure. I'm not going to do it just yet, but good to have it. For that skill point, I am going to... It doesn't really matter. I should really forget an elixir right now. Let me do that. Let me buy that from you, Rekt. If you're selling one, you're usually selling one. Forget an elixir. Nice. Big discount on it, too. Use that. So all my skill points have been reset. Yes, you keep the ones from the tutorial. Let's put my intellect back up to 9 plus the inherited glasses. There, so I've got 19 skill points. Obviously, electrocutioner. Probably want to get all the physicians so that we can start 20% chance to dismember with batons and 10% chance to insta-kill. Amazing, obviously. Dating adventure driver I still want. Robotics inventor. Let's do it. Let's just go full five robotics experts. So I can now put down two turrets and my turrets are really, really good. But I don't have the lead to work with that right now. But that's going to be very helpful later on. I know I can already make the accessories, so I will get on that as soon as possible. I have a bunch of junk for that in the motorcycle itself. There we go. Oh, I have 27 duct tape in here. I knew I bought a load of duct tape from Wrecked. I gaslit myself again. Let's see, do I have the things to make the accessories on me? I do. Gyrocopter accessories. That'll take four minutes. Right, now we just need steel. That's, all, that's the only thing holding me back. Steel, wheels, battery, engine. And I think I have everything but the steel. So, let's see. You make me another 39. That's me up to 59 there. So, that's everything I need for the gyrocopter. Plus, without the steel, obviously. Um, where's my ratchet? There it is. Need that. Right, so what do I think is the fastest way to get steel here? Is it going to be A, scrapping all the street lights, B, doing all of the tier 2 jobs I can and taking the rewards, or just waiting for it to be able to craft out of this? I should have all the iron and stuff I need in there. Let me double check for more iron. I think a combination of all of the above is the best choice. Get some beer so I can really scrap properly, you know, my stamina will be good. And let's go, I'll cancel that one job from Trader Wrecked. Tier 4 jobs could technically give me some steel, but it's not a very efficient way of getting it. Tier 3s could also work. And this all does contribute to my tier 4 complete, so it doesn't matter. Let's take these fetches, do them as quickly as humanly possible. That way it's the most efficient it can be. Uh, let's see one thing. To save on gas. He does have mega crushes. I'm gonna run there. Because it is only 200 meters and I can move at this speed with mega crush. Probably comparable to the motorcycle, but without it using any gas, which I will accept. Let's reset that. Where's the thing? It's on the ground floor. Let's see if there's an easy way to smash into it. There's a doorway here. Let's break in. Then the thingy is behind this glass. Any amazing loot in this first room? No, right. Let's run back. 25 forged steel. And I'll take some free pipe bombs. Take another one, fetch, a few hundred meters away, restart this, it's on the ground floor, actually probably just break this door and run in, way less health. Grab that, and run back to trade erect. Don't you love Mega Crush and how easy it is to get now? Oh no steel, that's bad luck. Take the secret recipe and the antibiotic, oh no, I'll take some six too. Any more tier 2s? That one's relatively close and I can do it quickly. Still on my first mega crush here. How quickly you can do this. Here we go, where's the set? Oh, it's a clear rain, let's just kill everything then. Ow. That shit hurt. Oh, look how much health I restore from one first aid bandage now. 60! You gotta love that. Oh, I forgot I had gotten Max Physician. That is really, really good. I haven't seen any insta-kills, though, or particularly impressive uh, dismemberments. We shall see, though. Come on, forge steel. Damn it. <laughs> I'll take a spare robotic sledge and some more herbal antibiotics. It's usually much more common than that, but it doesn't have any more tier 2s. So, 
it now falls to my scrapping abilities and my forge. Let me grab the gyrocopter accessories here. Assuming they're done, yeah. Let me put the chassis back up on here. So I need another 100 forge steel. That's not crazy hard to get. You know, it's it's 50 street lights. But I also have the forge helping me out. So there's another 20. I'll go out and gather up another, like, 30 forge steel from just street lights, I think. Again, I have five minutes of Mega Crush, so I'm not going to bother with a motorcycle. Oh, hey, a broken vending machine. These also give steel. I mean, it gave, like, three, but it's something. Right, there's 140 forged steel. I'm gonna run back to my base and see what the oh stamina ran out. And see what the um forge has done and see what it can do. If the rest of the iron is smelted, and then I'll decide how I want to handle the rest of this. Mega Crush just ran out. Oh good, it ran out of fuel. <laughs> Let's give it like another 15 minutes. Uh turn it on. Take that seven forged steel. How much more can you make? Four? Sixteen more, that's not gonna be enough. Give me a moment, I'll put some stuff away. Oh, I wonder if Trader Wrecked is selling any steel. I didn't think to check that, hang on. You're not selling forged steel? This is like the only time you haven't sold forged steel. Why are you like this? Oh, both of these are working? That's annoying. Oh wait, you got a mega crush? Ah, uh -huh. That should really be enough steel from scrapping. I have to imagine the forge has done the rest for me, so let's go back. Let's see, forge. There we go, I need two more. I'll take 30 seconds. There we go, right. Let's... Head over to my workbench and craft that up. In the meantime, I'm going to go around and scrap cars for gas, because otherwise the gyrocopter is just not even going to move, which is a bit of an issue. But I have Mega Crush, and I have a spare hackers in here, right? Forgot to grab it. Oh, and it has a spare Mega Crush in here. Good to know. And I had two forged steel in here as well. I am a genius. Anyway, I'm going to go scrap cars and get some gas. There we go. Chassis done. Let's queue up the gyrocopter, and I will go back to scrapping. When my first Mega Crush runs out, I know the gyrocopter is done. Here we go, day 11 gyrocopter, not bad. I have 1500 gas for it, which is 75% of a tank. Let me go put some junk away and then we'll see if we can hunt down a desert biome and mine up some oil shale and then I'll actually be able to make my own gas and I'll stop having to wrench for 10 minutes every time I want to go somewhere. There's three rock busters. Right, let's fly up and see if I can find a desert so that I can mine some stuff. now. I need a bunker buster on my actual thing here, otherwise it's going to take forever to do anything. Because bunker busters actually do affect oil, shale, nitrate, coal, and stone, if you didn't know. So, let's fly up, see if I can hunt down a desert biome. I think it's to the north, if I remember the world generation correctly, but not 100% sure of precisely where to the north. That looks like the top of the map, doesn't it? I don't think that's where the desert is. Maybe the desert was below the wasteland. They have a very similar uh, biome color on the world generation screen, so maybe we want to actually go a little bit more south, and we should have headed west from where I live. There it is, some desert. Looks like there's a trader hue down there. It's good to know, at least. I don't have to go particularly deep into the desert here, I just need to find the oil shale and mine up a couple stacks of it. Right, let me get some stamina regen and use the rock busters and let's mine some oil shale here. Oh, it's gonna take forever, but this is what we have to work with. Okay, so I have mined 2400 oil shale, which is enough to make three stacks of gas cans, otherwise known as 15,000 gas. Which is solid. That is about as much gas as I would be able to gather in like a hundred minutes of scrapping. So I will take that. Right, chemistry station. Make me, yeah, 25 minutes worth of gas. I have enough gas to last me a little while, so I don't need to worry about that. So I think the plan for today is just going to be get XP and try and get some better tools so that I can properly enter the end game of 7 Days to Die on day 12. So that'll be nice. <laughs> I will wait for Trader Wreck to open in the meantime. Let's take this tier 4 fetch and clear. Get that started. I don't know what to expect out of this place. Oh, 
Dog, really? Treasure map. Save that for when I'm in the wasteland and you actually get decent loot out of it. Tools Digest, nice. Insane difficulty, everybody. I am one shotting everything on day 12. There we go, we can at least make it level 5 iron tools now if I want them. Which I do. Ooh, feral mutated guy. Hi there. Ooh, he's fast as fuck. First aid bandage. Restore 60 health each. That's so good. Uh. Floor is lava. Are we done? I need to collect the satchel, which is over there, I think, but let's get the loot. Did I even bring lockpicks? I did. Good for me. Actually remembering to do that. Tools Digest, Handy Land. I can make level 1 steel tools, but I'll probably just wait till level 5 before doing that. Wiring. Two Tools Digests. And some stuff I don't really need, but let's go and grab this. Of course, it's a level 6 steel club on the build where I can't use it. I will take it as something I can put a load of mods on and sell, though. And I guess I'll take a crafting skill magazine bundle while I'm at it. Any other tier 4s? 100 meters away. Let's make a ah, GD Witch. Armored up, 2 tools, 2 medical. Very good. Skill point, that's gone right into minor 69er as well. I will wait until the end of the day to see what tools I can craft. Refuel that. And refuel that. I might slowly work on getting enough uh, steel to make a 4x4. Right, let's head inside. I believe in the stun baton. You know, I'm starting to see why they didn't give intellect any kind of a gun. It just does not need it. Give me a minor 69er book or whatever it's called. Tools Digest, that's what I meant. <laughs> Honestly, I'm probably going to bump this up to nightmare speed eventually because it's really just... It makes no difference either way. Step into the radiation. I don't need some stamina, that guy's just not dying. There we go. Let's unlock these. Handy land, another treasure map, some explosives, and some useful things. Last medical journal I needed. Those digest again, ammo pile. Eh, take those. Let's leave and talk to Rekt. Hopefully it'll give me like a steel pickaxe as a reward. I don't even think I have the minor 69er capabilities of using one yet. 
because it would drain so much stamina, but it's worth a shot. Military helmet level 6 and a steel shovel. Steel shovels are useless because iron shovels are better than them, but I don't have an iron shovel, so I will just take the steel one. I will take the clear zombies 150 meters away. Military helmet. I will put that on because I have the urban combat book that speeds me up anyway, so I don't need to worry about the movement speed penalties. And as soon as I find another armor pocket mod, I'll chuck that on there. Let's go do this job. Um, where do I go? Here? I guess it's here. Farming one of the Wasteland Treasure books and a minor book. I think that was a feral I just decapped. Two wiring, nice. I can make sensors now. Halfway done with the wiring thing. And I am not specced into it at all. Well, this doesn't feel very safe. I was correct. We can make steel tools at quality 2 now. Another wiring book. Ah, here we go, valve. <laughs> Blew his hand off and he just died. Oh, free acid. Why are you giving me ammo in meds, game? What's coming up? Oh, the final loot room. A bunch of guys in it, that would make a lot of sense. You weaken my armor, you shitters. Hi there. <laughs> Holy shit! First aid kit time. Climb the ladder. Run away. Just keep them following me. Yeah, my first aid kit's gonna restore a billion health right now. Seriously! Every hit is just gonna do that. Radiation. Do you got any antibiotics on me? No. As you- no wait, I have honey. As usual though, I have vitamins and I never use the fucking things. What's wrong with my armor? Who's broken? Stop it. Who's still alive? Oh, hello. Another tools digest. Try and unlock this. Although I do think I have time charges on me, so if it doesn't work we'd always do that. You would be thirsty from doing that, take a mega crush. Scrapping for fun, a pistol, some acid, some other stuff. Meh. Not bad. More wiring and electrical traps. Is there anything in that little tower thing where the mutated guy spawns? There's a bag with some water in it. Well, let's go back to Trader Wreck then. Also, didn't I get a skill point at some point in there? I did. Let's go for a rank of mother load. I'll take the slight upgraded ratchet and I'll take the crafting magazine bundle. Let's take that infested clear. Two tactical warfare, two handguns, two shotguns. Let me switch my ratchet over. Right, let's grab the motorcycle and head over to this next job. We pretty much all the tier fours I can get done today, but the stun baton has helped me just absolutely cut through them. Even on just 60 minute days here, I was able to get four done and I wasn't particularly trying to get them done that quickly, the baton just pops them all that quickly. But I'm sure this will be filled with ferals and radiated and it'll give me a hard time. It is an infested job after all. Alright, let's get it started and see what happens. 
I see a guy standing there. And that's a few ferals. Whoa. Did that guy just like slip and fall? What happened there? I have no idea what's going on. That was a fucking war zone. There's a pig in here. Here's the vulture that spawns in here. They're the problem. Hi there. Oh, I see the vultures there. There's a hidden stash up there, it looks like. A vulture vanished. The other guy fell down. What's in the infested cache today? Eh, some ammo. Can't complain. Uh, stun baton, that. Let's unlock this. Well, time for plan B. Let's digest the hunter thingy and some random junk. <laughs> oh, some learning elixir. Nice. Let's kill this last guy. Well, that was incredibly easy. Um, let me go check the what I think was a hidden stash anyway. How do you? How are you supposed to get to it? Do we jump across? I'm not sure, but let me just frame in. I guess this is how you're supposed to do it. Bipod and a pipe baton. Let's go get a reward. I'll take some more metal and I'll take a compound bow. And for my reward, I will take a bunch of extra military armor and a hundred concrete blocks. Cause why the hell not? Oh, it feels so slow now. <laughs> Cause I don't have any points in light armor or any customized fittings, but it doesn't matter. Cause in actual combat, I will get max speed anyway. I have a hundred concrete blocks to play with when I need to use those. Right. Well, I'm probably going to leave the episode here and tomorrow. We can continue just powering through this game. Uh, I'll need to do the day 14 horde, so I'll probably have to do some base upgrades, but my next priority is definitely getting a load of tools so that I can uh, build a big base for the end game and stuff like I usually do. That sort of general direction I tend to head towards, but that's probably enough for today. Hello and welcome back to 7 Days to Die. In today's episode, I am going to try and get some better mining tools and we are going to fight the horde at the end of it because it'll be day 14. Shouldn't need to upgrade my base, but getting those tools will mean I can get the resources to do it. I want to get more tool magazines and tool parts and most of this town is fully looted. So, I thought the best thing to do is going to be to take the gyrocopter that we got in the last episode. If you're wondering how I did that, you'll have to go and watch the last one. And we're going to head two kilometers south, see what the town is there, and get a big pile of fresh POIs to work with. I'm going to head out there and meet Trader Joel. I probably won't get there before he closes, but either way, he's probably in another town, which means he'll probably have a load of other POIs for me. Okay, we got here a lot sooner than I was expecting, so we can actually talk to Trader Joe. Ah, and he's right next to the deracinated domicile. That one POI I know has a bunch of books in it. Perfect. Contact grenades, nice. You got anything good to buy, Joel? Another pocket mod and some custom fittings. Oh, he has a triple armor pocket mod. Why'd I buy that other one? And I'll take the customized fittings. I'll take some basically free cobblestone. I mean, it's... Dirt cheap, why not, right? <laughs> Motorcycle handlebars. I'm a bit ahead of you there, Joel. And he has his tier 1 clear for the deracinated dom sale, meaning I can double loot it, which means double the books. Let me place my motorcycle, because it's going to be what's getting me around this town from now on. Let me put that triple armor pocket mod on my helmet. There we go. And a custom fitting on my chest piece. Let's go over to this POI really quickly. So, as it turns to night and the zombies become nightmare speed, let's head into this POI. Oh, the stun baton is just ridiculously overpowered. Oh, 
Oh, no bookcases there. That's unlucky. And the really cool thing about this build is that with five ranks of physician, I get 60 health back from my first aid bandages, which means I can take like three or four hits with my armor before I actually have to even use a first aid bandage. So that is really nice. I've got a skill point there. Let's put that into. Oh yeah, we were doing a little bit of strength to be able to mine properly. Let's keep moving. Nothing amazing loot wise there. What do you expect from a tier one though? But we can reset it and get another chance at those books. Those digest, nice. Making great progress on those. Those digest again, we're up to 40 of those. That's some actual bookcases this time. Machine gunner I already knew, and foregrip mod and explosives. That reminds me, I can make a nail gun. So if I want to do that, I can. But I have no real plans to upgrade my base at the moment. It did ridiculously well. I don't think it'll need any improvements. So I will just coast off of the strength of my base as it is for as long as I can and make the most of that time saved by doing stuff like this. Getting books. Kills Digest. 41. Art of Mining. Not finished that yet. How many more Art of Mining books do I need? One more. And then we get a free rank of Mother Load, basically. That'll be very nice. So, Trader Joel doesn't reopen for a good few hours, and I don't really care about the reward that much anyway, but he does reset tomorrow, so it could be worth checking him. My point being, probably a good time to drive around this town and find anything interesting it might have. Namely, crack a book POIs, because that would probably give me a lot of mining books. Might be worth checking these two tier one houses for more books. <laughs> Right, no bookcases, which I assumed I would have found. Uh, ergonomic grip, let's put that on my axe. Souls Digest. Okay, we got one book. Let's head across the street to one I know definitely has a bit more. Here's a bookshelf. Where are the zombies? Souls Digest, Home Cooking Weekly, Mufflers. Structured Brace mod. Is there anything I can put that on? I think all my mod slots are actually... Nah, we can put it on the bow. Not the best there, but it's somewhere. Kills Digest. Right, let's continue searching. Kills Digest again. And the nice thing about Tools Digest is I don't really want an auger or a chainsaw. The chainsaw would be nice, but the auger I found to be not all that worth the trouble. In my last two series, I did various tests to see which one got you the most ore and stuff. And in a lot of cases, the uh, the manual tools outdid the auger. And in the few cases where it didn't, I just wasn't all that impressed by how much more it got. Especially for how much extra effort you have to put into using the auger without dying. Oh, is that another cracker book? You spoil me, game. You really do. Especially since the first series, I don't think I found any. Oh, and it's the good one too, it's the level 2 one. Big hitters, rifles. Rifles again. I don't think I've specced into enough things for this to really be worth it, but let's just do it anyway. There's always quests that can reset it. Ow. Are you a feral? Is that why you did so much damage? Didn't see how much XP it gave me. Handguns. Yeah, I don't mind leveling a bunch of different things in here. Tools Digest and Handyland. Handguns, scrapping again. Tools, hammers. 
tools. Uh, the thing I can use to get more acid if I need it. Handy land. Strapping fist. Finding a lot of vehicle adventures even though I finished the skill tree. And I don't have any points in Grease Monkey anymore. Which is weird. Clubs and more tools. Almost at 50 on those. Tools digest up to 50. Strapping for fun. And I missed this one. More explosives. Tools and machine guns. Right, so what do I need to make level 5 steel tools then? Uh, 59. I can find 8 more tool magazines, I think. Wait, if head mod schematic. Bunch of art of mining, I already know. There's one tool digest. And another tool digest. Right, let me get over to my motorcycle. And I'll head across the street there. Hammers. Sniper. Tools and needle and thread volume 6. That's all there is in here. Skill point, I'll just invest that into strength. I'll unlock more minor 69er and stuff for me. Once I'm done with that though, I'm going straight back into intellect. There is more I want from it, but I just need to get this out of the way. None of those had any tool digests. I don't even think I got one out of here. That sucks. Let's go talk to Trader Joel though. Might be smart to actually just visit all the other traders because the tool magazine is a pretty common one from a few of them. And I have like five different traders I can go to now. And it's day 13 so they've all restocked. I have loads of money. I have the gyrocopter to get me around. Me, I will take the wood and the crafting skill magazine bundles. Now, what do you actually have for sale? A cigar? More custom fittings? I'll see if there's anything else I want to buy and maybe if I... I want to get some kind of discount before I do that. Tools digest, three of them, nice. Some decent weapons, but nothing I want. Eh, I'll get some sugar butts, hang on. Ah, there's none. Well, I'll just buy it then. Two more tools digest there. I only need three more, and I think I get what I want. Buy those, and what was the other thing? The customized fittings, and I do need a bandolier as well. Take off the advanced mufflers, because sneaking is not something I'm going to be doing much. There, steel tools quality 5. Now here's the question, do I even have the materials to make that many, you know, steel tools? Steel pick would take 5, so would an axe then, and I don't need a level 5 steel shovel. I would actively be downgrading to an iron shovel when I make these new things because iron shovels are more stamina efficient and like a level 5 iron shovel can one shot a lot of things. You don't really need a steel shovel, it's just slower and takes more stamina. So I'll be downgrading that. I'm gonna start buying some water filters because late game you need a lot of glue and I haven't been buying any so uh, it hurts my brain but I'll buy them. Uh, do you have duct tape? You do, I'll buy that as well. Because you need 30 to make these two other tools I want to make anyway. Right, is there any traders on the way back home? No, it's just Trader Rex. So let's fly home. Oh, I should grab the motorcycle. Another Trader Hugh to the west, apparently. I think that's the one I know. He has the water filters. I'll probably actually get a discount on these ones since I'm near my base. I can gather up stuff for it. I don't need any books from you. Level 5 steel spears. Hmm. Right, let me go sort out my inventory and stuff. I need one steel tool part if I'm going to actually make my axe and my pickaxe, but I can make one of them at some point. I'm just gathering up a bunch of things that I can sell to Trader Wrecked here. There, I can get 3,000 at least for this club with a bunch of mods on it. 4,256. That's not a bad little sum of money. There we go, back up to like 18k jukes, and I'm immediately going to spend most of it. I want those water filters. I think I have eight now, which should be enough. That is fine. Do you happen to have any steel tools? No. What tier 4s do you have? Right, do you have one more? That's quite close. I'm going to do that one tier 4 before I craft any more steel tools in case I get a steel tool for it. And even if it's just like a terrible ratchet, then it doesn't really matter because I can scrap a terrible ratchet for one steel tool part and make myself two steel 
tools. I will need nine more forged steel though, I think, to be able to do that, but that's fine. Look how much scrap polymer I have. This is an interesting POI. The fucking wolf. Oh, another wolf. Ow. Oh, hello, radiated zombie. He died in like three hits. Lol. Alright, let's head over to this main building then. I don't recall how you're actually supposed to do this. All the zombies broke out of it. Ow. Rude. Well, at least my first aid bandages are really good. Got an arrow. Got some iron ones. Ah yes, I have no real means of opening this, do I? Because it's gonna be this. Yeah, I'll pass. Mostly here for the quest reward anyway, hoping it'll be a tool of some kind I can scrap. I could always scrap the steel shovel, I suppose. I didn't think of that. Because like I want an iron one anyway. Why didn't I just do that? Stupid. But we'll see what Trader Wrecked has anyway. Ah, well, he's gonna provide one for me anyway. I'll take that extra steel as well. Grab that new one. I'll go ahead and make myself two new steel tools. So I need leather, steel tool parts, and duct tape. Well, there's leather. There's the other steel tool parts I need. And the duct tape I purchased already. It's in here somewhere. 39 duct tape. Perfect, right. Run over to my workbench, which is still super glued to the side of the building. I'll replace it eventually. Steel axe, and then pick axe as well. There, so my tools are finally upgraded. Although, I should actually downgrade my steel shovel. Because it is actually inferior to the iron one. So let me go get 48 forged iron. There's 10 forged iron. There's 12 more forged iron. I think that's all the forged iron I have, but I have some bare iron here. Turn this on, and I can start doing that pretty much immediately. There's a very close tier 3, I'll do that, while my tools craft. It all contributes towards the tier 5 complete as well, so that'll be very helpful for me. And I know this POI is filled with books, so could give me something good. It'll probably just give me a bunch of tools. Books, which I don't desperately need. I do want to make an auger eventually, same with the chainsaw, but they are not particularly high priority. Now let's go back to Trader Wrecked and see how my tools are doing. Let's take some more steel, and I'll take some steel armor I could sell back to him with a bunch of mods on it, I guess. Here we go, two steel tools. I'm gonna need twice as many mods now, but we'll see what I can do. Right, let me sort out my inventory and see what I can do in terms of getting like a nail gun and an iron shovel. I forgot I'm actually onto nail guns already, so I don't even have to make the claw hammer. You make me like 50 more forged iron and then what do i need for a nail gun how much steel does it take to just make a level one there's no real reason to make anything better just 16 that's fine uh right let me put that on the top of my priority list then the nail gun springs mechanical parts and a single motor tool part of course that's that done let me queue it up in the workbench then there we go that'll take a few minutes and then for my iron shovel I need just forged iron. I'll need another... Oh, this needs fuel. I'll need another 15. So, that's pretty easy to do. Just have to wait a couple of minutes for that. I need four more ergonomic grips. What do they take to make? Forged steel, which is fine, and glue. 
I've got some water in here, right? Yeah, there's more glue as well. I only need the one more glue. Where's my bones? There they are. I'm probably going to need more than just that. Yeah, there's 15 more glue. There we go, that'll take five minutes. Can I make the fireman's mod? I can, I should probably make one of those as well. Wood splitter and the fireman's axe? Yeah. That'll just be more glue and more forged iron. Cool. Fireman's axe mod. There's my shovel done. Let's see, is it capable of one-shotting this yet? Okay, so we don't have to worry about that at all. I can now collect clay as quickly as a shovel will allow. Augers will always beat it though, so we have to worry about that. But otherwise, pretty good. So, the next thing I want to craft after that, aside from a bunch of robotic turret ammo, is another robotic turret, which would require another 40 forged steel, another 50 duct tape, but everything else I have. So let me see if I can craft 33 forged steel. I can make 32 forged steel. Love that. Let's hopefully that'll be enough. Now glue. Hmm. Yeah, there's there's nine total. Uh, let me cook up a little bit more water. Well, since I'm running short on glue, now is as good a time as any to get started on that do collector farm. 100 for other things, 800 for the do collectors, and then I need. 32 duct tape. The best bet would honestly be going to see a trader and buying it, but they're about to close, so that's no use to anyone. We can get started on one do collector immediately, and then if I get a little bit more cloth here, make some more duct tape and we can make another one. Two do collectors is better than none. Now, to keep my do collectors safe because they generate heat and zombies will probably attack them, I'm going to keep them slightly elevated, and... I'm going to use these concrete blocks because I would never really want to use them on anything actual. And I will build like a little platform for my do collectors to be on. See that misplaced block? That's why I won't build out of these concrete blocks. They're just here for the fun of it. I'm sure that's perfectly fine and there's no problems with it. Make a quick ladder here. And we can place my first two do collectors. Here we go, all these mods are done, let's put them on things. Lead would allow me to actually use the robotic turrets I'm putting so many resources into making. So I'm going to go over there and I'm going to mine up lead until the morning. And hopefully with two, three ranks of Miner 69er and two ranks of Motherload and a decent pickaxe, I should be able to actually get a decent amount of lead here. Okay, I have mined up. 4,800 lead, which is enough to make two boxes of robotic turret ammo. I'm going to go back to my uh, workbench and set those to craft. They'll take five minutes each, so they'll be good for a horde night at least. As you can probably see, I need to grab some food and water. There's some food. Have I got some meat? A little bit. I need to go on a hunting trip, I think. Eh, I've got enough to make a few bits of grilled meat here. I need to put the actual grill in there. There we go. Pick that up. In the meantime, I'll probably just eat some canned food to get this out of the way. Robotic turret ammo, two stacks, that'll be crafted in no time. And for water, I'm just going to go drink from a water source, because I have a water purifier mod on my helmet. Right, so how much more glue did I need again? A uh, robotic turret. I need 50 for this. Did I not need something else as well, though? Oh yeah, the dew collectors, which needs another 24 duct tape. I wonder if I should just go out and buy it. Just visit traders and buy like the 30 duct tape most of them seem to have anyway. And just stock up on it that way. And then in future, I can use the dew collectors to get even more. Do I have the forged steel? I have 30 forged steel. What's my... Oh, there's 10. Right, could we have the forged steel to make the other robotic turret at least? Right, so we know Trader Rec doesn't have any more duct tape, but let's head up to Trader Hugh, who I have had this supplies for, for like a week. I've just not been able to get to him. Been busy. Mm, he's still not open yet, is there a further away trader? Ah, you know what, I'll go over to Trader Bob. Ah, I am going to buy that cool auto mod for my turret that I'm about to make. Do you have any duct tape? No, you don't, but you might have some other good things. He has another crucible. I can just make one though, he has an impact driver, not going to be worth the money to buy it though. Buy myself a full auto mod for my other turret. Some cement, why not, I have loads of money. Who's scrapping for fun to, no, three of these. Buy the water, I do need the glue. Okay, let's go see Trader Hugh. So what do you have? You, he has a robotic turret of his own, level 4. Not bad for 6k dukes. That's probably way smarter than wasting my steel on like, building one. 
Because the level 6s are going to come along and replace them anyway, so fuck it, I'll just take that. I still had the Sugar Butts discount as well, nice. But I do still want more duct tape, you always need more, so if you have any, let me know. I will take a spare ergonomic grip again, and I'll take a spare shotgun choke mod, because you can put those on robotic turrets to essentially work to increase their accuracy. The robotic turret can be given a type of shotgun ammo, and that means that the shotgun choke mod will actually increase its accuracy even if you don't give it the shotgun ammo so that's a great little mod to have for that cool so now i just need a drum mag for this this can only take two mods though yeah i will keep the choke for later and give the full auto and the drum mag to this one it's slightly worse than my one obviously but 6k jukes versus all that duct tape i mean it's a simple equation to me my next priority is getting an actual base, because as good as my horde base is, I can do better. And as good as my crafting base clearly is, I can obviously do better as well. That is pretty high on the priority list, but we should get this horde out of the way first before I bother doing any of that. Now for my spare drum mag. Forged steel, mechanical parts, scrap polymer, oil. Here's a little bit more oil. Uh, that needs to be made in the workbench. How is this doing on robotic turret ammo? Oh, it's done. Unstack those, and then ask for a drum magazine. I can make two technically, but I don't need a second one. So let me put this full auto mod on you. Reload this. How much ammo can this take now that it's maxed out? 285 rounds in one, I guess, drum. This one will take half as much, because obviously... Yeah, it doesn't have a drum mag yet. Now, to incorporate these into my base, I am going to have to do a slight bit of modification. Now, in order to not give the zombies an extra position to attack me from, I have to do this pretty smart. So if I maybe put this there and this there, the zombies won't be able to stand here and use that to get into the base, so they won't try and attack that. If they do try and attack that, it doesn't matter. Even if they break it, they'll never be able to walk into it. So they can do that just fine and hell even if they do start attacking that the base is still good enough it doesn't matter so these two blocks should be positions to be able to hold the robotic turrets from i could instead use two robotic sledges and i will try that later in the series but tonight what i want to do is show the absolute destructive power of these things now can i place this through there i can do that and i can do that and they will lock onto targets quite comfortably even though they're facing slightly outwards so that's gonna work very effectively right now then do collectors i need six more of the fuckers i need glue how are my do collectors that, that i have doing on water one one that again sucks but we have some more boiled water here so i've got six duct tape made and i have seven more water do i have any extra water no these need more fuel any glue out of this? No. Okay, let me go ahead and ask for some more glue. There's another seven glue. So that'll give me 13 duct tape, enough to make three more do collectors. That's something at least. Let me grab my water filters and my pipes. Water filters, pipes. Cool. There's enough for two more do collectors. There's enough duct tape again for another one. Once those are crafted, I'll be able to make another one. There we go. Mod this, give it a drum mag, and how much ammo can you carry? I'm pretty sure it is based on the level of them for the turrets, so it might be different between them, yeah. There's sort of a roll, and the level 6 ones can hold even more. Right, I have another do collector. Place that. Have another one coming. There we go. I guess once this do collector is placed, the next thing to do is just drive around looking in PYs for just glue. To finish it up. Go. Let's get enough glue to make another 12. Have I have looted this place? I don't think I have. There's a skill point. Ow. Let's get another rank of mother load. Make my mining even better. I will go two more points into strength though. And get two more points of... And get another point of minor 69er. Ow. And another point of mother load. Just just a casual first hit. Concussion there, thanks game. Wonderful, love that. Outstanding. Anyway, as I was saying, I'll get those two other ranks of the strength perks I want. And then I'll go back to intellect, because there's other things I need in there. But In single player, it's pretty much necessary to invest in strength eventually, so that you can actually 
mine at a bearable rate. There are workarounds, but none of them are really worth the effort. Miner 69er and Motherload are very cost effective, even for builds that aren't in strength. You know, it's only a cigar, a few skill points, and then another 8 skill points. It's, you know, 10 levels, which is a lot, but relative to an entire playthrough, it's not. These could have glue. That is a landmine. There's four glue, that's something. Okay, we only got a few glue in here because, like, none of the toilets or trash bags were dropping anything useful, but we got four glue from the uh, end loot there, so that works. Let's continue. It's enough for another do collector, at least. This is a construction site. Those sometimes have construction crates, which often have glue. Of course, there's no water in this pool. Love that. Is there a water source nearby? There is a puddle behind me. Ah, some duct tape in that trash can, nice. Enough for half a do collector. Construction crate, come on, gimme glue. Damn it. Nine glue, that'll do it. <laughs> oh, I started this PY, might as well finish it. Let me make some more duct tape here. That'll be just about enough. I need just a little bit more. Here we go. Little scraps of cloth. And that's enough to make a do collector. Ah, uh, three do collector, sorry. But I'm interested in what's at the end of this POI now. Right, I got some lockpicks in here at least. Let's see what's in here. A reflex site. Um. I can put that on my rifle. I don't really aim down sights with him. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What the fuck? Fun pimps, why? I hope this is a bug. Because that looks fucking horrid. Right, let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, and I can start crafting the do collectors now. Of course. Alright, last the do collectors are done. See if the other ones produced anything yet. No, they haven't. Well, I got two from the last ones, but that's fine. So there's eight do collectors that I should <coughs> do. Um, let me get ready for Fortnite. I've got repair kits. I've got fourteen. That should be enough. Now I don't feel like doing much, so I'm just gonna wait for the horde. I'm gonna be really lazy about it and just wait for the horde here for like twenty minutes in real life. <laughs> All right, Horde Knight is it coming up. Take my vitamins, so if I get hit, I don't get randomly infected. I suspect my turrets are going to do most of the work for me tonight, I'm going to be honest. Because they do a lot of damage. I have five ranks in Robotics Inventor right now, so they're doing, what, like... Well, it says 40% more damage. It doesn't list 50% in the final rank. I imagine it probably does, though, and they just forgot to put it in. Either way, 40% more damage is still huge, and I have enough ammo to reload them both a couple of times, so this is going to be interesting. Now, the thing about robotic turrets you have to know, though, is they will activate demo buttons if you shoot them with them, so maybe don't use these late game when you see demolition zombies. Oh, we have some vultures. I'm interested to see if the vultures can hit me more than anything. We never got to test that last time. Doesn't look like it. So I'll just do that. And we'll observe whatever this is. There we go. I couldn't hit the dog with a thick beam there. So I have hit one of them and the rest of that wave is dead. Yep. As you can see, they're pretty good. Wow. One zombie has reached me. Is this one out of ammo? Ah, there we go. Let me reload this one. They can hit against that for a few seconds. Ah, I'll need to blast them away real quick. There we go, place another one. Get them off of that front bit there. And reload my gun. Get away from me. 
Let me keep these repaired. Oh, I didn't bring cobblestone. Shit. Well, I do have blocks, actually. So if that breaks, I'll just replace it. <laughs> that was a bit of an oversight to not bring spare cobble. I did bring the blocks at least, so I'm not completely screwed. Oh, and these do give you full XP, by the way. These are considered, like, your hands. You're killing people with these. These are you, as far as the game is concerned. Um, so you don't have to worry about, like, reduced XP or anything. Can't hit this dog's head. There we go. And that one's needing a reload. Okay. Can I place that, like, in here? No, wait, 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 can I... Hang on, I should probably stop them from breaking my base first. Go away. Yeah, that'll do. Just while I do this. Where's the other one gone? Reload this one as well. There's too many bodies to keep using the same system I had before. I just have to place them where they'll go. I think that one's vision is blocked. Oh, can I not pick them back up? You can place them, but okay, there we go. Can I pick up the other one at all? Is the other one actually out of my reach? That's dumb. You can place it that far, but you can't pick it up that far. What's that about? And then... Boop. <laughs> Yeah, so that other turret is kind of just going to sit there and be abandoned until the end of the night then, I guess. Because it's, it's out of my reach, but that one I can still use. It's so good, what the fuck? Even just the one is just absolutely annihilating them. Really? Stun? Seriously? Incredibly annoying. Okay, game. Critical resistance does nothing, apparently. Turret's out of ammo. I think coordinate's almost over, to be honest. Let me reload the turret. I wonder, would it be any good up there? Don't need to be able to access that one, by the way. I'm out of ammo, so. Is that? Feels like it's it. Let me have a look outside. Anybody? Oh, someone. I don't know if he's part of the horde. Is that it? I think that's it. Let's get the loot here. Scrapping for fun. I think there's some more bags up here, though. So, did they hit anything unusual? No, just... Yep. No, they hit this once, but that might have been the robotic turret more than anything, to be honest. Yeah, that seems more like... Robotic turret just occasionally missing. Yeah, th this went really well. These will need some repairs, obviously. Hello and welcome back to the Intellect series. Today we are going to be doing some higher level jobs than normal because what I want to do is get to building a base, but I don't want to start mining stuff before I have the best level of Miner 69er and Mother Load that this build is going to get, which is going to be 4 and 4. I'm not going to go full 7 strength, I just don't need it. The slack will be picked up quite comfortably by advanced engineering anyway, which is something I want to get. So, 
we don't have to bother with the last couple of ranks there. So we're just going to do some harder POIs because I think it would be really interesting to see how the stun baton, you know, holds in those harder POIs. And as of the morning of day 15 here, I have just turned the game up to nightmare speed all the time. So this is officially an insane nightmare series, but not a full insane nightmare series because the first 14 days obviously weren't always nightmare speed. I'm not going to call this an insane nightmare series, but all the zombies from now on will be nightmare speed because the stun baton was just absolutely trashing everything. I think it's unfair. So I gave the zombies a bit of an extra chance there with some nightmare speed. So I want to get the tier five complete because I'm interested to see what I could get there or if anything is even of any use to me at this stage. We could always get a good robotic turret from the quest, I suppose. Um, but what I really need is the XP for Miner 69er and Motherload so that I can start gathering resources and building a better base. Oh, you got no tier 5 infested? That's boring. Here's a tier 4 infested. Crack cafe. Oh, I'm interested because I have basically nothing boosted right now. Let me see. I've got mining tools boosted and that's about it. So we can probably just knock out mining tools really quickly. I want to do tier 5s. They're kind of far away and I would rather do infested tier 5s because you can do them quicker. But this is all going to contribute and I mean it's given me a crack cafe. I can't say no to that. So let's go see what this tier 4 infested job has to go against my stun baton. And we can't double loot this because I've already looted it once. Although it looks like I missed a couple of containers. Scrapping. Something I really could do with a little more of actually is scrapping books, so this might help me out. Right, let's get in here. Let's see what it has for me. Okay, four zombies in the first room. That's definitely more than usual. You know what, I'm going to loot this after I've cleared it. I'll probably get a level out of it, which could be useful for deciding what I want to get out of it. So far, most of them have been feral and I've been able to deal with it. Oh, that's a lot of red markers. Oh, that's everybody. Right, the roof could be an interesting one. Hi, anybody up here? No, just three. See ya. Right, I still don't really want to jump into that room and try and fight them. The Sun Baton's good, but this is insane, and they are nightmare speed, so... You know, I'm not going to commit suicide just to show how good the intellect build is. I'm going to take fights somewhat intelligently. Holy, hello. Feral Biker. He got his hit in. Ow. He would have been nightmare speed either way though. All my ferals have always been on nightmare speed. Keeps things slightly interesting for me, you know? Ooh, insta-kill. Alright, I didn't get a level. I overestimated how much XP I was going to get from that. I forgot this was a tier 4 infested, so it's actually a tier 3 with a bunch of harder zombies in it. Fills digest and some stuff. Infested crate. Level 6 pipe baton, thanks. Love that. Right, let's pop open these book crates and see what we get. Tools Digest, Iron Breaker Moss Schematic, nice. And Vehicle Adventures. 69 on the tools. Lighting, Ranger. Uh, tools Digest, Dusters, Lighting. Tools Digest again, Vehicles and Big Hitters. Now I'm not really looking for an auger, but I might just make one for the sake of having one later. Two Forge Heads I can't use and Shogun Messiah 1. Foam Cooking and a Blueberry Pie, nice. And Gun Magazine. I'm open to learning to craft better guns of all types because Intellect doesn't really specialise in any of them, so I can really just use whatever. Ah, there's that sealed shipping container. Another thing people were, of course, moaning at me about. They do not like it when I miss the shipping containers. Uh, oh, a pipe rifle. I'm saved. Thank you, comment section. You're the real heroes. <laughs> Scrapping for fun. Uh, the double clothing pocket mods one. Nice. That means I can open up a couple of extra armor slots if I make those. Home cooking. 
Fills. I'm cooking again. Fills cooking. Electrical traps. Fills. Clubs. And of course, she would give me a level 4 steel pickaxe the next day. I'll take some more crafting skill magazines and some steel. So why not? Another tier 4? Hotel Zombona? Sure. Hammers, fists, scrapping. Decent XP and decent money. And I certainly wouldn't mind being able to make like a level 5 impact driver. So my scrapping skills are terrible. And the ratchet only helps so much. Here we are. So far the nightmare speed thing has not massively been able to affect me. You know, when all the zombies are locked in place, it doesn't really matter what speed you put them on. Oh, hey there. Here's the room I always miss. Magnum quality too. That's pretty easy. Oh, just work lockpicks, please. Uh, big hitters, some more lockpicks. The rest of this, I don't really care. Might get a decent quest reward, though. Tier 4s are pretty good. So, the military helmet's worse than mine, and it doesn't sell very well. The military armor, like, you put a bunch of mods on it, you're better off putting that on a steel equivalent, you'll get, like, twice as much. So, I'll take a crafting skill magazine bundle and more forged steel. I'll take a tier 4 fetch clear. 1.5 kilometers away or whatever. Right, let me go clear out my inventory, get some gas, and we'll fly out to Fort Camo, and we'll try and take it on with the Sun Baton. Let's see what the Duke Collectors have produced. Not very much yet. Still, it's something. Yeah, we've got 23 water, let me turn that into glue at the chemistry station. We've got one skill point, I'm actually going to spend that on... Uh, one point of advanced engineering now because that'll give me cheaper glue and since I'm starting to actually produce the glue that seems pretty smart. Also I need that gas and you make me the full 23 glue or whatever. Nice. Let's fly out to Fort Camo. Has this one got landmines around it? I think I can stand on landmines actually so I don't think it matters too much. Yeah I have max turbine combat so even if it does, which it does, I can stand on them. Peep shop. You weren't even part of this POI. Oh, looks like there's a wandering horde coming in. So I'm guessing you open that down there and immediately spawn zombies on me. Yep, that was pretty obvious. Do you guys want to maybe not do that? Okay, there's more. Oh, hey there, buddy. I think I killed him.
And we're done. Right, let's get the supplies and the loot and leave. Tools Digest, Handy Lens, more lockpicks, and some diamond. The really nice thing about the Stun Baton is I profit so much ammo from these jobs because I don't use any ammo. Um, level 6 Steel Spear. You couldn't just give me a Stun Baton. Uh, give me the Crafting Magazine and more steel. I have a Crucible, but it saves me tiny, tiny amounts of time. Assassin Gas Store 5? Sure. I think tomorrow I can get Tier 5 complete done. It's doing Tier 4s, maybe a couple of Tier 3s here and there. If not, we can definitely get it done by the day after tomorrow, because I am pretty deep into Tier 5 here, even just doing Tier 4 jobs. Oh, it's this place. Been a different town. Start that, head inside. Well, that was poorly timed. Really? She infected me on the first hit. This game. Oh, honey. You are forgiven, game, this time. Another Tools Digest. Oh, I took a hit from every single one of them. Give me one moment. Oh, I didn't actually... Oh, probably stopped the bleeding. I was going to say I didn't actually get lacerated. I was looking for a first aid bandage there. Let me pop that real quick. That's going to slow me down a touch because of the uh, attack speed, but I can deal with it. Ooh, some free bellows. Nice. I'm just going to take a first aid kit and have a permanent overheal. Can you hit that door, please? I don't want to open it. I just have to play a little bit slower and that's all. Ooh, that's a reload time and a half. Uh oh. Again with the concussion game. Okay, there's another one there. Kill point. Nice. Uh, what would I want to put that into? Probably just minor 69er. Right, let's fly home, I'll get a cast from my arm, and I don't know, see what we get for this quest, I guess. Go through the barbed wire, just go right through it, it's quicker. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to sort out my inventory and cure this damn arm. Here we go, a cast. I will so just cover myself in steroids. Oh, of course, because I have physician so high up, using a cast makes my... Uh, Injury way faster now. That's pretty cool. I forgot about that. Anyway, let me sort out my inventory. So I'm just going to wait out my arm here. I was going to mine some lead during the night, but don't really want to make my arm any worse. So I'm going to drink this water real quick because I did just take some steroids. And I'll just sit in my base and wait until morning. We can turn in that reward first thing and uh, start some more quests and get tier 5 done. Hopefully tomorrow, if not the day after.
Okay, so it's morning. I have nine water that I boiled up, but let me check the dew collectors and see if they've produced anything a little bit more useful for me. Okay, 20 total. That's another 20 glue if I have the bones for it, which I probably do. I am, um, yeah, still still got a good amount of bones, missing out more on water. And uh, now just to wait for Trader Wreck to open while well, my arm heals. I'll take those and that. An infested clear. Tier 5. Hey, jerk. You Arts rent a car. What? What I'll take that. Open this up. Bunch of random stuff. Alright, let's go do that job. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that my arm will be healed by the time I arrive. <laughs> oh, this PY is gonna be an absolute clusterfuck. My arm actually isn't healed yet. I can wait 15 seconds. Oh, I didn't bring any first aid kits. I'm gonna die. Oh well. There we go. I suppose I should at least try to try in this POI. And this is a tier 5 infested clear, right? Yeah. It will require a little bit of effort at least. And some beer. Hello. Oh, hey. Holy shit. Well, that was a lot of birds. Sliding. Why do I feel so slow? Like, why can I only move at this speed? That was rude. Oh, that's a lot of you. There's a bunch of books in this POI. I need one more handy land book and it's out the loot table. Where am I actually supposed to go? Oh. oh. Okay, that's a scary room. Then again, my baton has a 10% chance to simply insta-kill anything, so maybe it wasn't. Okay, health bar. I'm gonna take some skull crushers. I need to give myself an edge. Or one behind me, really. Aim for a bandage. 60 health from that. Thank you, physician. Ow. Handy land. Nail gun quality 5. Will not be crafting one of those. I'll keep my level 1. That was a light attack. Another bandage. You know, a preemptive health bar wouldn't be a terrible idea because it would give me more crit resist. And it will still heal my injuries faster if I take an injury. I expect this room to possibly maybe need some weapons to actually be fired off, you know? It is the final loot room of a tier 5 infestation. Yeah, I've seen worse. Ow. Oh, hey, buddy. 
How did you hit me? Here comes the mutated zombie. He's a little bit confused up there. Not bad. Good bundle. Nice. And some mods. Tools, scrapping, uh, clubs. Me. Shotgun auto turrets. Nice. Alright, let's go back to Trader Right and see what you get for a tier 5 these days. What's he giving you as a reward, hmm? Steel in a crafting magazine bundle, no doubt. Sounds like him. Ah. I will take that. Do I want the sniper rifle? I honestly think the tactical assault rifle is going to serve me a lot better than most other weapons. I, don't, I really don't need crafting magazine bundles. I'll take the sniper and sell it back to him with some mods. I need more inventory space. That. There's a skill point to put it in. Mother load. We are officially going back into pure intellect now. I'll get probably calculated attack and then advanced engineering. You have anything else here, Wrecked? Eh, they're all full tier 5s. I don't want to do that. Tier 4 infested clear? I'll take that. You got anything good, Wrecked? You reset today, didn't you? Oh, custom things. Custom fittings. What can I put them on? Uh, here will do. Right. Level 6 impact driver. Scrapping is finally going to be worth doing. Let me do a little bit of inventory sorting and I'll head out and do that tier 4. I want the tier 5 complete, damn it. Grab first aid kits this time so that I can actually, you know, heal if I really need to heal. I rarely need a first aid kit, but it is a nice sense of security to have one in your back pocket at all times. Here we are. Let's get started. 69 on wiring, nice. Whoa, that's a lot of zombies. This is an infested clear, I forgot. Two tools digest in that one. That's the joys of having four ranks in something. You start seeing that. Tools digest again. We are going to power to the end of this. I wasn't even trying to gather those today. Scrapping for fun. Yeah, that's pretty much a useless skill at this point. Hey there, Feral Biker. Why does it sound like something horrible is coming behind me? There is something horrible coming behind me. I'm gonna get back outside real quick. What's happening out here? Wandering horde, I assume. Another iron shovel? I mean, mine is better, so... Oh, insta-kill. That's a lot of zombies. Oh, insta kill. Are you a feral biker? Can't tell. We not clear? Guess not. Got the loot though. Ammo. Why am I falling through the world? Do me a favor and just don't do that again. Uh, electrical traps better up. Right, let's hunt down the last few zombies that it considers a part of the POI. I'm assuming they're in this last building over here.
Still not clear. Upstairs then, I guess. Oh, hi. Having a nice set there. I am the kill them. <laughs> Still more of you. There's more on the roof. Alright, let's head back to Wrecked. I don't think that's tier 5 complete yet, so this might go into tomorrow. Ah, level 5 robotic turret. We'll take that to replace my level 4. And I'll take some more forged steel. Ah, tier 5 complete. Um, we are doing military armor and solar could be useful for this build late, late, late in the game. Decent solar cells this time. Oh, I dropped a bunch of my armor, and that was silly. Let me sell him some things here. Call that back up. <laughs> Let's see, is this better than my boots? Yes. Are these better than my gloves? Yes. Are... This is not better than my helmet, but my helmet is level 6, so that does make sense. Better legs, and of course more slots is always nice. Better chest? Barely. You would hope for a lot more from a level 5 chest, but we'll find a replacement. Right, so we got some pretty decent armor there. My armor rating is now... 55, we went up about 10%, and I got the solar bank bundle, and I will upgrade all of this stuff with various armor mods I find throughout the playthrough and sell it back to him down the line. I have loads of money anyway. Um, so I could technically do some more and I would work towards the tier 6 complete, but I don't really want to. Uh, that can be saved for later. Let me put some stuff away really quickly and I'll get back to you. Right, really quickly, let's check the dew collectors. A little bit more washer, I'll turn that all into glue as soon as possible. Oh, you know what I need more than anything right now? The last rank of art of mining. That's what it is, that's what I need. Because that'll give me 20% more ore, right? Or have I already done that? No, I need rank 3, which would give me 10% more ore from coffee, as well as giving me 20% more ore overall from the completion bonus. I don't actually have much coffee. Water has been too tight for glue, so we'll need to catch up on that. We could always buy some from the trader, I suppose. Where can I get the last rank of art of mining? Mailboxes are going to be your best bet for that, aren't they? Is there like a town I haven't explored very thoroughly? There's Trader Joel's town. I've It looks kind of rural and relatively unexplored. Let me go down there and see if I can hunt down the last Art of Mining book. I need to really hit my stride with mining, and then, if not, then, you know, it happens, I guess. I'm gonna check in with Trader Joel, see if he's selling the particular Art of Mining book. I don't have any money on me, but getting money isn't particularly hard, so if he does have it, I could always get my hands on it. No oh, good, I'm thirsty. Do you have what I need? No. Right, well, let's just drive around and look through the mailboxes, then. Paper, mining, and paper. Art of mining, but not the one I need. Good sign, though. Another art of mining, not the one I need. <laughs> Night Stalker. Great heist. Night Stalker again. There's always the mailboxes in the city, like the newspaper dispensers, I think they're called. Those could be good as well. Wasteland treasures, one I already know. Paper. Paper. Oh yeah, the Hogzilla Ranch has a mailbox. Paper. Oh hey, there's this post office. I think I've been here though. Have I? That doesn't look like it. Need one thread and paper. I'll do this first room. Kills Digest. Another tools digest. Art of mining. Right then, so we can officially mine properly. Let's see, how many more tool books do I need while I'm out here? Seven more? Um 
Let's have a drive around for more mailboxes, I guess. We can find seven of those books just to complete it. Let's see here. Joe's USA is a really easy to reach loot. Ticketers. Let's see. Not that one. Surely there's a normal door exposed here somewhere. Oh, we'll just do the POI, fuck it. Home cooking, nice. I believe. Okay, one. Something. A magazine extender. Hmm. Could use that to make guns sell better later on. Let's continue the mailbox searches, though. Unless I find another book-related POI, or just a, a POI I know has a decent amount of books. You know, I think these mailboxes, like the house mailboxes, are more geared towards skill books, like art of mining and that kind of thing. I think we want to go a little bit into the town here and look for the newspaper dispensers. Now, there is a crack a book here, but I'm assuming I've been here. Oh, yeah, I've been here. <laughs> Shotgun weekly? Yeah, could be useful there. Tools digest, nice. Five more. I see a tool crate in the back of that. Skill point. Let's go for some. Oh, it's got to be calculated attack. Get even more attack speed with my batons. Another tools digest. Four more. Hmm, there is a passing gas here. These are a decent one for tools. Okay, we got two passing gas containers in here, I believe. One, nice. Need three more. Two. Need two more. It's nice because it's the only thing I have any points in that I still have to finish. So it's just absolutely everywhere. Night Stalker. Is there no other passing gas containers in here? Is it just the two downstairs? That kind of sucks. Oh well, let's keep going. I can guarantee another couple of passing gas containers, though I can pretty much guarantee the last couple of books I need. There's this place. It's another car PY. Is there a way I can, like, look in and see the end loot and know if it's worth my time? I hope the end loot isn't... Oh! I was going to say I hope the end loot isn't in the basement, but I see it there, so I'm good. There's... Oh, two. Perfect. We can now make level 5 augers and chainsaws. Which I don't need, but I part of me just really wants to do that. Two electrical traps. Right, let me fly home. The gyrocopters actually in the motorcycle's inventory. I can probably make an auger, to be honest. I should have all the motor tool parts and stuff that I need. And the chainsaw. I won't really have the gas to use them, though. I'll have to do another mining trip in the desert. Which, ironically, will be done with a steel pick, because steel picks are better at mining oil shale. Let's see. Glue. I have a bunch more than that, of course. I also need mechanical parts, pipes. There's pipes, leather, uh, actual duct tape. Oh, there's the rest of my glue. Uh, springs. I have those. They'll just make six duct tape to start with. And then for the auger and the chainsaw, I'll need five more tool parts, a bunch of steel. Uh, more tool parts. Where are they? There's three. I know I have more than that, though. There's a bunch more steel. There's an engine. There's another engine. Uh, what was the thing I needed? Motor tool parts. Yeah. My storage system, quotation marks, is terrible. There we go. So that should be everything I need. I just need bicycle handlebars. And of course, I'll do like a tier 5 infestation tomorrow, and it'll give me it as a reward, but 
Let me have this, damn it. Do those up. Is that really all you need? You don't need glue or anything? Cool. There's one. Queue up the auger. I think next I'm going to try and get the 4x4 just for the sake of it. It's like the one thing in the progression I haven't got yet, so I may as well, right? The auger and all the mining stuff I've done would definitely help with getting iron and then turning all that into forged steel to then make the 4x4 because that's the main limiting factor. The 400 steel you need. And let me queue up a chainsaw as well. There we go, perfect. I will wait for these to craft and get back to you. And there's my auger and my chainsaw, just in time for the morning of day 17. So yeah, we got a decent amount of stuff done in this video. Uh, we got the art of mining finished, we got harvesting tools finished, I got my miner 69er and mother load as far as I'm going to take them for this playthrough. Um, and we started on getting some calculated attack, we got the auger, we got the chainsaw, we got the tier 5 complete with the military armor. Uh, what else did I get for my tier 5 complete? A solar bank, that'll be useful later. Hello and welcome back to the Intellect CD. Today I think what we're going to do is build a new crafting base because my crafting setup is a little bit lame. I have one chemistry station, one campfire, one forge with one crucible, no cement mixers and I have a workbench super glued to the side of that silo because it got stuck. Which isn't optimal for when you want to go and build big bases in the late game. I need to build myself something better. Now the issue there is, is I don't want to spend loads of time building something, you know, aesthetically pleasing. I just want almost the most efficient base I could have. And I want to build it slightly underground like the last crafting base I did, but nowhere near as deep. That took ages to dig out. And I think the idea I'm going to go for is like an 11 by 9 box, slightly underground, which I can then easily protect with turrets and, you know, spikes. But to do that, I'm going to need materials. And the big ones I'm going to need are cobblestone because I like to build just straight out of cobblestone. I typically don't like to start building from wood and then upgrade all the way through. It's good XP but if you think about it this way, yes you'll get a lot of XP for building a big base and upgrading it but at the same time you use a lot more time. If you just build the base faster you can get back to doing slightly less mind numbing forms of XP gain and I've not extensively tested the XP rates or anything, but I think it's probably better for my brain if I just build quickly and then get back to killing things. So that's the way I like to do things. I'm gonna guess I'll probably need no more than 500 cobblestone blocks. I think that would probably be excessive, but it doesn't matter too much because I'll need those cobblestone blocks later. But before I do that, I need to consider the crafting stations I'm going to need and the crafting stations that my workbench will, on its own, be able to produce. So I think the first thing to do is work on getting a bunch of extra workbenches so I can build all the other stuff faster. And then we can take that over to the new crafting base and go from there. So workbenches require forged iron, duct tape, mechanical parts, and nails, and of course wood. So let me see what I have in these seven boxes and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I am severely lacking vague various kinds of iron products. So let me take the iron scrap I have and the clay and use some of it in the forge here. I'll get some fuel in here. How many workbenches do I want? So the idea I had would have seven workbenches, which is a lot. But those of you who've watched how I play this game know that I like to produce a lot of things very quickly because it's the best way to do it for a YouTube series where if you have a sudden change of plans, you can produce a lot of things very, very quickly, which is really helpful for my time management in real life. That's why I go so crazy with my crafting bases. Let me turn that on and start it smelting. Do I need immediate seven workbenches? No, I think just a few extra ones right now will help. I can get started on 57 forged iron, but I probably should start with the nails. So let's go for three workbenches as a starting point on top of the one I have. So that would require 253 nails. And then I'll just pump out the rest of the forged iron I can get. As this comes out, there will obviously be way more iron smelted in there. So we don't have to worry about that. Duct tape, of course, I will need so very many pieces of duct tape. Uh, let's see, my dew collectors may have produced some more water so I can make even more glue here. I've got like 50 glue, but it's not duct taped yet. Alright, there's an additional 12 water. If I grab my bones... Oh, hang on, speaking of bones. Now, someone was telling me you can actually get the full harvest from bodies and stuff with the stun baton, so... I mean, that is the full harvest, I think. 
I'll have to find another deer to verify, but it, that seems right. But it took a lot of extra time compared to just macheteing it. But I suppose it's good to know. Oh, you know where I can find a bunch of animals though? Bob spores. That would work. How far away is that? 500 meters? I'll go over here. This place has barbed wire, which I didn't know about. Um, before I collect all those extra bones. I don't want to do this full POI. I don't have the water to make the glue, but I do want to test the stun baton. See if it actually is, like, a viable alternative to the machete. Come here, boar. As a meat collecting tool. Obviously, it's a good weapon. The series has proved that. We'll get you 30 meat and 20 bones. And let's go kill another boar. And boar do give, like, a static amount of meat and bones. It'll be increased by your huntsman skill, obviously. But you don't have to worry about getting different amounts per boar. Okay, and let's stun baton this one. Obviously, it'll take longer, but as a viable alternative to the machete, 3016. Maybe bones are variable then, but you definitely get the same amount of meat. Let me test another boar with the machete. It definitely seems like it's equal then, but I assumed you always got the same amount of bones, but maybe you don't. Let's see. Oh, that was a bad test. I didn't let the inventory screen clear there. So now it just looks like I got 60 bones. Shit, it's fine, there's more boar. I'm gonna end up clearing this whole fucking POI, aren't I? So, this time we'll be able to see like plus 30 and that'll be an indication of how many bones you get. So this one's still got 30, 20. The logical thing to do now would be test the stun baton again and see if it gets 30, 16 again. Right, so, let's see if it still gets 16 bones. Yeah, okay, so it seems pretty reliably that the machete will get you 20 bones versus the stun baton will only get you 16. So if you want bones, the machete is definitely the way to go. It's also faster. But if all you want is meat, you can certainly choose to use the stun baton for whatever reason. But I want bones, so I'm just going to keep using my machete. Grace down there, is she visible? Grace will kick my ass right now. I will probably try and kill her anyway. This probably warrants an overheal. Oh, I can get sneak attack, nice. Run away! Uh oh, I forgot all the bodies. Oh, I destroyed her body. <laughs> that sucks, that's like a hundred bones missing. Oh well, still there's a bunch of bones down here. That is the danger of hunting with an automatic rifle, I suppose. You can completely destroy the body. Still whole lot of bones out of this place, which I absolutely didn't need because I only have 12 water, but we wanted to do some science, so here we are. And now I have loads of meat as well. Uh, also, all that time did to, all that stuff, didn't remember to actually craft the duct tape. Right, chemistry station, I'm gonna have to ask you to make me some glue. Right, so that's that handled. How's the forge been doing? Perfect. Uh, let's get more forged iron. I'll need some for chemistry stations as well if I'm going to make those. So we can make a few workbenches. So let me queue those up. Um, two, and I'll need more forged iron. Uh, I can make one of those in my other workbench though. Hang on. Instead of taking ten minutes, it will now take five. Now for my other forged iron, I kind of just have to wait for my forge or go and scrap something. But I can't think of anything to scrap nearby for some forged iron. I have more iron to put in my forge now at least. Here we go, one more piece of iron, and I can make myself another workbench, queue that up in the same place. Okay, so I'll have my three workbenches and everything will go much faster now. The next big thing is probably going to be not for crafting this base specifically, but to have them I will need cement mixers at some stage in this playthrough obviously, uh, which are pretty easy to make. God, I need a new storage system now. Cement mixers obviously require more forged iron engines and mechanical parts will probably wait on those then and then forges are the other things i would need more of i wanted to make seven forges as well so that will work quite well let me just find the pipes i'll need some cobblestone there's a little bit but i have more than that i know i do there we go some leather and some logs which you have to craft so that's fine i'll just queue up seven logs do I have enough of everything else to make seven forges? I do. Although I only need to make six forges because I have one. I'll also need six bellows logically, so... Oof, that's going to require a lot of leather, but I think I have it because I've been scrapping every office chair this playthrough. After the leather shortage of the last one, I was like, I need to remember to do that for once. Ah, there it is. 
yeah, it's just a shit storage system. Uh, if I need six more bellows, then I need 30 more nails. That's fine. There we go, and I will queue up six more bellows. And while I'm here, let me just queue up these cobblestone blocks as well. There's 112 more. Should be in a good position there, but I do want more. And in the interest of getting more, I think it's time we grab my auger, find the location I want to build this underground, and get a bunch of clay in the process. But let me grab the auger first. So I need to dig, let's call it seven down, if I want to put like grass over it, and have it be completely hidden, that could be kind of cool. But yes, yeah, six overall plus the one for the seven so down six nine by eleven so let me see how long this is gonna take uh hopefully i have enough gas for it as well i'll just start it here right so there's the square marked out i got a lot of clay from that so i'm gonna immediately go and turn as much of that into cobblestone as i can so that i can make it into cobblestone blocks and i can build this base faster and i can get back to you know doing more interesting things quicker is one of my workbenches done? It is. Now, you don't need workbenches to make cobblestone, obviously, but I can make it much, much faster by having workbenches doing it rather than just me. So, ask this for a few thousand cobblestone. I'm going to go see if that other workbench is done. It should be. Also, I'm thirsty, so I'm going to go run to a puddle over here and drink it with my water purifier head mod. Well, oh, this one's done pretty much everything. Put this in here for now. So, 1,300 between the two of them. My bellows can go in the toilet. That'll do. Chemistry station. That needs three cooking pots. I have those for sure. There they are. Oh, I have everything else I need. I had the pipes on me. Cool. Um, I'll wait for this workbench to be done and I'll have that one dedicated to just making this chemistry station. Now, this crafting base is clearly unnecessary because I could shove workbenches, chemistry stations, cement mixers all over this place. I just don't really want to. I don't like living like that, so I just won't. <laughs> Now I need pipes. That is so strange that pipes are the thing I need. And of course I put my bellows in the toilet so I can't even use that. You don't get pipes from those apparently, but here's a sink. And I have downstairs stuff that may have some pipes in it. Uh, like a sink. Do refrigerators give you pipes? These have pipes. That makes sense. There we go. I should be able to make the six forges now. They'll just craft out over time. There we go. The clay layer is gone, which puts us at one, two, three, four out of seven deep. And some of it is actually crushed sand and iron. So that'll be nice and helpful to get the other layers. I'm going to quickly run back. Look at all the clay I have. Uh, I'm going to quickly run back and check on those workbenches and get them crafting up even more blocks if I can. Doubt I'm going to need anywhere near that many blocks. This is a very compact base design, but it doesn't hurt to have spare cobblestone blocks because they're basically my frames. And the nice thing about working so much in cobblestone blocks is I rarely need to cut down many trees. So you got me another 800 cobblestone there. I'll order another 40 blocks out of each of these then. Uh, that puts me up to 376 blocks, solid amount so far. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the pickaxe for this next section of the digging because it is actually faster at digging stone. Alright, I think that's everything mined out. It looks kind of weird there, but we didn't get a screamer at least. So, I have a bunch of blocks on me, so I might as well just start this immediately. Let me take that out. So, I'm going to put the floor in. Just going to be cobblestone. The base doesn't need to be any better than cobblestone because it is just going to be an underground crafting base, which means that the only important block is going to be the block on the top because that's the one the zombies are actually ever going to attack. And I plan on putting SMG turrets down, so they should probably never have to worry about it. Can I make those? Not yet, but soon I'll be able to make them and that'll be fixed. In the meantime, I'll just surround the base with a bunch of spikes, I guess. There we go. Now, ignore that this says that it's going to break. It's just something to do with ground level in Seven Days to Die. It seems to think if you place this, it'll break. As you can see, it doesn't. I don't know what that's about, but it seems to be just a thing. <laughs> so just ignore it. Oh, I did the thing. I made it too tall. Yeah, no, the top layer was supposed to be grass. I forgot. Let me break these. Still saves so much more time when you're not having to upgrade every single block multiple times. I do have a nail gun, and it would still take ages to upgrade this. So ignoring this one minor mistake, it would be much, much faster. It's still going to be faster, but not as fast as it could have been. So one, two, three, four. There we go. I wanted four on the inside. There we go. And now fill in the walls. Okay. We have 14 blocks to spare. It's a very simple cube. 
by well it's not a cube it's a cuboid because it's 11 by 9 it's a very simple cuboid um by design let's see i don't have enough topsoil yet let me go back to my base and start gathering up all the crafting stations to put in there oh and i'll need a hatch there's one uh what about you cool yeah that did give me a lot of xp the comments were right if i just use like a first aid bandage will i get a level there we go <laughs> Completely wasteful, but I have so much of them, and I was really close to a level, so I thought, why not? Uh, you know what? Advanced engineering is probably the way to go. We are kind of getting into that stage of the game where I am producing a lot of stuff. There we go. I had a bunch of spare topsoil blocks. I'm just going to throw them away. Um, Let me make a hatch. Wouldn't want to do for now, but that is very little security on a pretty expensive base. And my extra forge will obviously fill in that gap there. Workbenches can go on top of forges, of course. I forgot to get the other ones. Oh, I have my spare chemistry station. I forgot. Let me place you there. Um, the cement mixers are going to go in like the gaps between the chemistry stations. And then there will be storage on these walls here and here. The campfires are going to go like on a little side piece here with a generator here and a bedroll here. It's pretty compact for the amount of stuff you're fitting into it. Um, you could also fit more storage on top of the chemistry stations if you wanted to. Let me go pick up those other two workbenches really quickly. I didn't bring my nail gun, did I? Right, well, we'll have to upgrade the hatch in a, in a minute, because <laughs> I didn't actually bring a nail gun to do it. Forge. There we go, all seven of my forges. Now, in the last playthrough, I had, what was it, ten forges? But here's the thing. This time... I'm going to have advanced engineering, which massively improves the efficiency. So even though this is a tiny, tiny little cobblestone box, this is probably going to be more efficient than that massive underground base I had in the last series, which is a nice benefit of intelligence. Do that. Now, obviously, plenty of people hate it when you do this. I don't care. Oh, no, they're called steel hatches now. I keep forgetting that. Steel hatch. Where are you? Steel hatch. There's also steel wall cabinets. I'm interested to see what kind of storage they actually have. I doubt they'll be worth it, but let's find out. Right, I need to get some storage. Uh, let me go ahead. Where are the forges? I'm going to split my clay so that there's like a thousand clay in each of these forges. There we go. That should do. And now I was going to say I need iron, but I have iron because I mined it. I forgot. So I don't even have to go out and get more. Let me go ahead put in how much iron do you need for an anvil iron i think is a direct one so like one iron you put in one iron you get out you get like five clay for every one clay you put in so i'll try and put 1250 iron in here as much as possible and we're a little bit short on iron for the last one but there's no harm in getting it to do its thing here we are feeling a little bit safer with that and steel wall cabinet and a steel wall hatch. I don't know why I had three workbenches and decided to do that in the same one, but it's fine. Now here's the problem with a steel wall cabinet. I don't know how much storage it has, so it could be terrible. So what I'm going to do is put it like there. That's not bad. But you don't get the benefit of having like a name on the side. So, mmm. Um, if I got spare steel, I do. 1500 health. That doesn't feel worth it. But if you do want the absolute most space, then it looks like the wall cabinets are the way to go. Because I think these give more than like a writable storage crate, but I I find the organization of the storage crates to be way more worthwhile than the health or the storage of that. So yeah. Oh well, there's wall safes which function as the same. I wonder if they're worth using at all. Let's make a wall safe as well. Just doing some storage science. Bedroll there, a couple of campfires here. I rarely cook anyway. And I'll put a generator bank here once I've got some spare materials, and I'll have like a switch and a relay and stuff on these blocks here. Are you done with the wall safe? You are. Let's see, is it worth... Is it worth? I mean, you can definitely fit extra storage like this. For example, if I was to try and put a writable storage here, it wouldn't work because I wouldn't be able to move. But I could put it there. Uh, you have n next to no storage. I imagine you have decent health. That has more health than the steel one. Game, have you forgotten how your own progression works? So, these give you more storage, but these have more health. But these cost steel. 
Either way, it's kind of cool that I'll be able to basically put storage on every block on the inside of here if I need it with the wall safes and the wall cabinets because they take up a block, but they let you move through that block, unlike the writable storage, but I still think the ability to like label my storage is so much more useful than extra health or the ability to walk through that tile. But, you know, we're learning things. That's a tip for you if you're trying to make a really compact base or a really defendable base, I guess, as you have a bunch of storage containers. I think what I really do need is just more iron more than anything. I don't want to mine right next to my house. Let's go over there. There's 7,000 more iron. That's enough to put another 1,000 in each of the forges, of course. And that'll help me make just, you know, a little bit more forged iron out of all of them. Oh, that last one had to be placed that way, really. Uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I'll place a couple of extra ones here. I will run into these regularly, don't you worry. Uh, maybe in that vein, I should stop myself from doing it at least partially with, like, some railings. And that will also slightly slow the zombies down, though not entirely, because they will just jump over this. It's just a little fence, but it's to stop me from running straight into the spikes as I go outside. In fact, I could probably make that much more foolproof if I do something like this. There. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would actually, you know, I've childproofed it. <laughs> I shouldn't run into my own spikes now. Uh, you know what, maybe just another one there as well. That works. This one is about to be done and then I can get it to make me some nails. Once I have some nails, I can make some storage and I can start moving all my stuff across, which will stop me from having to just sit here and do nothing for two minutes. So, uh, make me 600 nails. Um, I don't think I'll need that many, but just make me them anyway, it's fine. And are you done on nails? You are. So, how many writable storage crates can I make? I can make 60. How many do I need, though? Uh, I can split that, like, four between each of my crafting thingies here, and it'll only take 45 seconds. And I'll have a bunch of extra nails for my workbenches I want to make anyway. Let's get the storage started. I think I actually want them to be in line with this. There we go. There's 16 storage crates, which should be enough for... A mid-game base to be able to sort out into basically everything. Let me just start that process now. Okay, first uh, load of stuff has been sorted out into these containers. Let me see what the forges can do. I need more forged iron. Just across the board. Oh, let me make sure I put the anvils in first. More forged iron. More forged iron. Even more. Would you guess? Even more. And even more. Cool. Right, let me go get more stuff from my old base here. There is all the materials I need for four more workbenches. Let's craft one in my inventory. And one in each of the other workbenches. There we go. Next, I need cement mixers. And I need... Well, I don't need eight, but I was thinking about getting eight. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Which would require eight engines. I only have three. And I only have 30 mechanical parts, so let's make three cement mixers, I guess, since I have the perfect amount to do that. Yeah, and that'll do nicely. Let's just do those in each of the workbenches as well, because they need to be done in the workbench. So, I want another five cement mixers. Going out and scrapping a bunch of cars will get me all the materials I need to be able to do that anyway, so works. Uh, and then it would be chemistry stations, which the major issue there is going to be the two beakers I would need to make two more. Well, you know what? I could actually do with a lot more than five engines as well, because if I want to make a generator bank, that's going to require a lot of extra engines. Up to six. Don't think I'll need six. Oh, there's one engine. Um, But I'll see what I can do about maybe getting, like, one generator for the generator bank, at least, so I can have some lights in my house. There's another engine. Nice. Another engine. That's decent luck on those, at least. Another engine and a battery. Oh, the impact driver is so good. It's so much easier to scrap cars now. Oh, there's one in there. I missed it. So I've got my five cement mixer engines. At least I wonder if I should just go for like six engines for my generator bank. It only took me like a couple of minutes to get that many engines. How much harder could it be really? Besides, I've not found any medical PYs I haven't looted yet, so... Need to do some driving anyway. I also need crucibles, don't I? Hmm... That's something to consider. I'll need more forged iron and mechanical parts. And oil. 
but getting six more crucibles could be very helpful. But there's no rush on that. I don't plan on using that much forged steel just yet, but it would be kind of cool to get it out of the way. Really quickly, let me go back to my base and start crafting up those five extra cement mixers, and we can drive out maybe to another town and see if there's any unlooted medical PYs, because this town's pretty looted as far as that's concerned. Let's see, workbench and cement mixer, I'm going to have to place a bunch of stuff. Hang on, hang on, let me sort out my inventory. There, so I have seven workbenches crammed in here and it's great. Let me place a few uh, cement mixers as well. Uh, so, one, two, three, four, five. Cool. Need some more forged iron, but I'm going to be grabbing a bunch of scrap iron when I'm out uh, scrapping. So, that should solve itself relatively easily. The next thing I will need is the extra 200 forged iron, of course, for the chemistry stations is already done, so I don't have to worry about that. But if I want six crucibles, I will need another 600 forged iron, so maybe I should look into also scrapping any forged iron stuff I see on my travels. I think I'm just gonna... Let's see, where would be the best one? I think flying north to this town and scrapping everything I can find and looking through all the medical POIs is gonna be the best bit. Get the motorcycle here. Oh, did I leave all my mods on the auger and then leave the auger at home? That's mildly annoying. It's going to take me longer to break into things. Right, so there's no point trying to break through those doors because there's a bigger door behind it. See? So, we just break this and then go around. Let's get into some fights. Oh, I only brought one arrow. Well, I made it count at least. Oh, I'm stuck behind the button. That'll do. Ow. Oh, hey, buddy. This feral light just died. Did I bring lockpicks? I brought four. We can give it a try. There's no lab boxes here, but you might get a uh, beaker out of those anyway. So I might as well grab what's here while I'm here. There we go. Two acid at least. Is this the one that has the loot in this room? Eh, let's try the wood. That'll do. Farming. Uh, right, let's open up this crate here. Obviously not going to have a beaker in it, but it could have something useful. Uh, electrical traps, wiring, vehicles, and a battery. Oh, cool. nothing in here, but it took seconds to clear, so let's continue driving. Forged iron, mechanical parts, and electrical parts. So mechanical, electrical, and some forged iron. And I'll queue up one of those. Speaking of things I was queuing up, let me get these cement mixers down as well. Another one there. Another one there, and there, and fill in this gap with them as well. There, eight cement mixers. Uh, that's way more than I'll ever need, but that's how I do things. Right, so, what I need is just a bunch of forged iron and a couple of beakers then. So let's go see Trader Wrecked and see if he has any medical POIs for me, because they are a guaranteed, at least chance, at getting a lab box, which are probably one of the more reliable ways of finding the beaker. Also, just high tier end loot is also a solid source of beakers, so we can also do that. Right, so none of his PYs are great options for getting beakers. What do I want to do? I mean, he does have like a pop in pills, but it's like six kilometers away, and I bet it's in the wasteland, and I'm not quite ready for that. Well, it's not super high priority. Let's go down to the Trader Joel town, the one that I went to before to get the of mining books because I know it's mostly unlooted so I could probably just clear it from one side to the other and come out with something. Uh, let me order up some more forged iron from my base though. All I really want from the generator bank right now is just something to turn the lights on. Doesn't need to be able to do anything crazy. Grab that, grab some gas. Also I'll need ammo. 762 arrows. And I've got the gas on me so chuck that in there. Refuel all. And I'll need some light bulbs, because that's all I wanted from it. Uh, electrical parts. Yeah. I think people were saying the fluorescent lights don't randomly change up on you. So let me make a few of those and 
four different workbenches there. That can go there for later, more for putting the turrets up outside. Right, so I have 300 iron. If I don't think I'm going to be getting the chemistry station anytime soon, I might as well get as many crucibles as I can. So I also need mechanical parts, oil, clay and stone. Decent amount of stone, that's for sure, if I've got clay. And I've got clay. So let's queue up. Crucible, crucible, crucible. And that's all I can make crucible-wise. Let's get these lights. So I'm up to four crucibles, once those are crafted anyway. So that is a good start. Place these lights in. Let's see. I have a wiring tool somewhere, right? I've got plenty of them. Please take ten watts each. That's like an SMG turret's worth. Why? It's just a light. Whatever. There we go. We're fully lit up in here, at least. I wouldn't mind finding another, like, five engines, just so that the generator bank is done and I don't have to think about it anymore. Oh, I see a mortician's house. They usually have, um... What are they called? Lab boxes at the end, I think. And they have chemistry sets, which I think may have a chance of giving you a beaker. I'm actually not sure about that. Worth a shot, though, I think. Right, I'm taking no prisoners today. I'm going to break into this house, get the loot. I'm going to do the same at the mortician's house as well. What the fuck? Ow. Right, no lab containers, but this loot is right here. Oh, triple armor pocket mod. I uh, think that can be used to free up another slot, maybe? Or am I fully triple armor po I'm, I'm fully triple armor pocket modded up. I'm good. Well, we can save that for some kind of armor to sell. Right, let's run across the street, see what I can do to the mortician's house here to cheese some easy loot. I know how to skip most of the PUI, but you're still going to have to do, like, the final fight. Oh, hello. Didn't expect a wolf. Now you can dig around here and get into the hatch and stuff, but you're gonna have to break through a steel hatch to get in anyway, so just just take the fight. That's what I would do. Ah, here's a lab box. Forgot about this one. No beaker. See, this is the difficulty. An acid, though. Pretty glue. Get some forged iron out of this. Still someone back here? No lab boxes. Well, there's always the final loot for a chance at stuff. No beakers. Let's continue. Uh, really quickly, Moe's Grocery also has some really easy to access end loot. I might have already looted the place, but the end loot is easy to get and there's a cement mixer in there. Nope, no beaker this time. This uh, farming POI, I think, next to me, uh, has also very easily accessible end loot, so I will also just run straight to that. Let's get out of here. Ooh, that could have been bad. There's a pharmacy in there. Could that be useful? Anything in the pharmacy? In terms of, like, lab crates, anyway. Doesn't look like it. Where's the end loot to this place again? Had time to run out of stamina. Can I fucking move, please? That stun sucks so bad. Yeah, that didn't work. Oh, I sprained everything. Of course I did. Why wouldn't I? Fuck off, cop. Where did I break in again? I think I brought a splint with me, at least. Oh well, I don't know if that's actually going to cure both of those sprains, but whatever. In fact, if I don't have it on me, I probably didn't bring it. <laughs> Let's see here. 
Um, of course, there's always vitamins. Grab those. I can't see a splint, but I think I might have the materials to make one. Let me make some duct tape. this cure both of them? What do you mean you can't use it? What are you fucking talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? You can't use the splint at this time. What? The whole point of the fucking splint is that I have physician rank one and I can use that to cure sprains. Is it because I have two it doesn't know what the fuck you can do? Seriously. This game's fucked. Ugh. Fucking ten years in development. Let me go ahead and get some water then since I used the painkiller. I'm not going to bother with the end loot for that place. It's too big of a POI. Waste of time. What if I have two splints? Nope, can't figure it out. What a game. Seriously, game. Oh, you suck so fucking much. Oh, if people would watch me play literally any other game, I would play it. At least now I think I can cure the arm. And then can I cure the... Okay, that that has gotten rid of it at least. I still have 13 minutes on a broken arm now, for fuck's sake. I had to break my fucking arm to splint my leg. What is this game on? Okay, well that was a nice little detour. At least I found a way to cure my leg. I mean, I had to absolutely snap my arm. But, you know. You know what? There is no but, you know. That's the end of the sentence. I had to fix my leg by snapping my arm. Welcome to Seven Days to Die. Put that on the fucking box art. I suppose one last ditch effort would be to just check if the trader here is selling one. I would have to fly back and get money, but that's not a big deal. Merchandise. No beaker. He's selling too many bikes. See, this one's made me 100 more forged iron, and it can make another 100 forged iron, and I'll give it even more iron. And it'll probably be able to make me another bit of forged iron. So there's another crucible's worth, at least. Something. Let me clear out my inventory here. Let's see, crystals, where did I start the chain of these? Was it here? Right, there's the more crystals, so we're up to four out of seven. And then I'll grab the materials to make another one. Where did I put my forged iron? Oh, in the scrap for some reason, okay. Oil and stone and clay. Crucible, and then I need 58 more forged iron. We're close to getting that, actually. There we go, another crucible. Let's see, this one's already been used. Crucible. Right, I'll need a little bit more mechanical parts and oil. Am I actually properly out of mechanical parts? I think I am. I'm gonna have to go scrap a couple of cars. Hang on. Here we go. Scrapping that one tractor gave me enough. Got a little bit of iron as well. I think I should have enough iron cooking to make a hundred forged iron. Not hundred percent sure on that, but I imagine so. Yep, that that'll be more than enough. That works. We'll have a crucible, and that means I'll have all the crucibles I'll need for this playthrough. Hopefully, there's one crucible. Uh, which one of you doesn't? There we go. There we go. It's five out of seven. There we go. One more crucible to go. Here we go, the last forged iron, and one more crucible. There, I have all the crucibles I need. Just gotta wait for that one to craft now. And there's our last crucible. A little bit of concrete going in here, we have all my crucibles ready to go. The last thing I need to do is get a couple of uh, chemistry stations, one there and one here, but they're not super high priority, and I can put in some extra stuff along these walls if I need it as well. Pretty good crafting base, they should be pretty good good for the rest of the game. I just need some SMG turrets to defend it, which that's going to require some tier 5s done. To do tier 5s, I'm going to make a bunch of robotic turret ammo and just have them shred the tier 5s for me, basically. 
Hello and welcome back to the Intellect series. You've caught me in the middle of my mining. I am mining up enough ammo to make seven stacks of AP robotic turret ammo because I have seven workbenches that can all work on that at the same time, meaning it'll be done in four minutes, which is pretty fast ammo production, honestly. 7,000 ammo in five minutes is pretty good, but I do need to get myself up to 16,000 ammo lead to do that and getting 16,000 iron was really easy because you get twice as much iron as you get lead so it probably took about as much time to get that much iron as it's taken me to get this much lead so I'm gonna mine here for a little bit and then I'll craft that ammo and we'll take my robotic turrets out to some kind of high level POI I'm thinking at least a tier 5 infestation those are my preferred quests if I can get them because they just give so much good stuff for how quickly you can complete them so I'll do this and get back to you. Really quickly, I got a skill point there. I think I'm going to keep going with advanced engineering. There we go. There's enough to make seven boxes of robotic turret ammo. Let me go queue that up. Oh, we got a screamer. Where, where did she go? Oh, she got shocked to death or something. Okay, so each workbench can make me one of these. And that means in four minutes, I will have 7,000 robotic turret ammo. Armor piercing robotic turret ammo, to be specific. Which is so incredibly excessive for what we're going to be doing. But um, I can do it, so why wouldn't I? Now, before I go and do that quest and while that ammo crafts, I want to go and upgrade some key pieces of my horde base into concrete just to make sure that some of the pieces are a little bit more secure just in case they decide to do something a little bit wrong 20 seconds on the ammo let me go ahead and open that and load both of my turrets with it then grab a couple more boxes uh, you can hold what like five stacks in a stack of stacks so we'll grab that and i'll open this last one put the extra in there so i should have more than enough ammo to clear any BOI. Let me grab this. This. Let's go talk to Trader Rect and see if he has any fun jobs to do. Ones that can really challenge me, you know? Let's see, he's got a tier 5 infested clear. A checkpoint, and that works for me. This is a very small tier 4 POI, so as a tier 5 infestation, this thing is going to be the most clustery of clusterfucks. Okay, let's get it started. Checkpoint 3. Yeah, I've not done this one. Damn, that is a lot of cars. I really want to scrap those. Oh, give me a minute. There we go. I don't actually think I can get back to the gyrocopter. I think it's technically out of the POI's radius. So I'll just dump this extra stuff I got there in here. Wait, is this unlocked? It is. This seems like a convenient place to try and choke point some zombies. Let's just line them both up. Hello? Oh, just a few guys? Whatever, just come get shot by my turrets, why not? Wow. Just that easy, huh? This seems like the kind of spot for some turrets as well. What are you planning, game? Oh, there's a button. Oh, yep, that that seems like yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, that'll do it. Um so the turrets are a little bit OP. Hey there, buddy. Holy shit. Place that on there. Come in here. Come fight me. Ooh, run away. At least just play the game for me. As if the sun baton wasn't ridiculous already.
No zombies? No zombies. Okay. I'm not doing that game. I'm not that stupid. I'm not falling down anywhere. Okay, how OP I am. I'm not doing it. Right, let me finish up advanced engineering and then we can get on to calculated attack and I can make my on even more ridiculous. Now this looks like a room they would guard very heavily. I was correct. Oh, they're gonna come behind me, love that. Good thing I broke that door behind me, because they would have trapped me in there. Yeah, 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 whatever. Bleed. Oh, hey there. Why am I not allowed to jump anymore, game? Did I just get hit in the side? What was that? The amount of stuns I'm taking. Character, please move. What is that? One second, do I have any antibiotics on me? I got some honey. Oh, yeah, 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 you're thirsty, of course you are. Let's see, what should I do here? Uh, they've got three zombies over there, two down there, and one of them is stuck. They're kind of split up. If I trap them behind that... Airlock. Can they go around? No, well, they can go around. If they blow open the tent, they can go around. Right, who's, who's still alive? Let me finish off whoever's hiding back here. That was extremely fast for what is essentially a tier 5 POI now. Blade Trap Bundle, I'll take it. I probably won't use it. I rarely ever use Blade Traps. They're just so laggy. Is there any, like, drinks vending machines in here? Oh, there's a Shamwick, right? That might have what I need. Hey, coffee, that'll do. Bunch of ammo. Some more ammo. Eh, some more ammo. Seems to be the theme of the POI, you know. Nothing tremendous. But nothing bad either. So yeah, aside from this last room that was just way too tight, I guess, to put the turrets where I put them, the turrets absolutely shredded pretty much every other room. Like, I didn't even have to think about it. I just saw, like, a choke point and just put the turrets down. That last room was the only one that gave me any trouble. Here you go. Well... Those would be fantastic rewards for a strength character, but I will take them both anyway. The auger I can use and the auto shotgun, I guess I can use, but I would... I'm I'm pretty good at close range defense. I use my tactical assault rifle for the mid-range combat usually. So that was the only tier 5 infested he had. He has some tier 6 infested clears. What ones does he have though? Camway, absolutely not happening. Deshong, ugh. Gashi, eh. Crack a book. Fuck no. Pop and Bills Factory. We did that recently. I don't like any of those. We'll do those another day. Has he got a tier 4 infested? I've either done all those recently or I really just don't want to do them. Not necessarily from difficulty, just like, ugh, I don't like that POI, you know? But tomorrow we'll have some new tier 5 invested and some new tier 6 invested. We'll see what we can take on, but I probably shouldn't take on a tier 6 invested on day 21. In case it spills over to, you know, the next day. Let me sort out my inventory and stuff. Well, let's see, this job's only 500 meters away. I'll just take the motorcycle over. Uh, one thing I do want to consider here is... What is my electronics level? Not my electronics level, sorry. My traps level. 59 out of 75. So I need another 16 electronics magazines. I think the plan of action should be to do this job just to do some more testing with the robotic turrets and then i need to hunt down those last 16 magazines so i can make a few smg turrets with let's say four smg turrets prepped outside my base i should be able to just crank the hell out of all of those crafting stations you saw and just have them all on all the time and that'll let me get huge amounts of materials for the late game to build whatever absurd base I want to. I have no plans for it right now. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. I've done this one. Whatever, let's go inside. Oh, and of course, you can actually... This is suspicious. You can actually use your robotic turret as a weapon. Is it the most easy to control thing ever? No. Is it really any good at all? No. Is it fun? Honestly, still kind of no, <laughs> but you can do it, and that's what's important. That's a fucking lot of zombies. Hang on, hang on. Where do you all come from? Well, 
Terrors at least handled them. How are they doing on ammo? These need some reloads. But they do work. They're just not very usable as, you know, handheld weapons. But hey, if you're desperate, you can do it. Or extremely bored. That is also a reason to do it, I suppose. Right, I think I kind of cleared most of this room as well by shooting uh, through the walls with my turret and dragging far too many zombies outside. There was still someone left. He insta-killed that guy. They just absolutely clean it up. Is it one of the strongest playstyles in 7 Days to Die? Yes. Is it one of the most boring playstyles in 7 Days to Die? Yep. <laughs> electrical traps, scrapping, and big hitters. Oh. Alright, we need 15 more electrical traps. Hello. Don't you blow up that truck. Anything good in this room? Not particularly. Alright, down into the basement we go. Oh, hello. It's a lot of zombies. Or I guess it was a lot of zombies. Oh, and we're clear. That was the single most depressing POI I've ever cleared. Armoured up. Wiring and the hammers, I think that's what that was. And the loot. Invested cash, anything good? Just ammo. Won't say no to some 9mm because I am going to have a bunch of SMG turrets pretty much constantly going. Rifle world. Uh, let's unlock this. These have a decent chance for a beaker. I am still trying to hunt down a couple more of those for more chemistry stations because I'm clinically insane has to be the only logical explanation for needing four of them. Especially on a build that uses next to no gunpowder. But here I am. Take those. Pop these crates. Alright, let's get out of here, see if we can get that quest reward. Is this better than my slump it on? 28. 27. 28. 27. It's marginally better than my slump it on, I'll take it. Anything else good? Another tier 4 infested clear? I'll take that. Two traps, two rifles, two southern farming. And let's swap over to the new stun baton, which is like a 0.7 damage higher. Hey, it's something. Let me clear out my inventory and I'll head over to that tier 4 infestation. Let's head inside. Oh, hello, radiated guy. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This stun baton is new. Therefore, it doesn't actually work. <laughs> I need to bash some heads with it first. In order to get it to actually function. I forgot that's a thing when you switch batons. This game is very normal. Place this over here. This is one of the really nice things about robotic turrets. They can like go on the other side of walls for you and start clearing before you even get there. Hello there. There we go, it's charging now. Oh, we've attracted some attention. Look at it, just gunning down both sides each. Oh, it's amazing. And extremely boring. But <laughs> this playthrough wasn't supposed to be the most fun playthrough. It was supposed to be the most ridiculously OP playthrough. And here we are, Insane Nightmare, just, just, just shredding. Just absolutely not even trying. Truly, we are working smarter, not harder. I have managed to automate playing the game. Now, if only I could automate recording the game and automate editing the game. Well, actually, I could do that. AI voices and hire an editor. Could just hire someone to play the game, someone who's, you know, roughly as good as me, and then just put like an AI script over it with an AI voice generator and then just hire an editor and I just I just generate profit. Ah, but what robot could possibly hope to emulate my sarcasm? Hey there, buddy. Yeah, this time I brought a fucking anti-aircraft gun. How does it feel? Skill issue. Now imagine you were playing multiplayer and there was five of you with two turrets each. Oop, up the ladder I go. Can you place turrets through broken doors? Oh, you can. Cool. Okay, now we can... Oh, you can... 
<laughs> you can place turrets through glass. Does that mean I could just airdrop this through there? Well, I probably could have, but they have awoken. Well then. Well. That certainly worked. That doesn't look like I'm going to get back to Trader Wrecked in time, though. Well, that was an incredible amount of nothing. I shall sort out my inventory and then make a plan for the night. That whole day, by the way, I didn't even use a full 1000 AP ammo. Cleared like three POIs with them. Barely used any ammo. Now on Horde Nights, that's when they really rip through it, but this was not Horde Nights, so it's fine. Right, well, I have enough ammo to last today, tomorrow, and the Horde Night, so I don't need to gather more of that. Um, What am I looking at? clay wise here let's see i've got an extra 3000 clay but most of my forges have clay in them already don't they yeah let me split this seven ways do i have any raw iron already by the way i've got a little bit but not worth worrying about let me make some frames for fuel uh let me put the fuel in all of these and i'll cook up you know however much clay in here and while i do that i will go and mine more iron all right let's go out to the little mine i made which is down there and just I'll spend the rest of the night in the morning mining up as much iron as I can with my steel pick. The reason I'm using my steel pick is just because the auger is quite loud and I can't be bothered with it. There seems to have been a wandering horde, I'm going to deal with them. Hello, excuse me, can you come into my turret's minimum range? Hello? Here we go. That's one of the best things about the robotic turrets, I can just have them sit up here while I go and mine some iron. Now, I could use an auger with that in mind, but I don't feel like wasting all my ammo killing screamers during the night, so I'll do this and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I got a skill point there. Let's go ahead and put that into calculated attack. Right? Yeah. That'll give me an extra 7% attack speed after the 10% on my batons, and the last one we can max out. Alright, it is the morning, and I have entirely too much iron. Don't ask. Don't ask. Just don't ask. Uh, but I have about 50,000 iron, which is a solid amount of iron. Uh, hence why I don't bother with the auger, because if you've got a good amount of Miner 6 and 9 or mother load, you don't need it. You know, 50,000 iron overnight? I will take that. I do not need to turn block damage up. I do not need to use an auger. That's good enough. Let me sort out this inventory here. Now, I'm not actually going to go immediately into using that iron, because I had an idea. Which is, I should probably make a shitload of concrete first, because what am I going to do with steel without concrete? In terms of base building, anyway. So, give me a second. Oh, you know what I haven't been doing? Collecting from my do collectors. I suck at doing that. Let me go do that now. How am I going to make glue if I don't collect all the do? Cool, 24. I'll put that in my food box. So I have seven forges, right? And I want concrete. So I'm going to need cement. So logically, I should take 14 stacks of stone, otherwise known as 84,000 stone, which is about, which is, you know, about twice what I have now. And I should turn that straight into cement. That's 80,000 stone. Now here's the thing. I need to now go gather a bunch of stone for that. So that's just what I'm going to do. I'm just going to gather stone. I don't know why I set it up like that. I'm going to, I'm going to mine some stone and see how much I can get. Each block's 100... I need like another 40,000, so yeah. It'll take a long time to do, but you know, you need stone. Now, is my theory correct about this POI that I spawn next to? Is this all made of stone? Well, I am going to absolutely ravage this POI rather than dig underground or try and find like big boulders. This is the ultimate big boulder. I'm going to shave this mountain from the top down. And there's a tenth stack of stone. So I'm going to stop there because one, I'm a little bit bored of mining. And two, uh, it doesn't need to be rushed because I am not going to set that much stone to be smelted for extended periods of time until I get my hands on some SMG turrets to protect it. Because otherwise they are going to break through that hatch quite easily and they're going to destroy all my shit, which would be really annoying. So until I get those SMG turrets set up, I'm not going to be bothering with smelting all the cement. But basically the 84,000 stone I'm getting here is going to be all of the cement I plan on making in this playthrough. However much that comes out to, that's how much that's going to be. And I'll obviously match that in terms of 
the crushed sand and stone itself that you need to actually make concrete mix. And then of course I'll need to match that with cobblestone as well. So I'm going to be doing a lot of stone mining in this playthrough, for whatever base I plan on building. So let's go get a reward from Wrecked and see if he has any tier 5 infestations, which are your best bet for getting those easy bundles. I'll just take this stuff. This is all I can spare. Tier 5 infested clear 700 meters away. It's the checkpoint again, cool. Two more electrical traps, I need 11 more and then I'll be able to craft my own SMGs. So even if I can't uh, get any bundles for it, I'll still be able to do something. Is this a different checkpoint from the one I did? Oh, this is the even quotation marks easier one. Um, in that it's very, very short. Start that, jump up here. See what chaos I can cause. I just like place my turret in there. And in there. And just kind of hope for the best. Just let them just let them clean out that room. And I'll get the stragglers. They really just cleaned that room out fully. Wow. And that's the final loot room. <laughs> shotgun turret bundle. You know, shotgun turrets would do in a pinch. So we can use them if I want. But they're not my preferred way of doing things. You tend to let the screamers get a little bit too close for my comfort. At which point they'll scream because they'll just kind of sort of hear you while you're in the base. Obviously if you're not in the base you don't have to worry at all, but... I like the SMG turrets to defend me while I'm inside the base as well. Whereas the shotgun turrets tend to let them get too close. Let me pop this open. No. Oh. Apparently I woke up some of the zombies over there. Let me deal with that first. Oh, and I woke up even more of them. Okay, back to the final loot room. Uh, scrapping for fun, shotgun messiah, couple of mods and some more explosives. Great. And of course, I think I do have a chance of getting an SMG bundle for my tier 6 complete. I uh, don't know how deep into that I am. Probably a, a decent amount of quests away still. Let's finish this though. Step into the room, wake them all up, step back out of the room, lure them into the turrets. Honestly, the turrets themselves might be unnecessary. The stun baton is just that good. Oh, screen trick. Another skill point. Let's put that into the final rank of calculated attack. Right, so I'm done with intellect. Fully. Like, I don't need better barter. I have so much money. Charismatic Nature is a multiplayer perk. Grease Monkey, I have all the vehicles I need and repair kits are cheap. Lock picking, who gives a shit? So I am done with intellect. That's everything. So the next thing is either going to be fortitude or agility. That was insanely easy. Let's head back and get a quest reward. See what else we can do. We had one more infestation clear. Dead. You better have money. I want none of that. So I'll take the contact grenades and the crafting magazine bundles. You have another one? Let's make a the water works. Oh, <laughs> that's going to be a clusterfuck. Curious fists, electrical traps, and I dropped a book, didn't I? And farming, which I'm finished with. Let's head out there then. See if I can't get, ooh, lucky, and get myself some actual SMG turrets in a bundle. Here we are. I've not done this one as an infestation yet, so I'm not 100% sure what to expect. He has a lot of health. None of my turrets are at a good angle to deal with these.
lighting and something else there's usually one dog in here so is there gonna be two this time or what it sure seems that way Well, we activated zombies much later in the POI. We got love armor piercing ammo and its tendency to go through walls a little bit. Let's continue. Oh wow. I need some healing. Annoying. I'm very confused by a lot of the sounds I'm hearing right now. There's a lot of zombies outside trying to get inside, and I don't like it. That works. Well, this is a nice, fun open area to drag all these end zombies into. Oh, they've started without me, okay. There's zombies on the other side of that door. From the outside world. Why was there a feral white wandering around? Oh, they were from... Oh yeah, they were part of the POI somehow. What? Let me go clear the area. Oh, that was annoying. Right, let's get the end blue then. Okay, where's your invested cash? That's what I'm most interested in. Auto turret bundle. Fantastic. That is the SMG one. That's the electrical traps. Need to keep in mind the shotgun one I have will give me three more of those as well, so I could maybe open that up and get the other books I need and then craft the other two I want. Two scrapping. Lighting. Hey, two beakers. I've never seen that before, but I'll take it. We can make my last two chemistry stations. Right, I'm gonna drive home, get my quest reward, and see what I can craft to finally finish my crafting base completely. Yes. Yes, I will accept this. I'll need another mod to fill it out, though, because it can't take the uh, full auto mod. Let me run back to my base and see what I can do here. I mean, I have some scopes in here, actually. We could always put a reflex sight on it just as a temporary damage booster. What atrocities have you done to that, though, fun bimps? We saw what it did on the tactical... Oh, I don't like that. Oh, and the dot stays when you reload. You gotta love that. Well, this thing's good, I'd say. I was worried I wasn't going to be using enough 762 ammo, but I see those worries have been put to rest. Let me open up the shotgun bundle and then pick up the damn books. Okay, I need three more, so one more bundle of any kind will work. Let me take these turrets, and I'm going to start by placing them outwards. Now, can they go on these railings? They can. They would be floating. But do I care? No, I don't. It's not like the base is about aesthetics anyway. Let me get a bunch of ammo for them. So they should cover my southwest and northwest. Well, please. Please only target the zombies. I don't need you killing deer. Get a little bit more ammo for that one. Great. Those should just... Yeah. I might need to take down some of these trees, though. They might give the zombies too much cover. 
So those should just snipe off the screamers as they spawn. But I won't go full onto this base until I have another two. Like one there and one there. Still, nice to have them. Grab some stone and my nail gun. Someone made a very good point in the comments about um, having my robotic turrets on this base while I'm doing it. And the ones that are closest to me will be the ones that are active. And therefore, when the range turrets shut down and I need to reload them, the sledge turrets will activate and will do their thing. So that is a pretty smart idea. So I'm going to do that. Right, that should be everything I need. Let me repair these. A bunch of ammo for them. Have I got any 7.62 on me? I could afford to just bring some spare 7.62 if I want to start using my um, M60, but I don't think I'm going to. It would be incredibly excessive. Now, those turrets might activate during Horde Night and kill off a few of them for me. They're facing the other direction, so they really shouldn't, but if they do, I don't really mind it. I've got plenty of 9 mil to spare because I basically don't use guns. And the ones that I do use are 7.62 or they use robotic turret ammo. So the idea is basically this. You put one of your turrets here. You put one of your turrets here. And while I'm on this side, I'll also just place down these. And only the closest ones will be active. But when your turrets run out of ammo, they will deactivate... And that will let these two here activate because they'll be the nearest, closest ones. You could, in theory, just have a bunch of these robotic turret ammos, st of these robotic turrets stacked up. And then as one of them runs out of ammo, another one will turn on and you never have to reload. It's a little bit resource inefficient. I don't think I need to do that. I don't mind picking them up every five minutes to reload. But it is something you can do. So I'm just going to get up in here and I'm just going to wait for Horde Knight. I have no plans to do anything else. See, this needs a little bit of repairing, but that's absolutely fine. But yeah, see those two are deactivated. When these run out of ammo, those will turn on. That's buying me more time to reload the turrets. Alright, Horde Knight's coming up. Let's take some vitamins. Just a couple. Got, you know, 4,000 robotic turret ammo. A decent amount of the old M60 ammo here if I need it. I should be good. I do wonder if the base itself is going to hold up. It is mostly cobblestone for a day 21 horde. I'm game stage 81, which isn't crazy. I'm not expecting radiated zombies or like demos. Um, but it's reasonably high for a day 21 horde in the forest biome. Alright, here they come. They're on their way. They're going to take a hot minute to reach me, even on nightmare speed. Oh, I think this right turret is actually damaging that sledge turret. It's fine, it's fine. I don't even know if they have friendly fire. In fact, in the interest of making sure that that doesn't become a problem, just place that in the middle. Well, it should reduce the problem at least. They don't stand a chance. Oh, of course the first guy gets here gets a hit in. Of course he did. Uh, but I got a skill point. Let's put that into first rank of run and gun. Why not? I like that perk a lot. Oh, one of them's out of ammo. It's going to immediately reload the other one. It's just going to turn on the sledge turret. This isn't quite an AFK base, but like, it's pretty close to one. It doesn't really rely on any kind of cheese tactics, I'm just using robotic turrets. Which is no more cheese than using an M60 or using a stun baton, right? They're really struggling to get up there, they get staggered. Interesting, it looks like <laughs> it looks like the robotic turrets have done so much damage to the robotic sledges, they're broken. Because they didn't turn on when that one ran out of ammo. So that's a design flaw for sure. The robotic turrets literally kill the robotic sledges. Oh, I need to reload this one. It's fine, I'll just keep them all or Oh, I better not put that one too far forward again, that's annoying. Good, I didn't. 
Ow. Yeah, I put it too far forward, fuck's sake. Oh, that's fine. I've still got one that I can use the whole horde night, though. Yeah, those those robotic sledges were definitely in the danger zone. <laughs> they are. Fuck. Well, I'm going to open up another box here. Let me get away from him so he doesn't hit me. Did I not reload that one? Oh, of course I didn't. It's silly. Do you mind? I'm trying to reload. Can I get two seconds to place down my turret, please? You're annoying me. Hmm. Oh, it's so annoying when the bodies pile up and you can't fucking place your turrets. Oh, didn't mean to place it there. Another skill point, let's get the first rank of parkour. Oh, I got my turret back. Just barely. There we go. I forgot to reload it though. <laughs> it's off. It's unbelievable that I just did that to myself again. I did the exact same thing. I placed it out of my reach. Anyway, at least I've got two up again for the rest of the horde here. A turret out of ammo. Looks like it. Let me reload real quick. Are we done? Is that the entire horde? Well, that was very easy. Let's see, how's the damage on all of these? Not too bad. Yeah, the only damage here mostly seems to be from the turrets, just, you know, licking a few shots where they shouldn't have, which is fine. That's that's understandable damage, I don't have to worry about that kind. But yeah, these, these got wiped by the robotic sledge. In the next episode, I will get that final damn book, and I will have a fully functioning, fully defended crafting base that will absolutely shred any screamers that come to bother me, and that will allow me to just industrially produce stupid amounts of materials for the end game. And that base will hold the day 28 horde quite easily, probably the day 35 horde. So I've basically got 20 in-game days to come up with an absolute nightmarish contraption. Hello and welcome back to another wonderful weather day in seven days to die. Today I'm going to be trying to get the last two SMG turrets I need. But the thing is, is I need one more electrical traps magazine to even craft them, and I don't think I have the pistol parts to craft them, so I think the way to do it right now, until we get that last magazine at least, is going to be going after bundles. Now there's five main sources of SMG turret bundles. Those are gonna be tier five infestations, tier five loot 
loot's final loot, tier 6 infestation's final loot and its infested cache, tier 5 complete which I've already done with Trader Right, and tier 6 complete. So I'm going to be aiming for some amount of all of those. Now you might initially think, hey, tier 6 gives you 3 bundles, why not do those? And I just think, realistically, I could probably get more tier 5 infestations done anyway, so they're going to be my best bet for getting bundles quicker. And I'm not using turrets in this episode because last episode was so boring, so I know the turrets are really good, you don't need to tell me about it. I'm just not using them for POI clearing until I'm doing like wasteland tier 6s because right now it is so boring. He has one tier 5 invested clear, stand tower. I don't recognize that one. He does have some handgun parts that I will buy because I'm going to be making a decent amount of SMG turrets in this playthrough, not just the two for my base. And that is going to require handgun parts. I have so much money and so many things I can sell for money that it's basically not an issue unless I want to buy a solar cell. Which are always like 100k dukes. Let's see, handgun parts 3. He does have a couple of things I could scrap for handgun parts, but 5k for one handgun part definitely isn't worth it. Same with 17k. So I'm gonna fly over to the stand tower and we'll clear it out. And hopefully the bundle at the end. Oh, hello, hello, dog. Yeah, this is the remnants of a dog cord I got at like the start of the day there. Thought I got them all, but clearly not. Uh, as I was saying, hopefully I'll get an SMG turret bundle from that. Once my crafting base is fully defended with SMG turrets, I am just going to go absolutely ham on resource collection. I want basically millions of cobblestone, concrete, and forged steel. I'm going to fill all seven of my forges with as much stone as I can, turn all of that into cement, and then turn all of that into concrete, and that will inform me how many blocks I can make, basically. I will make a matching amount out of cobblestone, and I will get as close to it in steel as I can, and I'll build a massive endgame base. I hate this POI, because it's so weird. But well, I can probably do it. Dan Tower, yeah, no, it does say on it. <laughs> Let's head inside. As you can see, I really don't need the robotic turrets anyway for most of this. Ow. Wiring and what was that? Tactical warfare or whatever it's called. That was a light attack. That one's alive. Should not let that one hit me. Bad target prioritization there. Again, really. Ah, uh, I should not play this game just after waking up. Seriously. I'm starting to think it's just his reach being bullshit. Well, well, hey, did I just take a first aid kit and it didn't heal me? I thought I took it. What's that about? I mean, I know I didn't give it enough time to apply, but it also didn't... It could have refunded me the first aid kit. I mean, that's mean. There's the vulture. Wiring. There we go, traps are done. I can make at least two turrets now, so I don't have to worry about the bundle too much. Although, if I was going to get a bundle, aside from maybe food, SMG turrets are still going to be the best one, because I want to use more of those later anyway. They're a big part of an intellect build. Once the robotic turrets stop being viable, or once the robotic turrets stop being sensible on Horde Knight, they can be used when demos start spawning, but I really wouldn't recommend it. SMG turrets are safe though. Oh, hey there. Decent POI for books, honestly. You wouldn't really expect it, but more bookshelves in here than there is in the bloody Crackabook HQ. Hello. Oh. <laughs> the fuck? I need some steel armor. I don't know if armor protects you against radiation damage, but what the fuck? How did it make me bleep, though? Uh, was that a feral? Yeah, it was a feral. I mean, steel armor does sound like a good idea now. 
What are you doing? If they're going to be hitting me for that kind of bullshit, I mean, first hit down to 55 health. I know I'm on insane difficulty, but jeez. Give me a second to react. Are we near the end? Oh god. We've got this tier 5 infestation, so you get like twice as many vultures. Um, this is the end, so we're the bad guys. Um, I know they spawn like off the side or something. Oh, yep. Run away! Thank God for the one rank of running gun I have. And join me inside the POI. I should have brought a grenade. Right, one of them is somewhere. I think they probably fell down. Let me go get the loot. Good to know I really don't need any ranks in Machine Gunner to make this work. I was worried about that, but no, even on Insane Difficulty, it does pretty well. I have all the books, I think. I have most of the books. I have the important one, the one that makes you ragdoll. That's that's the one that will save your life with an automatic weapon. It gives them crowd control, so it doesn't really matter how much damage you do as long as you keep hitting them. Uh, auto turret bundle. Perfect. Also, I got a skill point in there. Let's go for... I'm thinking probably just keep going into agility and get more running gun and parkour because I tend to need those two perks when I run away a lot. Uh, batter up. Decent helmet. Some other stuff. Uh, we can drop the pipes. Right, let me fly home and see what else Trader Wrecked has. I don't really need the bundles now, do I? Uh, actually, I had an idea there. We'll probably still clear some POIs in this video, don't worry, but think with the SMG turrets ready, and I think I've had some iron crafting at my base, some forged iron, I should be able to finish off my crafting base, which should be a priority, and then we can get back to cleaning wise and stuff. Now that you did it. Is your impact driver better than mine, Wrecked? 24.9, 24.2, ah, you can keep it. Or actually, I'll take it, but I'll sell it back to you. And I'll take an armor pocket mod for the same reason. Put that on something and sell it back to him. Um, so I'm trying to get to tier 6 complete here. I don't want to go all in and do tier 5s or tier 6s because these are extremely slow. Normal tier 5s. They take like half a day to a day, right? Sometimes longer if you're a slower player. I can get one done in like half a day to 75% of a day, right? I don't want to do those. Those are not an efficient way to progress. Same with infested clears. If I was going to do any tier 5 POIs, I would do them as a tier 6 infestation because they're not worth it as anything else. But I think a tier 4 infested is a good show. But I do want to do some base work first. I also have just an incredible amount of things I can combine and sell back to the trader. And I think it would be a good decision to get that out of the way to clear out a bunch of my inventories. So let me do a bit of that. Okay, I officially have four turrets facing all sides defending my base. So I should be able to use it to its full capacity without having to worry too much about screamer hordes. Now, what I want to do is take all of the expensive items I've been collecting and all of the mods I've been collecting and just get rid of them because I have so much space taken up by things like this. And I have even more than what you're seeing right here because I actually have another box of this outside the trader itself. So there we go, 35k jukes just on that. Do I have any spare sugar butts? I do. And I know he's selling some awesome sauce if I want to maximize my discount. So we have this box full of stuff I can also sell, but I have even more. Uh, the equipment box I use back at my base has a bunch of mods in it, which I can attach to these to get even more money for most of those items. So let me go back and get as many of those mods as I can carry. Oh, and I'll also get weapon parts that I know I'm just not going to use. For example, steel knuckle parts, sledge parts, robotic parts, steel tool parts... Rifle parts, motor tool parts, yeah, I have a level 5 auger. Uh, military parts, machine gun parts, bow parts, baton parts. I don't even know if I'm going to use robotic parts. 
because I don't plan on making a drone, so we'll probably sell those as well. Sell the non-level 6 batteries because they're useless, and I'll keep shotgun and pistol parts. Now, there's mods in here now, isn't there? See, I can sell that, I can sell that. I can sell my old auger, sell these old shovels, sell this wrench, sell this ratchet. I'm gonna need more storage. Grab all these mods. Okay, so I've got all of this random shit to sell, plus some random cement and cobblestone. I won't be selling that or my gas. I'm going to combine as much of this as I can and see how much I can get for it. Because if you didn't know, putting mods on armor, for example, will make it disproportionately more expensive. For example, advanced mufflers, 126 each. If you put it on the steel armor here, see how it's 983 and it goes up to much more than just the value of those mufflers. Same for these 36 value improved fittings. That went up 200. So it's the most efficient way to sell both of those things. Okay, so I have modified what I can. There's still a lot of extra stuff here that can be combined in different ways, but I'm out of repair kits mainly. Otherwise, I would repair most of it and add in something to them. Uh, there's some more stuff in here as well, but mostly the issue is just repair kits and not being able to get the full value out of that, but I'll still be able to get a shitload of money out of all this. Um, Let me get, like, a little bit of my money so I can buy some awesome sauce and let's get telling the here awesome sauce oh he doesn't have any that's annoying but it's honestly not that big of a deal i think it's a 20 percent increase i'm honestly not that bothered about it i already have far too much money this is more about clearing inventory space so let's see what we can get here though so i started with 17k let's sell this There we go, up to 62,000 dukes. So, basically 40k dukes out of this place with all that stuff. Not bad. Um, so that gives me a total of what? Yeah, 100,000 dukes. That's a solid amount of money. Right, I'm going to make some more repair kits because I'm out of them now. I think I have some forged iron cooking so I can make those chemistry stations. So, should have some spare. Oh, definitely. Right, while I'm at this, let's get those chemistry stations then. Because I got the beakers in the episode before the last one, or was it in the last one? I forget. Either way, I have a bunch of spare beakers. Where did I leave them? Here we go. Uh, workbench. One chemistry station, two chemistry station. Cool. I have my final two chemistry stations. That'll be this base effectively complete. Now then, duct tape. Where do you live? I have this, this. I can definitely make more glue than that. Hang on. Here's a hundred bones, but one of these also has a bunch of... That's annoying. One of these also has a bunch of bones in it. Yeah, there it is. And then... Where's my water again? Here we go. How much glue can I make? 48? That is not bad. Let me get enough fuel for that. Uh, let me get some cloth. Make that into duct tape. 20 repair kits will do. For now. There we go, 20 repair kits, and I'll store this other forged iron for other things later. So let's go out and do this, I think it was a tier 4 infested? Anything to progress myself to tier 6 complete? Not even sure what I want from that now, but I'll always take more SMG bundles anyway. They're an expensive thing to craft. 30 forged steel, 3 handgun parts. Oh, they're not that expensive actually, I forgot, because I have advanced engineering and it makes them cheaper. Well, that's good to know at least. Still, I would rather get them for free than go through the effort of crafting them. This is more interesting anyway, killing zombies. Ah, okay, let's go. I don't know if I've done this PY, but it's only a tier 4 infested, it shouldn't be too bad. Where are the zombies? There's the end loop. Well, I didn't expect it, at least. Hey there. Still alive. Not bad. This feels like a bad place to be. Ah, yeah, I was right. Ah, 
and we're clear. And there's the loot. Bunch of mods and ammo. Bing lock fix this time, I did. Mods and a treasure map. Alright, and that's another job done. I'm gonna head back to my base now. I'll clear out my inventory. And I'm actually gonna mine stone during the night. Because stone is something I need an incredible amount of. I have 10 stacks of it. In order to fill... Oh, that's gonna need a repair kit. In order to fill up my forges with stone, I'm going to need... 14 stacks. Now I have 10 stacks. For those of you who have been following the series, you remember that in the last episode, I think. So I need to go and get four more stacks of stone, which shouldn't be too hard to do overnight, especially if I go over to this POI here, which is made of stone. And yeah, I know I can dig underground and do it, but I would rather just not dig underground. And once I have all that stone, I can turn on all my forges since I have the SMG turrets ready to absolutely kill any screamers that spawn. So I'm going to clear my inventory and I'll go and mine and I'll cut to the morning for you guys once I have my extra four stacks of stone. I was wondering when that was going to happen. Oh, all well, the zombies inside still spawn. Love that. Surprised that didn't give me enough XP to level up. Right, well that's this POI dealt with, I guess. Uh, let's continue mining. I need another stack, I think. Yeah. Oops, skill point. Let's grab another point of agility. There we go. That should be four more stacks of stone totaling... 14. Let me go back home and start smelting 14 stacks of stone into however much cement that is. I think it would be half that, maybe? I think it'd be like 40,000 cement or something. I mean, it doesn't matter as long as it is 14 stacks. It's 13 stacks. I'm missing a stack of stone. Okay, let me go mine more stone. There, 14 stacks. So, let's go put this in my forges and set it to smelt for as long as I can. There we go. My forges are officially... Fully stoned up. I just need to put the last bit of fuel in, which I'm using frames for to save me clicks. And no, using logs is not more wood efficient. It just saves you clicks as well. Doesn't burn for longer than the amount of wood you use to make the log. Uh, let me go find a water source because I need to drink something. So that will all come out to however much cement it is. I will match it. It will probably require another 14 stacks of stone to actually be turned into concrete and I'll get the quest reward for whatever I did yesterday and then we can go do some more jobs and contribute to that tier 6 complete which I might be able to get today. Let's see, 5. I think I need 2 tier 5 infestations worth of points to get the tier 5 complete after I've handed this job in, so that's good. Right, let's go see what Trader Wrecked has here. I will take whichever one of these is the most expensive and the triple armor pocket mod for the same reason. Tier 5 infested clear. He's got a few of them. Let's do those then. Um, closest one is 1.2 km. Hybrid energy. Oh god. That one almost killed me as a tier 4, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Alright, here we are. Hybrid energy as a tier 5 POI. Hopefully I can survive this one. Maybe the last time I did it, it was already a tier 5. And it won't be that bad. We shall see. This seems unavoidable. Do they come from below as well? Oh, they do. That sucks. Nope, oh, I'm hungry. I'll wait until I get hit. I'll get some free healing out of that. that food. Yeah, up there is where the near-death experience happened. I really don't feel like falling through all this bullshit, by the way, so I'm gonna try and break in the bottom. That feels smarter rather than falling head first with no backup plan.
Okay, okay, okay. How am I going to survive this room this time? I think just playing it a little bit slower would be the smarter choice. Last time I got a little bit swarmed because I just kind of jumped up there. I survived, but I took a lot of scary hits and almost got punted off the side of the building, which would have been bad. Take it just ever so slightly slower so that I can run away a bit more effectively. There's the loot. Oh, they took a minute to spawn in and then still came after me. I'm going to stay down here, though, because I can run away down in there and take them into their water room if I need to. Right, that's cleared out a good amount of them. No doubt that's going to be a radiated, mutated zombie. At least a feral. Hello. I think it killed itself. Yeah, it killed itself on the barrels. Okay, let's get the loot. Food bundle, nice. I was kind of running out. Ah, more tuna fish gravy tools, great. Uh, scrap that, take the rest. Sliding, scrapping, arm pocket mod, money I can scrap into paper, shotgun shells, and let's pop these open. Another wiring. Oh, that was two wiring, I think. Yeah. The wiring. It is the only thing I have left boosted, to be fair. Scrapping for fun. And is there anything hiding up here? No. Right, let me go and get back to Wrecked for a reward then. Here's this loot bag. More money. Oh, not bad. I'm more of a machine gunner, but it's good to have an SMG5 at least. Again, I had a level 2 one, but scrapped it. I'll take the helmet as well, in case I want to switch over to steel armor. Oh yeah, I left the game and I lost my other infested quests. Well, at least here's one. If you want work Pergola Apartments. Boy, it's something at least. Right, let's see. Chemistry stations, they are done. I can put my third one here. And I can put the fourth one here down so the screamer doesn't notice me. Oh, it's a dog cord, I think. Or was it just a dog? Oh, no, it's a dog cord, yeah. Okay. I should probably use my best weapon first. My best weapon, I mean my highest per shot. There we go. This might have been left over from that one dog horde from this morning, or the day before, I think. And I just never noticed a bear. They usually spawn with a bear, to be fair. At least one bear, usually two. I doubt it's another dog horde. No, it's another dog horde. There's no way there was that many of them. Anyway. So, four chemistry stations. Absolutely no need for them right now, but good to have. This is going to be a very interesting tier 5 infestation. Not a very large PY at all. Which means it's going to be absolutely crammed with zombies. Which is the point. And of course I've attracted a million zombies because it's the downtown and that's the worst area in 7 Days to Die. Because that's not strictly true, there is always the Wasteland downtown, which is a hundred times worse. Oh, it's this one? Fuck that. No, 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 no. Not happening. Where is a doorway I can break in? I'm not falling in there like an idiot. Howdy. More of you. I made the correct choice not just falling down there like an idiot. button do? 
Guess we'll never know. Really calling bullshit on that hit. Oh good, two of them. That well one insta killed that spade man. Well, well, that is not a nice room. Did he fall down there? Yeah, there's definitely going to be a bunch of zombies behind there, isn't there? See, I've got some frames. If I jump here, up onto here, I can lose the weaker loot. I don't mind. Right, let me see here. And let me just... Bullshit. <laughs> First hit and you give me a concussion? Ah, well, I'm gonna get the loot and clear them up later, let's see. Security camera bundle, that's the worst one. Oh, let's fly back to Wrecked. Hey, tier 6 complete. I'm gonna have to drop a couple of things to even take the reward. So, 100 forged steel, military armor, bonus bundle, gyrocopter parts, these all suck immensely. Um, the military armor bonus bundle might be good because I have mostly level 5 and 6 military armor, but it might get me slightly better military armor. Money is worthless, forged steel is worthless, melee mods are worthless, gyrocopter parts are worthless. I'll just take some forged steel. And that's tier 6 complete with wrecked. Right, let me go back to my base and see a couple of things here. Where is that screamer? Is she in the hole with... Did she dig straight? What the fuck? I'm very confused. Did she just dig straight down while the turrets were like deactivated or something? What was that? I'll fill that. Was that hole there before? Was that where I had mined iron or what? How did she get there? I'm so very confused. Further research is needed. Anyway. Order more cement out of all of these. They'll need more fuel, but that's fine. Mm, they killed another screamer. Right, let's check this armor out. Any of it better than mine? These gloves are slightly better. The chest is slightly better. Everything else is not better. We'll sell these later then. My armor rating is probably exactly the same. 58.9. Slightly, slightly higher. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mine some coal and I'm going to get enough coal to just fuel my forges forever. Here's some over there. I'll do. Why am I not one-shotting this? Do I not have a bunker buster on? Oh, that's very annoying. Hmm. How can I one-shot this? It would require another rank of minor 69er or a level 6 pick. Well, I guess we're going to be slightly two-shotting it. Still, it's fast enough. But you know what? There's like 1,500 coal. That will do. That's, you know, 100 coal for each forge. That's going to give you a good few hours of fuel each. And gives me time to find a level 6 pick I can one-shot the stone stuff with. Well, no, I can actually one-shot stone, so I don't think it's accurate to call it the stone stuff. That I can one-shot nitrate, coal, and oil shale with. Here, 300 minutes. Craft up some more cement. Doing pretty good on that. There we go. Thousands of cement on the way. Next thing I need is going to be stone. Again. <laughs> so I've got about a thousand. Uh, how much cement is crafted out here? Let's say 14,000 cement is out. But I will go and mine 28,000 stone. So that I can make the corresponding amount of crushed sand and then concrete. Right, there we go. There's 28,000 stone. Let me go ahead and drive to a nearby water source. As you can see, I'm quite dehydrated. That was very painful to do with no water. Here we are. Let's 
So let's turn half of that immediately into crushed sand. Okay, that's seven of them. It will take two minutes to do that. I've got the rest of the stone in my inventory. Let's grab the cement, queue up some more. I'm going to actually have more than 2,000 cement out of all of these, I think. Could have got some more stone. We'll still be able to make a solid, like, what, 14,000 concrete? That's a good start when I don't have any cobblestone anyway. Concrete is definitely the most time-consuming part of the building tree to create, so that's why I'm just getting onto it as soon as I can. And once I have all the concrete I can make, it'll inform what I can build from there. And I can just easily, you know, spend a couple of hours gathering up the clay and stone I'll need to match that in cobblestone and turning that all into cobblestone blocks to build out of and then steel. You don't need everything to be steel anyway. Boomer down. Right, so how much concrete can I make? 7,000. I will split that uh, 1,000 in seven of my eight cement mixers, which will then make it take just 25 minutes. Not bad. I still have so much cement left over. Oh, of course. I was supposed to make 14,000 crushed sand, wasn't I? I'm an idiot. That's fine. We'll just queue that up as well then. Uh, in fact, isn't one of these not doing anything? Let's get another 7,000 crushed sand out of you, and I can do that itself, and I'll just hold on to this extra cement in the meantime. In fact, I'm going to turn all of my stone into crushed sand, just to make sure I've got loads of crushed sand for later, and I can always mine more stone very, very easily. So we're in a good position for the late game. I'm going to have a lot of spare concrete, it seems like. Hello and welcome back to 7 Days to Die. Today, we are going to do two things. We're going to clear at least one tier 6 infestation quest. I'm going to be bringing my turrets for these ones, obviously. Where is my ammo for those? Ah, there we go. And I'm going to gather a lot of materials. For those of you who haven't been following the series, this base, very compact contains a ridiculous amount of crafting stations for its size at least and I plan on using that to make at least one very big intellect themed horde base later in the series so most of tomorrow is going to be me mining a lot of materials and setting that to craft but to make this interesting we need to have at least something to do that is action heavy in the episodes otherwise they're kind of boring no one wants to see me staring at a cement mixer's interface for three hours we'll start off by doing some really hard POIs and then we'll do the actually useful thing I'll just uh, wait for Trader Wrecked here to open. In we go. Let's see, you got a relatively close one. The hospital. We did that quite recently. Let's see if he has any other ones. Crack a book. Could do that. Nursing home, please God, no. Vanity tower, eh, a bit boring. The Shong tower. Screw it, let's do the crack a book HQ. We can maybe get a second one done today as well. In that case, I'll probably do the hospital because it's another relatively fast one and we can get two done in one day. I will need the gyrocopter for this one though. Now I think that's going to be in the snow biome, which is absolutely horrifying because it's even more difficult than usual, but I'll take it. I have an M60, a stun baton, and two robotic turrets. How bad can it really be? Here we are. Didn't feel like trying to land the gyrocopter in the soup. So I landed somewhere and drove out here. Oh, this is going to be very interesting. How do I want to tackle this? Let me open up these stacks here. Uh, start it, obviously. Probably want to clear out the bottom floor first if I can. I can. If I do something like this. And something like this. And then just get that attention. Let's just see how this goes. Holy frame rate. Where did you come from? Oh, my frame rate is not doing good here. Though I've had worse. Well, that plan worked quite well, although some of them have still survived. I don't know where this one zombie is. It's like right in front of me. Weird. Let's see if I can get the attention of someone at the back there. There we go. Where is this one, Arlene? Oh, hello. Is she above somehow? I don't know, but let me go kill this one. You may have fallen through the floor. Whatever, I'll find her eventually. Let me reload my turrets. So this bottom floor here is clear, aside from that one Arlene that is somewhere, uh, which is fine. 
how do I want to do this next then? If I like slightly remodel this room, would that help? Rifles, bows, paper, spear hunter. I just like do this. The floor is clear. If I like set up two turrets right at this doorway, give them plenty of uh, room to back me up. Is this going to get me killed? It's realistically, yes, this is going to get me killed. I should probably take these vitamins before something bad happens. Uh, and I'm going to put a first aid kit on my hotbar. Now, here's the thing. There's a million zombies in here, but I could drag them through hell with those turrets before I have to deal with them. So let's go into the basement here. I know we're doing this the wrong way around. I just kind of feel like doing that. <laughs> so I'm going to go over here and hide behind these spikes. And I'm going to let the turrets handle most of it. I believe. Probably shouldn't have believed. Well then, that's about the smoothest that room has ever gone. Now we still have some more to deal with, of course, but I've Cleaned out a decent amount. Oh, screamer. Run away from the bikers. Oh, the screamer died on the spikes. Nice. Oh, she didn't die on the spikes. Well, I'll just stand here and let her horde come inside and get shot by the turrets. Who else is there? Good job, turrets. Alright, I think I'm mostly done with the horde. Right, well, an important thing to note about that is the two harder rooms of this POI, I'd say, anyway, are done. So let's get the end loot. It may help me in my quest to complete this POI. <laughs> uh, the Arlene seems to have died at some stage, so that's good. The one who was hiding. Uh, not hiding, the one who was stuck inside. Oh, hello. You can go around, can you? Didn't know that. Ow. Seems like there's another half of this room to deal with then. I'd appreciate it if you run in front of my turrets, thanks. Oh, my frame rate is dead in here. Oh, run away from him. I have to waste a painkiller. Especially with all that overheal already coming. But I have ridiculous amounts of medicine, so it's fine. Let's go grab that other turret. Completely forgot about that room. I figured they would have spawned like they usually do, which is with the rest of them, to be honest. Anybody in here? Or did I... Yeah, no. I actually got those this time. Anybody in here? No? Right, let's see what we got in the end cache here. Uh, dart trap bundle, shotgun turret bundle. I will take those. Level 6 stun baton. 29, 28. Okay, it's, it is better, but marginally. And I already get 4 mods with this, so it's meh. Now, I need to remember, I can't immediately use stun batons. I need to charge them with light attacks. So the game is dumb. Because if I just try and power attack, it doesn't do anything. So I need to... You hear that sparking sound that I tried to play before I insta-killed him? Yeah, that, that's actually charging. Right, let's go see the other half of the end loot here. Let's try my, like, three lockpicks on this. A food bundle. More tuna fish gravy toast, that's all it wants to give me. Which is fine, because it's really good. And I don't need that. A bunch of first aid kits are always welcome, especially when I'm in the middle of clearing this P.Y. I got anything to drink at all? No. Except for, I think you get some water out of that. Yeah. Anything? No. Uh, is there a water source? No. So I'm going to have to look out for a water source or maybe a vending machine or something in here. The, the hydration shouldn't be that much of an issue. The turrets are going to handle most of the damage anyway. Let me go put this stuff in my motorcycle first. Let's get some extra parkour. Now I can actually jump higher with it, which is very helpful. Ah, I've got some water in here. That'll do. I typically don't like to drink water plain, but do what we must. Alright. Aside from that 
little biker ambush that I didn't expect to still be there. That went very, very well. One of the smoothest ways that's ever gone for me. Now I can take advantage of this lobby even more. Um, probably in a way that wouldn't immediately seem like the way to do it. If I put my turrets like this, and then, thanks turrets, and then run up here. Uh, I might need to frame up, or can I parkour? Yeah, just get their attention, wake them all up. Close that behind me. Run down here and run over to the entrance. The zombies should run to try and get to me. And most of them will get caught in the crossfire. Run away! There's a dog in there somewhere and it's freaking me out because I don't know where it is. All hail the ladder. Ow. So many stuns. M60 time. I think I killed the dog. Let's see, can I run back inside? I can. Give them a second taste of that turret. One downside to using turrets like this is you will get a lot more screamers because you've basically got two guns going, plus if you're using one, you've got three guns going, which does generate a lot of heat. But it's undeniably very effective. There we go. Okay, so that's that next floor cleared. I think we have some visitors from the outside, though, want to come and annoy me. Also, the reason I used the first aid kit there, despite not really needing one, is just because it will heal the abrasion the fastest. Because that was like a 40 minute abrasion and it's now down to like 4 minutes. And that's because the first aid kit heals them faster. And, as an added bonus to that, my physician perk makes that heal faster with treatment as well. So I'm not just being completely wasteful by using a first aid kit there. Right, one turret can go there, that'll do. And then where's the actual doorway? Uh, or window? Why, I guess. Place this, like, here. And then I'll try and stealth it, but I'm really not spec for stealth. Yep, I thought that door would break. That was my mistake. Yep, stealth didn't work this time. I will be turret number two for this part. You're on your own, turret number one. Turret number three, help. I don't even know which ones of these are alive. This is going quite well. How do I want to do this? Uh, where's the way out? Because we're probably going to spill back out onto that area again. Once again, just as a result of how many zombies are in here, it's quite hard to just stand your ground. You do have to kind of fall back a little bit. Let me repair this. Right, I'll go and get into some trouble and bring them to the turrets. Hello. I'm not even bothering with stealth this time. Wake up. Run right away! Some of you are trying to dig, aren't you? And that's not a very intelligent way of doing things here, guys. Alright, another room cleared. So far, so good. I've certainly been chased around this building more than a million times trying to do this. So, I consider this a win. Right. How do I want to handle this one? 
see they fall out that window there so if I just have this covering my back there and then oh, then this covering my front close the door uh yeah I think this could work let me go ahead and make sure I'm healed up just to be sure and let's see what happens That turret did not do a good job, did it? Run away! It's trying, I can hear it's trying. These hit marker sound effects are so weird. I am seeing like two frames per second here. I don't even know what's happening. I'm just gonna run in a circle till they're all down here. Right, and then come back up the stairs to my turret, please. Ow, how did he hit me? Oh, the frames! Now he's gonna pop. See ya. Oh, we cleared it. Nice. Oh, my frame rate. That's the worst part of these POIs. Is you, the frames are so bad. So, so bad. Ah, too late. I'm already gone. I will... Is that a fucking demo? How you doing, bro? <laughs> He's just chilling. You don't see that every day. A wild demo. Yeah, I should be safe to switch over to the gyrocopter here. My frame rate still sucks. Just remembering that place. Killing my frames. Let's go. Let's see what Wrecked has to give me for that then. Right, since I got that done in relatively... Why is that still loaded in back there? That's weird. Anyway, uh, since I got that done relatively quickly, I think I'm going to take the hospital as well and do that today. And then whatever time I end that, I'm going to start collecting a bunch of resources and doing some management and stuff. The three bundles is really nice, though. Even though I'm confident if you could actually get the trader to give you three tier five infestations reliably, it would be a lot faster to just do that. But I don't know, he's been kind of deep with his tier five infestations lately. He's had like one a day, which is like, meh. I don't mind the difficulty of a tier six infestation. It's just I cannot find a single single tier 5 or I guess tier 6 infestation but tier 5 POI that doesn't absolutely devour your frame rate and it's not like that on Horde Night it's not the zombies it's just the, the buildings are really inefficient on the game so I'll take the level 6 nail gun even though it is genuinely useless uh, I have a level 1 it is pretty much the same this will just last longer between repairs I don't think I've ever repaired a nail gun so yeah and I'll take a level 5 machete because mine is level 3 so why not let's take us close by Hospital 1. I'm gonna open up the dart trap bundle and I'm just gonna scrap all this because I don't like dart traps. Let me go back to my base, sort out my inventory and I'll head out to the hospital. We'll probably do it during the night, which is no real difference when you're playing Insane Nightmare anyway, so I'm gonna have to make some new robotic turret ammo soon as well. But that's mostly gonna be a case of waiting for a lead. Well, mining lead. Not waiting for a lead. Lead doesn't need to be smelted for this. Where's a water source? I'm gonna take a quick drink of that really quickly and then I'll fly out to that hospital and we'll do it during the night. All right here we are at the hospital just as night turns. I don't have as much turret ammo this time but probably enough to do this POI well enough. Ugh, let's get started. Down into the basement we go. Well, hello there. Ow. Oh, hello, radiated zombie. Probably not try and first strike him, actually. I probably will not kill him at this stage. Uh, I think you're the slightly weaker of the two, so let's try you first. And of course, hitboxes. Ah, 
Now that's a lot of food there. I wonder if she knows where I am. I guess that answers that. Nope. I think she lost me. I am at one on the detection meter, so that would make sense. Oh, I actually killed her. Isn't there supposed to be some in the ceiling? Yes. Yes, there is. One there. One there. I stand here, and I wait. Okay, I'm bored of waiting. Let's let them through. still. Let me go grab that turret. Right, I got a skill point there. Probably want to put that into a running gun too. I'll be able to run faster while I reload, which is a very useful ability when you're me anyway, because sprinting away while reloading seems to be a big part of my playstyle. Another one. We wake up the zombies. Onwards. Oh, okay. Whoa. Where'd he go? Uh oh. He's gonna pop. I have a choke point at my disposal here, I'm going to use it. I don't know where that cough went and when he exploded, but it was a thing. This is the one with the dogs, right? So let me go ahead and just prep this. There they are. That is an incredible amount of dogs. Now it's just one. Didn't need the turrets after all. Okay, that did not work at all. Alright, go. vultures out here? Well, if they are, they're over there. My bow is surprisingly effective, considering I have no points invested in it. Could be better, obviously. And obviously it gets a little bit of damage boost from my agility rank, or whatever it is I have it at currently. Because obviously it gets a headshot damage boost from that, but one-shotting regular zombies on insane difficulty without any skill points is not bad. I know it's sneak attacks, but I'm still used to like Alpha 19 when bows just didn't do anything if you were on a difficulty above of Nomad. And even then they weren't that good on Nomad. Fortunately, their screams aren't real. Whoa, that's a lot of red dots. I'm gonna place a turret preemptively. Really, turret? Now is not the time. How could you even see that? Oh well, I guess we're going loud. Bullshit on that hit. Oh, those, those start off ready to get you, I guess. They don't do hit animations, but they hit me anyway. The worst. Oh, hell no. Put one there. Have one like there. 
and let's try and do it stealthily, probably get like one kill before it goes terribly wrong, but... Well, that definitely already went wrong. Sneak away. Well, not sneak away, run away. Wait, close that behind me. Right, so begins the chaos. Your sacrifice will be remembered, turret. Probably. Who survived? Turret, do your job. Nice. I don't even think I actually damaged it with my grenade. I think I'm relatively near the end. He didn't wake up, cool. My lizard brain demands it. Just like the ninjas would have done. there. Goodbye. No thank you. Not today. Nope. Great success. Oh, hi there. Oh, okay. Didn't successfully sneak into this one. This went better than last time. Last time I activated the roof and that room at the same time and it was a big clusterfuck. You met my lizard brain. It makes me do silly things sometimes. Time to run away. Ow. Turret. And turret. And hope for the best. Ow. Alright, let's do this for me. Better be dead, you two. Any of you still alive in there? Nope, I think it's just me. Um, I have no inventory capacity at all. Maybe I should come up and down the POI. Put my stuff in the gyrocopter and come back. Let me kill this guy on the way down as well. Apparently someone's still alive up there. Not 100% sure where it means, but they're probably around the POI, like around the POI, not within it anymore, because when it does that, that typically means either the POI's bugged and just hasn't spawned, or there's a zombie who was part of the POI who has been sent outside of the POI and has subsequently left the targeting thing and now it doesn't know where it is, which is easy enough to solve with some time. Little turret bundle, nice, I need another one of those anyway. Blade trap bundle, eh, I'm not the biggest fan of blade traps, but Ah, another beaker. I'm not making a fifth... Ooh, fuel saver. I'm not making a fifth chemistry station. I like the fuel saver, though. Right then, so it says the zombies here. Clearly, they're not. Okay, I'm back up onto the roof. It doesn't seem like I've missed any rooms or any buttons. So if it's not here, then it's just not here. And we'll have to go home. There we go. I wonder why that didn't trigger the first time. Did I not actually hit the ground? Let me take the pillar elevator back home. 
It only took me like an extra hour to do that, it's fine. I'm out of robotic turret ammo, so that means I'm out of willingness to do tier 6 POIs. <laughs> if I'm doing an intellect build, I'm going to use robotic turret ammo for tier 6s. It's silly not to. Let's see, 86 finds 87, so it's not a big priority, but I'll take it and sell it. Uh, same with the nail gun, you can actually put mods on that and sell it as well. Don't need any more jobs today. I got a skill point though, let me go ahead and put that into agility. Right, mining time. The thing that's actually going to be somewhat productive. Let me take my stuff over to my base. Okay, forges, how you doing? They have fully smelted all their stone into stone, and now it can be turned into cement. Question is, how much total cement am I going to have here? 13,000 plus 23,000 plus... Each of these is about 1,500 more, so... So that's about another 10,000 cement from them, so... What did I say I had again? So, 33,300 cement, which makes sense because I've got 7,000 concrete crafted in these as well. I do not have anywhere near enough crushed sand. So this is all going to go in here, because I have no stone anyway. Which is where the next part of today's episode comes in. I need a shitload of stone. And when I say a shitload, I mean uh, 33,000 plus like 16,000. Let's call it 45,000 stone. And that's just for the concrete. But I can probably do that. I can one-shot stone and I have plenty of time. So I'm going to head over to that big rock and I'm going to see if I can mine up 45,000 stone. Which is quite excessive, but this should be all the concrete I need for the entire playthrough, and then I could just stop thinking about it. After that, we'll have to match it in cobblestone, which is going to require, of course, another like 40,000 stone and then 40,000 clay. And I won't try and match it in forged steel, but I'm still going to get a lot of forged steel this playthrough. So I'm going to mine this until I have 45,000 stone, this place runs out of stone, or something interesting happens. Okay, it took like 20 minutes, but there's 66,000 stone. I did a recalculation halfway through that, and I was like, 45,000 is not enough stone. So that should be enough to get all the crushed sand and actual stone I need to produce the other part of the 40,000 concrete, which is a lot, and it's probably going to take a good amount of time for that to actually craft out, even with advanced engineering and eight cement mixers, but... Uh, Good to get that out of the way. I'll still need to do more stone mining though, because I tend to build out of cobblestone and then upgrade it to concrete and then steel if I need to, which is of course going to take a while. But let's see what we can do here. So I need 26,000 crushed sand. Actually, do I need 26,000 crushed sand? Let's see, I've got... I've got about 14,000 total and I have to get 33,000, so I need about 19,000 crushed sand, which will be about 2,300 crushed sand in each of these, so let me get that started. That leaves me with 47,000 stone, that doesn't seem right, I feel like I've missed some crushed sand, but we'll find out in a moment. Grab the rest of this cement, fill another minute on most of it, and I already know that I'm going to be producing about 5,000 concrete in each of these to make 40,000, so let me just queue that up immediately. That'll take about two hours to craft in each of these, after the crushed sand of course, and I'll need more cement, one second. Right, now I need to wait for the rest of the cement and the rest of the crushed sand, but this is going well so far. My 7,000 concrete crafted already, and I have the other 33-ish thousand crafting in the cement mixers here. It'll take about two hours for it to all be done, uh, which will be two in-game days, so that'll be at the end or in the middle of next episode. Pretty much during Horde Night it'll be done, uh, which is fine by me. I think that's going to do it for today's episode. In the next one, we'll do some more tier 6 infestations. We'll gather a little bit of stone and clay so that I can make cobblestone for my base, and then we'll do the Horde at the old base still. Moving after that, I think it'll be time to start building up that final Horde base. 
Hello and welcome back to 7 Days to Die. I am in the middle of the desert mining some oil shale because I was running quite low on gas there. So I thought I would come out and deal with that. Today we are going to be doing even more tier 6 infestations, mostly just for the fun of it. So what jobs do you have? 2-bit tower, I will take that. That's one I've not actually done in Alpha 21 yet, so it'll be very interesting to see what they've done to it, and they'll be doing it as an infestation. No, so it'll be even worse. Let me go back to my base and start this gas crafting, though. There, my chemistry stations are all split, making various amounts of gas, so I should be good on that. For a while, anyway. So since I have a bunch of extra gas... Nope. No. Um, I'm gonna use my auger to mine some lead. I really could do an expanded tank mod for this, but I've just had no luck on it. So, where's some lead? Preferably slightly far away, so I don't have to use as much ammo on these turrets that are gonna be, no doubt, constantly blasting screamers if I'm anywhere nearby. There's some lead. Right, I'm gonna drive out to that marker, and I'm gonna mine up as much lead as I feel I can tolerate mining. We'll set that to craft into robotic turret ammo, and then I'll wait for some of it to craft so we can actually go and do this. Tier 6. Okay, 34,000 lead. That should be enough to make 14 stacks of robotic turret ammo, AP specifically. At least I got a good amount of stone out of it as well, which will save me time later, because I will need that to make a bunch of cobblestone. And I did get some good gems out of it as well. Right then, iron, where are you? I have a solid amount of that, so I shouldn't have to worry too much. I'm thirsty, well, I'll run to a water source in a minute. So let's make two of these and each of these. There we go. And that should keep me robotic turreted up for a while. Hopefully. How are the chemistry stations doing? Eh, they're almost done. There. Now I should be good on gas for a while. Is the first stack of my ammo done? It is. Right, let me grab that, open one of them up, and then load my turrets with it. I need to find some level 6 turrets. And then I can open up this one, and I'll put the overflow in there, so I'll have 1,000 plus 5,000 plus whatever is in the actual drum. That should be pretty good to do a tier 6 POI. Hopefully it'll last a lot longer than one tier 6 POI, but I don't know how bad this POI might be. Uh, if it takes me five boxes of robotic turret ammo to clear a tier 6 POI, then they're probably not the most efficient thing to use. I doubt it takes that much though. So. Here we are. Alright then, so I really don't know this POI, I've not done it in Alpha 21, they've changed it, and it's going to be a tier 6, so this could be an absolute nightmare. Oh, I see radiated zombies in the first room, okay. Ooh, radiated lumberjacks and everything. They're not playing in this POI. Damn, even he didn't stand a chance. Wake the rest of them up. Perfect. I assume the rest of the PY is not going to be quite as easy. Is there anything down here? Yes, there is. Oh, there's awful things down here. Even more down here. Please. A weapons bag. Oh, I can make stacks of gunpowder now. Nice. Get back here. Oh, 
I killed her. Well, this is going great so far. Oh great, they fell. Well, that makes things harder. Oh, there's a ladder. We'll get up here, nurse. Come on. That's right, take a seat. Is this area still a complete death trap? Yes, yes it is. Holy shit. Nope. Not today, thank you. Well then. Did that take another first aid kit from me? God damn it, stop doing that. I tried to use it and it didn't apply, then it still consumes the first aid kit. It's annoying. Hello? I believe in you turrets. Next. Ow. Frame rate is absolutely trash in here and it is killing me. Oh, the fight has begun without me. Good job, turret. Nope, here comes the rest of them. That was very effective. Looks like I'm gonna have to open one of my stacks of ammo. Why, game? Why? I was just minding my own business. Here's some glue. Make some duct tape. And then a splint. Maybe make some extra duct tape. And some extra splints. And then use that. I have position rank 1, that means I can use splints to do that. Bullshit on that hit. Didn't even attempt to do an animation there. Hi. Run away. Was it just him? I find this confusing and frightening that it was just one guy. I suspect... Oh, I know this room's a bitch. I remember it. Uh, how do I want to handle this? Probably have them run right back to where I just was. Hi, hello, I would like to get a gym membership or something, I don't know. Fix that. Get in turrets. I believe in you. Massacred. Right, where's this one last guy? He's stuck in the ceiling. Oh, he was. Two skill points, because I got a skill point while I was mining lead and held on to it. Let's get up to six agility. Right, where do we go from here again? Oh, probably out there, right? We can go over here. Oh, we're getting into the fight already. Yep, that has unveiled some zombies, for sure. Come on.
Uh oh, I know this place. We're near the end at least. But we can lure them out in little groups to this turret. Oh, I killed one of them. Where's the other guy? Good job, turret. What is my frame rate in here? 36. Dear God. What is this, 2012? Might as well be zero. Come fight my turret. Whoa. Now I seem to recall a really scary room coming up uh, on the tier 5 version of this. Oh, if I look over here I get normal frame rate. I like that. Oh, that's nice. And then back over here it's 36 again. Um, as I was saying. Yeah, I recall that's the end right there. That's a scary, horrifying room of death and destruction and chaos and misery. But there's also another pretty terrible room downstairs here. You have to like go through to get to it. Well, no, you don't actually have to, but... You need to clear them either way. Yeah, hello. Run away, 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 run away. Look at all those red dots. I believe in you, turrets. You can do this. Not one step back. Not that you have opposable legs. Okay, I get a step back. You guys stick there for now. Oh, that's capped now. Okay. That's mean. That's mean. Why would you do that? Holy shit, hello. They flanked me. The zombies, they flanked me. Right, you need to die immediately. So do you. Once they're dead, ah, uh, no, he needs to be dead, dead, dead immediately as well. So does the green other guy. Are any of you still alive? Hello. Top of the morning to you. So yeah, the way I'm going to use their shitty level design against them is now that they've capped that ladder and I'm up here anyway, the zombies can't get to me. So, skill issue on the devs part. They thought they were stopping me, they made me stronger. As it usually goes. Now. That wasn't me, I don't know what happened there. Aww. That's cheating. I was fucking... Uh, whatever. I'm just gonna let them clump up somewhere. Fucking ow! <laughs> oh, I'm bleeding. Where, what the, what the, what the, where the fuck did he go? What's even happening anymore? I t what? How are you electrify? I'm up. Oh, I hit a rending machine, probably. No, stop it. No one can puke that much. Stop it. Ow. I don't even know what just happened. Did he hit my grenade midair or something? What was that? I'm thirsty. Well, you'll have to deal with it. Wait, one more grenade. I should grab these. They may be strategically useful assets. That's right, pile up at that big hole you made. I'm so glad you're all deciding to punch the shit out of that vending machine. It saves me a lot of work, actually. There, that should help a lot. Science cannot explain anything that's happening right now. Oh, you need a reload? Jeez. You cover that bit. Where the fuck did you come from? Are they going up and around? Oh, you're out of ammo as well, are you? Oh, I can't reach him. Okay. Why is there a ladder here? 
There's oh for fuck's sake, there's more zombies. There's more zombies in just a random room. They're just chilling in a random room. Oh, it's in a landmine, but that isn't really a concern for my character. I need to open more ammo. Alright, so I have activated another half of a horde. I continue to be completely baffled by what I'm seeing. What the fuck? How did you come from there? Then me. Give me a favor, lady. Shut the fuck up. Oh, great, there's more screamers. PY is absolute fucking chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the fucking dog there? There we go, we cleared it. Another screamer. I'm going back inside and I'm gonna go get my loot now. Are we there? Is this the loot? Are we finally at the end of this nonsense? Finally. Let's see. Shotgun turret bundle, security camera bundle, um, rifles, a treasure map, another level 6 auger. I'll have to compare it to mine elsewhere. I need to put mods on something. Ogre, can you take these mods? You can. Let's see, a food bundle. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to start scrapping these mods now. Uh, urban combat book, I know. Another beaker. Uh, try and take all this in some way. There's a bunch of random stuff I definitely don't need. Well, I'm going home. I'm very confused. Hang on, there might be something more up there. Let me check. It's on the roof. Besides, probably more vultures. Is there anything? Is there a reason to go up here? The meds. So none of the ones I need. Right, well, I'm going home. I'm going to take some time to reflect on what the fuck just happened. It still hasn't processed in my mind. Now, let's see. What food did I get? More tuna fish gravy toast. I'm not complaining, but damn. I had nothing but that. Where's my gyrocopter? Yes. Alright, Wrecked, what do you have? Now that you did the job. Another SMG-5 at level 6, and yet another impact driver at level 6. Do you have any other rewards at all, Wrecked? Let's take the Dr. Karen Higashi residence. I've not done that one at all, I don't think. Not even as a tier 5. But that should also completely and utterly destroy my brain. But I think I'll do it tomorrow, rather than trying to force it out today. I have some actually useful things to do back at my base. See, if I was just playing on my own, I would just sit in my base and craft things all day because this is completely pointless in terms of actually doing anything. It just gets me things I already have and some XP, I guess. But it's entertaining. Slightly. Right, while I wait for the last of my concrete to... to mix i guess i'm gonna go check my new collectors really quickly here's another 24 washer otherwise known as another 24 glue ow being of glue i could really use some more repair kits let's see and the bones you make me the rest of the glue get some cloth myself like nine more duct tape grab myself some forged iron and make myself 11 more repair kits, and then put that forged iron away. Cool. Are all the cement mixers done? Let's see how much concrete I have. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. Is this one still spinning? Okay, that one's got a little bit more. 25,000, 30,000, 35,000, plus. I can only hold 39,000 concrete at a time. Hang on. 42,000. Plus, like, an extra hundred. Yeah, so I have 42,000 concrete. Um, remember last time when I made entirely too much concrete? I think I beat that this time. <laughs> right, I'm gonna need, like, a concrete box here. Con concrete. There we go. 
Well then, that'll definitely do. <laughs> That's enough for 4,200 blocks of various things, but how much stone do I have? 27,000 plus I have 4,000 clay. I need more stone, if you can believe it. I need to get another, what was it? Uh, 13,000 stone. I need 40,000 stone, basically, or make it 42,000 stone. And then I need to match that with clay, and then I need to turn all of that into cobblestone. So I'm going to go back to this POI that I always mine. Uh, I'm going to take a drink before I go, uh, and I'm going to mine up to 42,000 stone so that I can get myself 42,000 cobblestone, basically. And then I'm going to take the auger and I'm going to mine up as much clay as I can, hopefully 42,000 as well, or get myself up to 42,000. I do have 4,000 to start with. And that can all be turned into cobblestone in my workbenches, and then it can all be turned into cobblestone blocks. And I'll have like 4,000 blocks to build bases out of. Then it'll just be a case of making a unholy amount of forged steel, which I'm pretty capable of doing. So let's get started on this. There we go, 42,000 clay. My brain has slightly melted out of my skull, but I don't think I was using it anyway. Oh, let me grab the motorcycle. Yep, definitely, brain is gone. Uh, but that should be enough to make 42,000 cobblestone, which will translate to about 4,200 uh, blocks. I'll probably just go for 4,000 and use the extra materials to repair at various points. I don't even think I'm going to need 4,000, but it'll be nice to have a bunch of spare blocks so I can just go crazy with it. So that should be what 6,000 in each of my uh, workbenches. Cobblestone. Let's see 6,000. So they'll take half an hour-ish to create that. I did get a skill point. I'm going to put that into the next rank of parkour which will prevent me ever getting a broken leg from falling so that's good. Right well I suppose we should go out to this whatever it's called again. Uh Aaron Higashi residence, I think it was. Stack of those, grab some extra meds, and see what I can do there. I'll fly over. Oh yeah, my gyrocopter's in a box in here. Right, here we are at the Dr. Karen Higashi residence. Let's get in here. Let's see what this place is all about. Okay, so the first half of the PY is obviously pretty easy. Right, here is where I'm expecting things to get a little bit more scary when we're actually underground here. Oh, this feels like a bad room. Uh oh. Not a fan of that. Hi there. Oh, there's zombies behind me. From outside. Not a fan. No oh, rope ladder, really. And down like this again. Massively not a fan of that, actually. Oh, well, good enough, I suppose. Place to start out. Oh, hello. I've got some vitamins and port bites. How much hydration do you take? 30. Well, I'll put those on. And then I'll drink some murky water to stop it from dehydrating me too much. I've got 6 minutes of 50% damage reduction. So if I get hit really, really bad, I'll be able to take more of it. Oh, there's zombies behind me. Let me deal with this first. Get back out there. Stop it. Go 
ahead and actually load my M60, otherwise it's useless to me. Uh oh, here we go again. Whoa. <laughs> Run away. They were fast. Oh, hey, you found the door. That makes things way easier, actually. Help me with it. That was weird. Let me go grab my other turret. I really do not trust any of these rooms. Run away! I believe in you, turret. Oh, are you gonna make me fall again, game? Come on, you're better than that. No, you're not. What am I talking about? Right, well, what if I just place one of those that way? And then place one of them that way, and then I try and aim for, like, surface of some kind. Alright, so far we're safe. Uh, where are the nearest doors? Door there. Oh, wait, I can just place these through glass, I forgot. So that's... that works. Hold back. Oh, I'm thirsty. I I drank so much murky water. <laughs> the port base are only supposed to take 30 or something. That feels bugged. I might get lucky with some murky water in these chemistry sets. Hang on. Follow me! Right, is there... Yeah, there's more containers in here. Let me check those for some water. That's not water. And there's some murky water. It'll do. Anything through here? I'm just gonna lure them all back to my turrets, to be honest. Oh, that's a scary guy. What's that behind me? Oh, insta-kill. Nice. That's lucky. I see a water killer. I did. Not one hundred percent sure what just happened. Hello. Oh, did it open this? Well, that's a lot more than I can handle. There it is. Save me. Gonna reload these. Any washer containers in here? Eh, yeah, chemistry set might get lucky. Nope. Right, so if I open this, then it'll open that door. But it'll probably open a side door as well. Presumably the one right next to where my turrets are. It doesn't open this door. Well, why not? That'd be really beneficial to me right now if it did. Did I bring any arrows? I've got one arrow. Let me clear this dead body, because you never know. And let's see if I can get a good stealth. A random zombie just came from the ceiling, okay. There, I killed one guy. It didn't mark any of the enemies. Because you have to move in to spawn them. Stuck on a chair! Reload. Oh, this door did open. Well, that's mean. It only opens when you step foot in there, though. Because fuck you, that's why. Oh. I'm assuming... Oh, is this a water source? I'm sure that there's nothing bad can come from drinking this water. 
Hello there. Can't really deal with you, to be honest. Come over here. Let me try and clear these zombies before I do anything else. This seems like a good fallback point if everything goes horribly wrong. Hello? Boomers? It's, what are you doing here? Well, okay. What? The zombies came from behind me. What? Oh, I see. Mm, yeah, that'll do it. Screamers, you're so annoying. Come here. Well, that was mean. How is there more screamers? Wait, are they? Oh, you're just gonna sit up there and infinitely spawn more zombies, aren't you? Like a little fucking shit you are. Where'd she go? Ah. Why is there a fucking dire wolf down there? I don't like this POI. There's more screamers. There we go. Come stand in front of my turrets. Now oh, this one is reloaded. Are we done here then? Can I finally get to the loot? Play trap bundle, shotgun turret bundle, a level 6 steel pick. Uh, 35, 32. Nice, it's actually probably going to be good enough to one-shot some more things that the level 5 couldn't, so that's something at least. Uh, we also got all you know, the basic stuff that you get from those. Where's the actual loot? Security camera bundle, boo. Uh, I got a forget an elixir, which is cool, but I don't want to forget an elixir out of anything right now, so... It's just a cool, neat little thing I got. Okay, and I got nothing of any real note from the rest of these containers. Let's head back to Trader Wrecked. Get my reward and then get ready for Horde Night. Your pockets. Another level 6 SMG and I'll take the chainsaw because I actually do need a better chainsaw. Let me take my stuff back to my base, sort out my inventory, grab some cobblestone and head over to the base for Horde Night. That's my third level 6 SMG. Let's see, cobblestone is all done. That's about all I can hold of it. Let me go ahead and queue... Let's call it 500 cobblestone blocks out of each of these. As far as I can, anyway. And I'll keep the extra cobblestone for now. I'll keep a thousand on me for base repairs during Horde Night. I've got one layer and elixir. I might as well use that for Horde Night. Right, so all the cobblestone, all the concrete is done. I'll just need a load of forged steel and maybe a bit of wood. But that can wait for later. So it's just a case of heading over to my Horde base and making use of my turrets for Horde Night. Now, here's the thing. I could try that strategy again. I could alter the build somewhat. I have some cobblestone blocks ready to go already. I don't need the bow, it's not going to be much help on Horde Knight. Uh, I'm going to turn off the defences for now, because I don't want them wasting their ammo during Horde Knight. So I'm going to try maybe elevating these, and hopefully I can still place my turrets on them from the other side of that wall. And then I'll keep these lowered, or maybe I want to even lower them further. Where's my pick? And place this one here. There we go. So while those are reloading, these will be active. Hopefully the way I have them now should stop the robotic turrets from accidentally killing the sledge turrets. It might not. This is experimental after all. So I'm just going to sit up here and wait for Horde Knight. Uh, let's see, can I actually? Yeah, I can grab my turrets, fine. Oh, I'll need a nail gun. That, that could have been bad. Grab that. Alright, and now I wait. Okay, here comes Horde Knight. I'm feeling pretty confident. The only thing I'm worried about is maybe we should, for the next one I want to do, before we move on to the big base, I should maybe make this concrete just to make sure this stays, because this is only 1500 health. That's not a lot. Like, they can break through that pretty easily. But my game stage is only 100, so I shouldn't be expecting much in the way of crazy zombies. Let me take a learning elixir pretty much when I see the first zombie. As soon as I see one go over the top there, I'll drink this. There we go. So begins another Horde Knight. 
This time they're not shooting the turrets it looks like though, so that's a good improvement I've made there. That one ran out of ammo immediately. <laughs> Must have forgot to load it. That's fine. Go on a second here. Replace that. There we go. Hey, why is that not working? Oh, it didn't load. Fuck's sake. Oh, that does take a while after you put the thing in. There we go. Just in time for the other one to run out of ammo, of course. Oh no, it didn't run out of ammo. What's wrong with it? Why was it? It's weird. Also, I got a skill point there. I'll put that into nothing. I'll hold off for seven agility. There we go. Hello and welcome back to the Intellect series of Seven Days to Die. Today, I want to do something a little bit different from just grinding tier sixes. I want to get myself a 4x4 today. So to do that, I'm going to need the 4x4 truck accessories and I highly doubt I have enough steel on hand, but I have some. Let's see, this can make me 18.9 as a starting point. Let me also just smell in the rest of that. Any others got any iron in them at all? They do not, but they have a good amount of clay, so I can probably turn that on and turn that on, and that should make me enough forged steel relatively quickly to get the 4x4 truck chassis. I don't think I need anything else. Have I got the mechanical parts? Yeah, I think I have everything else for the 4x4. Now, you'll notice in my inventory, I have five treasure maps, and that's because I have been holding on to them from the various sources you get them from, uh, just because I want to do them all at once in the wasteland, and now that I'm going to be going into the wasteland, it seems like as good a time as any to do that, but I'm going to take all these mods and all this armor and weapons, and I'm going to put it in the box I have outside the trader, because I have just so much stuff from doing these tier 6 infestations, they give you so much. 
it is insane. Very little of it is any use to you, but they give you it. And that isn't even my main stash of money, I don't think. I think the 100k Dukes is still sitting outside the trader. I just haven't been able to really spend it. Let me grab all these. I'll keep one level 6 SMG just in case I want to use one. A spare M60. Thun batons. I'll keep that steel helmet in case I want to use it, like I said earlier. Augur. Backup impact drivers. Bunch of spare nail guns. I'll keep the level 1 nail gun and use that one. And I'll sell these level 6s, preferably with mods on them. Right. And a level 5 chainsaw. And a level 5 baton. I need more repair kits again. Let's see here. Let me make like 50 duct tape and grab some forged iron and I'll turn all of that into repair kits and it should do me for the rest of the playthrough at least. Let's head over to the trader really quickly. So over here I have another 60k jukes and I have another four treasure maps. Damn I didn't even know that. Uh so my total amount of jukes is what exactly? Hang on. Oh hey there's some forged steel in here. I'll take that. And then I have all of this as well. Uh, I don't want to sell the auto shotgun. I might want to use that at some point so I'll hold on to it. I need to start filling the second container with mods and items as well. And then this has even more money in it. Oh my god. I haven't even been doing that much questing, have I? Since the last time I did all this kind of thing? I don't think I have. How many dukes do I have? 16... 160,000! I don't even know how I got that. But here we are. But I am not done there. I have all these treasure maps. And the one decent thing you seem to get from treasure maps is money. So that would make a lot of sense to get onto that. So I'm going to drive out to the wasteland, go right to Trader Bob actually, get right in the middle of his town. In fact, I'll fly out to the wasteland. Why would I, why would I do it like that? Where's my gyrocopter? Yeah, I'll head out to Trader Bob and then I'll read all those treasure maps or read as many of them as I can. You will have to clear the other quests before you can read the map again. And that should give me the best level loot I can get from the treasure maps. They're not that good, but I do want to try and get a ridiculous amount of money just for the humour of it, I guess. I mean, I have nothing much better to do while I wait for that steel to craft. So I'll do all those treasure maps and then I'll see what I can do for Trader Bob in terms of quests. Right, so I'm pretty deep into the wasteland here. There's a chance we might still end up with some treasure maps in the desert, but it's fine. Most of the loot in treasure maps isn't really leveled anyway, but if I'm going to be wasting my time on treasure maps, which really only gets you a little bit of ammo and some money, uh, and the whole point of this is literally wasting time whilst just kind of experimenting with a ridiculous amount of treasure maps I have. Uh, so I will read all the treasure maps I basically can in the middle of the desert here. In the wasteland, sorry. Clear the landing strip here. Ah, oh, there's just two zombie bears right in front of me. Three zombie bears right in front of me. Welcome to the wasteland. Right, so I think you can only read um, one of everybody's treasure map at a time. Like, I've got two of Raphael's here. So I don't think I can read a second Raphael map until I clear the other map. I can get a good few of them. Right, so... Where's the nearest one? 500 meters, Claude's treasure map. Where did they all spawn? They all look like they're in the wasteland to me. Uh, the logical choice would be to go in a bit of a circle, so let's start with that one. I'm gonna pick up my gyrocopter. I don't trust them. Ow. Fortunately, when you're on a vehicle, it seems to reduce the damage you take. Oh. From uh, hits like that, assuming you get lucky and it doesn't just make you bleed or have an instant concussion. It's very inconsistent, I don't know why they do that. Like, you'll take reduced damage, but also you have like a 90% chance of taking an injury. What's the point of those two mechanics? They seem to contradict each other, but here we are. Ah, right, here we are. This one's in a road, which is slightly annoying, but it's fine. Load my turrets. It's one facing that way, and I don't know, one facing that way. Right, where's my shovel? Although you start with a... hang on. As I was saying, you start with a layer of stone anyway, so let me dig this up and then we'll see what we get inside. Here's the first cache though. I've only got six lockpicks, so I'm going to have to pickaxe through a lot of these. But that's fine. I have four ranks of minor 69er. I should be good. So first one, just some weapon mods, a little bit of ammo, not even any money, just 600 dukes worth of gold. Disappointing, but that's why we got fucking nine of the things. So let's drive up there. Right, here's another treasure map. I'll build myself a little ramp into the center of this and go from there. And some more money worth like a thousand dukes, a mod and some decent ammo. I'll say no to like a magazine for my M60, but it's a long walk to get to it. 
Oh, here we are. Uh, a little bit more ammo. Some parts. Some technically money. I'll probably scrap most of the money into paper. Because paper is more useful to me than dukes. Because I can get brass from anything. But paper is a little bit more difficult to find. Uh, let's see. Is there a town nearby? Yeah, I'll head into that town and get some water before I go and do those other maps. There, that should cover me for a while. Ah, some silver. Still absolutely basically nothing for the amount of effort it takes to come out here and get them. Yeah, 44 Magnum and 10k Dukes, that's somewhat decent. At least this will get me a better discount, assuming I have that book, which I think I do. Let me see. Um, yeah, so I'll be able to get a discount with the Magnum, at least that's something. And 10k Dukes isn't bad, but I did have to search how many maps to actually get that. <laughs> it's a good thing I made all those extra repair kits, because I have been using them in here, let me tell you. Let's see. That is the maximum range I can do? Yeah, I don't think I'm getting into the wasteland from there. Okay, we'll just search it in the forest then. Two sun batons. Okay, weird, but whatever. I mean, I'm getting a decent amount of ammo crafting supplies, but versus just actually mining those things for 10 minutes, this is not very profitable. Oh, here it is. Like, directly under where I was digging. And a little five steel spear. I mean, that could have been good if I had been playing a spear build. But even then, level five. I would have definitely had a level 5 steel spear by day 29 anyway, and I would have been too low of a loot stage to get a level 5 steel spear much earlier than this. Which is the problem with uh, treasure maps, largely, they're too niche to be useful early on, and loot stage governs your things you find in loot, which means that you're going to be denied from getting anything good from them anyway in terms of like leveled loot, like a level 5 steel spear there, and by the time you're high enough level or you're at the stage of the game where the things in a treasure map are useful treasure maps are the most inefficient way to get anything inside of them if you want ammo infested clears the stuff you get inside of a treasure chest here is like the same stuff you get from a level 2 infested clear cache it is seriously mid loot and if you want ammo crafting supplies it is always going to be faster to just mine lead or mine coal and nitrate especially since you're gonna have to be doing some kind of digging to get to these anyway you might as well dig the materials you actually want and as for dukes doing anything would be a much faster way of getting dukes than doing this a few diamonds isn't bad but again it's just a bunch of ammo i can't use especially since it's random ammo ow Did that just disappear? Or did it go into the surface? Hang on. I mean, I don't honestly care all that much. Why does... Why does the treasure loot completely vanish out of the fabric of reality when you do that? that? As if these couldn't be worse. That can happen. I mean, I'm not really missing much of it, but, you know. I'm assuming the bag dropped through the world or something. Ugh, whatever. Anyway, as I was saying, you get a bunch of assorted random ammos if you just spent the same amount of time actually making the ammo you need. You would get so much more. I do not understand people's obsession with these things. They are the least efficient way to get anything you can get from them, so why do people bother with them? But part of what my content is about is being informative, so I need to show you why they're shit. I can't just keep saying, oh well they're shit, and then I just get 100 comments asking me why they're shit. And then I do a video like this in every series, and I still get the same comments. And the same level 4 pump shotgun I got last time. Decent, but I have a level 6 auto shotgun already. I mean, it's in my pockets right now. So it definitely doesn't compete with the trader rewards you could have spent that time getting. And yeah, 11 treasure maps, although let's call it 10. Um, because one of them did disappear on me. That's kind of what I've got to show for it. Most of the stuff in there, I probably got a lot of extra 7.62 actually. I wasn't really keeping track of that. Oh yeah, and the bullet tips. Uh, let's see. The leather wasn't a part of it in there. So there's what I got from like 10 treasure maps. It took me an entire day of deliberately going 
the most efficient route, basically, aside from maybe taking the gyrocopter, but that's a lot of landing. Now, there's two conclusions we can draw from that. Either the people who tell me that treasure maps are amazing are either really lucky, or they're really bad at the game and don't know how to get those things much more efficiently than doing that. 1,000 bullet tips per day is not an efficient yield. That is terrible. And that's assuming you have 10 treasure maps lying around, which most players won't. In fact, the easiest way to get treasure maps is going to be doing like tier 4 and 5 and 6 PYs, which will give you much more of the things you're getting from these treasure chests than the treasure chests would. Much quicker and much more interestingly. That was really boring. Let's see, another 280 forged steel from you, 300 from you, 300 and a bit from you, and I think I only loaded three of them up, so that's pretty good. It gives me a total of what? 192 forged steel. Still need a bit more for the um, 4x4, but it'll be here in no time, basically. I'm going to take all this stuff over to the trader box. Not that I can get rid of it right now, but I can start combining all the stuff I want to sell and start making actual money in an actually efficient way to do it, you know? Rather than, like, 15k jukes a day with treasure maps. Hello there. Yeah, skill point, nice. Can I get a uh, run and gun 3? Nice. Now I can reload and run at full speed, which comes up a lot with my playstyle. Right, hey, so... You better not bring any sugar butts for 10%. Store. Awesome sauce for 20%, wearing a cigar for a further 10%. I don't bother with better barter, it's a lot of skill points for not that much. The M60 will now go for 6.2k. I'm just going to sell all of this. Oh, he won't buy any more stun batons. <laughs> Probably should have sold the more expensive ones first, but that's fine. Right, so I got 77,000 dukes from that. That definitely dwarfs the amount of money I made from doing the treasure maps and then i'm also going to sell all this extra military armor just to clear out the inventory and be done with it and i'll hold on to those stun batons until i can actually sell them back to him i got half a level from that so far here we go an additional 5k right, so how much fucking money do i have okay so just a clean quarter million yeah yeah that yeah okay i should really buy more from his vending machine shouldn't i if i have a quarter of a million dukes <laughs> There. Spent like 10k jokes, didn't even notice. He has no tier 5 infestations. Alright, let's do a tier 4 infestation then, they're also really good. I'll go put this extra stuff back at my base and then we'll go and do a couple of tier 4 infested and see we get like the same amount of ammo as doing treasure maps, but it's way more enjoyable and you get way more XP for it. Right, how's the steel coming? Extremely well, that is enough steel. Right, let's get this 4x4 going and I'll... Let it craft while I do this other mission. Oh, it only takes two minutes? I, I'll probably just wait then. Um, 60 mechanical parts. A bunch of leather. Uh, electrical parts. And duct tape. I don't think I have any crafted, but I can get some. And then for the 4x4 four four accessories, you need pipes, springs, more mechanical parts, and headlights. Headlights, pipes, springs. I don't think I have enough actual mechanical parts. Let's see, 4x4 four four truck accessories. And then for the chassis, I need more. I need another, was that 16? Where's my actual impact driver? There it is. Another 16 mechanical parts. I can do that very quickly. Give me a moment. Just need to find a couple of cars. Oh, I can scrap that engine for some. There we go, that'll do. I probably had an engine I could have scrapped as well. There we go. That's enough mechanical parts to make the chassis. Oh, do I need to go out and get an engine, actually? I might need to, just to actually be able to make the proper truck itself. See, I've got a battery there. Yeah, I actually will need an engine. Have I got spare power in here? Can I steal that? Uh, 4x4 truck chassis. Uh, what else will I need for the 4x4? Four wheels, of course. Ah, here they are. Right, while I wait for those to craft, I also need to head over to my do collectors and gather up some water. There we go. And I have some spare water in here. Oh, there's some spare glue in here as well. That's good. And 36 more. Cool. Accessories are done. They'll take another 50 seconds. I'll just wait so I can queue it up at least. I should also grab the fuel saver mod from my gyrocopter because it's really not going to need it. 
but the 4x4 definitely could do with a fuel saver. Right then, while that crafts, I'll put this gas in here just so I don't lose it. I will simply run to this quest because it is, what, 200 meters away? Yeah, I'll just run there. <laughs> in fact, have I got some Mega Crush? I do. Uh, while I'm here, have I got some... There we go, time charge is my preferred way of opening locked containers that is kind of dangerous to do in the wasteland. Alright, let's clear this out. Come on, get down here. Ow. There's nothing like one hitting a radiated zombie with the stun baton. Because of that 10% chance to insta kill. Here we go, a bunch of ammo. And some more ammo and another set of explosives. Which I can use to open more containers. Great. Uh, is there still more zombies in here? Oh yeah, there's the ones that are in the little area. I also forgot the ones that drop in over here. There we go. Let's run back to Trader Wrecked. Ow. Ooh, a level 6 compound bow. That's actually good. I can't pick anything up though. <laughs> I'll take that and I will take the ratchet, I guess. Let me just sell that immediately back to him just to get it out of the way. Oh, yeah. I have six compound bow. I'll find another. Oh, well, there's a mod for it. That works. And I'll just sell him my old one. I'll take Let's that. Make it back. Post office. Let me go grab the truck first. There we go. Grab all that. Right, let's head out and do this tier four infested as well then. Not even in the building in the rag road onto me. Oh, that's a lot of zombies. Another level 6 iron travel. I'm just getting those thrown at me. Now let's treat that abrasion. I don't have any antibiotics on me, but it's fine. There we go. That only took a couple of minutes. Right, let's loot this. There we go. Now oh, there we go. And another beaker, of course. Now that I don't need them, I find them everywhere. Magnum Enforcer, some armor, and some acid. Of course, mods. Let's head back to Trader Wrecked and get a reward. I will take the customized fittings and this tactical assault rifle, which I can sell him later. Um, I don't want to do normal tier fives. They kind of suck. <laughs> Maybe I should do some mining then. And tomorrow we can see what POYZ has. Let's see, can I put those customized fittings on anything? Nope, I actually didn't need the customized fittings. All of my armor has it, which is unusual for me. Right, well, I'll spend the rest of the day gathering materials then, because that's what I really need more than anything. Ammo's nice, but building materials are nicer. Here we go. I still can't make the expanded tank mod. I should really just go quickly check Wrecked and see if he's selling one. Maybe I should check all the traders, take all my money out, do a big run at the traders, try and buy expanded tanks for my various tools, and buy all their vending machine contents because that'll be kind of funny. But let me drive around to Wrecked first. The iron mining can wait, that can be done at any time of day. Yep, no mods that I need anyway. Let's go see some other traders then. Hello Bob. A motor tool large tank mod, I will take that. Did I buy any sugar butts there? No, I'll just use the uh, 44 Magnum discount plus my cigar then. Otherwise, nothing else I need. See, I don't actually need an ergonomic grip on my auger. I don't know why you can even put it on there. But it is good for boosting the damage a little bit. So let's go see another trader and see if we can get another tank mod or some vehicle mods would be really nice. Ah, 
another motor tool tank mod. I'll take that. I really would have preferred the um, schematic for it, but that also works. I mean, I only really need two anyway. I mean, you only really need one. It's not like you can use the auger and the chainsaw at the same time, but I would have liked the schematic. Spending a lot of my money, but I'm getting a lot of very useful things, like all of these drinks. Oh, so many learning elixirs. Nice. The small motor tool tank mod schematic. I mean, it's something, but I probably won't waste my time with it. Still no vehicle mods, but I have plenty of time today. Who else is around? Trader Joel? And I also know a Trader Jen down in the snow biome, and another Trader Hugh there, and another Trader Joel. I'll just keep making the rounds to them until I run out of time. Trader Joel here doesn't have much of any value to me, but I can always raid his vending machines. He's probably going to be the last trader I have time to talk to today, which is fine. There we go, and I've raided his vending machines. So I'm going to fly back to my base, and tonight is going to be all about mining some iron. Because I'm going to need some forged steel for the late game, and I have a little bit crafted, but you're going to need more than a couple of hundred for the rest of the playthrough. So I'm going to head over to my base, clear out my inventory full of snacks, and see what we can do with iron. Okay, so my forges have produced a little bit more forged steel, a good amount, but nothing crazy. I am going to collect, you know what, I'm going to collect 14,000 iron, which should be enough to fill both of these forges slots with iron. I will, of course, need to repopulate it with clay after it's done cooking all that, but I'll need some more coal as well. So I think, let me see, did I get any rock busters today? I got a couple, and did I get coffee? I got some. I am going to head out to... Hmm. I'm going to head out here and mine some iron and then mine some coal. I'm going to try and get 14,000 iron and a couple of stacks of coal. The reason I'm going kind of far away is so that this area despawns and I don't have to worry about screamers destroying my base. In fact, that lead mine I had actually did have a decent amount of iron in it, so I'll go there instead. It's nice and further away as well. Here we are. You up three coffees because they can stack as high as three get the extra ore and i am gonna start mining this iron oh yeah i said fourteen thousand iron i don't know why i said that i mean 14 stacks of iron which would be eighty-four thousand iron yeah that seems a bit more reasonable to my usual demands let's get started on that So, there is 84,000 iron, just in time for a screamer to actually scream. All the other ones my turret's killed. Okay, so, as I was saying, 84,000 iron, pretty easy to do, because you get twice as much of it compared to everything else, so it really does come a lot easier than the other materials. But I still have to get some coal. My rockbusters have ran out. Is there some coal nearby? There's one. Uh, here's a good time to test if I can one-shot the coal. I can. That is probably going to be much faster to do with the pickaxe then. And my previous testing. Let me get like a stack of coal and I'll be back. There we go. Let's head back to my base. So each of my forges has two stacks of iron smelting with like a thousand coal to fuel it. So I shouldn't have to bother powering it. It's very inefficient to do it that way, but it does mean I just don't have to really attend to it. Once that's all smelted in, I will add a bunch more clay, which can wait for now. So I'm going to get back on the questing because it's a good way of getting XP and uh, and it's reasonably fun. So let's go talk to Trader Wrecked, see if he has any good tier 5 infestations. And be sure to buy all of his stuff. Here we go, two tier 5... Four tier 5 invested clears. Uh, let's do the closest one, the Navisgain High School. So one thing I like to do with the Navisgain High School is actually get the end loot first. Because it's really quite easy to get to. If we just break down a couple of pretty weak walls here. Break this one. We can open up the door. And let's test my new bow. Not bad. Let's get a look at this loot. Uh, auto turret bundle. Yep, that's going to get you a bunch more 9 mil. I do need a bunch of auto turrets, and this is way easier than actually crafting them, so tier 5 infestations for the win. 
scrapping food the bandolier and some ammo. Right, let's go clear the actual PY then. Another vending machine. And we're clear. Okay, let's go get my reward for this then. You did the job. Well that all sucks. Let's take the next infested clear for bags tell those back to him. Oh yeah, it's this one. Let's put the turrets in a position where they're going to cover me for most of it. Well, he's radiated. Interesting. Well, that's very effective. Did not mean to fire that so early, but no harm done. Did I one hit kill that radiated zombie? Drag this cop over. Or I won't, because I don't need to. Right, the trench is clear. Let's start clearing these buildings. Hang on. Well, I don't see any survivors. These need a reload. Right, I know this next room is pretty much impossible to sneak into. Hang on, I think there's zombies up here as well. Anyway, as I was saying, I think it's Pretty much impossible to sneak into this room without some serious investment into stealth, but I'll try. It's a good start. Oh, they didn't immediately get set on me, that's something. Yeah, that one kill is what I got, and I'm pretty sure it was just a crawler. Who's still alive in there? There we go. Pretty easy clear, all things considered. Grab my turrets, let's go get the loot. Play trap bundle. Bunch of stuff. Right, let's go get a reward from Rex and see if I can take another tier 5 infestation today. Money. I'll have a 6 oh, robotic wait, drone. And a time and a nail. Oh, time charges actually. I'm not going to use the robotic drone because the last time I did it bugged out and killed me. But if I find any robotic drone mods on my way around, I could sell that. So I'll take it. And I'll take port bags again or town hall. I'll take the town hall. Here we are. Let's step inside. Yeah, two skill points. Nice. Uh, let's just go for agility 8 so I can get the final rank of parkour. I thought I had enough room to dodge that. Job turrets. Oh, 
Oh, that was a lot sooner than I expected to see some zombies. just jump into the room and jump back out the room. Who's still alive? Hi there. Yep, that PY was a breeze. Most of them are with the turrets, but that was a real breeze. Uh, security camera bundle. Those are the worst. At least you can scrap them for iron. Alright, I'm gonna drive home. I can't get another quest from Wrecked, but I am filled with loot. I mean, if I sprain my leg doing this, it doesn't really matter, because I can insta-heal it. That's a lot of loot. Certainly more than the treasure maps gave me for a day's work. So, I'm going to drive home, and we'll see how much of that iron has smelted up. Probably not enough of it to do much yet, but it'll be good to see what kind of rates we're looking at. Right, all of that is done. Let's see how the forges are doing. So, they've smelted in... About three quarters of their iron. Now, obviously, most of them are going to have no clay. So, I'm going to wait for that iron to smelt in, which will take... If it's one second per iron, then it'll take 1,340 seconds, which is uh, about 22 minutes. So, probably in the morning, they'll be ready to start taking on some clay. And in fact, it might be smart to split these up back into this. And it'll take twice as long, but I can start putting the clay in immediately. Uh, let's see, raw materials, bunch of clay. That is about 2,000 clay per, which is fine. The thing about clay is it's actually worth about 5 clay per clay you put in the forge. So, you'll get a decent amount of clay out of just 2,000 in each of them. Yeah, that should do. But it does take 5 times as long for clay to smelt as well. Still, in about 20 minutes we can start spitting out a lot of forge steel. This one can already start, actually. Um, this one had 6,000 clay left over, so there's 400 clay, uh, steel. This one has them as well, there's another 400 odd, another 400 and a bit, another 500, another 300, and these are, oh no, this one has some 300, and this one is completely out of clay. So there's a good couple thousand, uh, steel coming from that. There's one last thing I want to do, which is make a lantern, because I was using electronic lights before but they were taking up too much power i could put them back and i got a bunch more engines but why not just use the free power source now that i think about it so forged iron where do you live i might have no forged iron right, well in that case i'll have one of these produce me an unholy amount of forged iron that's fine there now headlights they're in scrap one two three four uh electrical parts duct tape I might need one more duct tape. Where's all my cloth gone? It does go on adventures. It sometimes ends up in there. Make another duct tape. And then oil. Right, and then give me four lanterns. One, two, three, four. Right, so my four lanterns are done. Let's place those on the ceiling. Uh, what colour do I want them to be? doesn't change the light colour as far as I'm aware, it just changes the actual, yeah, the the plasticky bit. Jeez, these are brighter than any of the normal lights. Ugh. My eyes. Well, at least we can definitely fucking see in here. Right, well, that is going to have to do it for today's episode. I got a lot done in terms of I'm mostly gathering ammo between the treasure chests and the um, tier 5 infestations. I have so much ammo. And the thing is as well, the turrets upstairs, each of them hasn't used any more than like 200 ammo. And I've had them up there for like a week. So that is pretty good amounts. Hello and welcome back to 7 Days to Die. Ignore my turrets shooting in the background, I'm sure they're fine. So my plan for today is to do some more tier 5 and maybe some tier 6 infestations because they're getting me so much stuff. And I basically just need to do stuff while I wait for or forges and that kind of thing to produce the materials I need for later on in the game because I want the horde base video to be nice and neatly packaged with the actual horde night it's used in because what's the point of showing you how to build a horde base if I don't then show you how it works in the same video right so we're holding off on doing that 
which means that we kind of just have to get through the mid game of Seven Days to Die, which on this build is very much just a grind, now that I think about it, because I have everything. Like, everything. Everything progression-wise I could need, I have. The only thing I guess I'm slightly missing is level 6 robotic turrets. I even have a level 6 drone somewhere. I just, I'm not using it because it's a death trap. The last time I used it, it bugged out on me and got me swallowed by the world, which has given me a distrust for technology, which is ironic in my intellect playthrough, uh, because turrets do everything for me, but still. Uh, so today's going to be mostly getting some XP, and why were those beakers even in there? Let's put them in here for now. Mostly getting XP and trying to get some more good high-level rewards for from tier 5 and 6s. The real thing I would want is just level 6 robotic turrets, because that would be absolutely insane, because you've seen how good they are so far. So getting level 6 versions of them would be absolutely wild. But I do still need some XP as well, because I want to start putting points into Machine Gunner so that my M60 can just start being ridiculous. But the thing about these 7 Days to Die YouTube videos is I can't play the smart way. You see, the smart thing to do would be to build my base, forget about it, don't bother with it, and then when it actually does start to be needed, use that. And in the meantime, all you would be doing is just grinding unreasonable amounts of ammo at your various crafting stations. For example, I have seven workbenches, I could be producing all kinds of different ammo. And that's all that Seven Days to Die really is once you reach this late game stage, is grinding ammo. And I am technically grinding ammo, in a very weird way, because what I'm doing is doing tier 5 and 6 infestations, which do get you a lot of ammo. So I am grinding ammo, but I'm doing it in a way that's visually interesting. Because if I was to play this game the smart way, this episode would be two minutes long, and it would be me saying, I am now going to mine some coal, I am now going to mine some nitrate, I am now going to mine some lead. I'm now going to go around all the houses nearby and gather up brass. I am now smelting these things and turning that into gunpowder. I am now crafting a million AP762. I have crafted a million AP762. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. That's not very interesting, right? So we're not going to be doing that. We're going to do this instead. And it's not to say there's nothing left to do in 7 Days to Die at this stage. There is still challenges to take on in terms of PYs and uh, Horde Knights, but... The thing about Horde Knights is I have to wait for them. Right, oh, it's this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the one with the horrifying room of death and horribleness in the that room over there. So let's start the Tier 5 infestation. I done this as a Tier 5 infestation before? I don't actually know. Alright, I think that's the trench clear. All these little army bases are basically exactly the same. You just clear the trench and then you lure the zombies outside of the rooms. Place my turrets on these little uh, railing things. And I'm gonna get started on a more loud assault of this little base. They'll figure out the door. Give them a second. I mean, what are you even stuck on? Ow! What the fuck? I'm assuming that's a feral then. What? Why is this guy like this? Why did that guy have like a 1 million percent critical hit chance? I don't have a cast or anything on me, so I'm just gonna have to live with the pain. Is there any ster- no, no steroids either. Okay. 
gonna go in there and search for a cast now. Steroid will do, it'll stop me from hurting my leg any further for like 10 minutes. Though it is certainly not ideal, right. Press this, run away. Right then. Reload both my turrets and get them into positions where they're going to be helpful for this next segment. Probably one there, and one facing right at the door. I don't have any sneak grenades, so I'm just going to break this down. Hi there. Who do I want to kill the most out of you? Probably that guy. Yep, I aim to run away. I'm going to run up here now. Let's lure them back into the firing line of the turrets. go. Even with a broken leg, it's not that hard to do with turrets. Grab these, and let's go see what loot we got. So, we got the dart trap bundle. Meh. Stumped on some ammo. Didn't open it, and that is slightly annoying. How weak is it? Well, well, that answers that. Ugh, treasure map. We've been over why those are terrible. If you want to see me absolutely bully the treasure maps, go back like one episode and I do that. I'm not bothering with treasure maps again. It's my final say on the topic. I'm done entertaining them. Let me run to my truck here. I'll drive back home. I've got plenty of casts. I just typically don't bring them with me because broken limbs are a very uncommon injury to get. Usually. But I do have physician maxed out, so that will give me what... Critical injuries are healed 50% faster once you treat them. So I should only have like 10-15 minutes on that uh, broken leg once I use a cast on it, which is really nice. I can pop steroid and a couple of health bars and I'll be good to go. Let's see, a cast. That will take my timer down to 12 minutes, not bad. And then if I use a health bar, I will heal twice as fast naturally. So that will go from 12 minutes to 9 minutes. If I then stack two of them to get the full extra healing for the length of that, that'll be good. Uh, my steroid will run out soon, so I'll just pop that. And that'll just stop it from damaging me at all if I want to sprint. So my limb should now be good. Let me clear out some of the stuff I've picked up here. And we'll go and get a reward from Wrecked. I have a spare SMG5 level 6. I'll take the nail gun to sell it and I'll take the contact nades to use them. Hmm. These jobs are kind of shit. Maybe I should gather materials today and do some better jobs tomorrow. If I have to do a level 6 infestation, then I will. I don't mind. They're not that hard. I don't want to start one with a broken leg, though. Uh, but I could definitely do with more materials. So let me go and see what the forges have done. Those of you who have been paying attention to the series will know I queued up a lot of forged steel to craft. And I'm interested to see just how much that really totaled out to. Also, I am on a lot of dehydrating drugs right now, so I should drink this puddle. Right, forges. Let's see what you've been up to. This one is fully smelted in all of its iron, so it can now... It's actually waiting for more clay before it can make more forged steel, and that's pretty good. I've already taken the forged iron out of these and put them in a box. We'll see that in a second. But yeah, I'll split the clay, since that's mostly what's left to go in there, and is what I'm mostly short on, which is unexpected to say the least. But, the short of it is that I am in need of another load of materials soon. I did put this one back on making forged steel after I got some forged iron out of it. So, what's my forged steel looking like here? Um, I'm up to 3,000. That's not bad. That's, you know, 300 blocks of steel, which is a solid amount of steel. But you can always use more. That is for sure. What do I have in terms of rock busters? I've got two more. And trader wreck today and i've got some coffee if i want to mine as well what do i need i think lead would be smart i think getting another big load of what's it called robotic turret ammo would be smart why is there shotgun shells in there and with that would need to be iron as well because i tend to go towards more um 
robotic turret AP ammo, because if I'm going to be mining that much lead, I might as well mine up all that iron as well and get the most out of my lead, because it is a pain in the ass to mine that stuff. So yeah, I think I'm going to mine some lead, but how much? I am going to mine lead until the end of day 32 here. And just see how much I get. And that'll tell me how much iron I need to get as well. Let's see, where's my lead mine again? It did collapse, which is slightly annoying, but it's fine. Here we are. Let's see. We hop in the mine here, and I put... Hmm, what am I mining lead? Is there even lead left in this mine? There is over here, right. I will put my turrets, like, here. And they'll defend me from screamers, hopefully. And I'm gonna get started by mining some lead here. Now I'll pop rock busters for the duration of it, and I'll have some coffee. There we go. At 114 per node, this is gonna take a while to get all that, but let's see how much I can get uh, up until, like, midnight. So, I went over just a little bit past midnight here. I got 72,000 lead, which is a lot. That is enough to make 30 stacks of robotic turret ammo. I want to make the, what's it called, armor piercing variant, which is going to require the exact same amount of lead. So I am now going to mine another, what would that be, 68,000 iron, because I have 4,000 on me from just misclicking. As you can see, I started up where that turret is there, and I dug down all the way down here. Um... It was quite the digging operation. Fortunately, I have parkour, so I can get out of here really easily. And I have discovered a great deal of iron if I need it. Um, but I think I'm going to actually mine over here, because it's a little bit more safe. Um, I also got a skill point, which I'm going to put into the last rank of parkour, which would have been smart to do before I tried to jump all the way up here. So now I can do the big jumps. Um, yeah, so I'm going to mine until morning, probably. Probably even longer to get the 7,000 to get the 70,000 iron I need, but keep in mind that you do get iron at twice the rate you get lead, so it will take about half as much time. But, once I get this out of the way, I will never have to mine for robotic turret ammo again. I will probably still need a little bit more lead and iron throughout the series, but not for robotic turret ammo, that's for damn sure. So, back to the mining. <laughs> Okay, 72,000 iron. I'm actually unable to carry anymore. It started falling on the ground, but that's fine. That is enough to make a ridiculous amount of robotic turret ammo that should keep me armed for a long time. Let me head back to my base and start that crafting. I almost got second level out of that. Right, let's see. We can probably go for like four in here. Hang on, how many am I trying to make? 30 stacks, right? So, start off with as many as I can make. Let me open up a bunch more of these stacks here. Make a fourth one. Four, 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 four. And there's two left. So, one. Any more? No. Lots of stone, but otherwise, no. Stone I can't even really do much with, because I have like 4,000 cobblestone blocks plus a bunch of spare cobblestone. Same with my sand. A bunch of sellable gems as well. That's nice. With all that stuff out of the way, I'm feeling pretty good about the amount of resources I've put into that there. I should have enough robotic turret ammo for the rest of the playthrough, hopefully. Let's go to Trader Wrecked and see if he has any worthwhile jobs. And also buy everything in his vending machine. Okay, so he has one tier 5 infested clear. I'll take that and then we'll do a tier 6 later in the day. The silver, the diamonds and the gold, please. Uh, I'll just drive out to this one. Here we are. An advertising place, huh? Save me turrets. Hello, radiated biker. Get him, turret. I believe in you. 
Well, there was, there was a door there once. Hey. You're late. Did my stun stop working all of a sudden? I think I switched to another bloody stun baton. What are you guys even doing? Let me jump over to this rooftop and that should get them to come over here. And nope, that biker is completely lost. Oh, level. Um, I'm kind of done with agility. I have everything I need. I'm probably just going to start going into fortitude and... Do you mind? Fortitude and machine gunner. Well, I don't trust that one bit. There's a button. And I was correct to not trust it. Why is it not clear? This is the loot room. Uh, another dark trap bundle. Ooh. Another beaker I won't use. Where are the last zombies then? Because I've cleared everything, I think. No, did I search this room? Hello. There we go. I don't want any of these, so I'll take them and sell them. Now you had a pretty close like the Shamway factory at tier 6. That sounds horrible. Like, actually horrible. Navisgane County Jail, that sounds horrible -er. Poppin' Pills Factory, we've done that. Poppin' Pills Factory again, done that. That's okay, these are all horrible. I'll take the close horrible one, the Shamway factory. Let me go back to my base real quick, though. How are the... Ah, they're done. 29, 30. 30,000 armor-piercing robotic turret ammo, plus the 5,000 I've had on me this whole time. I've still not broke into that. And I'm going to make a choice here to use my forgetting elixir. And I'm going to go out of dating adventurer because I don't need anything from it anymore. And I have so much money that it just isn't really helping me. So let's get back up to 10 intellect. I still want to have like stun batons and robotic turrets. And of course physician and advanced engineering. But everything else I don't mind too much. Get strength back up to 5. Get these. Get agility up to 8. Get run in gun, get parkour, leaving me five skill points to put into fortitude. So probably go two in there, two in there, and then I'll get started on that. Every other skill point I get in this playthrough is just gonna go into fortitude, machine gunner, pain tolerance, and healing factor, and iron gut because my build is complete. I can jump and I can run while I reload. I have all the combat ability I need. This is just going to make my character less likely to die from various things and make me much better with machine gun. Machine guns being the weapon I should be using because my shotgun turrets will use shotgun ammo and my SMG turrets will use SMG ammo. Right, let's fly out to the Shamway factory and cause chaos. All right, here we are. But I brought a bunch of extra consumables to help me with this one, so I'm going to take some vitamins for once. Probably queue up two of them. Queue up three recog, make up for my lack of M60 perks, of course. And then a bunch of yucca juice smoothies. Probably two will do for now. And then some learning elixir, because if I'm going to be using the M60 like this, I might as well have extra XP from it. Right, in we go. Ooh, hello, Radiant Biker. Ow. Yeah, that's bullshit, that hit. Didn't realise that glass had already been broken.
Oh, good, a screamer already. Oh, okay. Just more spawn in this room, I guess. Oh, and they spawn behind me. Love that for me. Yep, this is still the worst POI ever. So certainly get rid of all those extra supplies I was trying to get rid of. How do you puke down bulletproof glass? I need to repair my M60 one second. Dick! How did you even connect that? Let me go hunt down this last screamer. There is more than one screamer. By far. Some of these hits just aren't animated. Drives me up the wall. Don't oh, reload time. Gotta make sure I stay in the radius of the POI here. No, you're not dead. Ow. How many loot bags are you guys going to drop? Oh. I used to have my ammo. I'm in like the first room of this place. The I still sucks. But I'm getting good XP. Not heard another one. A vulture in here? What? Well, that is absolutely the worst. Vultures indoors. Whatever will they think of next? Where's this little shit? There we go. I better not count as a real scream. Well, that's not very fun. Mm, that's some clear though. Ah, working vending machine. I'll take some Mega Crush. If there's one thing I need right now, it's the ability to run far too quickly head first into every situation with 46 bullets left. Oh, this looks like a fun room. Ow. Forgot about shrapnel. How are you still screaming? I'm miles away. Hello, birds. 
Nope, that didn't work. Hold still, would you? Well, that sucks. I got like a... No, I don't. Well, I have to take a wasted first aid kit then. Because if you don't, you'll get more bleeds, because lacerations make you more prone to bleeding if you didn't know. They're just a bundle of fun. That's right, clump up right next to it. Moving on. Hey, we're almost done. We're getting the little yellow pop ups. Ah, this Shamway Lab Safe. This one's been re added, has it? Could have a cigar in it then. Eat the book. There we go. It does. That's two cigars in it. Um, I will eat the pears. I don't think those are used in anything anyway. Honestly, the cigars aren't worth that much, and I have one. But now you know you can get a guaranteed cigar in there again. So this POI isn't completely worthless if you're desperate for a cigar. Still easier ways, but it is a guaranteed way at least. They took that out in Alpha Twenty, and now they've re-added it. Anyway, well, there's the final loot room. I feel like it's probably, yeah, I was going to say, it's probably easier to just activate them like that and run, <laughs> rather than trying to fall into the trap. I shall make my stand here. Probably should have saved some 7.62, huh? Well, here we are. Get them, turrets. I believe in you. Look at them bursting a hole up there. Oh, I missed. One more for the road. I didn't do much to him at all, did it? Uh oh, they're gonna pop. Yep, well that cleans things up for me. Next. Where are you idiots? What are you stuck behind? Oh, nothing. They're not stuck behind anything. They were just climbing the stairs. I'm gonna bring my turrets closer. Oh, shut up. That works. And we're clear about that. But my inventory is well and truly full. So before I bother my dumbass to go and do that, let's go fill this up. God, I love the parkour park. Gonna need to move this into a more actually flyable position. There we go. I should be able to pick up all the loot now. Here we go. Security camera bundle. Blech. Good bundle, though. Gumbo stews, nice. Level 6 robotic turret, yay. Finally put a third mod on that, or a fourth mod, sorry. Auto turret bundle, nice. Treasure map can go fuck itself, I'll grab all that. And let's go see what Trader Wrecked has to give me for that, without dating Adventurer now, of course. But I wasn't really getting much from it anyway. I already have so many of all of these things, I'll take another auto shotgun though. Alright, not bad. Let me take all my stuff over to my base here. Right, well, I got a decent amount of stuff done today. I now have, you know, a bajillion robotic turret ammo and... I'm, oh yeah, how's my steel? How's my steel? Bunch more available from you. This one needs more actual iron. Yeah, this one needs more iron. They all actually need a little bit more iron. We've gone the other way now. God damn it. Right, well, let me stop wasting the fuel then. And I'll mine up a bunch of iron. Oh, wait, this one's actually still <laughs> doing something. So, how much... 
forge steel am I up to now? 4,597. Let's call it like 4,800 once that other one's done. Solid amount of forged steel. And we're on the verge of wanting to build a base. I need to gather more iron there and make another big load of forged steel. I'm going to need some more gas soon, apparently, since some of mine just disappeared. Um, but yeah, we're doing pretty good on progress here. Why is that still spinning? Stop spinning. Uh, oh, I've got more stuff. Um, yeah, there's not much left to do in the playthrough other than build that base, but I do have a plan to make that base a bit more interesting so that it can really take shape over the course of the rest of the series, not just in that one episode. But I do have to do the first episode of it in one thing with the Horde Knight where I actually test it so that it's not a complete waste of time. What's the point of me showing you how to build a Horde base and then not using it in that video, right? That's just uh, a cliffhanger that nobody cares enough about to come back to. That's just a dissatisfying video if you ask me. Wow, that is a lot of forged steel. And there's more coming. I think in the next episode we'll do a bit more ammo grinding and then do the day 35 horde. The day 35 horde is the last one I intend to use this horde base for. Uh, once that's out the way, I'll just put full steam ahead on building the new base. And then once the base has been used and tested in the forest biome, I plan on taking it to the wasteland to give it a real trial by fire. And that would happen for the day 49 horde. So it would basically be, you know, a day 149 horde or something. You know how the game stage is in the wasteland. Uh, that's assuming I have enough materials, which I do have like 4,000 cobblestone blocks and the concrete to upgrade all. I only have enough forged steel for like 400 of the blocks to be steel, but I also have another 15 days till day 49, so I would have plenty of time to steelify anything I need. What, how am I doing on like turrets? Because those were a main thing that I needed a lot of to make sure that I could make a proper intellecty base. How's the blocks box doing? Hang on, there's more. Auto turret bundle, another blade trap bundle, and then open these, read all this. Okay, so I've got eight shotgun turrets and six SMG turrets. I could do with like two more SMG turrets. That would be pretty good. I have 30 blade traps, I have 69 wire relays, 26 switches, load trip wires, motion sensors, and not a lot of electric fences, which are undoubtedly going to be a part of my base. I actually have 40, plus some dart traps. I really don't use them. Maybe I'll challenge myself to use those in this horde base in some way. I really should get started on some electric fences, actually. Hang on. Uh, iron. Um, those thingies. Electric fence posts. Let's go for, like, 20 and just leave that to go in the background. There's no huge demand for them. We really need to add like a electric fence post bundle or something to the loot table. 15 speakers, they're useless, they do nothing. You just make an annoying sound. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Intellect series. Today we are going to be basically making my final resource preparations for the next horde base I want to build. Basically, the plan is looking like this. Today, we're going to be gathering up the last of the materials and the last few key components of the next base design that I want to be able to make. I'm going to do that by doing tier 6 quests and stuff because it's the most entertaining way to get those things. And I have a lot of time to kill between now and when I want to build the base, so it also works quite well for doing that. The Day 35 Horde is coming up and we will give this base its final test. Ooh, frame rate drop there. We will give that base its final test against the hordes, which I'm confident it's going to hold against. What's my game stage? 120? We don't have to worry about demos right now, so I should be good. To assist with that base, I think the last thing we need to do just to make sure it holds is turn it to concrete. And now I obviously have an unhealthy amount of concrete, so we can afford to do that quite easily. But let's head over there and upgrade the base to concrete so that it will be good for the day 35 horde. Oh, you know what? I might need a little bit of cobblestone as well to repair a few blocks, otherwise that's not gonna work. <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. It's all concrete now, we should be good. Put my one skill point here into machine gunner. Now I should be able to get stamina back whenever I hit enemies with my M60, which is a very powerful ability. The next thing I need Honestly, the next thing I need is to take these damn lanterns out because they're causing so much lag over here. Right, let's go and see. Oh, my frame rate's terrible. Let's go and see what uh, Jobs Trader Wrecked has. Navis Gain County Jail. Why the hell not, right? What's the worst that could really happen? Uh, let's see, what biome's that in? Probably the snow, right? Yeah, that's going to be pretty brutal, to be honest. Um, But I don't entirely care, so. Oh, and I had an idea. Uh, I think moving forward in the series... 
the play is going to be to set it to Horde Nights every five nights. That way I can just get a little bit more interesting stuff out of it because so far I'm really just clearing POIs while waiting for late game Horde Nights and I'm a bit bored of it. I do really want to do some other things later in this series, but the problem with Seven Days to Die is like you have to wait for the time to pass. Now I could just not put out those videos, right? I could just skip time forward or play it in the background not recording, but I only have so much time in a day and I do daily uploads, so I can't really afford to not record the gameplay I play and then put it in a video and then put it out. I have to do that. So I thought the best compromise would be to make Horde Nights more frequent so that there was a bit more interesting stuff happening for a build that really has conquered the game already and is just waiting for a late game stage to do anything. There's still a few good POIs though. Well, good in the sense that they'll be hard to do. Good POIs to me are actually the opposite, the ones I can do quickly with my brain turned off. That means the next Horde after Day 35, of course, is going to be the Day 40 Horde, which is pretty helpful for me because it cuts out basically a day of just filler. That's basically a filler episode where I'd just be doing a bunch of cleaning POIs, slightly depressed. So cutting that out and just skipping straight to the Horde with a Horde on Day 40 does offer me- oh my god. The weather does offer me some good opportunities for content stuff and it means the horde after that will be day 45 and then another one on day 50 which should give me an opportunity to get demos and do something i want to do at the finale of the series i'm not 100 sure on that though this is going to be a difficult landing oh there's the ground there we go oh my frame rate is absolutely terrible Maybe I just need to turn my graphics down for this POI. I usually only have it on like... Oh, that's on Ultra Plus for some reason. Why have you done that? Why would I ever want to play this game on Ultra? It looks like dog shit regardless of what you do. That would very much help. I was wondering why I was getting like 30 FPS before I even started the POI. That was annoying. Field of view 85. Why did that happen, I wonder? Um, looking about 80 FPS. That is pretty tolerable for the uh, snow biome here. Really wish the snow would just stop, but it is kind of the point of the biome, right? So this POI spawns a bunch of zombies behind you and immediately in front of you. It would be smart for me to use my turrets here. I d don't worry about that weird like glass artifacting. It's something to do with changing your settings in the middle of the game. So let's place these. And get into a little bit of a fight. Oh, that is weird looking, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, Feral White. I'm over here. Open that door, run away. Jump up here. Oh yeah, they come off the roof. Now we know they don't actually spawn behind you, they spawn on the roof behind, which is arguably just as bad. <laughs> oh hey there. This is getting difficult to keep a track of now. Come here, shitheads. Jump over them, bring them back over to the turrets, ideally. Nope. I think they're all off the roof now, so I'm safe to do this. What happened over there? I see a screamer over there. No idea if I killed her in time to stop that because someone started playing a game the exact second she fell over, which blocked the XP. <laughs> Are we done? No, there's like a million screamers as well. For semi-obvious reasons, but it's not like I had much of a choice. What was I going to do? Do it melee? Try and stealth it? Doesn't work. You're pretty much forced to go guns blazing into that room. I've pissed off one dog from later in the POI, apparently.
That sounds bad. Oh, really? They spawned in an elevator behind me as well. Piss off. Random normal zombie just gave me a concussion on one hit. sound effect behind me, where is it? I dislike that area very much. Alright, yeah, I'm supposed to go over here. This death trap. back into this room. I don't know where they're coming from. Oh, hey. Well, more of them behind me. Let's hit the button and see what happens. Oh, there's just a million zombies spawned outside. I forgot about that, actually. I was happier when I had forgotten about it as well. Okay, game. Nope, that's a painkiller. Not the right thing. There we go. Another abrasion, god damn it. Uh, let's go for a first aid kit then. You know what? Fort bites as well. Please hurry up and swallow them. these. Uh, where do I go from here again? In here? Why do I feel like I'm definitely gonna get chased back into this room? Oh, there's the end loop. I wonder if it's worth taking on the end guys now. Hi. Is nobody awake at all? Did they straight up just not spawn unless you fall through the ceiling? Ah, supercharger mod schematic. Um, auto turret bundle, that's nice. They might straight up just not spawn unless you go in the way the devs expected you to. There we go. 
I jumped on top of the turret. Uh, not the turret, the... What's it called? The loot. I believe in you turrets. Okay, I don't believe in them anymore. back up onto here. I want to keep these turrets alive as various zombies come through that door again. Ow. Where'd he come from? Level 69. There's still a bunch of them to kill, and I think it's mostly the Feral Whites. What do I want to do with that one point? I'm going to get some Pain Tolerance. Less chance of getting stunned now, at least. Hello? Someone broke something. They're trying to get out. That's all I've got in there. I'm going to pick up one of my turrets and reload it. Oh, hello, Feral White. Where'd he come from? Whoa. Here come all the feral lights now. And some soldiers. I'm going to loot the end room for materials I can use to clear the rest of the POI. Where's the infested cache in here? Ow. Ah, level 6 drone again. Plenty of 7.62 this time around as well, that's helpful. I might want to make a quick trip back to my gyrocopter with some of the loot, because I'm carrying too much shit. A dark trap bundle and a security camera bundle, which kind of suck. And I left my axe in the uh, thing, so I'm going to have to try and pickaxe them. Alright, with all the loot gathered up, I now have an extra 600 shots for this. And I can do the other half of the POI. That definitely feels like the smartest way to do that. Because the way it wants you to do it is fall through the ceiling into your death. I am not even sure how they expect you to be able to survive that last room there the way they intend for you to do it. Like, they must assume everyone's gonna go, no, I'm not doing that, and go around. Because I've never tried it, but I feel like if you just jump down there, there is no amount of damage, no amount of armor that is going to save you from that room on a tier 6 infestation. So I was here before I decided to take a detour to the end loot. Good job, turrets. away try not to hit the barrels and then here you would fall down into the end blue so is it just those last two guys you know, for a tier 5, it is relatively short. You just have to spend so very long uh, fighting zombies. But in terms of the amount of running you do, it's actually pretty small. It's like 10 really terrible rooms filled with far too many zombies and then you're good. Where's this last guy? And we're clear. That wasn't too bad. From what I remember, it was a lot worse, so the the change in strategy definitely helped there. Let me transfer all my random shit over to um, the gyrocopter here, and we'll head over to Trader Wrecked and get a reward. I will restart my game so that the uh, weird surfaces 
glitch that we're seeing there just goes away. That is annoying the hell out of me. Alright, let's see what Rex wants to give us for that then. Um, you know, I'll take a level 6 Desert Vulture. 44 weapons are something I should make use of because it's another type of ammo that I won't be using in my turrets, so just spitting that out is probably a really good idea and I might want to keep it on me as a spare weapon for when my M60 inevitably runs out of ammo in every POI because of the way it is. And I have some points in agility so it's not completely shit. I has no infested tier 5s, let's do an infested tier 4 but I need to clear my inventory and mod this gun first. Here we go, these are the mods I've chosen to use mostly because those are the mods I could make. Which very much helps in choosing the mods you use. Hmm, it's only 500 meters away, let's just drive there. Let's see what we can do here with the Magnum then. He could take a lot of damage. He could not. I think it woke some of them up above. Oh, hey. Oh, I'm stuck to cheer. I need to remember to let the last shot in the uh, weapon fire off on this and not do tactical reloads because the last shot in a 44 magnum weapon does uh, double damage if you have the right book which I do have. Up there, or whatever that was. Can I jump back up here? Oh, if I jump on this, I can. There we go. Whoa. Well, I don't get stuck on that. Ugh. Apparently, they're just going to try and break their way through the ceiling, which is working for them. In a sense. That's just rude. Where'd the other guy go? Here we go. It's not a fantastic weapon compared to the M60, which is arguably one of, if not the best weapon in the game anyway, but it works. And it's a bit more refreshing than just using the bloody stun baton for everything. My mind is melting from using the thing. And I got all my ammo back from it as well. I doubt Wrecked is going to give me anything interesting for that, but I did reset my game after checking his quests there. Not necessarily to reset his quests, but because of that bug with the windows that was really annoying me, so I thought I would kill two birds with one stone and get a nice little quest reset and fix an annoying visual bug at the same time. Need to buy something. Compound crossbow's not bad, it does do more damage than my bow. Um, I don't really use stealth enough for it to be that good though, and the bow is slightly better in a normal fight, so I will take it but I'll probably keep with my bow for now. Oh, there we go. These are the invested clears I'm looking for. Let's take that one. I don't like you. Diamond's Men's Club. I don't know if I've done that one. I've definitely seen it. I recognize the sign. Let's see what's in here then. Oh, I remember this one, yeah. Oh, hey there. I'm not beating my reflex to tactically reload every weapon whenever I'm done fighting. 
it's generally a good reflex to have in video games when you're out of a fight, reload so you're ready for the next one, but it isn't exactly advantageous for this gun in particular. See, I tactically reload in the middle of fighting zombies, it's just a reflex. Oh, not the abrasion. Well, there was no dodge in that one. That's a lot of zombies. Get them, turrets. Feels like a bit of an ambush room. That's the end loot as well though. But it's definitely an ambush room. I'm gonna stand more over here so that my turrets sort of get more time to shoot the zombies. I'm just gonna kinda jump over the zombies for a bit. Wow. There's always one who has the one hit up. Run in circles. Zombies struggle with that. Away. There we go. Another shotgun turret bundle. I have no need for any of this. I'll take some forged steel for free, though. Skill point, though. Let's put that in pistols. Doesn't really matter what I do with my build. I know I said I was going to max fortitude and stuff, but. I have a magnum now, so I'll get some more pistols before I do that. Um, not really going to have much time to do another quest, so I'm just going to get ready for the horde, and I'll just wait for it. And tomorrow, I want to go out and scavenge a bunch of materials I can use to build the next base I want, because it's going to require a good amount of engines. That is going to be something to consider. Right, I'm just going to wait for the horde. Alright, here comes the day 35 horde. Hopefully this will be the last time we use this base. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Also, I've just noticed... Um, vitamins say they do 12 minutes, but I just took two and it's only at 12 minutes. If I take a third one, it only lasts another six minutes. So this is wrong. Which is a really weird thing to be wrong. But I honestly don't care that much. Here we go. I always stand too close to that. <laughs> really do wonder why those cops are trying to spit at me. They're supposed to only do it when they can see you. But clearly, something has gone a little bit wrong in Alpha 21. And now the cops kind of just do it if they vaguely know where you are, which sucks. I need to open up more stacks of ammo than that, then. Bullshit. One hit and he sprains my arm. This game. This game. And it didn't use the first aid kit again. What an outstanding game it really is. Right, well, I'll have to use a gun, because the 
Oh, well, this still hurts my hand, but at least I'm more effective with it than I am with the baton. Oh, that's out of ammo. Couldn't I wreck that one with a big burst from the M60? <laughs> You're ripping through that. If it was cobblestone, it would have broke already. Good thing I went concrete. I should have brought learning elixirs. Skill point, let's just go more pistols. Another level. Might as well throw that in pistols as well. Is it over? Very quiet if it's not over. I get the feeling it's pretty much over. Is that all the loot? Or is there some more bags up here? There's one. Right then, well, we're not done here because I still have another thing I want to do in this episode, which is gather an unholy amount. I don't know why I'm repairing this. I said I wouldn't use it again, but it doesn't hurt too much. I've got loads of concrete. Uh, as I was saying, the next thing I want to do in this episode is just get a ridiculous amount of engines from scrapping cars and stuff, because I'm going to need a lot of power for this next horde base, and, you know, that usually requires power sources like generators. So let me clear out my inventory here. Let's see, do I have any hackers candy? Not that it really helps with engines, I don't think, but we'll get other stuff as well. And do I have a splint line around? Let's see, here's one. Right then, so today is just going to be... So today is just going to be about scrapping a bunch of cars because... I need engines more than anything. Hey, a truck. Oh, I should take the hacker's candy. There's one engine. Another 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 engine. Is that 12? I have 12 engines. That'll do. Let's drive home. Alright, let me move all this stuff inside. So, I have 12 engines for the power system of my next base, which should be more than enough, right? Hopefully. I think between episodes, I'll mine up some more resources. I'll save you the pain of having to watch that. Uh, I have pretty much everything I need for the next base anyway, but, but you're always going to need a bit more resources anyway, so I will do that. And in the next episode, I think... Let me check my schedule here. Plan. Yeah, in the next episode, it will be a case of finding the location of the base I want to build. 
gathering a little bit more materials for it because I'm sure I'll forget something and then building the base for a few days and then fighting the horde. Probably some POI fighting to fill in the gaps there because there probably will be some gaps. But that's for the next episode. Hello and welcome back to 7 Days to Die. Today we are going to be finally building that endgame base. And it needs to be done in time for day 40 because we are now playing on Horde Nights every 5 days. There's a wandering horde over there. I'm just going to see these guys here. They can cover me while I do this. So the horde base we're going to be using here has a lot of blocks and stuff. I haven't counted it. But as you can see, I have a ridiculous amount of materials anyway that we have gathered throughout the series. And I can pretty much do more or less what I want. Just realized didn't bring any ammo for the turrets I've got. So we will have to make a trip back. Um, One second. I don't think I've actually set the <laughs> the horde night to happen every five days. So let me go do that really quick. There we go. And we're back. Oh, does that despawn wandering hordes? Well, there's a neat little trick I didn't actually know about. Um, so the idea of this base is very simple. It's going to take all of the things intellect is good at, mostly traps, and use them in a base design that should be simple enough, but will still hopefully maximise the use of turrets and traps and stuff. The top priority is definitely going to be using turrets, not these turrets, but like SMG and shotgun turrets. So to give you a rough idea of what this base is going to be, we're going to have a ramp. I know, it's always a ramp with me, right? A ramp and a bridge that goes in a big loop. I can't call it a circle because it's seven days to die. It'll be a square and it'll go around a central building and lead into a fighting position. And the back side of that fighting position is just going to be covered in things that will hurt zombies quite a bit. Now, something you should know about this kind of base design if you want to try it at home is you're only going to get 75% XP from electrical trap kills, which is going to be doing most of the killing on the sword base. So you will actually get less XP from this. However, it is very easy compared to a normal horde. So there is that to think about. All XP does is make the horde knights harder. And if I want the horde knights to be harder, I'll just go to a harder biome. So XP from horde knights really isn't that big of a deal at this stage in the game. But something you should definitely know is that if you have no ranks of advanced engineering, you will get no XP from trap kills. And that would be a big, big bummer for most play styles, I would say. So this is an intellect word base. I wouldn't recommend using it on any other build because you will just get no XP and you'll have a harder time making all this stuff for this anyway, because intellect specializes in making these things much cheaper. And if you're not bothered about XP and you just want to survive the horde, then knock yourself out and do this if you want. So it does take up quite a large area because it needs to wrap around. So I'm going to chop down some trees really quickly. What's my game stage, by the way? 129? I doubt I'll be game stage 150 by the time the horde comes, so I shouldn't have to worry about demolition zombies this time around. But definitely the next one, the day 45 horde. So what we want to start out by doing is making a little bit of a ramp. So I'm going to do this the same way I do it every time, and I'll show you guys what I've done in a minute. Oh, you know what I didn't bring? Learning elixirs. That's not good, is it? Oh, I immediately misplaced the block as well. This is getting off to a great start. So, do a simple 3x3 three three here to start off your ramp. I am going to drive home though. I have like 17 learning elixirs, and while I did say XP doesn't matter to me, it will annoy the shit out of the comments section if I have like 17 learning elixirs and use none of them while upgrading a base. So, give me a moment, and we're back. So, this is going to be a pretty standard ramp that I usually do. Um, let's see. Oh, I did it again. This one needs to be reinforced. Going under here. Oh, concrete's on the truck. I could probably make it steel as well. Right, and since I'm going to be doing a little bit of reinforcing, I'll use one learning elixir. Can't hurt too much. Let's do that. Steel, because they're going to be hard to reach some of these again. I'll just do it all steel. It doesn't need to be steel until there's demos, though. That's a good rule of thumb, at least in the vanilla game. You really don't need steel until things are actually exploding. Uh, this one's going to become inaccessible as well. So is... No, that one isn't going to become inaccessible. We don't have to worry about that. Ramp outside corner full. Pretty standard ramp system that I usually use. It's a very dependable system. Let me grab these again, split them. Have some of them rotate to the right way like that and then on here and we want this to be three more ramps tall like that 
So you've got this part and then one, two, three. Here we're going to make a pillar directly in line with this. We should be done with ramps for the rest of this so we can just start doing that. There we go. That is one, two, three, four, five, six above the ground for those of you trying to follow along at home. But there is one recessed into the terrain as well. Next, we want to come out seven. And then on the eighth block here, we want to line ourselves up and build another pillar. Same height as the other one. This is just a support pillar. Then we want to go another seven. Would you believe we come here, we do another pillar. This ramp is going to wrap around your entire core base here so that's why we're going quite large with it next and this is quite predictable but i like that it makes it easy to remember it's the other side of predictability easy to remember so we go out another seven here yeah another seven dig out a pillar would you believe go another seven blocks probably take out any trees that might be getting in the way of your walkway there we've got seven out there let's dig ourselves another pillar there we go. This next bit is slightly more complicated, but it does start out exactly the same way with seven blocks, then a pillar, and then we go another seven, then we want to go uh, probably just another seven, and then build a pillar. You'll never guess what comes next. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, build a pillar. Okay, so... First of all, that took about 150 blocks to do that part. And you can see sort of the general idea we're going for here. The zombies are going to run up here. And they're going to have to run along this whole thing. And it does take them a while, even on nightmare speed. And then they'll come to here and they'll have like a line leading directly into your fighting position. But before we go and build that last bridge, I do want to make sure that the central tower is going to be in the right position so i'm just going to build four blocks out from the middle ones of all of these so one two three four one two three four these should be temporary blocks if you're doing the same check as me there we go so that'll be sort of the boundary of your base here then we want to come in and dig out the start of a foundation so that it matches all three of these pieces and then is mirrored on the other side, which I'll tell you the specifications of in one moment. Yep, it looks like it is a 7x7 seven seven box. So if you're having any trouble remembering this space, just remember the number 7 and most of it will come back to you. So what we want to do is dig out a full 7x7 seven seven block. Because this is going to be the foundation of the base. And I'm going to turn it all to steel immediately. Just to make sure it's nice and resilient. There, a 7x7 seven seven box is going to be the basis of the area we stand in, basically. It is 12 blocks between the two. Okay. So, I don't think we're allowed to do 7s here. I don't see any way to break this down into a 7, but 3, 4, 3 would probably work. So if we do 1, 2, 3, give myself a support pillar, and then 1, 2, Three. Does that match up? It does. Perfect. Let's take out these temporary blocks. So, what you have to do now is make a decision yourself as the player. How much resources do you have and how much are you willing to put into this? Because, basically, you're going to require a big, thick foundation here. Because this base design relies on the zombies deciding that this is not worth attacking and going up and around all the stuff. Now, if you're very short on materials, you can probably just go for a wall around each of these and then a pillar in the middle. I am going to do a wall around all of this and a 3x3 three three pillar in the middle, which will leave room for like one thing in the middle, which I'm sure will cause zombies to get in there eventually, but I'm fine with that. It will save me a decent amount of materials and it's not all that much weaker than just having a full filled in cube because that just sounds really annoying to place. So what I'm going to do is get this, drink a learning elixir, I'm going to turn this whole floor into steel first. Right. Then I'm going to start with a pillar in the middle that comes up to the... Well, well apparently I'm going to place that as well. And I'm going to come up to the height of this bridge here, because we know that's where the floor is just going to be. And then I'm going to turn this to steel, because it's going to be lost forever once I reinforce it. There we go. And then I'm just going to wrap it around with another layer of protective 
pilloting. If you're poor, I mean, if you're cheap, I mean, if you're more resource conscious, uh, you can definitely get away with not wrapping around this. But this is meant to be like an end game horde base. You should have a few spare materials, you know, unless you're trying to build this on day seven in the wasteland or something. But this is not that base design. This base design relies on high tech stuff. So it kind of regulates itself in that sense. I'm going to turn this to steel as well. There we go, a nice pillar of steel. We can take out these temporary blocks. They definitely don't need to be here. And then I'm going to build a wall around this. Now, you could definitely fill that in if you want to, but it kind of just slightly offends my sensibilities to think about this just being a full-on slab of steel. So I am just going to do the 3x3 surrounded by an outer wall. There we go, and I will also fill in the floor here. Feel free to make that like railings or something if you're conscious of zombies somehow getting inside and trying to attack the center part. It's not really that big of a concern to me though, but if you are, you can turn those to railings and you'll be able to shoot to the inside of your own base. Not a terrible idea. There's a skill point, that's probably going to go into pistols for rank 4, which is more than good enough for my desert vulture. We will go back into just powering fortitude after this. There we go. This whole thing is now basically an almost solid cube of steel, which is going to be very, very beneficial to making zombies not attack it. Uh, that took about 300 blocks worth of materials, by the way, the way I did it, so bear that in mind. The next thing we're going to do is just build a little wall. And then I'm going to make the little fighting position. I'm going to use the old one that I like, the uh, railing plus plate. And then on this side, we do poles, and then another pole there, and then I'm going to put a hatch here because this is obviously going to be your way in as well. Obviously, running around that all every time you want to get into this base could be annoying, so if you want to use parkour and some very intricate ladders to get into your base, you can, but uh, for the rest of you plebeians who don't have agility, you are just going to have to do the same run the zombies do. Uh, on the plus side, anything that chases you will also have to do the big loop, so it's not like you're going to get overrun or anything. Um, and then what I want to do... You know what, I should probably just turn this all to concrete. You don't really need it to be steel. Steel is more for structural support and for discouraging zombies from attacking things rather than needing to turn your whole base into steel. It's good XP if you do, but you really don't need to. Now, I have a question about scaffolding ladders. Do they have... No. I was going to say, do they have a corner piece? Since they don't have a corner piece, we're just going to use a solid corner piece like this which will block your vision slightly, but it will protect you from cops bit compared to using railings here. Because we want this to all be open, but what we are going to use is scaffolding ladders. Um, it's really up to you which way you want to do this. There are advantages and disadvantages to having them go certain ways either way. If you do it this way, you will be able to shoot more vertically. If you do it this way, you'll be able to shoot more horizontally. And I think horizontally is more useful. Now the reason we're using scaffolding ladders is for two reasons. Scaffolding ladders do not allow cops bit to pass through them, but they do allow bullets to pass through the non-beam parts. Obviously if you just shoot the beam, oh, there's my magnum, you will hit the beam. It's not like railings. Do I not have any cobblestone on me? Well I've got some in my truck, uh, but it doesn't allow cops bit to flow through. Why are these different from them? What? Right, I'm gonna have to replace that, that's gonna annoy the shit out of me. And reinforce these to concrete, because cops might still try and spit at you, but the spit won't go through, but you are gonna want these to be strong in case the cops spit enough that it starts to break. And I really would recommend using scaffolding ladders for this, assuming they're not patched in whatever future version of the game that you're watching. Put that up another layer, and then... If you're fine with it being really claustrophobic, you can build a floor there, but I'm going to build up another level and have the floor in line with this part for the next floor, because it's going to be very claustrophobic if you don't. Reinforce my corners because they're annoying. Come in here and then place a ladder. I'm just going to keep using scaffolding ladders. They do actually work as ladders as well. And the idea here is going to be for your SMG turrets to have somewhere to live. But you're going to want to put in a floor around this so that you can store storage and generator banks. We're going to leave basically a pretty simple 
gap like that for your SMG turrets. That'll make more sense in a second. Let's turn this all into concrete first. Hang on. Next, you're going to want scaffold. Well, you're going to want the corners as usual. And then you're going to want your scaffolding ladders. <clears throat> Again, with your preferred orientation. I'm just going to go for the same as downstairs. There we go. We got another layer. Same as before, we're just going to do another layer of blocks. This time we're going to put like a block over that. You don't need it to be three tall. And then concrete it. Continue your pillar all the way up to the top here. Now here, because this is another floor that you won't really be standing on, if you're desperate to save materials, just have this floor be this tall and then put railings here. I'm going to make it another one tall though to match the other floor so that there's um, the same amount of space between the floor and the ceiling on both levels because it'll annoy me otherwise. Oh and by the way you should probably do this on these levels as well because they're going to hold your shotgun turrets on the back side. So in line with the SMG ones. Now is this the most optimal placement ever for turrets? Probably not but I don't really care that much. It gets the job done and it's fun and it's not particularly expensive so doesn't have to be perfect. And another place you're going to want to do that is on the corners here. Uh, there. And there. That'll let you access the turrets through that gap there. You'll place a hatch here if this is how you want to get into the base. Otherwise, just plate it off. And speaking of plating it off, I'm going to do a little bit something like that now. If we go ahead and on-face these parts here, just to make sure they're extra not going to attack it and they instead go after my fighting position. I'm going to plate this off and then steal it up. So they should not bother themselves with these blocks that I'm turning into steel here, which should ensure that they just focus on the ones that I want them to attack, which are going to be the weaker blocks. Build my ladder up. If you want roof access, give yourself roof access. If you don't, don't, I don't care. Go and then finish off this thing here. Once again, I will concretify it all, and I'll do the same to these. I won't bother with the ladders. And then here, I'm gonna go for some railings, because there shouldn't be any cops above me, and the radiated vulture spit never seems to hit anything anyway. I might as well just make it so I can't miss any of the vultures. Now, can you put turrets on the roof and just have them deal with vultures? Yes. Is that something I'm going to do? No. I shoot the vultures. Me. I'm the anti-air gun. I don't automate my anti-air defences. Why? Because I'm like that. Now, I really would recommend you do give yourself roof access, because how else are you going to get out of there if everything goes horribly wrong, right? You'll need a way out. <laughs> Just in case. And I'd recommend you put a hatch on this. I don't have any hatch stuff on me, but I can make a wooden hatch just for demonstrations. There's that wooden hatch. And then just place this on top of the ladder. There you go. And that should mean that from the low levels, if I can figure out how to use a trapdoor here, uh, you should be able to look up and just kill any vultures that might be trying to attack the top of your base. If you want to put turrets up there, do it, I don't care. Also, I'll need another hatch here, I'll place this one, so that I know it's going to be in the right position. Um, There we go. I'll get an iron hatch and a steel hatch later. So, this is your fighting position. You can just barely shoot onto the ramp, but you can also shoot into here, 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 and here. Now, this is definitely not a sniper penetration base, because for most of the zombies' running time, they're going to be running horizontally from you rather than directly into your line of fire. But it's more about letting the turrets do damage than letting yourself do damage. You know what? I'm going to place those doors here as well. I'll need four of them. Uh, let's see. You'll want it like that. I'll probably make these into forged iron later. So... That is pretty much the base, the idea of it. I would definitely recommend you put your traps on it though, because it's built for traps, so why wouldn't you use them? But first, I'm going to turn the rest of the bridge and the pillars into concrete, because cobblestone just isn't safe for this stage of the game. <laughs> so where's my nail gun? I am just going to reinforce all the stuff here that you see that's cobblestone. So overall on block placements, this did only take about 600, 700 blocks. Definitely on the cheaper end of bases you can make, but definitely more expensive than is necessary. For example, the um, the insectoid stilt base I made in the last series was very, very cheap by comparison. Um, 
but it's also so easy that it's kind of cheesy and no that wasn't supposed to rhyme so let me take my engines and my generators inside here wiring tool and my smgs and shotgun turrets these are pretty much key to doing stuff with this base so i like to put my shotgun turrets on the lower levels does it matter? I don't know. I'm not 100% on the most optimal way to get damage out of these, but I feel like shotguns are closer range, so having them lower to the bridge is the smarter choice there. And you can place these from inside, by the way. I'm just doing it because I have to run around here anyway. For these shotguns, I'm going to face them in a little bit because I want them to get things as they're coming on along that bridge. Very few things seem to actually reach this part anyway, and I plan on having some electric fences here actually, so it shouldn't matter either way. We then hop inside, so that is one, two, three, five shotgun turrets, and then up here we've got eight SMG turrets to use, but I'm going to go for just four, one on each of the cardinal directions here. Don't want it to take too much power to run this place. Uh, close these doors behind me. For your generators, um, I would recommend having them seated low rather than putting them up here. They're more likely to get hit by something if they're up there versus being here. And I'm just going to place them on opposing sides of the building there. Fill them up with engines. Refuel them. I'm not going to use them immediately. Uh, another thing you can also consider if you're going to be using this in an early enough stage of the game for it to work is you can place a couple of blocks here. I'm just using writable storage because it's what I have on me. And you can place your robotic turrets just next to you in here, just fine. If you want to place little dips on the bridge and have uh, robotic sledges, that's also perfectly fine. I might do that later on in the game when these become non-viable, because what happens is they start to activate demo buttons, and there are workarounds for it, like placing them behind the demos, but this base is not built for that, so later on in the game you are just going to lose the robotic turrets abilities during Horde Night, but you could always face them inwards like this on your roof and just have them deal with vultures for you. Assuming you have the perk maxed, which if you're placing two, you will anyway, you should be able to have those active up there and they'll kill all the vultures for you and they shouldn't have the position to fire on anything they shouldn't be able to. Also got electric fence posts, a few more blocks. Uh, I could set up dark traps, but I've not perfected that yet. I've got a couple of theories on how I want to use them, but in development, basically. <laughs> but it's going to involve pressure plates, and it does work quite well. Uh, we'll probably want a switch for the electric fences, because otherwise you might get caught on them. Let's take these wooden ladders. So what I'm going to do, because I have parkour, is to save me having to do so much running, I'm just going to be doing that. And zombies won't use that ladder because it's too high up and they shouldn't pile up here so they're good and since I have parkour I can just do that and save myself a lot of time. So for relays here's the thing about relays you have to be very careful cops can and will fuck up your relays so try and place them in places where the cops can't damage them. Most of inside here should be completely safe because it's cop proof that was oh that was the point of it why are you like this why can I not pick it up Right, well, you're supposed to be able to pick... Oh, you need to be in a land claim block. That's fine, I have millions of these. Right, so... Wire relay. I'm going to have one of them directed straight into the shotgun turrets. Well, into relays and then into the shotgun turrets. If you see here, by the way, you can come up into here and load the shotguns from inside the base. That's why those are there. That's all powered. There we go. So all my shotgun turrets should now be on. It takes about 80 watts power, nothing too crazy. They're not uh, loaded though, so there's no real reason to have those on. Then we'll do the SMG turrets in a similar way. Uh, this one doesn't have the same kind of roof, so I'll just do some side mounted ones. Uh, you can reach these from inside, by the way, even if you have them locked like that. Just do that. And you can also reload them from in here if you wanted to as well. There we go. So all my turrets are now wired up with the SMG turrets wired to this one. And the shotguns to the other one. Uh, another thing you could consider is blade traps. Now, with blade traps and electric fences, I would definitely recommend you incorporate switches, because turrets don't shoot at you by default. You have to tell them to shoot at you, but blade traps and electric fences don't care. They will just hurt you. Now, I have a lot of power output available to me, so I can really go to town on the blade traps. I'm inflicted on using them, because they're honestly very resource-heavy. Why can I not place that? There we go. I'm going to go for two on each of these, though. 
And this is going to discourage zombies from going into rage mode and attacking the side of your base. You won't get through it anyway, it's made of steel, but blade traps are cool, right? So we'll do that. And I'll need an extra switch because I'm going to do electric fences as well. We come in here, place one there for electric fences, one there for blade traps. Wire one there. Wire one there. Right, so for blade traps, how do I want to do this? Probably wire this, grab it, and just come straight down and look out and do that. Yeah, at least for this initial one. We might need some relays as well, but it'll work a little bit. We grab that. There's two wired to it. Uh, what about if we use the doors I made? If we come out here, can I? Oh, you can reach it. That's very nice. And then do the other side. Oh, really long arm in that. Place that in there. Grab this again. Grab you. Get another one. Oh, I couldn't have made that more perfectly if I wanted to. It was mostly accidental. Right, so which ones? You're the blade trap one. Then, there we go. Are they all on? Those two are spinning away. Don't worry about the absolute nightmare of wires in here, by the way. When you put the wiring thing away, it just, it, you can't see it anymore. Right, so all the blade traps are good to go. That takes 240 watts of power, so I will not be keeping it on permanently. That's why they're on a switch as well. That and because they'll damage you. For the electric fences, we need to build a little bit of a thing. Uh, and this can really be to your own specifications and desires. If you want to have, like, five layers of electric fence, you can. If you just want two, you can do that as well. What I'm going to do is come out uh, here, so it's in line with this pillar and the side of the base, and build myself one pillar. These ones won't be repairable from inside your base, though. That is one downside. But having electric fences, which are repairable from your base, but also defended, and keeping you safe while you do it is typically very resource costly. Like that base I used in the Alpha 21 survival guide costs a lot of materials because so much of the materials is dedicated to keeping your electric fences secure. This base does not have those weaknesses, it just does this. Um, cop pops will be a problem for them, so what you could certainly do is encase them in blocks. I don't care that much, I'm going to be honest with you, if they break, they break. The base is not dependent on electric fences at all. This is just going to give you a last bit of defense if they even get this far anyway. Wait, the fuck? That's not what I was trying to do at all, hang on. You're supposed to be wired to this. What? Wire. Wire, there we go. Wire, wire, and then... I'm inside and grab the lever thingy switch. Just wire those all up on the same sides. Remember, the ones that are receiving the power current, which are these two, are going to take damage when things happen. These ones are just going to be damaged by cop pops and explosions and stuff. You can definitely put a lot more effort into protecting those. I don't think it's necessary for a base that is not as dependent on electric fences as many other designs. So, what remains is just upgrading my doors and hatches here to, like, steel. And that is genuinely it. Pretty easy base design. I have way too many materials for it. But, you know, I don't mind. You know, there is one thing I could do, which is make these concrete, because they are basically made out of paper there so that is good to go for the day 40 horde and it will just completely survive the day 40 horde there is no doubt in my mind for that um the day 45 where we might be getting demos that is going to be more interesting that's going to be a real test of the base but that's going to have to wait for another episode because i don't have 10 hours to play right now uh so the last thing we need to do is get all the ammo that i want for my shotguns and smgs and just bring it over and probably put it in some writable storage crates on the inside I have these here as temporary blocks, but you could use them for storage. They're a bit insecure there. I wouldn't actually use them for storage. However, these would be much safer. We can just put like 9mm and spare turrets and spare electrical stuff in here. You can fit a few more of these in as well, in various places. Okay, let's see. Um, springs. What do you call them? Uh, mechanical parts. Is that what you need for steel hatches? I need two of you. I don't know if I really need vault doors. I mean, 
What's the harm, really? I can afford to do it. So. And then I also need iron hatches and iron doors because you have to go through the upgrade path here. So iron. Uh, well, these can be made in my inventory as well. Okay. Iron door, iron door, iron door, iron door. And then I'll make the iron hatches in my inventory. And I will simply wait. And shotgun shells. Yep, that's just way too many of those. <laughs> Plenty of ammo crafting supplies as well. I've just not made any ammo except for robotic turret ammo in this playthrough. Mostly just because I've been finding plenty of it without it. So why would I? There we go, all the doors I need. Let's head back over. There we go. The important hatch is now steel. Do this hatch as well. Do the doors. So excessive, but I can afford it, so what does it matter? There we go. I'll also need a bunch of this to actually put in the turrets, won't I? This thing is going to require a mountain of ammo to keep loaded. But it's not that hard to get mountains of ammo, so I don't mind. Especially the stuff I just don't use in any of my weapons anyway. Have I loaded this one or do I need more ammo? Need more ammo. There we go. Now we have day 38, day 39, and day 40. Oh, this is going to take so long to test it. What, I, what do I want to do in the meantime? Okay, so here comes the day 40 board. The base is up and running. The turrets are good to go. Let's see how this thing holds. All right, here goes nothing. I'm going to turn my game audio down because these turrets are going to be horrible to listen to. So far, they seem to be, you know, doing the thing. Making their way around. I don't expect a feral white to go down to these turrets, but, you know. Everything else, mate. Ah, are they bashing? My robotic turrets might need to be put in a better position. They seem to be slightly shooting these blocks, but that's fine. The hell? It's an interesting strategy from them. You always have to be wary of the uh, spiders pathing. They're a little bit weird. I think I maybe should have encased the electric fences because one of them has taken a lot of damage from the robotic turrets, actually. As they're crossing there, they're they're shooting it, and it's hitting it. It's minor, but it's an improvement that could be made. But otherwise, the shotgun turrets are absolutely handling this. I'm sure the SMG turrets are doing their part as well. Is this one loaded? No? It is. It seems like when they get there, they go back into destroy area mode, and they try and destroy that block. Which is to be expected, we understand that mechanic from my previous videos, of course. I'm sure all of you have seen all of them. Uh, but basically, they get into range with you again and they go into destroy area mode. Nothing to be overly concerned with because I have windows on all the sides and I have turrets that should make their way to shooting those zombies before they can do too much damage. This thing here needs some repairs. Not repairs, sorry, a reload. I wonder if it's worth doing that. And while that does do that, let me get some spare ammo for it. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult from a video standpoint to actually show you what's happening. Because it's happening on four sides and I only have one camera. But it's going pretty well. Very few of them are actually getting past these electric fences. Honestly, very few of them are even reaching the electric fences. Never mind getting past them. If I was to make an improvement, I would probably want to put these on half blocks or three quarter blocks if that's a thing that exists. Let's see. This would do. Let's see if that improves the turret's aim a little bit because they're hitting the uh, wrong things. That does seem to slightly help. It would be better if it was in the place of that though. But it's an improvement for now. There we go. They're still hitting the bits in the middle. But it's not too bad overall. I think I'm going to improve it by putting some dart traps on the bridges here. Through various means. Really, the only thing I can show you of this Horde Knight is the XP going up. How is the ammo doing? Okay, so this has used about half of its ammo. That's the Yeah, that one's using a lot more ammo than most of the turrets, though. Yeah, this one's used almost all of it, yeah. SMG turrets tend to use more ammo than uh, the shotgun ones, for mostly obvious reasons, but it's not too bad. Depending on how often you have your Horde Knights, keeping these stocked up with, like, two... I think
thingies of ammo shouldn't be that hard to do. It's 900 per turret, uh, 900 per SMG turret, 450 per shotgun turret. So getting a few thousand of each of those every week is not that hard to do if you're at this late game stage. I mean, melt down some jukes, mine a little bit of coal and lead, you're good to go. It's suspiciously quiet. Did the SMG turrets run out of ammo? My money's on yes. Yeah. I could reload them, but I don't think I really need to. Shotguns are handling it very well still. Or are they? That is a lot of zombies, actually. <laughs> you know what it is? It's my robotic turrets being down. That's what's causing that. Hang on a moment. Let's get these reloaded. Because they are a big bit of DPS at this stage. There. They should clean that up. No problem. Now for really late game hordes where demos are a problem, you could always replace these with a couple more SMG turrets if you feel it's necessary. Uh, but I should mention, turrets will not hit um, demo buttons. These turrets won't. These turrets will. These won't. The SMG and the shotgun turrets. And if you are new to the series and you don't know what's going on, this is Insane Nightmare 64 max spawns. That is an important detail, of course. This one's out of ammo as well. A few of the shotguns still have ammo left though. I can probably handle the rest of the Horde Knight without them. Just have the robotic turrets help me out. Got plenty of M60 ammo after all. I'm gonna get some ammo just for turrets on this side so that they handle the zombies that are bunching up on the ramp there. Hmm. Because if I don't, uh, they might break the ramp and then the whole base breaks. It might be worth keeping those ones loaded, but the other ones I can survive without. Not that I'm short on ammo, it's just laziness. Okay, two more skill points. Let's go for another point of fortitude. We can get another rank of uh, machine gunner soon. Get another skill point anyway, is that it? We done. 6,000 kills up to game stage 139. Day 45 is definitely going to be demo time then. Unless we just get really lucky. Okay, let me turn off all the power stuff. What is the power consumption? 100 gas out of you. And 50 gas out of you. So 150 gas per night. That is not bad at all. Let's hop outside and assess some of the damage here. So these take damage just from your turrets, I think. Mostly. Particular that one did. The one right in front of the turret, of course. The corners definitely seem to take a bit of damage. I'm just keeping that in mind so I know which ones need to be turned into steel. It seems to be basically the tops of pillars that need to be turned into steel. Which I could have honestly expected. How's the ramp doing? Not too bad, but they did get a few hits in it. Uh, yeah, so I, I think I lost like half of my blade traps, which isn't too bad. I'm confident it's going to hold against demos as well. Just needs some steel in some very important places, I think. That is going to do it for today's episode. I hope this base was of interest to you, even if you maybe don't want to do it yourself for uh, intellect build reasons, because it really does only work for an intellect build. We will do some upgrades to it soon. And we'll see if we can hold against demos. Hello and welcome back to the Intellect series. Today we have two things on the agenda. I need to get a lot more XP because we need to get myself up to game stage 150 in time for the day 45 horde. I should explain if you're new to the series, we are currently on horde nights every five days to make things a little bit more interesting. So the next horde will be on day 45, but I also need a lot of ammo. You see, this base has five shotgun turrets and four SMGs turrets so it really chews through those two types of ammo now you could obviously just mine resources and probably do it more efficiently
randomly by doing that. However, a much more fun way of playing, I would think, is going to be to do as many infested POIs as I can, whilst also leveling Trader Bob here, since I only have Trader Rec leveled and he sucks. So if we head over to Trader Bob here and see what quests he has, hopefully he has some like tier 3 infested. He does not. He does have a tier 2. Three tier twos. Those will do as a starting point. And maybe tomorrow we can unlock some tier three infested or some tier fours with him. I don't know how far I am into the uh, progression with him. Once we've done these tier two infested though. Oh, this needs some repairs. Hang on. Uh, once we've done tier two infested with him, we can go and see Trader Wrecked and see if he has some more, you know, substantial tier five infested, which I think are the most efficient for getting good amounts of ammo from. Because tier sixes, you tend to use a lot of ammo to get through, but tier fives, you can clear with a magnum and a melee weapon. And I don't really care about magnum ammo because it isn't used in any of the turrets anyway, so that's why it's kind of my primary weapon right now. How are, How is this POI going to be infested? It normally has five zombies in it. This is going to be interesting. And tomorrow, I'll probably go about getting ammo the more conventional way, and I think we will likely find that mining is the more efficient way to do it, but it's certainly not going to be the most fun way to do it. Start that, and let's get in here. So there's usually one vulture, so I'm expecting two this time. Here's one. Oh, that is a radiated biker. So tanky. Whoa. He's hello. There's another vulture. Oh, hey, you're faster than I expected. Don't know why I keep getting surprised by that. It is nightmare speed. Vested cash or what we get ammo from. 10762 is not bad, but I'm more looking for 9 mil and shotgun shells. But what do you expect from tier 2s, really? Or is this technically a tier 3? No, it's a tier 2, yeah. But it's just a bit of a warm up for me. Let's head on back down to Trader Bob. Oh, bookshelf, hang on. Handguns and machine guns. I guess I'll take the book. <laughs> and let's take on another infested clear. Passing gas store. Okay, this is going to be a very interesting <laughs> infested clear. There's usually like two zombies in here. I saw the infested caches in the first room. Hmm, tube extender. Okay, not the longest POI ever. That was a long flight. For very little. My gyrocopter is stuck. I'll take some free forged steel. Let's do that. Getting these easy ones out of the way nice and quickly. This is a weird POI. Oh, hey, end dungeon. Didn't even see you there. Hey, gumbo stew. Nice infested cash there. Still, it seems to be dead set on just giving me magnum ammo. Alright. Head back to Bob. Wait, there's a ammo pile here. Hang on. And a shotgun inside a crate. Okay. Nothing too useful there then. Where's my gyrocopter? I'll take the 9 mil. Right, well, he doesn't have any more infested POI, so let's go see our old buddy erect. He'll definitely have something worth doing. Before I go, though, since I'm probably going to be doing some tier 5s, should grab the robotic turrets from the horde base here. There we go. Let's head out to the crafting base and then we'll talk to Trader Wrecked about getting some tier 5 infestations done. I could really do with a few extra SMG turrets for something I want to do later anyway, so it doesn't hurt to have the extra bundles. 
Let's see, how many stacks of dukes do I actually have? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Almost 14 stacks of dukes. I have 7 forges. Would it be wise to smell all of the money I have? I mean, what else am I going to spend it on? Right? Let's just smelt it all and use it for something actually valuable bullet casings and besides you can get money back very quickly i think a tier 6 poi is 10,000 dukes so you can get that back very easily if you really care but i really don't right with that set up let's go talk to wrecked hey wrecked and you only have four tier sixes that's weird he's got one tier five invested clear though the eco trash recycling center let's grab that let's sell him some of this Let's take the Mega Crush now. No, oh, instantly aggroed to me. Oh, he had some range. Here's that vulture. And the other one. They can get up there. Oh yeah, they can. Oh shit. Which one of my armors weak? Ah, probably the legs and the feet. Annoying. Never say no to some rock busters. Oh, this looks like a fun one. Step into the firing lane of my turrets, would you? Hope there's none behind me. There's more? Screamer. Who did I miss? Oh, I missed a bunch of you out here. Where's the loot again? Also, where's this fucking screamer? Here's the loot. That's helpful. Who left that forklift there? There was a random zombie behind me. Where'd the biker go? Did I kill him? No, I think he's just a little bit silly. Another screamer, seriously? They're so annoying. Let's see, what's this one have? An auto turret bundle, perfect. And a bunch of various kinds of ammo. I didn't bring any lockpicks or anything to open this, did I? Oh my god. I have to do it the hard way. Ah, another beaker. Some paper, some more ammo. Along with some more ammo. Let's head back to Trader Wrecked. Right, let's see. Has he got any tier 4 infested? No. 
No tier 3 infested, just one tier 2 infested, the broken axe. Well, it will have an infested cache filled with ammo at the end, so I will do it. But I think after that, it's time to just get ammo the smart way. The smart but boring way. You know what I need before I make any ammo? The boxes thing. Because I'm not going to be able to store all the ammo I want to make, to be honest. Which means I need to find what exactly. Um, oh well, it doesn't matter for automatic weapons. I need Pistol Peak 2. Hang on, let me keep myself flying here. Uh, a lot of Magnum Enforcer if I care about bulk crafting 44. I probably won't even make any 44. I have so much of it. Shotgun Messiah 2 and 3. And I need one of the snipers as well. Sniper 7. So yeah, I need to go on a boot hunt, I think. Maybe I can do that while I smelt down a load of stuff at the forge and craft, like, the gunpowder itself. Well, let's deal with this first. There's a mailbox I should check. It's just skill books. So many of them. Tactical warfare. Hello? Come get caught in the door. That didn't last very long. And we're clear. Trader Wreck can keep his reward for now. Let's head back to my base. Oh wait, hang on, some books. Magnum Enforcer. It's something. So, how are these doing? They've smelted about 10,000 brass, which can become 2,000 bullet casings. That's 14,000 between all of them then. So, during the night, the next thing I need is gunpowder. So, nitrate and coal. Oh, let me grab a few mining supplies here. Uh, rock busters and coffee. I'm going to find some coal and nitrate, and I'm going to split my time during the night between... Oh, there's that stuff in it. Good to know. Uh, between mining the coal and the nitrate, the coal I will get from there, and there's two nitrate pretty close. Uh, let's see, hang on. Gunpowder. A stack of gunpowder takes 15 minutes. I have four chemistry stations, 800 times four... That should be about 12,000 of both of those things. In order to have like an hour's worth of gunpowder crafting and four f chemistry stations, that's going to take about 12,000 of both of those materials, which is, you know, two and a bit stacks. I think it's like 12,800 you need. So I can definitely do that. I need to chop down a tree for some materials. And can I one shot? Yes. Right, I'm going to mine up 12,000 of both of these then and I'll skip back for you. Oh, let me take the rock busters, of course. Got a skill point. Is there anything I can use that on? Ah, machine gunner 4, perfect. Okay, so I had to go and find another coal node because the other one ran out. But I did get the nitrate as well, so we're up to about 12.8k on both of those as my truck slowly rolls away from me because I forgot to turn the handbrake on. Uh, that should be enough to make a decent amount of gunpowder throughout the day. Next is probably going to come lead, which is the worst of them, unfortunately. Perfect, I can make 16 stacks of gunpowder. Let's go for four in each of the chemistry stations. How's the brass coming? Another, like, half of them is smelted out. Let's do that. Gonna need you to get some clay soon. Right then, so. Next thing I would need is lead, which I would need for bullet tips and buckshot. But the problem is my forges are very much occupied with brass for now, and they won't have the clay to make all those bullet casings and stuff anyway, which means I would need to grab my auger and gather up a bunch of more clay. However, there's another problem there, which is I have barely any gas left. This 4,000 is all I have. So I would need to go to the desert and gather up a bunch of gas. Probably a similar amount to what I got in coal and nitrate. Where's the desert? It is. For this one, I'll just get 4,000 oil shale. I might even have that lying around. Let me check. That'll be enough to make one stack of gas at each of the uh, stations, which will take, you know, eight minutes, which I can wait. Okay, I have 70 oil shale. That doesn't seem ideal. Then I guess we're going to the desert. 
to go and do more mining. Before we go, I'm gonna get my reward from Wrecked though. Reward and get the hell out of here. Anything interesting, Wrecked? One infested tier five, two infested tier fours, one infested tier three, and that's about it. I will come back for those once I've mined this oil shale and stuff. Ugh, so boring. Let's fly over to the desert. Here we go, some oil shale. Let me pop a couple of rock busters. Or maybe just the one. Let's mine this. There, I can make four stacks of gas cans. That will do for now. Let me fly all the way back home now. Alright, let's add in gas cans. I'll need some extra fuel. And how is the brass doing? It's making its way down there. I think we're going to need some clay very soon, though. If I'm going to do anything with this. Which is where the auger comes in. Here it is. And I've got some gas, so I can definitely get some clay. I'm thinking seven stacks of clay should do. Um, I do have a quarter of a stack there. Seven stacks would be enough to fill up all my forges, uh, one of the slots anyway, with some clay. I'm just going to go over to this field next to the barn and dig it up because it's a really easy source of clay. Seven stacks will fill up all my forges, and then I think I'll get a seven stacks of lead to fill the other half of the forges, because of course they have two slots, which should put me in a good position ammo-wise for a while. Um, I have all the paper I'll need for shotgun shells. The limiting factor is probably going to be gunpowder, just because it doesn't go that far compared to the other materials. That was painful, but I have seven stacks of clay now. Um, I wonder if Wrecked has any more rock busters for the lead, because that's going to be really painful without some. Ugh, he does not. How is the brass doing? Um, we can put that into one of those and start smelling the clay while I go gather the lead. I also have a bunch of plant fibre now. Let's see, I've got 600 lead there, and that's something to start at least. Alright, so, uh, I am now going to mine. Ugh, seven stacks of lead. Okay, I'm out of, uh... Gas, I'm gonna have to run back to the chemistry stations, but I am up to three and a half stacks, so basically exactly halfway on what I need. I also forgot to grab food before I left, so that's obviously a limitation. So let's head back over there. Ooh, big frame rate issues. Probably related to the fog, if I had to guess. Uh, oh yeah, none of the gas will be done yet. Well, what I'll do is I'll switch the gas around, and I can wait for the other half of the lead for a little bit. That's fine. Let me not forget about food this time. Where is it? Um, I could finish the mining with a pickaxe in the meantime. That doesn't bother me too much. It is slower, but it's a lot faster than waiting for gas to craft. How are the forges doing? Pretty damn good as far as the last of the dukes are concerned. Pumping out another couple of thousand bullet casings should keep me covered on that front for a while. And then once all the brass is done, I'll probably be just in time to catch up with the lead so I can just finish up the brass, chuck the lead in, and then start the process again. And while I wait for that to smelt, I can go to some neighborhood somewhere and hunt down a bunch of mailboxes and see if I can find the last various weapon magazine or uh, skill books I need to be able to bulk craft ammo, make the most out of all the mining I'm doing. So let me get back to mining. Another skill point. I'm not sure if there's anything worth getting right now. Um, I'll probably just save up for 10 fortitude and then max out machine gunner, pain tolerance, iron gut cardio all that kind of thing because i don't really need anything else for my build and those things just make you a little bit better at surviving in various scenarios i guess here we go forty-two thousand lead otherwise known as seven stacks my brain has collapsed in on itself inside of my skull but it's effective let me go back to my base and see how the brass is doing if we've cleared it all out, then we can start the lead immediately. If not, we can wait until it is gone. It's getting there. Let me clear out these bullet casings just to clear some space. That is a ridiculous amount of bullet casings, it must be said. But you do need them. Kind of, I guess. Grab the rest of them. And I'll wait for the rest of those dukes to smell in, and then we'll do the lead. So I will stay close by. I don't really know what I need though, I'll probably just wait until morning, because if I want to stay close by and keep an eye on this, but at the same time I want to go out and find books, I'm probably best just AFKing here and waiting for these to be done, and the, at least until I can put the lead in, and then I can start the smelting process. 
and then I can come back at the end of the next day and then craft out a bunch of buckshot and bullet casings, uh, bullet tips and all that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna AFK here and of course it's not a horde night right now because we do horde nights every five days so the day 42 horde happened on day 40 and the day 49 horde will happen on day 45. So I'm just gonna cut to the next scene for you. Alright, so most of the brass is smelted out of all these, so I'm going to start uh, pumping in the lead here. I'm not going to tell it to start immediately doing all this into bullet casings, because I want to save the clay for bullet tips and buckshot, because I obviously have a healthy amount of bullet casings, but my bullet tips are a little bit more sad, and so is my buckshot. So, we definitely want to prioritize the lead now. Okay, there we go. How is the gas doing? There we go. I'll take a stack of that with me now. Not that I need it for the auger, just so I can make sure I have enough uh, gas to do various things. I'm actually going to take the motorcycle, uh, because the truck just eats so many repair kits, and it doesn't move particularly faster than the um, motorcycle. I think it's literally like 0.1 meters per second faster. Uh, oh, a little bit of gunpowder. I'll grab that. But what I actually wanted was the, uh, the fuel saver and the red dye that take the gyrocopter and i'm gonna fly out somewhere where i have probably not looted all the books um that snow biome is probably a very good starting point for hunting down the last few books i need so let me go ahead and fly down there i don't appreciate that let's go and hunt down as many mailboxes as i can for these skill books if that doesn't work we can always just check the houses for books this will be... Well, that's one of the most annoying ones out of the way in the first mailbox. Great. I guarantee I will not find the shotgun ones I need for, like, the rest of the day. You know what? While I'm here, I should just check the houses for books. I can do it very quickly now, I forgot. Bookshelf. Magazine extender. No help to me. Vehicle Adventures, that's no help. Ow. in combat but that's not what I need. Machine gunner but not the one I need. Tactical warfare. I think that's all the books you're gonna get out of there but let's have a look in the back area here. Yeah. Mostly just skill magazines I've already read. Let's continue the search. Ah, paper. There is this which I know has a decent bit of books in it. Might be worth doing a quick check. Oh okay radiated biker. Not a fan. Bookcase. Handguns and knife guy, but no skill books. gunner something I can now be even more deadly with my m60 at least move on to the next house this one have a mailbox magnum enforcer not finished on that one but helpful let's check out what's inside this house ow oh bookcase oh hey there Ow. Magazine extender again. Oh, some red dye. Do I need that for anything? My boots are still not red. There we go. Where 
Run away. There's another one. And he's running through some spikes. Well, down into the basement, I guess. Uh oh, oh, some bookshelves at least. Hey, there. Hmm, level six steel pick is a better than mine. Thirty-five point six versus thirty-five point two. No, it isn't. Tactical warfare. Uh, this, some papers, some other things. Urban combat, but not the one I need. A pump shotgun, which I'm just going to scrap, and I'll take that. And another beaker, which I can, I guess, take the peas. Next house. We're making good progress, though. Every couple of houses I check, I complete something. Nothing in there, but let's check the house. That was a bad time for a frame drop. Handed armor plate mod, I guess. Something. Hi there. Uh, I don't know if I have any antibiotics on me. Oh god. That was a clusterfuck. The meds, nothing I need. Booster station. Vitamins, of course. Is there no Yes. Am I missing something or is it like around here? Weird. Where is the treasure? Hmm. I guess there's just no extra loot in this BOI. Um. Alright, I need to find some kind of antibiotic while I'm out here. That's fine. Ooh, bookshelves. Nothing in them. Popping pills? Nothing there. Handgun magazine. Check upstairs for more bookcases then. Hmm, nothing in here, I guess. Ooh, mailbox, though. Shotgun Weekly. Check in here. Ah, bookshelves. And gun magazine, damn it. Plenty of crafting magazines, but I clearly don't need those anymore, game. Alright, nothing here. Let's head across the street. We got a mailbox here? Ugh, break inside. Hi there. No antibiotics there. And none in there. No useful books either. Hey, some bookshelves though. Go. Some crafting magazines. Customized fittings mod. No skill books. Oh, this is the end loot I broke into. Break this open. Hey. Eh. Ugh, machine gunner, but one I already know. Magnum Forcer, I already know. Okay, nothing in here. Where's the next house? Oh, fuck that. I'm not doing the Karen Higashi house. Does she have a mailbox? Ow. 
What a dick. Nothing there. Apparently this is just the radiated cop house. Damn it. Right, well, I'm a little bit beat up as you can see, so let me go ahead and get back to the motorcycle and then back to the gyrocopter, and we'll go and check on the forges. Uh, I can at least bulk craft 9 mil, which is the most important one to be able to bulk craft, because I have to make twice as much of it compared to shotgun ammo. Right, let's see. All of my chemistry stations, uh, this one needs a little bit more fuel actually, apparently, are done making gunpowder, except for this one, which has another couple of minutes to go. Forges are about halfway through smelting their lead. I think I will do two of them as buckshot and four of them as bullet tips. That's not mathematically correct, is it? No, it would be five of them as bullet tips. <laughs> I'll hold off on actually crafting more um, shotgun ammo until I can actually bulk craft it to save some resources. Because I have a spare, you know, Horde Knight's worth of ammo anyway. This is to get me through any other potential Horde Knights I want to do. So let's open up the gunpowder. And grab my extra gunpowder. Bullet casings, um... 8,000? How much bullet tips do I have? I only have like 2,700 right now. But we can make a start on 9 mil. I can make... 33 stacks of it. Otherwise known as 3,300. Um, let's do five in each of the workbenches until it won't let me. There we go. My ammo crisis has been mostly dealt with. It's just a case of waiting for that lead to smelt and finding that one last shotgun book. Or do I need two? Finding those last two shotgun books and then I'm good to go. On ammo. Uh, how's my skill stuff going? I'm definitely, assuming I get a couple more levels in time for the day 45 horde, I'm definitely going to be getting demos, so that's good. Um, I'll probably upgrade the base to forge steel tomorrow, and that will give me the XP to get demos into the thing anyway, so that should work out quite well. Hello and welcome back to the Intellect series. Today we are going to be trying to get myself up to 150 game stage so that Demolition Zombies spawn tonight. Or not tonight, on the uh, night of day 45 because I have Horde Nights on every 5 days if you haven't been paying attention to the series there. And basically I want to test this base design against Demolition Zombies and it should be fine, relatively speaking. The turrets aren't supposed to hit demo buttons ever. We might have a problem with like cop pops happening at really inopportune moments and setting off the demos, which seems to be an annoying new Alpha 21 feature, um, presumably designed to make the game as unenjoyable as possible, which is generally in line with most of the decisions that are made in this game. Speaking of which, we are in Alpha 21.1 and it now takes one oil shale to make two gas. Because as if the rising gas costs in real life weren't bad enough, now we're dealing with it in our video games. Or maybe I'm just thinking slightly too hard about that. Uh, but either way, I need to get myself a few levels and I want this base to be upgraded to steel. You'll see most of the blocks are still partially damaged from the actual Horde Knight because I just didn't repair it. I didn't have time. Uh, but I've got a bunch of learning elixirs. I've got at least just under 2,000 steel there. I might have some more lying around up here. Let me have a look. Also, I set the forges from yesterday to fully just craft out everything they can now. They are just set. They'll be done in an in-game day, basically, and I'll have all the bullet casings and bullet tips I can make out of the resources I had. We could definitely get some more steel, I suppose, but it might not even be necessary. My plan is basically just to turn as much of this base into steel as possible, starting with the more important lower areas in the bridge and then moving on to the middle bit. Less because the base in the middle needs to be steel, and more just because I need XP, so I will queue up 
the grandpa's learning elixirs and i'll start the day by fixing this because i'm sure that was annoying the hell out of somebody and reinforcing pretty much all of this to steel so i will cut to when i'm done with that there i'm out of steel most of the important parts are steel now though um right well since i know i'm going to need more materials in this playthrough for something i want to do later in particular, more forged steel. Um, I'm going to make the most of that learning elixir. And I'm going to mine just all of the iron. Uh, but I'll need my auger, which is back at my other base. So let me go ahead. Fly back there. I'll waste a little bit of learning elixir, but it's fine. Oh, actually, do I have any jukes here? Because I could check Trader Bob there for some rock busters. And I could also check Trader Wrecked when I get back to my other base. I do still need XP and mining is a fantastic source of XP. So works for me, I guess. And there's a little bit of jukes. Um, probably more I could sell. Let's see. This drone I can get rid of. I don't really care. And you know what? The level 6 nail gun can go away as well. I don't sell those while I'm here to get some rock busters. I am also mostly out of dukes anyway because I turned, you know, 14 stacks of dukes into bullet casings. Just for the meme because, like, I have nothing else to do with them anyway except for buy rock busters and I can obviously fund that in various other ways. Uh, let's see, there's one. We'll go get some more from Wrecked if he's selling any. If not, then we'll just live with that. And he has none. That sucks. Right, so I've decided that if I want to have like 1000 blocks worth of steel, which I may genuinely use at the end of this series here, I will need, what is it, two, 20 iron per forged steel, 10 forged steel per block, so 200,000 iron, basically 34 stacks of iron, which is going to take a while to mine, but mining is actually a fantastic source of xp and it should get me you know a couple of levels and get me up to like game stage 149 i think you're good at 149 you will start to get demos there which means we can give the base a nice little stress test against harder enemies before i go spending a thousand forge steel to remake it in a more interesting biome how's this doing it's cooking away and it's also getting me a bunch of clay now as well where's my auger here we are have i got repair kits yep have i got gas yep I will treasure this gas because now it's like more than twice as expensive as it was in the last episode. Five spare learning elixirs, six spare learning elixirs, two spare of those, some coffee. I've only got the three coffee I actually have, that sucks. And I don't have the cooking skills to cook it any faster, so I'll just live with the coffee I have, I guess. Uh, let me go to one of my mines. There's one, it's probably decent. See how long it takes to mine, 250,000 iron, I guess. Is this an iron mine, or is this a lead mine? This is an iron mine, but it's a little close to my base, and I'll be dealing with a lot of screamers, so let's go somewhere a little bit further. I imagine to get, like, 200,000 iron, it's gonna take, like, at least an in-game day, if not, if not longer. Now, it is slightly more generous than lead is, because you get twice as much iron as lead. And lead is obviously the bane of my existence, the thing I hate mining the most. Because you can't one-shot it with any pickaxe, and you get very little resources, so you have to auger it, which is painful. And you get half as much resources compared to iron, which is painful. Yeah, it's all just very painful for lead, but iron is slightly more workable. I am going to start mining, let me see. Uh, top up my learning elixirs with two more. Up with three rock busters, and I'll probably do three coffee as well. I didn't bring food as usual. I'll probably have to run back at some point and get some, but that's fine. Place my turrets somewhere relatively helpful. Drink three coffees. I wonder if I'll run out of gas before I hit that much iron. Or repair kits, maybe. And let's get started. Okay, so I have, I think that's 34 stacks of iron, which took pretty much an entire in-game day. Not full real-time hour, but you know, it was morning and now it's just about to be nighttime. There's 34 stacks. That should be enough iron to cover everything else I need for the rest of the series, hopefully. So let me take that back and then I'll see what the situation with my forges is. Let's see, let me grab all this stuff out of here. I have way too many bullet casings. Let's start smelting the iron in here. There's plenty of clay and I've got more waiting. And obviously the forge can't take the rest of my iron, so I'll have to come back and do another load of that once that's done. Let's see, there's 8,000 gunpowder, 8,000 bullet tips, and 8,000 bullet casings, which is enough to make. Let's go for 15 boxes, I guess. See where that takes us and then this last one can do 10 
That works. In about an hour, I'll have a clean 10,000 9mm ammo on top of my 33,000 plus however much this other stuff is. It's a lot of ammo. My turret should be pretty well covered for the rest of the series. Let me just grab that. And buckshot. There's bullet tips in there. And then paper. How many shotgun shells can I make? 2,000. That's nowhere near as impressive, but it is mostly because I'm kind of out of gunpowder. No plans on mining more in the next couple of minutes here, so let's do this. Uh, there's seven workbenches, and I can make about 2,100 ammo, so 300 in each. Two stacks, which is still a good amount of extra shotgun ammo, especially considering that the shotguns use a lot less compared to the SMG turrets. Right, well, I'm going to wait until morning, and we can do some quests to get some more XP. How What's my... 148. Looks like I'm going to need to get a couple more levels here to get demos to spawn. Uh, if I do some tier 5 infestations, I think I can cover that quite well. Alright, so it's 6.05. Let's go and see what jobs Wrecked has, and if any of them are going to give me the XP that I need. Yes, tier 5 infested clear seems like a good idea. Uh, game stage 148. So we definitely need to get some levels then. The day counter isn't going to carry my game stage enough. I will head over there in a moment. Alright, let's head inside. I did this one in a very stealthy manner last time, and I really don't have the patience for it today. I guess I'll use my turrets instead. That was a bookcase here. Ah, oh, level 6 pistol. I thought it would be a wandering horde. You don't see many hazmat zombies wandering around. Ow. Did I kill him? I don't actually know. I'm just gonna assume yes. I wasn't paying attention to the XP. Bullet tips, some mods and parts, bunch of parts, eh, shitty armor, ah, explosives and machine guns, whoa, Right, for this area, I'm gonna go for a robotic turret there, and you know what, I'm gonna put one up here. And I'm gonna- ow, and I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna start fighting. I'm gonna grab the infested catch. <laughs> There's Cops everywhere. Well, that explains why there's cops everywhere. There's cops everywhere. Run past them. Get them caught in the turret. Whoa. Hey, I was hiding under that. Oh, don't blow up my turret. He didn't deserve that. He's only a little mass murderer. Place my turret back somewhere useful. One there. And one can just go down there. Oh, is he up there? Hi. And we're done. Let me unlock the loot and get out of here. Oh, ammo bag. 
Got another blade trap bundle. Ugh. I already have like 40 of them. Blade traps, that is. Not blade trap bundles. That would be a lot of blade traps. Let's head back to Trader Wreck to see if I can get a level. I'll take a Lair and an Elixir before I turn the quest in. Because I've got one left, so I might as well. Hey, Rex. Another level 6 robotic drone. Yay. I left the game, so... I was going to say he should have different quests, but it looks like he just didn't. Which is very odd to me. He just didn't get a new quest. I don't mind. Uh, I wasn't trying to get a new quest anyway, but I am surprised I didn't. <laughs> That did almost nothing for my XP, didn't it? Oh, there we go. Game, game. I don't know how that works. I have not leveled up, but my game stage has gone up. Oh, I did level up. No, I didn't level up. That's the same one I got from... Maybe your game stage isn't calculated at the start of the day. That's weird. Anyway, as I was saying, I haven't gone up in a level, and my game stage has gone up to 150, so now I don't really need to do anything. However, I do need 30 to 40 minutes of content to make a video, so let's go clear this POI as well. Let's restart this. Check the mailbox. Curious fists. Well, that sucks. Let's head inside. Oh, good. It's one of these ones where you jump down to your death. Those are always fun. That's going to be a radiated biker. Oh, it's a radiated cop. Ow. What the fuck? He bat through like three layers of shit and did that much damage to me still. Ooh. I hate radiated cops. It's like they gave zombies a shotgun. That's not how this is supposed to work. There's Magnum Enforcer done, so now I can penetrate targets with regular ammo, as you can see there. So that's quite helpful. Did I piss off? Ow! He does so much damage. Oh, I did the thing again where I piss off people on the other side of the house. Well, he fell down. There we go. Okay, catchers and armored up. is just cheating honestly even more than the robotic tourists Apparently he just did damage by headbutting me, because his arms certainly didn't swing.
is dead. There we go. I've got two skill points. I need to save more for more for Richard. Uh, dart trap bundle. Ew. The only good bundle is a food bundle. Well, at this stage. Do I have anything to drink on me? What do you mean you can't drink salmon? They live in water. You're wrong. I'll take some time charges, I guess. I don't really need to care about it now. I'm game stage whatever it is. So, demos are not guaranteed, but pretty likely. So I shouldn't have to worry too much. Mm, I'll probably take time nerves, to do one more job of some kind. None of these are infested. Ah, tier 2 infested. Bit boring, but... Let's see, we got any Mega Crush? That'll make it more entertaining for me. And for the meme of it, I will run there and I will only use melee. But I'll do something to keep this interesting for myself. Hello? Oh, this is going to be difficult melee only. <laughs> Where'd the cop go? How did you fit through this? Hey, books. Sharp sticks. Oh, one another one. Who's down here then? That is a lot of zombies. One may even call it an infestation. Ow. Oh, how did that hit? You dick. you expect from a tier 2 invested really but it was a fun little diversion eh right how long do I have on my mega crush that is about a minute and a half I can probably run back to trade erect in that time again, and I'll cut you. oh that was certainly a reward let's head over to my crafting base and get ready for horde night how's the iron doing Oh, it's still smelling away. Let's get all of them started on like 500 pieces of steel. And in the morning, I'll add more iron to the fires. We'll see where that takes me. Did I not put iron in this one? That fucking sucks. Still, it's a minor setback, all things considered. That one can smelt it away. Uh, that should be everything I need for a horde night, right? Uh, I might need a little bit of concrete, actually, because... Uh, the part I fight at is made of concrete. I think I have loads of that over at the base, so I should be good. I don't even need all this ammo. I'm just taking it over just to add to the supplies. Oh, speaking of ammo, I should get some 7.62 for my M60 because it is my oh shit weapon, you know. If everything goes horribly wrong, I can always switch to the M60 and use it as a infinite sprint button, basically. Because I get, what... Four stamina back per shot or something like that. Yeah, every shot I do gives me four stamina back. And it means I can sprint pretty comfortably for a while. So if I get completely overrun in the base, I can run 20% faster with each kill. And I can restore stamina every time I hit an enemy. So it's very good for running away and shooting if you need to do that kind of thing. Let's just open this up immediately because we all know I'm going to need them. Actually, no, because if there's going to be demos, these are a death trap. So, 
Maybe I'll take my own advice and do the turrets up here to defend myself against vultures. Hope they don't accidentally start shooting at demos at weird angles, because that would suck. Because they will aim right for the chest. Because they're little shits. Oh yeah, concrete. Where's some of that? Oh. There. Nope, did not mean to do that. Oh well, we're down 10 of that. Right, so my main priority for this Horde Knight is going to be blowing up cops before they can set off demos. That is the main thing I have to worry about. And if it all goes to shit, I've got the M60 and I can run. What is my final game stage here? 150. Well, 151. Here we go. Alright, everything's going pretty normal so far. Oh, I forgot to add the dart traps. See the cops are beginning to arrive. Yeah, finally some radiated zombies. I've been waiting for those. Going well so far, but no demos yet. They tend to come a little bit later than the Horde Knight usually. Three skill points, let's get another point of fortitude. Still no demos yet, but I hold out hope. That's pretty interesting. I don't know if that's new, but it looks like when an electric fence breaks, obviously it does the sparking thing. I also think they added a thing where now it sags when the electric fence is actually broken. And I don't know if that's new, but I've never noticed it before. Just kind of neat, I guess. Because you can't always see those. They're usually protected by something. Here, my M60. A little bit more zombies are reaching me. I wonder if that's the sign that maybe I need to reload some of those uh, SMG turrets up here. 9 mil. Yeah, this one needs reloaded. Lock that up. What about you? Do you need ammo? Yep, it does.
That should help out a lot. Oh, didn't mean to make that steel. Oh, that doesn't break their pathing. I was just trying to repair it. Who are you on shotgun ammo? That's going to need a reload soon. There we go. Oh, I see a demo. Yep, it immediately got set off by the cop. That was a bad demonstration. Let's get another demo. So something they added in the Alpha 21 stable was that cops can now set off demolition zombies. Which sucks. So I need to keep an eye on those and just wipe them out. Because so my turrets can handle the demos. But they have a tendency to not finish off the cops before they explode. So that's my new duty. It's just making sure that no cops pop near any demos. So at least I'm not playing a completely AFK base now. That's good. Now let me also grab some more 762 from in here. Time to actually turn my brain on. Slightly. Just the one demo? Those hazmat zombies are faster than they look. There's bound to be more demos around here somewhere. They don't just come in a group of one, and that's the entire horde. Did, did, did that turret just. Okay. That's a thing I didn't know could happen. Gotta keep in mind that I need to repair that turret, apparently. Did not think to check on those. Oh no, it's gonna happen again. Okay, cop fell off. Uh, the demo fell off, we're good. It is good to see though. Oh my god, that's so many of them. I'm just gonna let the turrets handle them. It's good to know that the, uh, the turrets aren't setting off demos. I just have to keep an eye on those cops. Because the cops can set off demos and the turrets can set off cops, which can be a bit of a chain reaction. Hey, get over there. Stop it. Oh, reload time. This is very nerve-wracking, because what if one of the cops pops next to a demo, that is. Yeah, that's going to have to <laughs> be dealt with. Seems like they fixed the demo head hitbox, though, so that is very helpful. Yeah, but one thing I can definitely tell is the turrets aren't just setting off demos because I have left most of the demos unattended. Like, I've just not been paying attention to them unless they're there and I just headshot them. But uh, cops are the problem because cops obviously now can set off the demos, which is just the worst change ever. Uh, in a big pile of many worst changes ever in Alpha 21, actually, but... You just keep an eye on the cops, which are a lot easier to kill than the demos are. Like, they're not a risk. You just have to shoot them quickly. Well, I suppose you could do the same to every demo, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Um, not an insane difficulty, anyway. They'll kind of just survive. As we saw with the one that had, like, no legs and I still didn't get him in time and he blew up. Um, so it's not a perfect base design, that's for damn sure. Is someone stuck down there? Oh, is he inside? He's gonna just be there until I leave, then. 
let me turn off my electric fences and my blade traps because I don't know which is actually which. Is there a zombie inside my building and did it get in there fair or is it just teleported inside? It has just teleported inside. Not to worry, if you leave the area, it will despawn. I don't know how far I have to go, but I'm just going to run in this direction. So that base does work with demos. You do just have to pay attention to the cops because if your turrets blow up the cops, then the cops will blow up the demos. But the turrets themselves will not be a problem to the demos directly. So that's something at least. I had to engage at least 1% of my brain at the end of that Horde Night there, which was more than I've engaged on any of the other Horde Nights of this Alpha 21 saga. He's still in there. The bastard. I like can just break his way out, or I'll leave the game and he'll die anyway, so. Let's get the loot. I imagine he just teleported in. The, the zombies are weird in this game sometimes. Oh hey, a demo bag. Anything good? No. Okay, so something of definite note here then is that the turrets don't set off the demos, but they do have a chance to set off the cops if they happen to not kill the cop in time, which seems pretty likely. Um, and apparently your turrets are at risk if they're at eye level with you because, of course, cops will try and spit at you, which is obvious now that I think about it. But at the same time, I understand why I didn't think about it. So in the future designs, I will put the turrets somewhere I can still access, maybe elevated above there and there. Or, hmm, hmm. I'm not sure, but it is an easy fix. You just need your turret to not be at eye level with you. I'm going to leave the game now. Um, Once I've picked up the rest of the sloop so that that guy goes away because I mean it's slightly cheesy to just let him despawn using the game mechanics but it's completely cheesy that he's even in there because it's completely solid steel on all sides so he's just in there because of glitches. Hello and welcome back to the intellect series today we are going to basically have to kill some Aiden and apparently some screamers so let's deal with that really quickly. That was a nice little bit of a warm-up for my aim. Anyway, as I was saying, we're going to have to kill some time today because I'm still creating steel for my project at the end of the series here, which is just going to take time. I've got another, yeah, another load of steel. I've, I've taken out the 2,000 and I've put in some more iron in here. I don't know how much it's going to come out to. I calculated 1,000 blocks worth of steel, which would require about 10,000 steel. I don't know if I'm going to hit that, but we're going to see. In the meantime, I have to kill some time with just some more quests. So I'm going to see what the hardest quest Trader Wrecked has, and we're just going to see if I can take it on. Hmm, less sunset nursing home. I have not done that as a tier 6. The last time I did it as a tier 5, it almost killed me. So that seems like an adequate challenge. Let me go get some stuff to get ready for it, though. What the fuck? Ugh. Oh, you always gotta change the sound effects, fun pimps. Oh, you gotta make things weird! Grab some robotic turret ammo. Uh, I'm gonna get some glue here for some duct tape to make more repair kits, because I feel like I'm gonna need them. Why the fuck can I only make three duct tape with 30 cloth fragments? What? What? Industrial grade pharmaceuticals is this company on? Why is that a change you decided to make? Ugh. What if we just made the game less fun for no reason? There's one thing I know about players of a video game, it's that they absolutely love collecting shitloads of cloth. Yep, that's the thing we play the game for. Is that like an entire playthrough's worth of cloth? No, there's some more. Why is it taking two minutes to craft duct tape? <laughs> Why? I'm glad I'm going to be doing a modded series next. The modders know what they're doing. Let me guess, it takes 4,000 duct tape to make a repair kit now? No, still one-to-one. -one. Good, good. They haven't completely lost their minds. Ugh. Why am I experiencing a cost of living crisis in a video game? Oh my god, it actually takes 2,000 oil shields to make 5,000 gas. Why? Why? What else did this fucking update bring? I didn't look at the patch notes. I knew about the gas thing, but I didn't really... Didn't really have a look. Let's see. Oh, there's a new tier 5. Ah, they've reduced the amount of consecutive bleeds you get. Of course, they fixed the demolition zombies uh, head that box as well. Increase the amount of cloth needed for various recipes. What are you fucking turrets even shooting at? 
Is there a wandering horde? Oh, there is. Uh, here's some. Recipes. Oh, just 50 cloth to make yourself some BDU bottoms, something nobody has ever crafted. Just 10 cloth for a bandage. Yep, that's agonizing. 50 for a bandana. 100 for a bandolier. 50 for that. Just a nice, subtle 200 cloth fragments to make a double clothing pocket mod. On top of the 20, you'll need to make your duct tape. Well, at least he didn't adjust the thick 44 flags. Glad they're not that fucking delusional. 100 cloth fragments make a robotic drone morale booster, really. A severed head of a teddy bear is 100 cloth fragments. Well, this update fucking sucks. So, we were on our way to do another terribly unfun PY. The, um, Last Sunset Nursing Home. Is it in the snow biome? Oh, jeez, I'm gonna die. Last time I did this, it was a tier 5 and it was in the forest. Let me tell you, it came very close to getting me. So I'm a little bit worried about this, but let's head over. Nope, shit, better turn quickly. <laughs> Bloody snow biome. Ugh. Snake, come here. Oh, I'm just gonna have to go down. There's a ball. Good start. Okay, there's a couple of normal zombies so far. Feral, but nothing I can't handle. Oh, another drop into a room. Oh, hey, radiated zombie. Oh, well, that's a lot of zombies. Whoa. Eater. My turret ran out of ammo. Let me go ahead and reload that. Make sure this one's fully loaded as well. And let's continue. Now this POI is actually filled with a lot of books, so maybe I'll get the last books that I needed. Why is there so many zombies outside? What did I do? I wonder if I can jump back up outside and clear the outside, but it doesn't even save you for that long. The game just keeps spawning them. I hear a mountain lion. Where is it? Oh, hey, buddy. Right, back into the PY. Ooh, big frame rate drop as soon as I got up here. Where the fuck did this guy come from? He's just a random non part of the PY. Where the fuck did he. How did he. Oh, oh, oh I hate the outside of PY. Uh, I don't need to heal yet. Oh god. Let's go down. <laughs> I'm going to lure them into the basement now. This does not seem very safe. Who's still alive? How... How are you outside? How does this happen? Are you even part of the beat? What? I'm flummoxed. Flummoxed, I tell you. There we go. Let me go grab my turrets. That was a lot of zombies. Right, I'll try and sneak into rooms next time, because I was just... I was just wandering there. I don't know where I was. Uh, let's see. I've got two directions I can go. I don't remember the POI at all. It really doesn't help. Some books here. Oh, southern farming. That's not great. That's locked. This is just a little medicine room. A nice little library room here. I think I've cleared it. Water purifier helmet mod and a long barrel mod. Fists. Rifles. Paper. Farming. And machine guns. Lost this. And that's all the books. Right, so the only route I can go is... Actually, neither of those. Wait, is there a button? Oh, do you go through this? That makes sense, kind of. Okay. Don't get caught in corners like that, dipshit.
I'll rip the computer, I guess. Bandage time. I barely had a chance to sneak into that room. Oh, more of them spawned. Hello. Gonna reload my turrets. The weapons bag, is that all this is? Machine guns. Oh, I remember this. The zombies spawn behind you and everything. That was just on the tier 5 version. They come from up here. Can you get to them early? I can see them, but can I actually jump to them at all? There we go. Oh, that sucks a lot. Yeah, no sneaking up on me this time, huh? Hello. Good job, turret. Didn't even realize that one guy was radiated. Come in front of my turret, please. Did that guy fall down there? Where'd he go? Right, so they're not going to sneak up on me now. Uh, are those boots better than mine? No, they're not. And gun magazine. Why am I getting a hunger sound effect when I pick up food? That was weird. I noticed it in the last episode, but I thought I was just, like, tripping. I gaslit myself, but no, it is actually just a weird bug where you sometimes get the hunger sound effect. It's not like I'm actually hungry. Very normal day in Seven Days to Die Town. Guns. Make a level 5 SMG. Don't really want one. So. Oh, I finished Wasteland Treasures. What do you get from that again? Harvest Military Fibers. Woo! Fuck that guy. And right back out the window, please. Oh, this feels like another one of those rooms. Hang on, hang on. Set up a turret and a backup turret. Alright. Hello? Oh, nobody's here. Aha! Tried to trick me. That's not too bad. Big hitters. Why am I even collecting the books? Let me repair these. It's making me nervous. Right, uh... Blah, blah, blah. I saw the way. Where is it? Here. We do go up. Didn't I already kind of clear this, though? Or is it going to spawn more? It's going to spawn more. Right, well, I'm going to stand over here so that my turrets get something to shoot at. Oh, I'm a little bit too far away there. Ow. Any more people hiding back here? I do not think I'm good. Right, where do I go? Of course all the ceilings break. This P.Y. was designed to fuck with me specifically. And yes, that is obviously a joke comment section. Uh, you know what? You deal with it. And you deal with that one. Okay, but I'm not coming into your firing range. Oh, not the spiral staircases. <laughs> There's nothing worse than a spiral staircase. I remember this. I think it almost killed me last time. Hello? Yep. Yeah. Up the staircase. Oh, you spawned them behind me as well. This game sucks really bad. Have I ever said that? What the fuck happened here? Oh, there's more zombies. Wasn't sure if he was dead. I just get another M60 out of that. I did. Oh, this seems like a fun room. I 
another one in there somewhere. One moment. There's fucking more of you. You piss off. Ah, hear that silence. No zombies bashing on doors. I can think. Not that I do much thinking anyway, but you know. It's nice to have the option. I seem to recall this sucking. Come on. Um, I don't remember this room, but uh, I'm just going to run away once I sneak attack someone. Eh. There we go. Run away. Well, there is actually a doorway I could get them caught in here first. Let me grab the turrets. I think it's going better than last time, at least. No, oh, this door doesn't lock. Um, turret time. Where's your friend? Well, that's suspiciously undangerous. Hello there. Step into my office. Over here, <laughs> specifically. Oh, the frame rate. It's hurting. This is all very suspicious. I remember this. No. We've reached the final room. It's actually pretty short, all things considered. Let me deal with this. So for those of you who haven't been following me for, you know, over a month now, which is probably at least a quarter of you. I mean, I got like 10,000 subs in the last month and a half, so a decent amount of you actually are probably not aware of what happened last time but i got trapped in there and had to grenade myself to survive it was a mess and that was just as a tier five but this time no 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 i'm taking this engagement on my terms i wonder if it's actually better to do it on the incline here so what happens is you come in here and you're you're good right you're safe you're fine it's when you press one of these like valve things all these doors unlock and zombies just pour out now here's the thing you might think, well, just break open the doors and shoot them. But here's the thing, the thing, the thing. Let me show you something. The zombies are not there until you press that button. And then they fabricate into reality. It sucks. Now, I don't have any nail gun on me, but that will slow them down enough so that I can run past. They'll come from there, there. I think they even come from in there. And they come, more importantly, from in there. That door I have unlocked. So that I can escape. So do that and run. Just run. Just run. Don't even look. Just run. And then look back and see how many red dots there are. That went considerably better than last time. Ooh, a level 6 pick is about the mine. 35.6. Nah, it's not. And then we can get the loot. You know, if you do that, it's not a bad POI. Like, it goes pretty quickly. A level 6 M60. 87. Ah, show me the non-mod. Damn it. 88.6. 87.3. This one's better. Which I'll switch over. That reminds me, I need a laser sight, because I don't use the reflex on this anyway. What else is in here? A couple of books. Uh, auto turret, security camera bundle. I bring that 150 forged iron with me. Okay. Weird choice. Oh, and just because I know it pisses so many of you off. I'm going to open that in my inventory. What are you going to do about it? Complain? It just gives me engagement. Now I have to run back to the gyrocopter and put that all away. Oh, I missed this. Tactical warfare and some food and stuff. Uh, another auto turret bundle. And some stuff I really don't need all that much. Uh, there's also a passing gas container I missed here. Come on, give me a good vehicle mod. I know how to make them all, I'm just lazy. Don't need that. 
let's get to my gyrocopter and fly home. Let's see. And get another 500 forged steel out of you. And you. One, almost 600 actually. And there's like 200 in all of them anyway. Let me see here. And then combine that with the steel I have. I'm up to 3,300. Not terrible. Let's put in as much of the rest of the iron as I can here. And I'm actually out of iron. So there's 200,000 iron in there total. Minus whatever this 3,000 was worth iron-wise. Oh, there's a little bit more iron in the scrap box. I can probably help that out there. Give it another hour. It'll have another 600 out of each of them. Which is like another 3,000. And then if we get another 3,000 out of this next 6,000 ore, that would equate to, you know, 9,990 steel. And I'm sure I can... And I'm sure what's left will round up to 10,000, so it should be good. Right, well, I am just going to wait for Trader Wreck to open, because there's not much I can really do anymore. Cleaning POIs is just pointless. Doing quests is at least interesting. And most of what I'm doing is just preparing for tomorrow's episode, where I'm going to be building the base I have, but in the wasteland for a day 50 horde versus that. Hopefully I'll have all the components I need. Uh, that'd be awkward if I didn't. But yeah, I'm just going to wait here until the morning. Alright, Trader Wright is open, let's see what reward we get and see if he has any good tier 6s or tier 5s today. There's still a couple in Alpha 21 I haven't done, believe it or not, across these three series. It's just literally two of them, I think, but yeah, congratulations. we'll see. Um, I have both of these, so I'll just take another SMG. Uh, he didn't get new quests. Vanity Tower, Chong Tower. I've got Red Mesa, that's one of the ones I haven't done. So let's do that. Let's do the tier 6 infestation of the Red Mesa compound. I don't think I've done it as a tier 5 in Alpha 21 because it was a tier 4 in Alpha 20. Although I am sure it was a tier 5 in Alpha 19. So they keep going back and forth on that. But uh, yeah, we'll do a new tier 6 that I haven't done before. That should be fun. Let me just go and grab some ammo and stuff. All right, let's fly out to uh, that. Let's see, what biome is it even in? Looks like snow biome. Might not be, though. That'll be an interesting first try at a new POI. No biome tier 6 infestation. I'm sure I'll be fine. All right, here we are. It looks pretty much the same from the outside, but I can see how they would cram it full of stuff to turn it into a tier 5, but then what do they do to turn it into a tier 6? This is going to be interesting. Let's start this and just get in there. I'm sure as soon as I cross this threshold, you get attacked by like a million vultures. a lot of red marks for just the first room. I should reload. Okay, there we go. First room's cleared. Not too bad, not too bad. Oh, no, it's not cleared. Oh, you're not supposed to spawn in yet. That is going to be a terrible room, though. I'm going to do something illegal. I'm going to get them to attack me immediately. Let's place this here. Right, so it looks like they're gonna- hello, where'd you come from? There's a screamer already. Right, when they break through there, they're gonna go in front of my turrets. Is there a dog in there? There's a dog below me. Not that out. Bring these back in front of my turrets. There's some stealth in there. Holy shit. There's like an entire other wing of them. Fuck that room.
Oh, turrets are down. One second, grab them. Got one of them. Grab him. Up up here. I'm gonna go on the other side of this minefield. Because they don't have this special ability. And I'll let them <laughs> deal with themselves, hopefully. Let's see here. Pop the barbed wire. And then more turrets. There. No, I didn't reload this one. Oh no, I did. That guy doing. Is there somebody in here? <laughs> and there's still some survivors somehow. That is a lot of zombies. I don't know how you would survive that if you were locked inside with them. <laughs> At least on this difficulty. Might as well get to the end loot, right? Oh, they moved the door. I think. There's more. They really added more of them. Well, they did have to make it a tier 6 infested, I suppose. Run away! Are we clear? I think we're clear. Infested cache. Treasure map, too. Spear hunter. Level 6, one of those. Blade trap and shotgun turret bundle. Is that better than mine? 30.4, 30. Well, I should switch to that new stun baton. And let's bash open these two locked containers. And some better gloves, actually. Another auto turret bundle. I'll delete a couple things behind there. Is my gyrocopter even close enough for me to reach without failing the POI? That'd be really annoying if not. Okay. Nothing amazing. Oh, I don't think I can get to the gyrocopter. That is annoying. Right then. <laughs> this calls for a storage container. <laughs> I'll put it here. And I'll dump some stuff in it. I'm very well armed. Where are my repair kits? Oh no. Where are my repair kits? Do I actually have none? Am I blind? I just have no repair kits. Why? Must have auto sorted them into something and not uh, noticed. That could be a problem. Most of my gear isn't particularly well maintained right now. No one's home. Right, so I have to try and not run out of durability until I find at least a couple of repair kits. So I'm going to start this off with my magnum. But at least the hardest part, hopefully, is dealt with. Whoop. There we are, let's go ahead and get the final rank of fortitude. I will now be able to max out all of the fortitude perks that I could ever need for this build. There's a passing gas container, I believe. Damn it. There's also some cars, though. Nope. Okay, no repair kits so far, let's move on to the next room. A level 6 steel helmet. Could be good. Seems like a really not fun room. Let's take this outside, shall we? Oh, we're going for the windows. That's weird. Oh, it's not weird. Those are the weak points. Okay, good to know. These don't cost durability. Anybody in here? Let's head down. Continue on. Oh, I don't trust that. Not for one moment. 
Yeah, that was not the move. There was more of them behind me than in front of me. That's a really mean room. And I bet you have to clear it as well. Otherwise it'll send you back here to press the button. Over barricades. I mean, there's a duct tape if I can find a forged iron. Hi there. It's just him? That's weird. I'm guessing there's more to lure into this fighting lane? No, that, that was just it. Just one guy. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. That's a dumb room. I think a zombie got like stuck in the wall somewhere. I'll hunt him down. Oh god. Run away. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. Ah, some forged iron. I can make a repair kit then. Something. Um, do we go up here? This doesn't feel safe. Oh, hello. Ooh, there's more of them. Ah, some more of the fire bullshit, let me guess. I press that button, it turns off the fire and it spawns a million zombies. Locked in. Yep, that was predictable. Take you back here. Another door I don't really trust. Let me finish my reload at least. What's going on in there? Oh, water? That's never good. Where are these guys? The above, the below, the in the water? Ah, oh, here you are. Well, that was a clusterfuck. I need some healing. Is this a new room? I don't remember this one. Another level 6 pick. Any better than mine? 35.6. 35.4, so no. I'll earn an elixir. Why not? Duffel bag trigger. It's honestly just weird. Right, let's take a step inside. Got one of them. Oh, that's locked open, of course. Um, 
it's apparently here. I'm assuming it's on the other side. Let me go see. That's so dumb. I was just in that room. That's the dumbest trigger in Seven Days to Die yet. Holy shit, I was just standing there. We know there's no zombies. That is the laziest shit I've ever seen. Oh my. That is... And I don't whip out the E word very often, but that is egregious. There's some screamers outside. Where's Screamer? Let me grab as much of this as I can. I'll come back in a second. Oh, that POI. There's my repair kit. They were in the gyrocopter. I don't think I could have got to it without failing the quest, though. Anyway, that POI is a mess. One of the worst tier 6s I've ever seen. That last bit where you walk through a room and it just... And it just pretends that there were zombies there. It thinks you're that stupid that you won't realise you just walked through that room and verified there was no zombies. Like, the devs think you are that mentally deficient. That's what's happening there. There's no other explanation for it. They think you have a railroad spike driven through the front of your skull and that you're a moron for playing their game. Like, give me one other logical explanation as for why they would spawn zombies in a room you were just in. Like, you have to go through that room and you have to go through that trigger to activate that door. It's just stupid. It's a stupid decision made by stupid developers who think their players are stupid. Simple as that. And whenever I say things like that about the devs, people are always like, well, why don't you play something else? Because I like my channel, and I like my viewers, and they like Seven Days to Die, so I play it. Does it matter that Seven Days to Die is going downhill, in my opinion? Not particularly. All that matters is my viewers are happy, I'm getting views and generating revenue. That's why I play this game. And then I'll get another batch of comments that are like, well, you're being too negative. I don't care. Go watch someone else. Fine by me. If you want to watch someone who will sit there and act like they were just tricked by that, like, oh, where did those zombies come from, guys? If you want to go watch someone who's going to blow smoke up your ass like that, then go watch them. You're not going to get that here. Hmm. 87.2, 88.6. I'll keep mine. Uh, but I'll take that and sell it. I probably won't ever actually bother to sell it now that I think about it. Oh, actually, I could do with a little bit of money. So let's see, M60, pickaxe, steel helmet, repair all them. Maximize the monies. Um, put these away. And let me sell those real quick. I've got a magnum. I can get a little bit of a discount. Have I got any money on me? I do. Let's see if he has any sugar butts then. Or maybe some awesome sauce. Uh, nope. And, well, he's got some awesome sauce. That'll do. 100% better deal or whatever. Here. I'm not going to bother modding them. I can't be bothered today. There we go. Got myself a level. Shit, man. I treat you that good and you don't even fucking tip me. Raise your prices. Why would you tip a shopkeeper? And there's the final rank of machine gunner. In honor of this occasion, anyway, let's go see how my steel's doing. There we go, and how much steel can I make? Another 400. Uh, it's actually clay that I'm a little bit short on. Hang on, hang on. I've got the um, extra 2,000 here. I have that in most of them as well. No, this one's just done. <laughs> as is this one. Let's see, another 300 forged steel. Another 100. Another 400. Another 500. Another few hundred there, and then another 500. Even more. What do you mean only three? Oh, iron's not finished smelting. <laughs> I guess I'll have to do for now, and then on top of that I've got... Uh, 7,000 more forged steel, plus I've definitely got like another 2,000 coming, so that'll be done in time then. For the morning, but in the meantime, I will just skip that for you, and I'll show you that at the start of the next episode. Hello and welcome to the final episode of the Intellect series. I am going to be building my horde base that I made the other day, but this time we're going to do it in the wasteland. We're going to see if it can hold against that. Now, 
I gathered up a bunch of materials. You'll notice it's like a full in-game day since the last episode. I just let my forges go and just sort of AFK'd and drove around gathering up all my stuff. I finally have the 10,000 forge steel I need. Now, how can you make steel blocks in your inventory? How long did they take? Oh, two minutes each? That's not going to work. That's going to take thousands of minutes. So we'll go for upgrading, which is fine. There's a thousand blocks. Dart traps, electric fences, turrets of all kinds. I made some of these, which are surprisingly expensive. They take 50 forged iron. I mean, in this economy. I'm going to move this all over to my gyrocopter. My gyrocopter is filled with ammunition currently, because I'm going to have to fill a bunch of turrets now as well, because we're basically doing an upgraded version of that last base, but this time we're going to do it in the wasteland. Speaking of which, where? Um, oh, I do actually live quite close to the wasteland, so just heading out like there and doing it will be fine. Now, I'm going to assume that it's not going to take me the full two days to build this base, so we might get another tier 6 done. Uh, hopefully one I've never done before. Which I think there is only one that I've never done before. Now that I think about it, the new one, the Ostrich Hotel, which was only added as a tier 5 in Alpha 21.1, I think. Well, no, it existed in Alpha 20 and Alpha 19, but it wasn't a tier 5. Let's see if I got 10,000 concrete lying around. I do. Most of it's at the other base, actually, but I do still have it. I don't think I need... Oh, well, blade traps. I was going to say I don't need anything else, but blade traps are a definite possibility. Uh, is that everything? Are we good to go? Eh, we'll have time to figure it out. Let's head over to the wasteland. I am going to skip over most of the building because it is just going to be pretty much exactly the same. I should get a shovel before I leave. Uh, it's pretty much going to be exactly the same as the other video where I built it with a few changes because I just want to do the base in the wasteland and see if it's any good in a much higher game stage. I did go into a test world and test one thing though and that was if um, dart traps activate demolition zombies it doesn't seem like they do so we're good on that hopefully. It was not a very comprehensive test. Oh and I'll need to make hatches. Yep. Always forget something. That's fine. A really big issue I will have actually now that I think about it. Definitely going to need a wiring tool, so I'll go grab one of those as well. Wiring tools. There's one. That should do. I don't have much more inventory space than that anyway. Oh, and I should uh, clarify the hoard is... This isn't empty? What? That's weird. Um, I should clarify that the hoard is going to be on day 50, because we're on hoard night every five nights now. Which means this will be the same number of horde that the day 56 horde would have been. But I'm still not going to be particularly higher game stage 160 yet. But the wasteland is going to give me a huge game stage boost. It's going to make it like I'm 100 levels higher. So that'll be pretty fun. Right, I'm going to land this gyrocopter slightly outside the wasteland. Because we know how it is for taking off. Especially with this much health left. I'm going to place one of these writable storages here. Because I'm just carrying too much stuff. Right, let's step inside to the wasteland here okay so i'm gonna start with the central thing this time since i have a better idea of how the base works so it's gonna be a seven by seven box to start with also what's my game stage in this biome now 354 that is not bad it's a real test right there's the first seven by seven box let me go ahead and turn this into steel okay there's my seven by seven box all fully steeled up Next, we need to basically turn this into a slab, complete pure slab of steel, which is going to take a lot of resources, as you would guess, but I forget how tall it is, so give me a second. It's an additional six blocks, uh, now I remember. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go straight, steal this up, and then wrap another layer around it, and I'm going to turn that into steel, and then again and again until this is a pure block of steel. Now, this is extremely excessive. But do keep in mind that that was kind of the point of the Wasteland version of this, was to be pretty much as good as it could be, which involves a block of probably a good couple of hundred <laughs> blocks worth of steel. If you want a more resource effective one, go back and watch the original video if you haven't already seen it. I'm definitely going to need more steel than that, but it's in my gyrocopter, so I'm good. Let me just grab it all. I can apparently carry it all at once, so that works. All right. There's a big layer of steel, we're going to go around with another one and it gets exponentially more expensive. There we go, and let's add in this final ridiculously excessive layer of steel. And remember, this is not a tutorial, I am not recommending you actually use this much materials. I'm just doing it for the fun of it. The actual tutorial definitely recommends you do more like steel on the outside and then forget about it from there. Okay, and let's reinforce this. I have a skill point, let's go for some pain tolerance. Right then, so, 
there's the big steel cube and that is the entire horde base thanks for watching no next we want to start with our bridge which starts from the middle here if i remember correctly it was three four three so one two three we do a bridge and eh, a bridge a pillar and then we do four and then we do a pillar and then we do three and then we do a pillar then i believe it was seven and then a pillar so one two is that all is that as far out as it goes i can't remember i think it is as far as it goes and then you do another pillar everything's so green in this biome <laughs> there we go then we do sevens again until we reach the end point so that's one two three four five six seven one more do the here and then we do i think it's three lots of seven for the next one but let me chop down some trees last pillar here Got another stack of blocks on me i do I'm gonna need to remove this car and i don't have an impact driver on me there we go so this is the entire walkway good to go let's turn that into steel as well okay the entire walkway except for this side here should now be steel which is the important part that's the part that really needs to be steel i'm considering though someone had a suggestion of putting like plates um that's not the right page where is it plates along this so that if demos do explode there's like an extra layer of protection but it doesn't take up any extra space or anything here we go i think i need to leave that block open but otherwise it should be fine Let's steal this all up as well Another skill point, another point in pain tolerance. There, that should be good. I've just remembered, by the way, I'm going to have to gather the engines from the other base because there's no way I'm going out and collecting another, like, 24 engines. I can't be bothered with that. Okay, there's my little emergency way up. Let me build this first room. Okay, I've modified it slightly this time so that I have two layers of scaffolding ladder which just gives me more visibility. It doesn't make me particularly more prone to any kind of damage because these are still cop spit proof, so I'm good. But it gives me more areas to see and more areas to shoot out of. Let's see, have I got more steel in here? No. Any more in here? Ah, good. Let me grab my turrets so that I can start planning that out. So if I put the shotgun turrets on that, can I access them from inside? I can. And I don't think that is going to give the, what are they called, the spiders, somewhere to path. So that could work. It doesn't look very nice, but it should work. Make those steel, just the block underneath them breaking, and that's not very helpful. So we'll do the same over here. And this one's steel as well. While I'm at this, I'll actually plate this off a bit more securely. Don't want them getting ideas about other areas they can attack. There, that should encourage them correctly. Head up a level. I got those SMG turrets on me. I do. They're floating, but I don't care. And then one here. So, cool. SMG turrets are up and running. Uh, let's see. This time around, I think I am just going to do scaffolding ladders on all the straight parts. Like this. Just because why bother with the extra materials, really? I'll leave access because I still use... Oh, I've done this in the wrong place, hang on. As I was saying, I'll leave access to that because I still want to come out here and be able to wire the blade traps and stuff from inside. Quite a useful ability. Let's go for too tall. I'm going to make it mismatch this time, but... Because I want it to be slightly... Oh, that's not in the right place. Because I want it to be slightly different and because... It'll take less time and i have less time this time so it makes sense and then for the corners there isn't really a corner scaffolding piece so it just makes sense to use blocks I keep forgetting this one side over here i'll give myself another layer of a floor here because that helps me store things like generators and cargo in a very compact base and then railings i'll just do like a sky cage i won't even give it like a proper ceiling i'll just uh Start something like this, and then just drag that all the way across the ceiling. Let me turn this all into concrete. I actually have like 4,000 steel left over, which is pretty helpful. Still have a couple of things I want to do for this base though, including the electric fences and the dart trap thingies. Of course I'll need to set up the electronics, but we're looking pretty good. Right, let me go home and get some of the extra resources I need then, including water. Right, so with all my steel, let's grab 
um brings and where are my mechanical parts they're around here somewhere i think they got all sorted into a random container well not a random container but the wrong container there we go uh, i need hypothetically five volt doors which i might just do because i have the materials so one two three four five and then i need two steel hatches then i also need a wooden hatch because i'm going to place the steel one wrong and then i need 10 forged iron Let's see, anybody got 10 forged iron in them? Here we go. So I'll let that all craft up and I'll get back to you. Right, let me fly back over to my base. Oh, and I'll bring water and food. Uh, tuna fish gravy toast. And some red teak. Let's head out there. Oh, and I'll make a quick stop over at the other horde base to steal all of its generators. Or not its generators, sorry, its engines. There we go, engines stolen. Let's go to the other base. Right, let's head inside here and see what I can do with the doors and stuff. Perfect. Here we go. That should work now. Let me put a hatch on the ceiling here as well. This one I don't need to think about as hard. And then vault doors, just in case any spider zombies get any funny ideas. But it does mean I can access each of them. More so that I can do this actually and look over and like wire up various things. Uh, let's see, generator banks. Uh, fill up the generators with this stuff. Oh, I left my gas behind. That's annoying. Just in the um, gyrocopter. Nowhere particularly worrisome, but still annoying. <laughs> I can carry all my shotgun ammo. Nice. Right, well, I can start wiring up all the turrets at least, even if not all of them are fully... Even if not all of them are fully thingied yet. Right, and that should be the base completely done then. Just need to get more ammo over here. And I need to wire up those fences. Oh no, the blade traps. The blade traps, of course. Give me one moment. Ah, there's that engine. Right, let's see. There's a bunch of various kinds of ammo. And that is a whole lot of concrete if I need it. But I think I actually need more 7.62. Because I only have a few hundred. And this is going to be my last sword night. So there's no point in conserving ammo. So let me head over to the crafting base. And see what else I can pick up. More bullets. You're not 762. Just take all my shotgun shells over, why not? Why the hell not? I'll also need extra meds. Let's see, first aid kits. Again, port bites, recog, vitamins. Mm, I honestly don't need much else. Take some spare first aid bandages, why not? Right, let me throw all this in here. Let's go see what Trader Wrecked has. See if he has like the tier 5 ostrich hotel or whatever it's called. Uh, I don't know if I could do a tier 6 version in time. I've never done it before, but I can certainly take a look. And if I have to ditch it, I have to ditch it. He's losing his quests. Like, he just he just doesn't have any more than what he has here. Open Bill's Factory. You know what just occurred to me? This world was generated in the last update, so how is it going to have a new POI in it? Like, for, what, are you, what are you talking about? Like, turn your brain on, Brady Bill. What are you doing here? Fucking intellect play through my ass. See, is there anything good? I've done it all. Director, are you selling dynamite so I can go and abuse something? He has 10 sticks of dynamite. How much does that cost? Uh, 2700 Let me go get, get some stuff. Some monies. I still, believe it or not, even after smelting like a quarter of a million dukes, I still have some. You're I wrecked. Bringing counterfeit money in here, are you? There. Now give me your dynamite. Um, yeah. And anything else explosive? No. Well, he's got HE rockets, but I don't have a rocket launcher, and I don't think I have the means to make one right now. Any duct tape or glue? No. Boring. Since I can't really use these for anything wrecked, you have fun with those. Let that be a lesson to you. My old base. Run away. Yep. Pretty much good enough. Fantastic. Let's go do it to my old horde base. Trouble. 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 This underneath it one and then I shall place one right there and I will now run away and hope for the best it survived excuse me eh? what the fuck I'm sorry you are incorrect there we go I'm pleased. So the final game stage is 106 is 361.
which is pretty respectable. Now let me load all the turrets. All right, here comes the horde night. Let's start spamming consumables. Uh, I've got some food and water as well. Yucca juice and yeah, I got the tuna fish gravy dose. Let's have a few of these. Okay, so for this horde night, the only thing I need to worry about is killing cops before they explode. Because if they explode, they might set off a demo and I'm not particularly demo proof quotation marks right like if a demo explodes too many times on an important beam this base falls apart but i do have a backup plan and that is my machine gun here this will give me six stamina per shot so i just need to run and gun for the rest of the night if it goes horribly wrong we are beginning the horde night let's get started i do not see anything yet <laughs> Also, this is game stage 364, by the way. What is happening over here? <laughs> Seeing a lot of radiated Hawaiian tourists, which are pretty scary, they do a lot of block damage. But they're not too bad overall. There's so many Hawaiians. There's so many radiated tourists, oh my god. Why is that block about to break? What the fuck? It's just cops, but... Jeez. Cops are absolutely vicious now. It's not even radiated cops. Fact, with how strong the cops are, I'm going to reinforce this to steel. I am nervous. There's so many! They're all tourists. This doesn't seem economically possible. Let me see here. Refill my shotgun turrets for sure. Got a skill point. No. Oh. Something's bugged. <laughs> oh, that block is gonna break. That is not good. How are they damaging that one, but not that one? Oh, we're getting like crash errors. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, seven days to die, hold on. Hold on, seven days to die, I believe in you. Just four more hours, it's fine. <laughs> Whatever's happening right here. Oh, I forgot they can shoot through that. Not the radiated bikers. There's so many radiated bikers now. I'm gonna 
have a look and see if my SMG turrets need reloaded here. Hang on, did I hear a demo? Yes, I did. Not now, game. <laughs> I don't need crashes while I'm shooting at demos. They're not crashes, console logs. Fucking hell. What is that fucking saying? Particle system is trying to spawn a mesh with zero surface area. Object not set to an... What are you talking about? What are you trying to create right now? Is there a zombie that doesn't work when you spawn it? Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh my god. Hmm. You're annoying me now, game. Okay, fuck off. Ah! Stop it! What are you trying to spawn right now? Oh my fucking god! Every time I do anything! Game, please stop. Whatever, whatever that is, stop it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Stop! Ah, <laughs> oh, seven days to die, but I have to press escape every three seconds. Ugh. Oh. Right, the SMG turrets need reloaded. Desperately. Somebody kill the demos, please. Ah! Get them turrets. Wait. Where are the cops? Ah, stop it. Fuck. No, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. I don't know if it's something in my base. Or if it's a zombie the game is trying to spawn, and every time it tries to spawn it, it can't find the zombie it's trying to spawn. I don't know what zombie is broken. I would like the game to stop trying to spawn it if it is that, though. Why is this crash even marked as red? It doesn't affect my game. <laughs> You're just making me press escape every 30 seconds. This achieves nothing. How are these doing on health? Yeah, they're fine. Let me repair my M60. Piss off, please. Ugh, 20 FPS. I am straight up not having a good time right now. All the ammo I have left, really? Oh no. Okay, Magnum time. Oh, there's so few frames to go around. 
I just need to endure the next hour and a half of 10 FPS gameplay. At least the crashes have stopped. And there's doesn't seem to be many demos left either, so that's nice of them. Get away from my door. I sure hope there is no demos, because that was scary when the, 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 uh, the hatch temporarily disappeared there. I was not a fan of that. I think as long as there's no demos, we can use that fine. And I don't see any demos, so I think we should be good. I'll just focus on keeping this repaired for the turret to do the rest of the damage. I can't even react to this. Look at the frame rate. Oh, I can't do anything at this frame rate. I'm trying to jump up here and get to my turret so I can back it up. <laughs> I just can't. One moment, please. We're more powerful anyway. Give me this. There we go. This is absolute fucking havoc. No, not the shovel. Ah, I can place that there. It's helpful. I do not like that I can look here and that hatch disappears. It's making me very nervous. Hey, it's daytime now, we just need to kill off the rest of them. Have I got any more ammo for this? I do. There's a screamer in this horde. And we're gonna have to do this for even longer. done here. We're mostly done here. Um... I say, I don't think you've done that right, friend. <laughs> Not now, zombie. Really? All those ranks and pain tolerance and I still get stunned. Blech. Oh, it looks like a demo popped here. I didn't hear that happen at all. Hmm. Weird. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> we survived though. Wasteland Horde Night. Blech. Even with everything it was trying to do to cheat to kill me, you know. Just get a couple of perks here. So yeah, that is going to be the end of the Intellect series, and I'm glad, because as you can see, my world is starting to fall apart already.
And I was really getting bored of the game there because it's just so easy, the build, and I got all the progression done very, very quickly, and it was just grinding for ages there. But we'll be moving on to another series next. The poll I ran, you guys said you wanted to see Desert Ranger with uh, the Wild West overhaul. Assuming I can get the overhaul working and stuff, I should be going ahead with that. If not, we'll just do normal Desert Ranger and hope I don't lose my mind. Thank you for reaching the end of this series, I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you to my channel members and patrons for making these videos possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next series.